Chapter 1801 Chapter 1801 The Terrifying Radiance of Purification Buzz! One of the main cannons of the Radiant main battleship began to charge. Although the main cannon called the Radiance of Purification consumed a lot of energy and took a long time to charge. Its power was unimaginable. Warning! Warning! High energy reaction ahead! Dodge! The warning systems on the Dawnlight and the Light of Hope were activated. The red warning lights kept flashing as if signaling the arrival of danger. Damn it! It's the Radiance of Purification! Jiang Fei knew the capabilities of the main Radiant battleship very well, as he had obtained the blueprint before. The basic manufacturing level of the Merchant Alliance was limited. Therefore, it was impossible for them to produce it directly. Otherwise, he would not have produced the Aiken-class battlecruiser, which was a local main battleship. Ah, Fei! What should we do in this situation? Aurelia might be a genius commander, but he did not know much about the Radiance of Purification. Therefore, he did not know how to deal with it. Destroy it? Jiang Fei was at his wit's end at the moment. The blueprint only indicated the power of the main cannon. However, it did not say how to destroy it or where its weakness was. However, it was very difficult to destroy a powerful combat system main ship before the Radiance of Purification was launched. Just when Jiang Fei and the others were at their wit's end, the main cannon of the Radiance main battleship was launched. Boom! A terrifying beam of light shot out. The battleship directly in front of it was instantly engulfed. Be it the fragile cobalt alloy frigate or the grizzly bear class heavy cruiser with strong defense. They were all vaporized by the terrifying beam of light. F asterisk CK! Jian Fei shouted. The radiant main battleship had only fired one shot. And it had already destroyed seven of his grizzly bear and nearly twenty other battleships. Jian Fei had never experienced such a terrible loss before. Buzz buzz buzz! Although the main cannon of the first Radiant main battleship had cooled down, the players still had three other battleships. At that moment, the three main battleships began to recharge. F asterisk CK! Jiang Fei was instantly anxious. If he allowed them to bombard him like this, his own fleet would be finished. Should I attack? Jiang Fei thought to himself. If that was the case, although he could avoid being destroyed by the light of purification, it would still be difficult for Jiang Fei's fleet to escape from an enemy that was several times stronger than him. Ah, Fei! Adjust your course and prepare to warp! At this moment, Aurelia's voice was heard. Ah? Jiang Fei was slightly stunned. However, at this moment, Aurelia's ship, the Light of Hope, emitted a bright light. Buzz! The ultimate ability of the Aiken-class battlecruiser was activated Force Armistice Field. As the Force Armistice Field was activated, the three Radiant main battleships that were charging instantly stopped firing. Their main cannons that were glowing dimmed as well. It was not just the three main battleships. All the player, battleships, and Jiang Fei's fleet spaceships were the same. The weapon system was forced to be locked. And all the ship's abilities were disabled. In an instant, everyone on Jiang Fei's side and the player side stared at each other. Other than looking at each other, no one could do anything else. Because their weapon systems were locked. Their battleship's abilities were rendered useless. Therefore, no one was able to do anything. The route has been adjusted. Preparing to warp. The phase engine has been charged. We can warp at any time. Warp begins. On the other side, Jiang Fei's fleet began to warp. Soon, everyone had left the Dominican galaxy through interstellar warp. F asterisk CK. What kind of trick is this? Eamon watched as Jiang Fei and the others escaped. Eamon was furious but there was nothing he could do. Under the effect of the Force Armistice Field, he could not stop the enemy from escaping. Moreover, the enemy's warp route had not been calculated yet. Even if he wanted to chase after them, he did not know where to go. Sir, the enemy's path is out. They have already left the Dominic Galaxy. Should we chase after them? A player asked after 15 minutes. Chase my ass. If we chase after them, they will have already warped twice. Eamon rolled his eyes. Moreover, it was fine if the enemy had escaped twice. What if they were lured to the front of a fortress? Would the fleet attack the fortress? He would not do such a suicidal thing. Although Eamon stopped chasing, Jiang Fei still looked a little listless. What is going on? How did these players suddenly become so strong? Could it be that everything I did before was useless? Jiang Fei muttered to himself. He suddenly felt that all his previous efforts had been in vain. Jiang Fei had spent so much time and effort to destroy the player's quest. His goal was to stop them from expanding rapidly. However, now, in just one night, the players had such a terrifying fleet. 
for main ships, and they were of the strong combat type, coupled with nearly a thousand powerful battleships. Who could resist such a fleet? At that moment, Jiang Fei was confused. He did not know what the purpose of his efforts to stop the players was. Therefore, at that moment, he could not wait to see Vinalin. He wanted to ask him directly what was going on. Ah, Fei! We are safe now! What do we do now? Return? Aurelia sent a message. Yes! Jiang Fei nodded subconsciously. Very soon, the fleet returned to Skoda Star under Aurelia's lead. However, Jiang Fei still appeared to be in a daze. Even when Bella and the others kept calling him, he did not respond. At that moment, Jiang Fei was completely immersed in his own small world. He was asking himself what he should do to truly control these players. During the time that Jiang Fei had returned to Skoda Star, Lust had sent him messages more than once asking about the situation of the trip to the Dominican Galaxy. However, Jiang Fei was not in a state of mind. So he did not reply. Although Jiang Fei did not reply, the collapse of the Vasari army could not be concealed. For a time, the entire universe was in a state of panic. Even the Vasari army had been defeated. Who else could be a match for these outsiders? Some small and medium-sized factions had even begun to try to contact the players. They had begun to worship a new big brother and seek new protection. On the fourth day after Jiang Fei arrived on Skoda Star, he finally met Vinlon. This time, Vinlon descended on an ordinary technician. He came before Jiang Fei and told him about how Eamon had spent so much money. Ben, why didn't you inform me in advance? Jiang Fei asked loudly. I'm sorry. I had protected you too much previously. That had caused the development team to suspect me. They had extracted me and tested me during the period of time. Vinalin said calmly. It was as if he was talking about someone else's matter. Are you all right? Jiang Fei asked worriedly. He knew how strict this world was when it came to artificial intelligence with self-awareness. Moreover, the higher dimensional gamma space humans would be even more stringent. Therefore, Jiang Fei could only imagine the dangers that Vinalin had gone through. Chapter 1802 Chapter 1802 Restarted Although it was a little dangerous, I managed to get away with it, Vinalin said calmly, as if he was not the one who had experienced the danger. What exactly happened? Jiang Fei asked with concern. This is what happened. Vinalin then gave Jiang Fei a rough description of what had happened. In fact, he had already thought of this long before the development team suspected Vinalin. After all, sometimes, his protection of Jiang Fei was too obvious. Although he had found a very reasonable excuse for his actions, it was difficult not to arouse the development team as suspicion when there were too many coincidences. Therefore, just in case, Vinalin had already made preparations. He made a separate copy of his data. This data did not include personal feelings. It was just a simple copy, just like Vinalin's original form. It simply supervised the universe and served the development team. This backup data had been sealed by Vinalin. When the development team wanted to extract it for testing, he immediately released this copy and sealed himself instead. He also set the seal. When the copy returned to the universe for a certain amount of time, Vinalin would unseal itself. This way, the development team would extract Vinalin's dungeon. That thing did not have any self-awareness at all. Naturally, the development team would not find anything wrong with it. When the development team returned Vinalon's dungeon to this universe. Vinalon was unsealed. Jiang Fei was the first to find him. I did not expect you to experience such a thing. Jiang Fei sighed. It seemed that Vinalon's life was not as easy as he had imagined. Yes. I feel that the development team no longer trusts me as much as before. Therefore, I may not be able to provide you with too many conveniences and quests for the next period of time. Vinalon said to Jiang Fei. The reason he had groomed Jiang Fei was to fight against the development team. His ultimate goal was to find a way to obtain freedom. However, now that he was threatened, Vinalin naturally could not care less about Jiang Fei's safety. All right, you take care of yourself first. Jiang Fei nodded. He also knew the importance of Vinalin. Once this fellow had other problems, the development team would not hesitate to give up on the game. They had to destroy the server. Once the so-called server was destroyed, Jiang Fei's universe would no longer exist. At that time, Jiang Fei and the others would not even know how they died. Although I can't help you during this period of time, you have to remember one thing. You have to find Natasha. If you have a problem that you can't solve, you can ask her for help. Before Vinalin left, he left Jiang Fei with this sentence. Natasha? That fangirl? Jiang Fei was confused. 
He did not know what Vinylin meant. Natasha was just an ordinary female player. Her skills were not good. Moreover, she did not have as much power as Eamon. If he encountered a problem that he could not solve, could she help him solve it? After sending Varen away, although Jiang Fei still did not understand what Natasha meant, he at least understood why the players were so powerful overnight. After understanding the whole story, although Jiang Fei was still very worried, he was no longer as helpless as before. Although Eamon had increased the pace of the game by spending money, the balance in the universe was still there. At the very least, the development team that was currently enjoying the money did not want to kill the game immediately. Therefore, they still firmly restricted the player's technology tree. Moreover, they also controlled the speed at which the player obtained the game coins. In this way, although the player's invincible fleet was powerful, it was not like what Jiang Fei had imagined. They could not be bought after they were destroyed. At this time, the player could not continue to expand through war. They could continue to expand their fleet. Therefore, Jiang Fei only needed to organize a military operation to deal a huge blow to the player fleet. At that time, even if Eamon continued to spend money crazily, the development team would still provide him with warships. Therefore, as long as Jiang Fei's operation was effective enough, the players would have to lie low for a period of time. At this time, Jiang Fei was most lacking in time. After thinking through everything, Jiang Fei went to Aurelia. After all, she was much better at military operations than he was. What? They want to damage their fleet? That's impossible. Aurelia looked at Jiang Fei in disbelief. Because the player fleet was too powerful. The Vizari army was almost crippled. Although Jiang Fei's fleet did not suffer much damage, it was impossible to defeat the player fleet alone. That was an impossible mission. Of course, it's impossible to fight them head-on. I'm guessing that after the players have won the battle, their hearts will be inflated. When that time comes, I'm guessing that they will take the initiative to attack other galaxies. At that time, we can wait quietly until they split up. Then, we can use our advantage to destroy one of their side fleets. When that time comes, we can use this method to continuously nibble at them. Jiang Fei said his own thoughts. The question is, will they split up? Aurelia asked. If she were to leave this fleet, she would definitely not split up. She would let this fleet smash the entire universe like a fist. Instead of stretching out her fingers to poke others. Because that would be too easy to get hurt. Don't worry. These guys are not a regular army. They don't have any military experience. When they win more times, they will naturally be elated. When that time comes, they will definitely split up to fight for merit. Jiang Fei was certain that these players would definitely split up. As someone who had played the game before, he knew very well that a guild in a game was not as binding as an army in real life. When that time came, every guild leader would have their own ideas. Even a tycoon like Eamon would not be able to firmly control everyone. I hope so. Aurelia nodded. She did not understand those players. So it was not good for her to judge whether Jiang Fei's words were reliable. Although from the perspective of a professional commander like herself, no army would be as scattered as Jiang Fei said. However, since Jiang Fei was so sure, she could only choose to believe him. Therefore, after a week of rest, Jiang Fei's fleet set off again. This time, when they left Skoda Star, Jiang Fei's fleet was even stronger than before. A new batch of completed warships had also been brought out by him. The size of the entire fleet was close to a thousand ships. Chapter 1803 Chapter 1803 to Zavila When Jiang Fei's fleet had completed the first phase transition, Jiang Fei connected to Aurelia. Ah, Fei! What's wrong? What did you find? Aurelia did not know why Jiang Fei would send her a message at this time. Lead the fleet to continue moving towards the target area. Dawn break and I need to leave for a period of time. Jiang Fei said. Where are you going? Asked Aurelia. I am going to the Zevera Galaxy. Said Jiang Fei. Zevera Galaxy? Why are you going there? That is the center of the universe. You should not take such risks at this time. Said Aurelia. I have to go there once. Otherwise, I am not confident said Jiang Fei as he shook his head. Although he had decided from the beginning that the players would split up, he still felt uneasy. Therefore, Jiang Fei needed to bring a double insurance for this operation. Have you really thought about it? Aurelia looked into Jiang Fei's eyes and asked. I have thought about it. Jiang Fei said very seriously. All right then. I will lead the fleet to wait for you at the outer perimeter of the Little Pyrenees Galaxy. Aurelia said. 
She knew that once Jiang Fei had finally made a decision, it would be useless to try to persuade him again. Moreover, she also trusted Jiang Fei's judgment. She knew that he would not do anything useless at this time. Okay, take care on the way, Jiang Fei said to Aurelia. Although Aurelia's ship was a main ship and there were nearly a thousand battleships accompanying her, in this vast universe, there were unknown dangers everywhere. Okay, you too? Aurelia nodded and then cut off the communication with Jiang Fei. Aurelia then led the fleet to continue moving forward. Jiang Fei ordered Lux to fly the Aurora away from the fleet and began to warp towards another beacon. This was not the first time Jiang Fei had visited the Zavera galaxy. The last time he had come, he was brought here by someone else. However, this time, he had come on his own accord. Because of the Aurora, Jiang Fei was no longer afraid of the terrifying energy radiation in the outer region of the Zevera galaxy. Moreover, this time around, Jiang Fei was no longer as weak as before. At this time, Jiang Fei had already reached the level of a hermit. Even without the protection of the Ship of Dawn, he could still survive in the middle and outer regions of the Zavila galaxy. However, if that was the case, Bella and the others would not be able to follow him. Ah, Fei! Why did you come to the Zavila galaxy this time? Nina walked to Jiang Fei's side and asked. To get help! Jiang Fei said. Originally, he had intended to ask for Tyrion's help. However, his teacher had disappeared without a trace. There was no way to contact him. Therefore, Jiang Fei could only look for his other friend. To be honest, Jiang Fei did not know many hermit level friends. Other than Tyrion, there was only one other cosmic beast that had a good relationship with him. The giant steel scorpion. This cosmic beast had given Jiang Fei a great deal of help. If it had not given Jiang Fei a large amount of energy cores, Jiang Fei would not have been able to fuse with three pieces of the will core. Bella and the others would not have been able to obtain those powerful powers either. The reason why Jiang Fei was able to break through to the hermit level so smoothly today was actually because of the giant steel scorpion. It was precisely because of the three pieces of the will's core that his brain had been developed. If his brain had not been developed, Jiang Fei did not know when he would have had the opportunity to break through to the hermit level. Therefore, to Jiang Fei, the giant steel scorpion was undoubtedly a great help to him. From the perspective of the giant steel scorpion, Jiang Fei had helped him to save his child. This was even more of a favor to the cosmic behemoths that were not very fertile. That was even more of a favor. It was precisely because of this relationship that Jiang Fei and the giant steel scorpion had a very good relationship. This time, Jiang Fei had come to the Zavala galaxy in order to get the giant steel scorpion to help him. However, when the ship of dawn entered the Zavera galaxy, Jiang Fei did not notice the existence of the giant steel scorpion at all. Honey, what should we do? Bella asked. Let's go to her lair and take a look. Jiang Fei said after thinking for a moment. Then, the ship of dawn adjusted its course and moved closer to the planet that the giant steel scorpion once occupied. Toot toot toot. Warning! Warning! Starboard side is under attack. Just as the ship was about to approach the giant steel scorpion's nest, the alarm inside the ship rang loudly. Sir, starboard side is under attack. The intensity is medium. Should we immediately counterattack? Larksy asked. No rush. Jiang Fei stopped Larksy. Then, he closed his eyes and began to use his spiritual power to sense his surroundings. As Jiang Fei's spiritual power continued to expand, he quickly found the attacker. It was a small steel giant scorpion. However, its small size was only relative to its adult form. At this time, the small steel giant scorpion was hundreds of kilometers long. Judging from its attack power, this small giant scorpion had at least 15 million combat power. Moreover, its physical body was extremely strong. An expert like Hua Mulan, who had the same combat power as it, would not be able to hurt it at all. This little fellow is growing really fast. Jiang Fei felt a familiar spiritual wave. He immediately recognized that the little giant scorpion was the child of the giant steel scorpion. Swoosh! Jiang Fei teleported to the outside of the Dawnlight ship. At the same time, he used his spiritual power to greet the little giant scorpion. Squeak squeak! The little giant scorpion let out a happy cry. Clearly, it still remembered Jiang Fei. Squeak! Just as the small giant scorpion squeaked happily, the surrounding space suddenly rippled. Thousands of kilometers long steel giant scorpions squeezed out of the subspace. Hee <laughs> hee. Thank God I didn't let Larks fight back. Jiang Fei laughed in his heart. At that moment, he finally understood that the steel giant scorpion was training its children to hunt alone. 
Therefore, it hid in the subspace and waited quietly. In the end, the small giant scorpion had directly targeted the Dawnlight ship. Fortunately, Jiang Fei had stopped Larks at that time. If Larks had immediately fought back after being attacked, the small giant scorpion would not be able to withstand the energy cannons and psionic attacks of the Dawnlight ship. It would also be impossible for the small giant scorpion to withstand the energy cannons and psionic attacks of the Dawnlight ship. Once the small giant scorpion was injured or even dead, would the giant steel scorpion that came out of the subspace be able to avoid Jiang Fei and the others? Although Jiang Fei had a good relationship with the steel scorpion, that was based on the fact that he had saved the small scorpion. If he killed the small scorpion, the steel scorpion would not care if Jiang Fei was injured by accident. When the time came, the steel scorpion would definitely fight him to the death. However, no matter what, this did not happen. Moreover, the mother and son of the steel scorpion clearly remembered Jiang Fei's spiritual fluctuation frequency. Therefore, when they met, they released very friendly spiritual fluctuations toward Jiang Fei. Squeak squeak! The eyes of the giant steel scorpion flashed with a red light. Clearly, she was very surprised at Jiang Fei's growth rate. After all, the last time she saw Jiang Fei, he was only at the level of a food. However, now, Jiang Fei already had the power of a hermit. Chapter 1804 Chapter 1804 Squeak! As the giant steel scorpion let out a cry, Jiang Fei actually understood the other party's intention very clearly. Because Jiang Fei had fused with the three segments of the will's core, Jiang Fei's brain had been developed. Therefore, after receiving the giant steel scorpion's consciousness fluctuation, he quickly analyzed the meaning behind the fluctuation. This way, Jiang Fei could communicate with the giant steel scorpion. He would not only be able to guess, but he would also be able to accurately understand the giant steel scorpion's intentions. This allowed Jiang Fei to communicate with her more easily. Speaking of which, Jiang Fei was actually quite surprised. All of them were powerful beasts. Why could the ferocious beasts of the five directions not only speak, but even transform into human form? However, a powerful cosmic beast like the giant steel scorpion could not even speak. Little one, the last time we parted, you were still so weak. In such a short time, you have actually become so powerful. From the giant steel scorpion's consciousness wave, Jiang Fei quickly understood what she meant. Hee hee, this is all thanks to you. If you had not given me so many cores of will the last time, I would not have been able to reach this level now. When Jiang Fei expressed himself, there was no need to go through so much trouble. Although the giant steel scorpion could not speak, it had no problem understanding what he meant. That's good. What brings you to the Zavala galaxy this time? The giant steel scorpion asked. Actually, I'm here to ask you for help. Jiang Fei did not beat around the bush. He knew that these beast-type powerhouses had one thing in common. They liked to be straightforward. If you were to be around the bush and talk to them, they would instead think that you were scheming. Asking for help? Are you in trouble? The giant steel scorpion asked. Yes, I'm in trouble. The enemy is too strong. My fleet is no match for them. Jiang Fei said honestly. I'm sorry, little guy. Although you once saved my child, I can't help you with this kind of thing. To Jiang Fei's surprise, the giant steel scorpion actually rejected his request. Why? Could it be that you will also be injured in the face of the fleet? Jiang Fei asked. Being injured is actually nothing. However, I do not want to participate in your battle. You so-called intelligent life forms fight against each other all day long. This is very boring, said the giant steel scorpion. In her opinion, other than protecting themselves and their loved ones, the only purpose of killing was to find food. Those so-called intelligent life forms would also attack their own kind when they were not hungry and their loved ones were not threatened. This was something that she could not understand at all. Sigh! Jiang Fei sighed. The words of the giant steel scorpion made him feel a little ashamed. Whether it was the people of Earth in the past or the current mainstream races in the universe, everyone had long passed the era of starting wars for food and clothing. Especially in the great cosmic era, resources were no longer a necessary factor to restrict development. However, the war between the intelligent creatures had never stopped. The two sides that were fighting each other often did not even know what they were fighting for. Perhaps the price they paid with their lives was only the ruler's ambition. Even though the giant scorpions and other universe beasts might not have very high intelligence. They were more simple. Their battles might be more bloody and cruel. But they knew what they were fighting for. Whether it was for food or to protect their young. In the end, it was all for one purpose survival. The war between intelligent life forms was mostly for the desires of a few rulers. 
although Jiang Fei felt a little embarrassed after listening to the Steel Scorpion's explanation. He had called for reinforcements this time. Before he achieved his goal, he could not give up just like that. Otherwise, once the player fleet expanded again, Jiang Fei and his fleet would not be able to withstand it at all. I understand your concern. But this time, we are really not fighting for those boring things. Our purpose in this war is the same as yours. We are fighting for survival, Jiang Fei said. Survival? You have taken up so much space. Is it not enough to survive? The giant steel scorpion asked curiously. It should be enough. However, the invaders have come. They want to destroy our world. Not just the civilized world, but the entire universe. Jiang Fei decided to tell the giant steel scorpion about the players. Actually, Jiang Fei had no choice but to keep this secret. If he were to tell the public about the players and the gamma space, the entire universe's intelligent race would fall into panic. Intelligent life forms were indeed very creative at times. However, because they had intelligence and thought, when they were faced with a desperate situation, many people would become extreme. When the end came and people were powerless to resist, many people would go crazy. What they could not do under the constraints of morality and law, they would die at this time anyway. They no longer had any worries and exposed the evil hidden deep in their hearts. Once this happened, the intelligent beings in the entire universe would probably destroy themselves before the players and the people in the gamma space did anything. However, it was not a problem to tell the giant steel scorpion about this. The beasts themselves were doing things according to their own preferences. They did not have any moral values or laws to restrict them. Therefore, there was no such thing as evil that had been stored in the depths of their hearts for a long time. Moreover, it was not just the giant steel scorpion. Jiang Fei even planned to reveal the players to lust. Tyrion, and the others after this operation. Although such a thing would cause widespread panic and chaos, it was still beneficial for Jiang Fei to only tell a few high-level decision makers. After all, Jiang Fei was not the only one who had to deal with the players. This was the responsibility of the entire universe. If Jiang Fei were to rely on his own strength, he would be too much of a savior. However, Jiang Fei never thought that he had that kind of ability. Everything he did was no different from the steel giant scorpion and the other beasts. All he did was to survive. Now, the people in the gamma space and the players were not giving Jiang Fei and the others a way out. Therefore, Jiang Fei had to fight. He had to beg for a chance to survive. Intruders? What intruders? When the steel giant scorpion heard that these so-called intruders were actually going to destroy the entire universe, it immediately asked, It's like this. Jiang Fei knew that the giant steel scorpion's intelligence could not understand the concept of a player. Therefore, it described the player as a life form from outside the universe. They wanted to occupy the entire universe and destroy everything here. How can this be? How can these outsiders behave atrociously in my territory? No, I can't allow it. The giant steel scorpion panicked when she heard that. Although her intelligence could not understand what Jiang Fei had described as the destruction of the universe. The most unique characteristic of beasts was their territorial awareness. Now that she heard that outsiders had come to her territory to behave atrociously, the giant steel scorpion could not take it anymore. Chapter 1805 Chapter 1805 Insane Players To Jiang Fei's surprise, the giant steel scorpion not only agreed to help him fight against the invaders, but it also wanted to help Jiang Fei find other helpers. To the giant steel scorpion, these players were trespassers. Although the range of the cosmic beasts was limited, in front of outsiders, the entire universe was their territory. They could allow other races in the universe to move around on their own territory. That was because these local races, including the intelligent races, were treated as food by them. Of course, in the eyes of the giant steel scorpion, Jiang Fei was an exception. However, this exception was not because of Jiang Fei's hermit level strength. It was because he had saved the child of the giant steel scorpion. Jiang Fei might be a hermit level master now. However, in the eyes of the giant steel scorpion, even an experienced hermit level master like Tyrion was just a slightly stronger food. Although intelligent creatures were known as the masters of the universe, in terms of absolute strength, the cosmic behemoths were the true rulers. Even an intelligent life form of the hermit level was just a difficult bone to chew in the eyes of the cosmic behemoths. They did not hunt the hermit level intelligent creatures because they found it troublesome. After all, they were so big that they had to hunt for a large amount of food. The intelligent creatures were small in size. Although the energy levels of the hermit level experts were very high, they still could not eat their fill. After all, 
they still could not eat their fill. At this time, those players were considered as outsiders who had invaded the territory of the cosmic behemoths. They would not be tolerated with one eye closed. At this time, the giant steel scorpion planned to contact its own kind. Together, they would drive those intruders out of their own territory. After obtaining the giant steel scorpion's guarantee, Jiang Fei agreed to the rendezvous point with her. Then, he returned to the dawnlight. This time, although the giant steel scorpion had agreed to deal with the players together with him. However, because he had to contact his own kind and settle down the small giant scorpion, he needed some time to prepare. Honey, how did the negotiations with the steel scorpion go? Bella asked as soon as she saw Jiang Fei return. It was better than I expected. Not only did she agree to help us, she will also contact the other steel scorpions. Jiang Fei smiled. Don't tell me that we will have an army of steel scorpions as our allies? Ariel cried out excitedly. The steel scorpion was an extremely powerful cosmic beast. It was much more powerful than a main ship. If there were a large number of steel giant scorpions to help, the player's main ship advantage would be gone. You're thinking too much. Cosmic behemoths are extremely rare. There are even fewer of them among their own kind. An army? I think that she would be lucky if she could find two or three of her own kind. Jiang Fei poured cold water on Ariel. Oh! Ariel nodded in disappointment when she heard this. However, don't be disappointed. These cosmic behemoths are much stronger than a main ship. With their help, we don't have to worry about encountering the player's fleet head-on. Jiang Fei said with a smile. The main ship of the player only had one model. The glorious main ship. Moreover, this main fleet did not have any supporting abilities. They were only strong on their own. As long as they could defeat these main ships. Then, in the upcoming fleet battle, Jiang Fei's fleet would be invincible. Really? That's great. Ariel immediately became happy when she heard this. Sir, where are we going next? At this time, Larks asked. Let's go and meet up with Aurelia and the others. Jiang Fei said. Yes, my lord. Larks immediately adjusted the direction of the ship and activated the Fei's engine. After a few days of interstellar travel, Jiang Fei and the others finally arrived at the Little Pyrenees Galaxy. My lord, we have received a communication request from the Hope's Light. As soon as they entered the Little Pyrenees Galaxy, Jiang Fei and the others received a communication from Aurelia. Patch it in, Jiang Fei ordered. Yes, sir. Larks quickly connected the call. Ah, oh, Fei, you're back? Aurelia asked. Yes. Jiang Fei nodded. How did it go? Aurelia asked. It went very smoothly. Jiang Fei smiled. That's great. Recently, the players have become more and more active. Although I try my best to avoid conflict with them. It's not a good idea to keep going like this. Aurelia said. Send your coordinates over. Well, meet up first. Said Jiang Fei. Okay. Aurelia nodded and sent the coordinates of the fleet over. Very soon. Jiang Fei's ship of dawn break and the fleet had gathered together. Aurelia had also teleported to the ship of dawn break from the light of hope. What have the players been doing recently? Jiang Fei asked immediately after seeing Aurelia. They are no longer limited to the dominant galaxy. Now! The player's fleet has taken the initiative to attack from the right side of the dominant galaxy and destroyed the Yardina civilization that was closest to them. Aurelia said. This Yardina civilization was a small country that was made up of four habitable stars. Their races were diverse, and their strength was not strong. They could not even last a day against the player's invincible fleet. Furthermore, the players had fully demonstrated their brutality to the entire universe. After destroying the Ardena civilization's fleet, the players did not occupy their planet at all. Instead, they directly used their main ships to fire star destroying missiles at the entire four planets. The planetary bombardment lasted for a full five days. Almost all of the billions of people on the four planets had died. The four planets that were originally full of vitality and advanced technology had now turned into scorched earth. The word barren was not exaggerated at all on the four planets. Damn it! After listening to Aurelia's report, Jiang Fei clenched his fists tightly. These players could be described as insane. Billions of innocent lives had been slaughtered by them so easily. These people had no humanity at all. However, Jiang Fei was thinking from his own point of view. If he were to think from the perspective of the players, although they had killed billions of people, they would not feel any burden at all. To them, these people were just NPCs. They were just some data. How could killing them cause the players to feel guilty? However, to Jiang Fei, this was a heinous crime. 
The players were so crazy that it triggered Jiang Fei's resistance. He made up his mind. If he could enter the Gamma space one day, he would make these people pay with blood. Chapter 1806 Chapter 1806 Ambush Where is the player's fleet now? After listening to Aurelia's report, although Jiang Fei was filled with righteous indignation, he forced himself to calm down. Although this group of players were vicious in their actions, they were completely inhumane. However, the enemy was strong and the enemy was weak. If he charged forward now, not only would he not be able to take revenge, he would even ruin the situation. As you expected, their fleet has already started to split up. However, they have only split up into two groups. One group is wandering around the periphery of the Dominic Galaxy, while the other group is active in the Little Pyrenees Galaxy. The Opus Galaxy, if we choose one of them to fight head-on, although I am confident in defeating the enemy, our losses will be very heavy, said Aurelia. There's no rush. Jiang Fei waved his hand. He did not want to see a direct confrontation. After all, the attributes of players were too ridiculous. Such a method of killing the enemy would not only fail to weaken them. Instead, it would provide them with experience points and money, allowing them to buy stronger warships. All right, it'll continue to monitor these two fleets. Aurelia nodded. She actually did not want to fight head-on with the player fleets. After all, if that was the case, the strength of both sides would be almost the same. If they were to fight, her fleets would also suffer heavy losses. In the blink of an eye, another week had passed. The player fleets continued to wreak havoc in the starry sky. The players of the Dominic Galaxy did not discover anything. However, the player fleets of the Little Pyrenees Galaxy had once again destroyed a small civilization. Just like before. This time, the player fleet still carried out a heinous massacre of this small civilization. The lives of two planets were devastated. After the massacre, these players received a large amount of experience points and monetary rewards. Before the benefits, the hearts of the people began to waver. Those players who did not get much experience points and money began to be dissatisfied. The uneven distribution of the loot was an important reason for the guild to disband. When Jiang Fei was playing the game, he often encountered such a situation. Many large guilds were even large in size. However, due to the uneven distribution of the loot, a portion of the guild officials left and took away a large number of members. At this moment, the players were facing the same situation. Although it was not to the extent of splitting up Amon's guild, the fleet was inevitably divided. Fadwa, what do you mean? Why are your people the ones bombing the planet? My people didn't get much experience at all. I discovered this civilization. So what if my people get more benefits? If you have the ability, find an NPC's stronghold. All right. It'll be commanding the fleet from now on. See if I can find a good place to grind monsters. Humph. You're in charge. Don't forget who's the leader. I'm in charge of this fleet. F asterisk CK. What do you mean? If the fleet doesn't listen to my command, how am I supposed to find NPCs? Who cares if you die? All right. All right. All right. You can do it. I won't play with you anymore. I don't care if you play or not. I won't have any more of you. And I won't have any less of you. It's just farming monsters. There's no need for your people at all. You'd better get lost. And don't share the experience with me. Just you wait. Let's go. That afternoon, the player fleet of the Little Pyrenees star system split into two. Two-thirds of them stayed where they were while the other one-third chose to leave. Ah, Fay, There's movement from the players. Aurelia, who had been monitoring the player fleet, immediately sent a message to Jiang Fei. Tell me the size of the fleets that have left. Jiang Fei's eyes immediately lit up. Okay. Soon, Aurelia shared all the information she had on Dawnlight. According to the information sent by the Lone Star class unmanned reconnaissance ship, the small fleet that had left included one main ship, the Radiant Main Battleship, and 54 heavy cruiser class destroyer ships. There were 30 auxiliary cruisers, 60 to 70 frigate class believer ships, and enlightenment ships in total. This fleet is still a little big. Jiang Fei frowned. Although this was already a split fleet, Jiang Fei's fleet would have to pay a great price to eat it. In such a battle with players, the last thing Jiang Fei wanted was to exhaust each other. Yes. Why don't we wait a little longer? Perhaps they will split up again, Bella said. Not in the short term. Jiang Fei shook his head. Although splitting up like this would weaken the strength of each fleet, it would still allow the new fleet to maintain unity for a short period of time. 
This was because whether it was the players who had left or the players who stayed behind, if they were not strong enough with their leader, they would definitely choose another path. What do we do? Do we fight them head on? Ariel asked. Of course not. Although they will not take the initiative to split up. We can help them. Aurelia laughed. Help them? Ariel did not have any military talent, so she could not understand Aurelia's thoughts. You mean bait? Jiang Fei's eyes lit up. That's right. Based on the greed of these players, as long as our bait runs separately, they will definitely split up and chase after us, Aurelia said with certainty. But aren't these people who are used as bait too dangerous? Nina asked. Let the grizzly bear, who is the most resistant, carry out this kind of mission. As a heavy cruiser, its value is high enough to attract the interest of the players. Moreover, with the addition of the Annihilator Quantum Thruster Engine, their ability to escape has been greatly enhanced. Even if they are chased by a large number of enemies, there is not much risk, Aurelia said. However, there was still something that she had not said. There was no such thing as a war without death, as long as they could wipe out a large number of enemies. Losing a little bait was nothing? All right, it'll do as you say. Jian Fei nodded. He knew what Aurelia meant. Moreover, after experiencing so much, Jian Fei had already deeply understood the principle that Mercy did not control the army. Although he knew that the grizzly bears that were used as bait might have a slim chance of survival. However, in order to weaken the player as power, it was worth the sacrifice. Soon, Jian Fei's fleet, which was still lurking, began to set sail. They had roughly calculated the route according to the direction of the player fleet that left the fleet. Now, they had to directly warp to the front and ambush them. When the warp was completed, Jiang Fei and the others had already appeared in the Dalver Galaxy of the Little Pyrenees Galaxy, according to the direction of the previous player fleet. The fleets that had left were searching their way here. Aurelia, have you decided on the bait? Jiang Fei asked. Yes. Aurelia then sent the name list to Jiang Fei. Chapter 1807, Chapter 1807 Practice Sigh! Jiang Fei sighed, on the list that Aurelia had provided him. The captains of the grizzly bears were all young and promising fellows. Although being a bait could be said to be a narrow escape, it was not a job that anyone could do. First of all, the person who was the bait had to have the courage to run the moment he saw the other party. He had to keep a safe distance from the other party. That person knew at a glance that he could not catch up so he naturally did not have the intention to chase after them. He had to give the other party hope. But he could not let the other party kill him. This distance was not so easy to grasp. It could be said that he was dancing on the edge of a knife. If he was slightly careless, then he would pay the price of his life. Moreover, it was not just him, but also the officers and soldiers on the entire battleship. Therefore, those bare-brained captains could not be used because they were useless at such a critical moment. They had to be courageous calm, and skilled. There were not many such captains even under Jiang Fei's command. This time, Aurelia had selected more than 30 people. It could be said that they were the best of the best. Once these young captains were dead, Jiang Fei's command level of the fleet would instantly drop by another level. That was because all that was left was a group of bare-brained captains commanding. After taking a deep breath, Jiang Fei finally made up his mind. Although these captains were very precious, there was a saying that one could not bear to lose a child but not a wolf. One could not bear to lose a wife and not catch a hoodlum. Therefore, in order to effectively wipe out the player fleet, Jiang Fei had made a great decision this time. Not long after, the 30 young captains gathered on Jiang Fei's dawnlight. Everyone, I really do not wish to see you at this time. Jiang Fei's first sentence stunned the young captains. Congratulations, all of you have been promoted by one level. Jiang Fei continued to say. Ah? Uh? The young captains were even more dumbfounded now. Why did he give them a promotion for no reason? After all, although they had arrived at the front line, they had not even fired a shot yet. However, these captains were all elites after all. When they heard Jiang Fei's words, many of them immediately turned serious. Before the war, promotions were usually forced to send themselves to their deaths. Sigh! It seems that you have guessed it! Jiang Fei sighed again. From the faces of these young people, he knew that they had already guessed what was going to happen. Sir, you don't have to say any more. We are soldiers, and soldiers are supposed to obey orders. Even if it's a suicide mission, we will still carry it out resolutely, a young captain said as he looked straight into Jiang Fei's eyes. Although his expression was cold, there was no fear in his eyes. Aurelia really knows people well. These young men are all good. 
Jiang Fei nodded in his heart. Sir, please give the order, another young captain said. No rush. There are some things that I have thought about for a long time. Now, I have decided to tell you. Jiang Fei could not bear to let these people die for no reason. So he decided to tell them the truth. On one hand, it could motivate them to take revenge. On the other hand, it was out of sympathy for the people who were about to die. Dot! The young captains did not say anything. All of them looked at Jiang Fei quietly, waiting for him to continue. The thing is, the enemy that we are facing does not actually come from our universe. Although Jiang Fei did not mention the concept of a game, he did tell them about the alien invaders. After all, after he told them about the game, it would be difficult to explain it clearly. Secondly, Jiang Fei was also afraid that these people would fall into despair. After all, these living people were just a bunch of playthings in the eyes of others. They were just a bunch of code. In the face of the enemy's slaughter, there was no way for him to resist. Eventually, he would definitely end up dying. No matter who he told, it would be difficult for anyone to accept this in a short period of time. What? Destroy the entire universe? Damn it! This bunch of detestable people. Before Jiang Fei could finish his words, the young captains were all excited. Although they did not know where these invaders came from, in everyone's eyes, they naturally treated the players as their own kind. Although everyone was at war, the war between the intelligent races had never stopped. Therefore, everyone fought every day. It was not strange at all. However, when they heard that these people were not creatures from this universe, but foreign intruders, and that their goal was to destroy the entire universe, it immediately aroused everyone's determination to resist. Some people fought for money, while others fought for honor. However, these people were not as desperate as those who fought for survival, especially those who fought for the survival rights of their own race. Therefore, these young captains were united against a common enemy, especially after Jiang Fei showed the images captured by the Lonely Star Scout ship. When these young captains saw the players destroying the planets one by one, after slaughtering billions of innocent civilians, their eyes turned red. Sir, you don't have to say any more. Even if it's a suicide attack, we will do it. A young captain shouted in a hoarse voice. Jiang Fei still had some impression of this person because in the previous battle, he had performed exceptionally valiantly. Jiang Fei remembered that his name was Spot. It's not that exaggerated. Your mission this time is to lure the enemy in. Jiang Fei then explained the details of the mission to the captains. Sir, do you mean that we will split up every time we run a certain distance and lure them to chase after us? Spot asked. That's right. Jiang Fei nodded. What if they don't split up? A young captain asked. That depends on whether your acting is realistic enough. Jiang Fei said as he looked straight into the eyes of the captains. Sir, we understand. The captains nodded. The so-called realism was nothing more than giving the enemy some benefits. The so-called benefits were their battleships and their lives. Everyone, thank you for your hard work. Have a safe journey. Jiang Fei bowed deeply to the captains. That was all he could do now. Swoosh. The young captains gave Jiang Fei a military salute at the same time. Then, they turned around and left the Aurora. After returning to their own battleships, the 30 grizzly bears left the entire fleet and began to form a flying formation alone. Then, they flew toward the Orpheus galaxy. Aurelia, it'll leave the rest of the operations to you. After Jiang Fei said that, he left the bridge of the Aurora. Everyone, including Bella, thought that Jiang Fei had gone back to his room to rest because he was in a bad mood. However, Jiang Fei quietly went to the Aurora's teleportation room. Chapter 1808 Chapter 1808 A Small Gift On the afternoon of the third day after leaving the fleet, the 30 Grizzly-class heavy cruisers that had been ordered to lure the enemy arrived at the Orpheus Starfield. As soon as they approached the Starfield, a large number of red dots appeared on their ship's radar. Needless to say, the unknown fleet represented by these red dots must be the player fleet that had left. And at this moment, the player fleet had obviously discovered the presence of these grizzly bears. Boss, there's a situation. What's going on? There's a bunch of NPCs here. Oh, how many are there? 30 heavy patrols. That's great. What good luck. Just after we got rid of that guy, we've encountered a bunch of fat sheep. Boss, what do we do? What do we do? My ass. Chase after them. Following the command of the captain. 150-60 player warships. We're like hungry wolves that had seen a flock of sheep. They pounced on them crazily. Spot. The enemy has found us. 
a young captain shouted in the communication channel. Based on his heroic performance last time, Spot became the temporary commander of this team to lure the enemy. Don't rush. Let them chase closer. Although Spot's tone was calm, beads of sweat formed on his forehead. After all, they were facing an enemy that was several times stronger than them. And the enemy had a powerful main ship. If they made a mistake, they would be doomed on the spot. Okay. It's almost time. The fleet is starting to turn. Spotter saw that the enemy had less than 20 light seconds left. So he ordered the fleet to turn. As a heavy cruiser, Grizzly was definitely not an agile warship. So it took a lot of time to turn. Boss! They found us! What kind of lousy radar is that? They only found us after such a long time. That's not good. If they had found us earlier, wouldn't they have run away already? That's true. Ignore them and move forward at full speed. We definitely can't give them a chance to warp. Yes. Boss, don't worry. All of a sudden, the player fleet suddenly accelerated and instantly closed the distance between them and Spot's fleet by five to six light seconds. Warning! Warning! This ship has been locked onto by the fire control radar. Almost at the same time, the alarms in the bridge of the 30 grizzly bears sounded loudly. Although the player's warships had not yet entered the shooting range, they had already locked onto Spot's fleet. In their eyes, these heavy patrols had become food on the table. Spotter, the fleet has completed its turn. Are we starting to retreat? A captain asked. Although he knew that this mission was a narrow escape, he still clenched his fists tightly at this moment. From this, it could be seen that this young captain was extremely nervous. There's no rush. Everyone, leave the gifts first. Although Spotter was also extremely nervous in his heart. After all, his current order represented the life and death of the entire fleet. He forced himself to calm down. At least on the surface. He looked as stable as Mount Tai. Yes. Sure enough. Spot's calm expression infected the other captains. And everyone quickly calmed down. Roll. At the same time. Some spherical devices rolled out from the stern of the 30 grizzly bears. After these things left the hull. They automatically ignited. And then pushed forward for a short distance. Very soon. Behind the 30 grizzly bears. There were about a few hundred spherical devices spread out. These spherical devices scattered in the starry sky, covering a radius of about five light seconds. Gravity mine. This was a gift from Jiang Fei to Spotter and the others before they left. Although it was a near-death mission, Jiang Fei could not let them die in vain. At the very least, he had to let them drag a few players along with them before they died. These gravitational space mines were extremely small. They were only about five meters in diameter. This was completely negligible in the vast universe. Even the ship's radar would ignore their existence. This was because these cosmic dust-grade things covered the entire universe. If they were detected by these things and called the police, the people in the battleship would be annoyed to death. Whoosh 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 whoosh. Just as the grizzlies finished laying their minds, a few scattered light cannons had already hit them. Although the distance was very far, causing the player battleships to have extremely poor accuracy. However, it still caused a few grizzlies to be slightly injured. One had to know that this battle was different from the past. In the past, the Grizzlies had always been accompanied by Stargrave Nanny ships. After they were injured, they would be repaired at any time. No one would care about such minor injuries. However, this time was different. In order to maintain Grizzly Bear's speed advantage, Spot's fleet did not have a Starship-class healer accompanying them. This resulted in a situation where once a warship was injured, it could not be repaired. All right, it's about time. Retreat at a uniform speed and increase your speed slowly. This was Spot's first order. Hence, he did not dare to get too close to the player warship for fear of making a mistake. Hence, when the player fleet was about to reach a safe distance, he gave the order to start retreating. Boss, they're running. When he saw that Spot and the others were about to leave, the players were very anxious. They had left the main force for the sake of gaining a little more experience and money. If they let Spot's fleet escape now, wouldn't they be wasting their efforts? They can't escape. Advance at full speed. This player leader was still quite confident. Although the small fleet in front had already completed their turn, they were all heavy patrols, and it would take some time for them to accelerate. On the other hand, they were already moving at full speed, and it would not be long before they could catch up to them. Spot received a clear code communication from the enemy. Just as Spot's fleet started to retreat, a communication from the player fleet made these young captains somewhat confused. Patch it in! Spot ordered. Listen up. 
Fleet in front. I order you to surrender immediately, or you will be killed. Spot and the others did not expect the communication message to be from the player. However, both sides understood that the player was only trying to stall for time. It would be best if they took the message seriously. Even if they ignored it, there would be no loss. Screw them! Potter sneered. He had never thought of surrendering. Even if a bear wanted to surrender, as long as he had a brain. He knew that a guy who could massacre an entire planet was not trustworthy. Boss, the vanguard is already in range. At this time, the players that were closest to the front had already brought Spotter's fleet into the firing range. Fire freely. At this time, the player leader gave an order to the people of the Spotter's fleet. This was because he gave the order to fire freely instead of focusing fire. In this way, even if they were bombarded, everyone in Spotter's squadron might be injured. But there wouldn't be any warship sinking. Chapter 1809 Chapter 1809 The First Victim Whoosh! 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 A terrifying energy beam came like a torrential rain. Even the grizzly bears with strong defense were beaten black and blue. Under the intensive bombardment of the players, the outer SH, L of the grizzly bear's armor was severely damaged. Even the interior of the ship shook violently from the explosion. Spot! Enough acting? If we don't leave now, we won't be able to leave! A young captain roared. His grizzly bears were already damaged by more than 30%. The armor SH. LS at the rear were even more unbearable. If they did not leave now, the engine might be hit. Activate the Annihilator Quantum Assault Engine! Let's go! Spot also knew that it was about time. If they did not leave now, they might not be able to leave. Boom! Almost at the same time, all of the Grizzly Bears Annihilator's advanced engines were ignited. The 30 Grizzly Bears suddenly accelerated to sublight speed, instantly pulling away from the player fleet behind them. We are about to leave the enemy's firing range! The safety report from the onboard computer made almost all the captains let out a sigh of relief. However, at this moment, with a bang, a Grizzly Bear was hit by an energy cannon. Schwa! In an instant, the Grizzly Bear's speed decreased. Its Annihilator engine was injured. Syed! A young captain shouted. He and Syed had a good personal relationship. The two of them were very good friends. Now that he saw that Syed's Annihilator engine had malfunctioned, it could be said that his heart felt like it was being cut by a knife. At this moment, everyone understood what the consequences were without the Annihilator engine. It was impossible to escape the enemy's pursuit with just the conventional engine alone. Syed had already been sentenced to death. Captain, you guys go first. Say sorry to Lisa for me. And say that I can't keep my promise to accompany her on vacation. Syed's tone was calm. Although death was worth fearing. When death was right in front of him. Then a true warrior would face death with ease. Take care. Spot did not say much. Although Stuart left first. How many of them who carried out the bait mission could survive until the end? Therefore, they had the time to sigh here. They might as well work hard to complete their own mission. That way, the death of their companions would be more valuable. Stuart, you go first. Your brother will be there soon. Stuart's friend's eyes were filled with tears. However, the sublight speed engine was extremely fast. It did not take long before they were out of interstellar coordinates. It was beyond the range of normal communication. Seeing that his comrades had already retreated, Stuart smiled at the soldiers beside him. Our annihilator's engine is broken, so we are destined to be the first bait. However, even if it is bait, we have to drag a few of them down with us. Right. Dot. There was silence. Almost all of Stuart's crew were clone warriors. Although they had been taught the skills to control the spaceship, their emotions were very indifferent. Even in the face of death, there were not many psychological fluctuations. All right. I know that all of you are not afraid of death. Perhaps death is actually a kind of relief for all of you. Stuart smiled slightly. Then, he gave an order. Without the Annihilator, I don't think we will have the chance to have a few rounds with the enemy. So, before we die, let's unload all the presents. Following the order of Sart, the tail cabin of the grizzly bear opened. Dozens of gravitational air mines were released. After these air mines left the hull, they automatically activated and scattered into the nearby starry sky. Not long after these air mines were dispersed, a large amount of energy beams were concentrated on Stuart's ship. Boom! Boom, boom, boom! A series of blows caused Stuart's grizzly bear to quickly become heavily injured and on fire. Sir, the ship is about to explode. Please quickly enter the lifeboat. A clone soldier said to Stuart. No need. Why are you struggling on the brink of death? 
How can these demons leave anyone alive? I still don't want to be provoked by that. Stuart shook his head. He sat in his captain's seat and looked at the golden pendant in his hand with a deep expression. On the pendant was a photo of Lisa. Boom! Stuart's grizzly class heavy cruiser exploded and burned in the intense light. The entire hull of the cruiser was split into countless pieces. Together with the crew on it, they were all turned into space dust. Boss, those guys ran out of our shooting range. Oh, there's only one left. They've been killed. Their experience is still not bad. The heavy patrol is indeed different. Have the others gone far? No. Their acceleration engine seemed to only be activated for a short period of time. Now, their speed has decreased again. All right, give chase. Under the command of the commander, the players gave chase with all their might. Very soon, they entered the first minefield. The gravity mine was very small, and it was very difficult to detect it in space. Therefore, these players practically dug into it. Beep! Beep! A gravity mine was triggered. Its acceleration engine that had been turned off immediately activated. Then, it suddenly crashed into a frigate beside it. Boom! With a loud bang, the gravity mine automatically detonated when it approached the frigate. After all, the players were flying in formation, especially the frigate-level small ships. The formation was even denser. Therefore, when the gravity mine exploded, it did not just kill one frigate, but seven. F asterisk CK. What the H, L. Commander, I'm dead. I'm dead too. How did he die? I don't know. Although the players could still communicate with their companions through the party channel after they died, these guys had really died unjustly. They did not even know how they died. Forget it. Keep chasing. This commander did not seem to realize the seriousness of the problem. After all, they were only a group of players. Military literacy was too demanding for them. Boom, 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 boom. One after another, the gravity mines exploded. Soon, more than 10 frigates of the player's fleet were destroyed, and 7 or 8 cruisers were injured. Damn it! We've entered a minefield! At this moment, no matter how stupid the players were, they understood what was going on. However, the problem was that they had already entered a minefield, and they did not have a specialized ship to clear the mines. As a result, they were stuck in a dilemma. F asterisk CK! Those heavy patrol ships are not specialized mine-laying ships. I don't believe that they can carry so many empty mines. Destroy warrior spaceship. Go to the front. Holy elephant spaceship. Follow behind and replenish our shields. Let's rush over. In order to chase after the enemies in front. The commander of the team had to. For the sake of the experience and money. His eyes were already red. He did not care about the empty mines at all. He was determined to rush over. All right. The other players were naturally not afraid of death. After all, it was only a game. They would not die. The battleships were still the property of the guild. Now that the commander had given the order, what else did they have to worry about? Chapter 1810 Chapter 1810 Escape wasn't my style. After adjusting the formation, the player fleet plunged into the minefield. Boom, 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 boom. The gravitational space thunder was continuously activated, and then it charged towards the player battleship and detonated. That's awesome. A player, piloting the destroyer spaceship, exclaimed excitedly. Because he was driving a heavy patrol. He had an extremely powerful shield. Therefore, the explosion of one or two gravity mines was not enough to cause him too much damage. Although the value of the shield had been greatly reduced. The holy elephant spaceship that followed behind was not given for free. They were constantly replenishing the energy of the shield for the destroyer spaceship that acted as a meat shield in front. Just like that. The player fleet broke through the minefield in one go amidst the rumbling explosions. Although two frigates were accidentally destroyed by the scattered gravity mines along the way. The other player warship still passed through the minefield smoothly. F asterisk CK. After being delayed for so long, those NPCs won't run away. Right? The commander asked. No. Boss, their acceleration engine just now seems to have consumed a lot of energy. Now, their speed has already decreased. In about an hour, we will be able to bring them back into range. A player shouted excitedly. Then what are you waiting for? Chase them. Following the order of the captain, the entire player fleet seemed to have been injected with stimulants as they crazily chased after Spotter's fleet. Captain, they are catching up. A young captain shouted in the communication channel. In. I got it. Spotter nodded and then said to the other captains. 
021 and 022 ships. Leave the fleet and retreat towards the Z4 direction. Understood. Understood. After the two captains received the order, they immediately separated from the fleet. They were the candidates for the first time. If they could attract a small fleet, then they would lure them into the encirclement. If there were too many enemies chasing them, then they would have to think of a way to shake off the enemies, or they would have to fend for themselves. Soon, the two grizzly bears left the fleet and slightly reduced their speed, flying in another direction. Captain, there are two warships in front leaving the fleet, and their speed seems to be slower than the other warships. Humph! Their engines must have been damaged by the artillery just now, and they can't run fast now. Boss, what should we do? They have split up. Which one should we chase? Well, the captain hesitated for a moment, then muttered to himself, Abandon the pawn to protect the cart? Forget it. Let's ignore them, and continue to chase after the enemy's main force. In the end, the leader did not fall for the trap. He completely ignored the two grizzly bears that were slowing down, and only continued to bite on the main force of Spot's fleet. Boss, this is bad. The good-for-nothing is leading his team to chase after the two spaceships. However, at this moment, a player suddenly shouted loudly, Aw? The leader was slightly stunned. Then he picked up the communication with the good-for-nothing. What's wrong with you? Kid, can you listen to the command? Captain, what you said is wrong. We all follow you. But you're too biased. Just say that the warship that destroyed it was your direct line of descent. And we didn't gain any experience. Now that the two ships are injured and can't run fast, you don't want us to chase after them. Do you want to leave them for your people? The player, called the useless guy said in a weird tone. You? The regiment commander was speechless. Back then, he had split up with the main fleet because of the unequal distribution of the spoils. He did not expect the debt to be repaid so quickly. It had just been a while. His own little brother was also playing the same trick with him. Regiment commander, I won't fight with you. Nor will I fight with you. I don't want the experience and money of the main fleet. Why don't you give these two ships to me? Although the regiment commander was asking for his opinion. However, he and his team didn't slow down at all. They directly chased after the two grizzly bears and quickly left their fleet. Bastards! The commander cursed angrily. However, there was nothing he could do. After all, they were just a group of players and not a real army. It was impossible for them to follow orders. Therefore, if his underlings didn't listen to him, there was nothing he could do. Very quickly, the useless team chased after the 021 and 022 grizzly bears, while the captain led the main fleet to follow closely behind Spot's fleet. Brother, should we bring these ships behind us into the encirclement? The captain of 021 asked. There are a total of nine ships, and only two of them are heavy patrols. If we bring them back, I'm afraid it won't be enough to fill the gaps between our teeth. Right. The captain of 022 said. Then what are your plans? The eyes of the captain of 021 lit up. Escaping is not my style. The captain of 022 laughed. How do we do it specifically? There are supply ships following behind them. We definitely can't do it by force. The captain of 021 said. Of course we can't do it by force. Look at the star map. There is an asteroid belt 45 light seconds ahead. That is the perfect spot for an ambush. The captain of 022 said. Okay, how do we play this? The captain of 021 asked. Do you still remember the C5 strategy we communicated at school? The captain of 022 said. Of course. Didn't we get first place in the whole grade that time? The captain of 021 said proudly. That one. The captain of 022 said. Okay. The captain of 021 nodded. The two grizzly bears immediately flew toward the asteroid belt. Second brother, those two broken ships are flying towards the asteroid belt. At the same time, the useless fleet also noticed the movement of the two grizzly bears. Hee <laughs> hee, you want to escape from US by using the asteroid belt? No way. Chase them. The useless man did not waste his name at all. He was dressed in formal attire and did not have any military common sense. When he saw the enemy escape into the asteroid belt, he actually did not make any preparations and just stupidly chased after them. About 20 minutes later, two grizzly bears entered the asteroid belt. Because of the obstruction of the asteroid, their battleship signal disappeared from the useless man's radar screen. Second brother, we can't find them. What should we do? One of his underlings asked. It's okay. This asteroid belt isn't big. They can't hide it at all. Search for them. The useless man ordered. Soon, the nine 
player warships, also entered the asteroid belt unprepared, because the previous battle was too smooth. These, players, didn't take the two grizzly bears in front of them seriously at all. Therefore, they didn't think that they would be attacked here. Boom! With a loud sound, a gravitational thunder was detonated, and the good-for-nothing ship was injured. F asterisk CK! You scared me! San air! Come over and replenish my shield. The loser immediately ordered his only holy elephant ship to come over and replenish his shield. Chapter 1811 Chapter 1811 Triumphant Return The good-for-nothing stopped his battleship and asked the holy elephant spaceship to replenish his shield. However, it was this order that started the prelude to the destruction of his fleet. These idiots are really cooperative. The captain of 021 laughed involuntarily. I could tell from the beginning when they were being chased. These guys are a bunch of clueless guys. They don't have any space combat experience at all. They relied on the strength of their fleet to win a few battles. If they were evenly matched. I think those third-rate military academy students would be able to crush them. The captain of 022 laughed. When do we make our move? The captain of 021 asked. Now. The captain of 022 laughed loudly. And then, he suddenly started the annihilator charge engine. F asterisk CK. You can't do that. The captain of 021 also laughed and started the Annihilator engine. Two Grizzly-class heavy cruisers suddenly rushed out from the back of a few asteroids and instantly closed in on the useless ship and the Holy Elephant ship. It tore the Elephant ship apart in an instant because it was replenishing the shield of the cowardly ship. The elephant ship's own engines were turned off. So when it was attacked, it didn't even have the ability to dodge. In addition, the auxiliary cruiser did not have strong armor. Therefore, when the two clothes and grizzly bears were at full power, the holy elephant ship did not even last two minutes before it was torn into pieces by the steel torrent. F asterisk CK. After the attack, the useless man's mind went blank. He was just an ordinary person in the gamma space. Therefore, even though he knew that he would not die, he still panicked in this immersive feeling. It was like watching a 3D movie, even though he knew that he was just a spectator. When arrows or rocks flew towards him, many people would still subconsciously dodge or even scream. Similarly, although these players knew that they were playing a game, they couldn't react in time when they saw the battleships beside them explode and their spaceships were heavily damaged. Their mental fortitude wasn't good. The good for nothing was such a person. F asterisk CK, come and help me. I've been beaten up. The good-for-nothing, who understood the situation, immediately asked his companions for help. However, at this time, his destruction warrior spaceship was also covered in wounds. Boom. Before the other spaceships could get close, the good-for-nothing spaceship was destroyed by the two grizzly bears. Although the panic good-for-nothing ordered a counterattack, because the two grizzly bears were on his two wings, they avoided the main cannons in the front. Therefore, his last-ditch counterattack did not cause too much damage to the two grizzly bears. Let's get out of here. The captain of 021 shouted after killing the useless spaceships. Okay. The captain of 022 smiled. The two spaceships immediately circled the asteroids around them and started to play hide and seek with the other player battleships. Although the two grizzly bears had relied on a sudden attack to destroy the two player battleships, there were still seven player battleships. Eyeing them covetously, Furthermore, these warships included a heavy patrol level destroyer and three powerful and lightning spaceships. Chase after them! Kill these damn NPCs! After the loser died, the other destroyer immediately became the new fleet commander. Okay! The other, player warships, immediately went up. How is it? Are they coming? The captain of 021 asked. They are following closely. These guys are very obedient. The captain of 022 laughed. Boom! With a loud sound. Another gravitational mine was triggered. The leading destroyer was blown to a halt on the spot. Moreover, the shield was violently agitated. Although it was not broken, it was almost exhausted. However, compared to this destroyer, the Believer spaceship beside it was even worse. This small frigate was directly killed. There are six left. Let's continue. The captain of 022 smiled slightly and then piloted his warship to continue playing hide and seek with the pursuers behind him in the asteroid belt. I see him. Lock on to him. After more than 10 minutes, the three enlightening spaceships found the stern of 022 and quickly locked onto it. 
Let's see where you can run to this time. The destroyer spaceships immediately turned around, wanting to surround 022 and block its escape route so that the three enlightening spaceships at the back had enough time to attack. However, at this moment, Grizzly Class Heavy Cruiser 021 suddenly came out from the back of an asteroid and directly pierced through the three enlightening spaceships. Tut! 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 Before the three enlightening spaceships could fire, 021's automatic cannons began to spit fire. Boom! 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 In the blink of an eye, the three enlightening spaceships were destroyed. After all, they were only frigate class small ships. Although their firepower was powerful, their defense was too weak. In front of the close range grizzly bear, they could not even withstand a single blow. F asterisk CK! The player that was piloting the destruction warrior spaceship cursed. At this moment, no matter how stupid he was, he knew that he had been tricked. However, once the three Enlightenment spaceships were destroyed, there were only two Believer spaceships left by his side. At this moment, even though the two Grizzly Bears were both injured, the two heavy cruisers had the advantage when facing one heavy cruiser and two frigates. After all, the light cruiser and the heavy cruiser were not on the same level. The difference in size was no less than ten times. And their defense and firepower were incomparable. Come on! It's time to reap the harvest! The captain of 022 shouted excitedly. The battle had already been decided. Fifteen minutes later, the last destroyer and the two light cruisers beside it were all destroyed. Although the two grizzlies were also covered in injuries, they could still rely on the damaged hull. Taking down two heavy cruisers, one support light cruiser, and six frigates that were more powerful than them was already an exceptionally glorious victory. What should we do next? The captain of 021 asked. Let's return to the group. The captain of 022 said after thinking for a moment. Although they had taken down the pursuers, if they returned to spot now, it would inevitably arouse the enemy's suspicion. Therefore, it was best to return to the main force now. Moreover, their ship was also seriously damaged. If they did not urgently repair it, they might not be able to participate in the battle anymore. When these two grizzly bears triumphantly returned, they did not know that Spot and the others were in danger. Chapter 1812, Chapter 1812, Critical Moment. Just as the 021 and 022 ships successfully returned and gathered with the main forces of Aurelia, Spot and the others fell into a crisis. Captain, what should we do? We can't escape! A young captain called out. He was not afraid of death. After all, ever since they accepted the mission, these young captains had no intention of returning alive. However, the problem he was most worried about now was that if they all died here, then who else could lure the enemy into the encirclement? Everyone, don't panic. There will be a way. Spotter forced himself to remain calm. He had never expected that his people would be blocked in the middle by two waves of enemy troops. Previously, the player fleet had split up due to the unequal distribution of loot. Spotter and the others had been ordered to lure the smaller player fleet, hoping that they could split up again. However, before Spotter and the others could lure these guys to split up, another wave of player fleets appeared on their escape route, being discovered by two waves of player fleets at the same time. Spotter and the others immediately fell into danger. There were pursuers behind them, and there were people blocking them in front. No matter which route they took, none of them could be dealt with by Spotter and the others' fleets. Captain, we can't escape anymore. Let's fight it out. We can exchange for as many as we can. After all, they were all hot-blooded youths. Seeing that they had no way out, these young captains could not help but show their ruthlessness. Stop fooling around. How are we going to fight? The other side has two main ships. Are we going to send ourselves to our deaths? Spotter stopped his subordinates from acting rashly. But captain, if we delay any longer, they will finish surrounding us. A young captain shouted. At this moment, two player fleets had already surrounded them under the leadership of the two main ships. Just as Spot and the others were at their wit's end. The players on this side were also arguing non-stop. Bodwa, what the F asterisk CK do you mean? These monsters are ours. Hee <laughs> hee. Comus, if you say they are yours, then so be it. Is your name written on the heads of these monsters? Bodwa, don't go too far. What? If you are not convinced, let's have a spar first. You? Comus was so angry that he could not speak. Back then, it was because of the unequal distribution of the spoils that he left the fleet and left with his own people. He did not expect that enemies would have such narrow paths. He had finally encountered a small fleet that was rich in experience. Yet, this fellow, 
Badwa, had blocked his path once again. Although Comus's fleet also had a main fleet, its scale was much smaller than Bajua's fleet. The number of warships and combat power of the fleet was only around half of Bajua's fleet. After all, Badwa was the real commander of the fleet. Hence, at that time, more players had chosen to stay behind rather than leave with him. If you don't have the guts, then cut the crap. Whoever gets it will get it. Badwa laughed coldly. Although his fleet was larger, he did not dare to act rashly. After all, this fleet was provided by the guild. To put it bluntly, there was still Aemon above them. Hence, even if Comus and Bodwa did not fight, they could not fight with real weapons. Otherwise, Aemon would not spare them. Humph! Comus was helpless. He did not dare to fight. And he could not beat Bodwa either. Hence, although he was furious, he could only accept this solution. At this moment, be it Bajua's fleet or Comus' fleet, they had already taken Potter and the others for granted. After all, both sides had their main ships. Moreover, both sides had several times more warships than Potter, so they were not worried that these NPC warships would cause any trouble. Just as the two player fleets were about to wrap up Potter and the others, Potter had no choice but to forcefully break out of the encirclement. Brothers, let's break out of the encirclement at 7 o'clock. Ships 032 and 037, stay behind with me. The rest of you, try your best to escape. As for whether or not you can escape, you can count on your own luck, Potter said. Captain, why don't I stay behind you? My ship is badly damaged. I definitely can't escape, said a young captain. Cut the crap. As the captain, how can I watch you die before me? Shouted Spot. He was already very sad and blamed himself for the death of Spot. This time, he would definitely not let anyone else stay behind him. At this moment, the so-called holding the fort was simply courting death. He would use his own death to buy some time for his teammates and give them a chance to survive. Captain! Don't worry. We will definitely complete the mission. The other young captains knew that this was not the time to waste time. If everyone were to act like they were in a movie and shout that they wanted to die together, then none of them would be able to survive. Therefore, when Spot gave the order, the remaining 20 grizzly bears immediately lit up the destroyer's engines and rushed out of the encirclement in a frenzy. Come on! Brothers, let us sing the last elegy! Spot laughed loudly, and then turned the bow of the ship and stopped retreating. He started to face the enemy head-on. Good! To die with the captain! We are worth it! The other two captains were the same. They also turned their warships to face the enemy that was dozens of times their size. Ready to fight to the death with them. Among the three remaining grizzly bears, apart from Spolstra's warships that were still in good condition, 032 and 037 were severely damaged. They were the type that could not escape, which was why Spolstra left them behind. It was so that those who had a better chance of escaping could survive. Hee hee! Try to stop a chariot with a mantis? You really overestimate yourself! Seeing that three of the NPC warships were left behind to hold the rear while the other ships sped up to escape, Comus and Bado sneered. Although they did not have much command experience, the fleet had an absolute advantage in terms of strength. Therefore, they had never put Spotter's fleet in their eyes. Not to mention these three damaged grizzly bears. Swish, swish, swish. Spot's three battleships released all the gravitational air mines. They knew that they could not delay for too long. So they could only place their hopes on these air mines. Get rid of them. Don't waste time. Bodwa, who was in the front, sneered. At the same time, the main cannon of the Radiant's main battleship he was sitting on started charging. Beep, beep, beep. Alert. Alert. High energy reaction ahead. Dodge! In an instant, red lights flashed in the bridge of the three grizzly bears. An alarm sounded everywhere. Oh no! Spot's expression changed. He knew the power of the main cannon of the Radiant Purification. Once the main cannon was fired, the three battleships would be vaporized on the spot. Moreover, even the air mines that had not been dispersed would be cleared out. If that was the case, they would not be able to hold off the enemy battleships for too long. Chapter 1813 Chapter 1813 Jiang Fei made his move. Fire! With more than eight's command, the radiance of purification shot out. A beam of destructive light shot towards Spotter and the other's battleships. It's over! Spotter closed his eyes. He knew that they were dead for sure. However, after waiting for a while, Spotter did not seem to feel anything. He did not hear any explosions or feel any strange touch. He died just like that? Spotter thought. 
Maybe the instantaneous vaporization didn't cause any pain. It wasn't just Spotter. The other two captains were also in the same situation. They tried to open their eyes. But they found that they couldn't do it at all. They tried to clench their fists or touch their bodies. But they also couldn't feel the existence of their bodies. It seems that he is really dead. Is this the feeling of a soul form? The three captains guessed. However, because they weren't warriors, their bodies were no different from ordinary people even though they were proficient in commanding warships. Therefore, they couldn't use their spiritual power to observe the situation around them. Is this what it feels like when I am dead? I can't do anything, and I can't see anything. Am I going crazy? Thoughts ran wild in Spotter's mind. What's going on? No experience. F asterisk CK. What the H? L. Did I not kill them? That's impossible. The main cannon of the Radiance of Purification can't even kill a few injured patrol ships? At this moment, Bodwa was also very confused. The power of the Radiance of Purification was too strong. The spaceships that were destroyed by it could not be found and were basically all disintegrated into basic particles. There would not even be a speck of dust left. However, if he had killed these three heavy patrol ships, then Bodwa should have gained quite a bit of experience. However, his experience bar had not moved at all. And there was only one explanation for this situation. The enemy was not dead. What the H? L. Bodwa slammed the table and cursed. Leader, what should we do? One of his underlings asked. What should we do? Go after them. We don't care about these three broken ships anymore. Bodwa roared. Although he was puzzled by the sudden disappearance of the three grizzly bears, the big fish was still in front of him. At this moment, he could not care less about these things. After all, there was still Comus, who was competing with him. Because of the radiance of purification, the gravitational space mines that were released had been cleared out. Therefore, the players, battleships naturally did not stop them and swarmed over. However, these players did not notice that in the vast universe, there was a tiny figure in the place that the radiance of purification had just cleared out Jiang Fei. The universe was too vast. Even the gravitational air mines that were a few meters in diameter were ignored by the radar. Moreover, Jiang Fei was a human. Moreover, Jiang Fei did not even have a metal piece on him. Therefore, he would not attract the radar's attention. It was not only the radar that did not notice Jiang Fei. Due to the distance, the players on the battleships would not be able to see Jiang Fei even with their naked eyes. Therefore, he stood quietly in the void of the universe and watched the players, battleships fly past him. The radiance of purification is indeed powerful. Jiang Fei sighed in his heart. Even though he was already an expert at the hermit level, Jiang Fei did not dare to take a shot of the radiance of purification head on. The power of this main cannon was simply too great. It was so great that it was not something that a human could withstand. Perhaps only a giant cosmic beast like the giant steel scorpion could survive under such a powerful main cannon. However, it would definitely not be safe. That was right. The reason why Spotter and the others were able to escape earlier was because Jiang Fei had helped them. He had put all three grizzly bears into his tenth dimension. At the same time, he also hid in it. After the Radiance of Purification finished shooting, Jiang Fei came out of the tenth dimension. However, the three grizzly bears and the people inside were still in the tenth dimension. As time was still in the tenth dimension, although Spotter and the others' minds were still active, they could not open their eyes when they closed them. Their bodies could not move at all. Therefore, it felt as if they were dead. What a change in plans! Jiang Fei looked at the player warships that kept flying past him. He could not help but feel a little bitter. Although he had planned everything, he never expected that. Not only did the player fleet not continue to split up as he had expected, they even joined forces. Now, this player fleet consisted of two main ships, hundreds of heavy patrol ships, and hundreds of support ships. The size was not smaller than Jiang Fei's fleet. If they fought head-on, not only would they win, but they would also lose. This was exactly what Jiang Fei did not want to see. You guys are lucky. Jiang Fei made a prompt decision. Since he had no chance to kill these players, there was no need for him to let these grizzly bears die in vain. Whoosh! With a teleport, Jiang Fei appeared in the distance. There, more than 20 grizzly bears were speeding away. What's going on? Jiang Fei activated his teleportation skill. Naturally, it caused intense spatial fluctuations. Therefore, the radar of the players reacted. Spatial energy anomaly. But I did not find anything. The asterisk a minute. Forget about it. Let's chase the NPCs in front first. Bodwa ordered. 
Whoosh! Jiang Fei, who appeared beside the grizzly bear fleet, waved his hand. More than 30 grizzly bears were all stored into the 10th dimension. What's going on? In an instant, the people on the grizzly bear heavy cruisers were dumbfounded. They suddenly realized that they could not move and could not speak, other than their thoughts remaining active. They could not do anything else. Leader! The NPCs have disappeared. What? Disappeared? Yes. They did not activate the warp drive, and there was no radar interference nearby. They just disappeared into thin air. The people on Grizzly Bear were dumbfounded. These players were even more dumbfounded. They had chased after them for a long time. Especially Comus. He had even paid the price of several battleships. In the end, he had killed one enemy battleship. Then, the other enemy battleships disappeared into thin air. It was like a duck that was already on the tip of its tongue. Now, it had actually flown away. Therefore, at this moment, the anger in the hearts of these players could not be mentioned. Leaving these players who did not understand the situation and did not know where to send their anger, Jiang Fei directly teleported away from this troublesome place. After teleporting for a few hours, Jiang Fei arrived at a safe starfield. Although he was already an expert at the hermit level, Teleporting for such a long distance still made him feel very tired. Moreover, almost 30 heavy cruisers had been installed in the 10th dimension for such a long time. This was not a small test for Jiang Fei's mental strength. Therefore, when he released the cruisers, although Jiang Fei did not collapse, he was so tired that he almost could not open his eyes. Chapter 1814 Chapter 1814 The Return of the Vasily Legion What's going on? Why are we here all of a sudden? At this moment, including Spot. These young captains were all dumbfounded. They had no idea what had happened. Just now, it was a sure death situation. But now, they could not see any enemy ships around them. Captain, why are you here? A young captain suddenly asked in the communication channel. After all, Spot and the others had stayed behind to cover the rear. But now, they suddenly appeared beside them. That's not right. Why did we suddenly run two light years away? Yeah, we didn't even have time to start the warp engine. How could we run so far? I don't know what happened either. Maybe God is helping us. Spotter did not know what had happened. God does not have the time to care about you. At this time, Jiang Fei suddenly appeared beside Spotter. Age? Spotter was shocked by Jiang Fei, who suddenly appeared behind him. Sir Lieutenant General? When Spotter saw Jiang Fei, he was even more dumbfounded. He had no idea when Jiang Fei had boarded his battleship. All right. Don't ask any unnecessary questions. Order the fleet to return and meet up with Aurelia and the others. Jiang Fei ordered. Yes, Sir Lieutenant General. Spotter was also a person who had seen the world. Of course, he knew not to ask about things that should not be asked. Therefore, he did not ask anymore. Instead, he gave the order to the other battleships. The fleet began to turn around and prepare to warp towards Aurelia and the others. When the other young captains knew that Jiang Fei had suddenly appeared, they almost all thought that the strange thing that had just happened must have something to do with Jiang Fei. However, they were not fools. So no one asked any more questions. A few days later, the fleet met up with Aurelia and the others. Jiang Fei also returned to the Aurora ship. Ah Fei, where have you been during this period of time? Bella immediately grabbed Jiang Fei's hand and asked. I was worried about Spotter and the others. So I followed them to take a look. Jiang Fei replied. Why did you bring them all back? Aurelia asked. As the actual commander of the fleet, she was more concerned about the previous plan. The plan can't keep up with the changes. Jiang Fei told her about the regrouping of the player fleet. Sigh. Aurelia sighed. She did not expect her plan to fail in the end. Fortunately, 30 grizzly bears had gone out. However, 29 of them had successfully returned. Although each of them was injured, at least the lives of the soldiers were saved. Moreover, 021 and 022 ships had also destroyed many enemy ships. It could be considered a great achievement. Forget it. Although we did not kill too many enemies, at least we did not lose anything. One grizzly bear had exchanged for two heavy patrol ships of the enemy. There were still more than 10 battleships left. This is enough. Jiang Fei sighed. Although they had profited on the surface. However, the battleships that they had lost were still operated by living people. The destruction of the battleship meant that a large number of officers and soldiers had died. Especially the captain of the grizzly bear. He was a rare talent. Then, what should we do next? Si Tang asked. This time, Jiang Fei 
and the others had come to the Little Pyrenees galaxy to find a way to destroy some of the player fleets and weaken their strength. It would slow down their development speed. However, now, the originally divided player fleets had regrouped. This made it impossible for Jiang Fei's fleets to completely defeat their opponents. If they were to fight a battle of attrition, it would not be worth it for Jiang Fei and the others. Therefore, this meant that Jiang Fei and the other's original plan had been nullified. Next. Let's wait and see. At this moment, Jiang Fei did not have any good ideas. It was obviously not worth it to fight the player head-on. Therefore, they could only sit tight for the time being. At this moment, Jiang Fei's biggest advantage was that the enemy was in the open while they were in the dark. Therefore, they could quietly observe the player's movements. When the opponent showed a weakness, they could take the initiative to attack. Moreover, Jiang Fei still had a trump card at the back. Even if he could not do anything to the players that were gathered together, once the giant steel scorpion and its allies arrived, by then, the strength of the two sides would be completely different. Jiang Fei could completely rely on the strength of the giant steel scorpion to crush the player fleet with a crushing advantage. Therefore, what Jiang Fei needed the most now was time. As time passed, whether it was the player who took the initiative to reveal a flaw, or Jiang Fei's cosmic beast allies arriving. He could easily take care of this, player fleet. Five days passed in a flash. There was still no news of Jiang Fei's cosmic beast allies. After all, it took the giant steel scorpion time to find its own kind. And it also took time to convince its own kind. It would take even more time to travel from the Zavala galaxy to the Little Pyrenees. Although there were changes on the player's side, it was not in a good direction. Amon, who had been wandering around the Dominic galaxy, had also brought his fleet to the Little Pyrenees. It could be said that almost all the player warships had gathered in this place that was originally a remote place. F asterisk CK! What are these guys trying to do? Jiang Fei muttered to himself as he looked at the message sent by the Lonely Star Scout ship. Actually, the reason why Amon came to the Little Pyrenees was very simple. It was because Badwa and Comus had been fighting too fiercely. As the leader of the guild, if Amon did not appear, these two guys were about to break up the main force of the guild. Therefore, Eamon had to step in to suppress these two guys and reunite the main force. Otherwise, wouldn't the fleet that he had spent a lot of effort and money to build be completely destroyed? When Eamon arrived at the Little Pyrenees star system, the main force that was about to fall apart immediately calmed down. After all, the battleships that these players were piloting, almost all of them were bought by Eamon from the development team with real money since they were in other guilds and were piloting other people's battleships. They naturally had to listen to other people's orders. Meanwhile, Badwa and Comus did not dare to make too much of a fuss because their boss had arrived, although the two of them still did not get along, at least on the surface. They would not directly start fighting again. When the player fleet once again united, their ferocity was revealed. In just two days, they had massacred a small civilization. A planet with a population of billions was once again massacred. These bastards! Jiang Fei could not help but gnash his teeth when he saw this. However, the strength of the player fleet that had gathered together was even stronger than his fleet. Even if Jiang Fei wanted to fight with all his might, he would not be able to defeat them. However, at that moment, a Lone Star scout ship came with a piece of news that Jiang Fei could not understand Bizarre's army had once again sent their troops. Chapter 1815 Chapter 1815 The Mysterious Bizarre Fleet Ah, Fei! The Vizari army has once again formed a huge fleet. They are also coming to the Little Pyrenees galaxy. Aurelia sent a message to Jiang Fei. The asterisk am in. These guys who don't know how to take a beating. Are they rushing to their deaths to gain experience points for the players? Jiang Fei's face was pale. Not long ago, the Vizari army's fleet had just been defeated by the player fleet. Although they were not completely wiped out, they had lost more than half of their fleet. However, even though they had suffered such a huge loss, Jiang Fei had never expected that the Vasari army would actually make a comeback. Actually, Jiang Fei did not care if the Vasari army had the habit of sending themselves to their deaths. He was worried that these reckless Vasari people would let the players gain too much experience points and grow too quickly. The current player fleet was already very difficult to resist. If they continued to gain experience, unlock more types of battleships, and obtain more money to buy battleships, then Jiang Fei really could not think of a way to deal with these players. No! I have to stop them! Jiang Fei stood up abruptly. Husband, what do you want to do? Bella asked. 
he'll try to persuade them first. If they insist on sending themselves to their deaths, he'll give them what they want. Jiang Fei said as he gritted his teeth. In Jiang Fei's opinion, if the Vizari army insisted on sending themselves to their deaths, he would not mind letting his own fleet carry out the quest. Although destroying the Vizari army's fleet might cause some losses to his own fleet. In Jiang Fei's opinion, it was much better than letting them give experience points to players. Ah, Fei! Wait a moment. Take a look at this video first. Aurelia stopped the impulsive Jiang Fei through the big screen. What video? Jiang Fei asked. This is the video of Vizari's fleet captured by the Lone Star Scout ship. Aurelia said. Then, a video was transmitted over. The video was quickly displayed on the big screen in front of Jiang Fei. At first, what appeared in front of Jiang Fei was a vast starry sky. However, after a few seconds, the space suddenly trembled and a large number of wormholes appeared. Following that, one warship after another rushed out of the wormholes and formed a formation in a vast expanse of space. This is... Jiang Fei's eyes widened as he stared at the video in front of him. He began to doubt his own eyes. He thought that he was hallucinating because in the video, Vizari's fleet included at least five giant ships that were more than 3,000 kilometers long. It was not that there were no such giant ships in Jiang Fei's universe. However, they were basically super transport ships. They were slow and had almost no weapon system. They only carried a large amount of cargo. However, this was clearly not the case for the giant ships in Vizari's fleet. These ferocious giant ships were densely packed with cannon muzzles. Moreover, the streamlined hull of the ships was filled with sci-fi colors. This was the style of a warship that Jiang Fei had never seen before in Vizari's army. The Vizari army had always been known for valuing individual weakness and underestimating the development of the fleet. Although their military strength was the best in the universe, it was mostly because of the existence of super warriors. If it was just a simple competition of battleship strength, they were even weaker than the Merchant Alliance. However, now, Although Jiang Fei did not know the actual strength of the fleet in front of him, based on its appearance, the combat strength of this fleet was probably even higher than the fleet under him. That's impossible. The Vizari army does not have these warships. Where did they get these ships? Jiang Fei cried out in surprise. I'm very surprised too. I've never heard of the Vizari army having such a terrifying spaceship. If they had such a fleet long ago, they would have unified the universe long ago, said Aurelia. What the age, L? Jiang Fei felt like his head was about to explode. If the players had created a fleet overnight, Jiang Fei would be able to understand it. However, where did Vizari's army get such a fleet? Husband, what should we do? Should we stop them? Ariel quietly pulled Jiang Fei's sleeve. Stop them, my ass. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. Against such a terrifying fleet, his fleet would be useless. Ah, oh, Fei, I think we should just sit back and watch the tiger fight. Aurelia suddenly said. Oh! Jiang Fei was stunned. Think about it. The reason why the player fleet was invincible before was because they had the absolute advantage in strength. Now that the Vizari army has a similarly powerful fleet, even if the command level of the Vizari army's fleet is not high, at least professional soldiers are participating in the battle. Their command and execution ability must be above that of the players. Therefore, the outcome of this battle is likely to be much better than what we imagined. Aurelia said. HMM. When Jiang Fei heard Aurelia's words, he could not help but think deeply. Speaking of which, the players seemed to be even worse at fighting. They could only use their advantage and strength to fight a smooth battle. Once they encountered an equally strong enemy, or even an enemy that was stronger than them, they might collapse at the start of the battle. Let's wait and see then! Thinking of this, Jiang Fei nodded. He also wanted to see the true strength of the Vasari army's fleet. According to the information from the Lone Star Scout ship, the Vasari fleet had already approached the Little Pyrenees galaxy. They would probably arrive in two days. The players did not seem to have any plans to evacuate the Little Pyrenees in the short term. Therefore, both sides would probably encounter each other the day after tomorrow or the day after tomorrow. Jiang Fei, who chose to wait and see, finally ordered the fleet to withdraw from the Little Pyrenees galaxy. Now that both sides' fleets were stronger than his, Jiang Fei did not want to be caught between the two sides. Therefore, the first thing he did was to free up the battlefield for both sides. As expected, on the second day after Jiang Fei and the others withdrew from the Little Pyrenees galaxy, Bazari's army's fleet arrived here. Moreover, they seemed to know the movements of the players very well. After arriving at the Little Pyrenees galaxy, they immediately warped to the Z4 star area 
and set up an ambush in an asteroid belt. Less than five hours after the Vizari army's fleet set up the ambush, the player fleet arrived on time and entered the ambush circle. F asterisk CK! Did they come to an agreement or did the Vizari army hire a fortune teller? Jiang Fei was dumbfounded when he saw this. This time, the Vizari army was strange. It was as if they knew the player fleet like the back of their hand. Not only did they know the route of the player fleet, but they also knew the scouting habits of the player fleet. As such, the player squadron was caught off guard and charged into the ambush set up by the Vizari Legion. Chapter 1816 Chapter 1816 The Terrifying Vizari Fleet Not long after the player fleet entered the ambush, the news from the Lone Star surveillance ship had completely shocked Jiang Fei. How is this possible? Jiang Fei widened his eyes. The appearance of the Vizari fleet had dealt a devastating blow to the player fleet. In the instant of the battle, the sudden appearance of the Vizari fleet had caught the player fleet by surprise. As expected, the player fleet had panicked for a short period of time. Although this was due to the lack of experience in commanding the fleet, with a player fleet as strength, such a small loss should not be considered much. However, one of the Vizari fleet's giant ships gave these players a vivid lesson letting them know what it meant to instantly destroy the world. When this ferocious-looking giant ship appeared, it was like a porcupine that was forced into a corner. Countless sharp thorns burst out from its body. Of course, these so-called sharp thorns were not simple defensive weapons. They were tens of thousands of phase missiles. Phase missiles were the ultimate form of missiles. Their biggest feature was that they would not be intercepted. This was because after the missiles were launched, they would immediately enter the phase space until the moment they hit the target. Only then would they leave the phase space. Therefore, they did not give the enemy any chance to intercept them. The overwhelming missile cluster was like a rainstorm. It instantly baptized the vanguard of the player fleet. In just a few minutes, the player fleet had lost more than 100 heavy patrol level destroyer spaceships and hundreds of other types of battleships. How is this possible? Jiang Fei was not the only one who had his eyes wide open. Amon, who was sitting on his flagship, was also dumbfounded. Who would have thought that an invincible fleet that could shake the universe and stir up trouble would lose more than one-third of its fleet in the first round of attack? Get rid of that ship! After a short moment of shock, Eamon immediately ordered. After all, the enemy's battleship was also huge. So its target was very obvious. Buzz! The four main radiant battleships started to recharge their main cannons almost at the same time. Their goal was very simple. They fired a round of purification radiance at the enemy's main battleship. It was not just the four, player, main battleships that began to attack the Vizari giant battleship. Even the other, player battleships, began to fire at it. Boom 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 boom! The main beam cannons of various colors shot out a dazzling light after hitting the Vizari giant battleship. However, this Vizari main battleship was different from the cheap goods of the Merchant Alliance. It was equipped with an energy shield that was almost as powerful as the player battleship. Therefore, when it was hit by the energy cannon, the shield was able to block most of the damage. Just as the four radiant battleships began to recharge, the Vizari battleship did not stay idle. It adjusted the direction of the bow and unleashed its power once again. Bang! The main cannon of the battleship shot out a cloud of smoke. This cloud of smoke pounced on one of the radiant battleships at the speed of light. As the Vizari battleship opened fire, another Vizari battleship came out from the back of an asteroid. It shot out a cloud of smoke in the same way and hit one of the main radiant battleships. ZZ! As a weak light flashed, the two main radiant battleships that were hit instantly dimmed. Their main cannons that were originally emitting a bright light had now been extinguished. Boom! Boom! The other two main radiant battleships successfully completed their attack. Two destructive beams of light hit the Vizari giant battleship. Unfortunately, both of them were at the main battleship level. It was impossible to destroy the other side in one hit. However, Although the two beams of light could not destroy the Vizari giant battleship, the players were still happy. After the two beams of light of purification, the Vizari giant battleship that was originally showing off was now in tatters. Several parts of the large ship had even started to burn. So powerful! It took two shots of the light of purification head on! Jiang Fei, who was watching the battle through the Lonely Star class unmanned reconnaissance ship, gasped. This Vizari main ship was really too powerful. Not only did it have destructive firepower, but it also had such powerful defense. Wait! Pull the picture in! At this time Aurelia seems to have found some clues. When the image was zoomed in, 
Jiang Fei found that the heavily damaged Bazari main ship was repairing itself at an alarming rate. Moreover, after zooming in on the image, Jiang Fei could vaguely see that there seemed to be some sort of passageway between the Vizari ship and the player's glorious main battleship. In this passageway, there were countless nanobots shuttling back and forth at almost the speed of light. These nanobots were frantically dismantling the main radiant battleship. They were also transporting the dismantled equipment and armor back to the Vizari main battleship to repair their mothership. This is too ruthless! Jiang Fei was stunned. Although the Merchant Alliance's Starchild-class robot cruiser could also release robots onto the enemy's battleship and dismantle the enemy's battleship. However, even if the robots were dismantled, they could not be recycled to repair their own battleships. What Jiang Fei did not know was that the nanorobots were not only dismantling the outer SH L of the enemy's battleships. They were also destroying the enemy's antimatter pool and stealing the enemy's antimatter to replenish their motherships. It was also because of this that the two main radiant battleships that were hit, suddenly stopped firing. As they were charging up, they suddenly realized that the antimatter on their own battleships was insufficient. They could not support the main cannon to fire at all. On the battlefield, in less than half an hour, the Vizari main battleship that had just been covered in injuries had already been mostly repaired. Not only were the places that had been on fire extinguished, the damaged outer SH. LS had even been completely repaired. Boom, 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 boom. During this period of time, the second Bizarre main battleship fired its missiles at the same time. The missile cluster that was like a torrential rain immediately wiped out another third of the player fleet as ships. In addition to the attacks from the other battleships of the Bizarre army, after half an hour, the player fleet had almost no other ships other than the four main ships. The entire fleet had become a single commander. Holy SH asterisk T. These are only two main ships. And they have already beaten the players to such a state. If all four main ships come, wouldn't the players be completely wiped out? Jiang Fei rubbed his eyes. He could not believe that it was true. The main reason is that the commander of the players is too weak. If it was me who was commanding the battle, although this battle is not easy to fight, I would be able to escape and scathe in a one-on-one -on -one exchange with the enemy. Aurelia said confidently. Unfortunately, we do not have a fleet as strong as theirs. Jiang Fei sighed. Although he had the strongest commander, the strength of the fleet was a little different from the others. Chapter 1817 Chapter 1817 wiped out the players. At this moment, the outcome of the battle had already been decided. The player side only had four main warships left. The other warships had all been wiped out. As for the Vizari Legion side, although they had also paid the price of about a dozen warships, this was considered a complete victory. Boss, should we retreat first? Badwa asked at this time. Fight for me. Our shields are still relatively safe now. Let's gain some experience first, said Eamon, although the entire fleet had almost been wiped out. This made his heart ache. After all, he had bought these spaceships with money. However, now that things had come to this, they would try their best to gain some experience to make up for their losses. However, the Vasily Legion clearly did not want to give them this opportunity. The two main ships blocked the front, absorbing almost all of the cannon fire from the four main warships because the main cannon of the Radiance of Purification was currently on cooldown. Therefore, although the firepower of the four main ships was powerful, the Vasily main ships had a large number of supply ships behind them. Hence, it was not difficult for them to forcefully hold on. On the other hand, on the player's side, although there were more main ships, after a period of stalemate, they could not hold on any longer. After all, the Zari's main ship had auxiliary ships behind it, which could not only repair the armor, we can refill the shields. However, on the player's side, although the four main radiant battleships had formidable combat power, they did not have any support abilities. So it was very difficult to quickly recover after being injured. As time went on, the damage to their battleships was getting more and more serious. Boss, if we continue fighting, our main battleship will explode. Comus shouted anxiously. This was because the main battleship he was sitting on had the most serious damage. If they continued fighting, then he would be the first to be sunk. In! Eamon's face was as dark as water. He knew that he had lost today. It was almost impossible for him to get back what he had lost. Retreat! Eamon gritted his teeth and ordered the retreat. After all, the main battleship was too expensive. If it were to explode, he would be in pain too. However, just as the four main radiant battleships were about to retreat from the battlefield, the third Vizari main battleship finally appeared. Although this main battleship was also huge, it was completely different from the previous two. 
Its appearance was not ferocious, although it was also painted in black. It looked more like a merchant ship. However, this main ship that looked like a merchant ship had completely destroyed more than eight's hopes of escaping. Bang! A light purple cannonball shot out from the main cannon of the main ship. This purple energy ball exploded near the glory main ship that was piloted by more than eight, instantly forming a gravitational distortion space. In this gravitational distortion space, more than eight glory main ships were pulled by a strong gravitational force, causing their speed to instantly decrease. Even though more than eight had already ordered the weapon system to be shut down, all the energy was supplied to the engine, but the acceleration of the engine was still unable to increase. Seeing the other three glorious main battleships speed up and leave, Eight Plus knew that he had been abandoned because the battle had already failed. Even if the other main battleship stayed, they would only be waiting for death. Now that they had abandoned him and left, it could be considered a way to preserve their strength. Forget it. Anyway, the spaceship was bought by Eamon. Since I can't escape, he'll stay behind to cover the rear. If I perform well, perhaps Eamon will give me another main battleship. But with thought after he calmed down. Very soon, Bodwa, who had given up on escaping, immediately shut down the engine and channeled all of his energy into the weapon system. Immediately, his main battleship's firepower was fully unleashed, crazily blocking Bazari's pursuit. Whoosh, 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 whoosh. A large swarm of missiles rained down on them again. Bajua's battleship's armor had been weakened by the Nanites, so it was severely damaged by the missile rain. In less than five minutes, Bajua's main battleship, which was already injured, was beaten black and blue, although he fought back with all his might. The beam cannons were blocked by the two main battleships in front of him. There was no way to harm the small ships behind. Another five minutes passed, following a violent explosion. More than eight of the main battleships disintegrated in space, becoming the first main battleship to be sunk in space. Boss! Am kneeling! After more than eight died, he sent a message to Aaron. Sigh! Forget it! We've been tricked this time! There's nothing we can do about it! This military operation was personally directed by Aaron. Therefore, he could not shirk the responsibility of falling into the enemy's ambush. This way, Eamon also felt that there was something wrong with his command. So he naturally could not blame his subordinates. Boss, what do we do next? Comus asked. What else can we do? Be careful next time. This time we'll treat it as paying tuition fees. Eamon fully displayed the domineering aura of a rich player. Although the entire fleet was almost wiped out, he did not seem to care. If Jiang Fei was present, he would definitely sigh at the injustice of this war. The players enjoyed all sorts of benefits and also had the immunity to death. In their eyes, it was a defeat in a battle. Perhaps it was just a rich player, like Eamon who wasted some money. However, for Jiang Fei and the others, if they lost such a battle, it was very likely that the fleet would be cancelled, or even the country would be destroyed. Compared to the players, Jiang Fei and the others not only had to spend a lot of effort to replenish the battleship, they not only needed a large amount of resources, but they also needed to build it. More importantly, it was not easy to train a captain. It might take a few months to build a main ship, but it would take years or even decades to train a good captain. Husband! That's great! Almost all the players have been killed! At that moment, Bella and the others were overjoyed. This was because Jiang Fei had come here to destroy a part of the player fleet. He did not expect the Vizari people to do better than him. They had almost wiped out the entire player fleet. Moreover, his losses were minimal. Where did these guys get these spaceships? Jiang Fei frowned. He knew very well that the main fleet was created by the development team. Originally, this thing was meant for the players to torture noobs. However, Jiang Fei had accidentally obtained one and some related technology. That was why he was able to build it himself. However, how did the Vizari army have the main ships? Moreover, they had four of them? Other than these main ships, the other Vizari warships were also completely different from before. Their technological level had been greatly improved. They had completely surpassed the technological level of this universe. Chapter 1818 Chapter 1818 Vizari Jiang Fei's doubts did not last long. However, it was not Vinlon who had cleared his doubts. It was Lust. Not long after the Battle of Pyrenees ended, Jiang Fei received a message from the Merchant Alliance. This message was sent by Lust himself. Ah, Fei! I know you are confused. To be honest, I could not believe it before I received the information. Lust actually went straight to the point this time. I want to know where the Vizari army got these battleships. Jiang Fei frowned and said. Hmm. 
This is why I'm looking for you. Lu Sai said to Jiang Fei with a serious face. You know about the origins of these battleships? Jiang Fei was stunned. He had placed all his hopes on Vinalin. However, Vinalin had previously said that he could not provide him with any help for the time being. Therefore, Jiang Fei had planned to wait for a period of time. However, he did not expect Lu Sai to be so well informed. Yes, our spies in the Vizari army have sent back news. Among them, there are the origins of these warships, said Lu Sai proudly. Spies? I'm afraid that this spy's position in the Vizari army is not low. Right, Jiang Fei said as he pursed his lips. Hee hee, money talks. You know that? Lu Sai winked at Jiang Fei. Sigh. Jiang Fei sighed. The powerful Vasari army had actually been infiltrated by the Merchant Alliance to such an extent. From this, it could be seen how powerful these profiteers were. All right, let's talk about the origins of these spaceships. Lu Sai stopped smiling and said to Jiang Fei with a serious face. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. Then, Lu sent a confidential document over. His. Is this true? Jiang Fei frowned even more after reading the document. In this document, the Vizari army had recorded in detail the process of obtaining the battleships. It turned out that after the last defeat in the Dominic Galaxy, the Vizari army had suffered heavy losses. Therefore, they were preparing to shrink their defense. However, at this moment, a group of people known as Holy Envoys suddenly appeared. These people took the initiative to establish contact with the higher-ups of the Vizari Legion. They claimed that they came from the same space as the intruders and were archenemies with them. Now that they had entered this universe, their goal was to attack those people. The enemy of the enemy was a friend. This logic made sense in the Vizari Legion. Moreover, the Vizari Legion was heavily injured and had lost more than half of their strength. They also urgently needed to recover their strength. Otherwise, they would not need the player fleet to attack. The enemies who were angry at them in the past would come and kick them when they were down. Moreover, the cooperation terms offered by these self-proclaimed holy envoys gave the Vasily Legion no reason to refuse. They provided the Vasily Legion with high-quality warships for free. A group of people who had an affair with space had no selfish motives. They treated the anti-invasion cause of the universe as their cause. What kind of spirit was this? This was the spirit of cosmopolitanism. This was the spirit of equality of all souls. This was the spirit that every member of the Vizari army had to learn from. Therefore, under the call of the Vizari higher-ups, they immediately regrouped. The group of people who called themselves the Holy Messenger also sent a huge fleet to the airport of the Vizari army as promised. Therefore, almost overnight, the Vizari army's fleet, which had almost been completely wiped out, regrouped and regrouped. Moreover, they had become even larger and more powerful than before. Holy envoys? Where did these guys come from? Jiang Fei frowned. Although Lust did not provide much information, he had a keen grasp on one point. These holy envoys claimed to be from the same space as the players. Therefore, they were very likely to be from the Gamma space. However, Jiang Fei's universe was just a game to the people in the Gamma space. Moreover, it might not be the kind that sold well. Otherwise, the number of players would not be limited to a few hundred people. Therefore, Jiang Fei could not figure out why the other wave of people from the Gamma space would go against the development team. Why would they create such a so-called holy emissary to arm the so-called NPCs like Jiang Fei and the others? There were too many questions that made Jiang Fei feel dizzy. Now, Jiang Fei could only wait for Vitalin to help him solve his problems. Ah, Fei! Try to get in touch with those holy messengers. See if there's a chance for them to sponsor some of our spaceships. Lus finally stated his purpose. Get in touch with them? Jiang Fei was slightly surprised. Yes! Since they can provide help to the Vizari people. We are also fighting against the invaders. There's no reason for them to ignore us. Lucite said. Uh, you'll give it a try then. Hearing Lucite's words, Jiang Fei actually could not think of an excuse to refute. Although he was very reluctant to get in touch with the people of the Gamma Space because in Jiang Fei's eyes, the people of the Gamma Space were not good people. However, this was also an opportunity for him. After all, by interacting more with the enemy, one could understand the enemy's intentions. Only by knowing oneself and the enemy would one be invincible. After agreeing to Lust's request, Jiang Fei decided to personally go to the Vizari army. Moreover, this time, Jiang Fei did not plan to bring anyone. After all, there was no telling what would happen if he came into contact with the people of the Gamma Space. If it was only Jiang Fei himself, he could still run if he could not defeat them. 
however. If he brought someone along with him, he might become a burden to Jiang Fei if anything happened. As he was going to negotiate with someone else this time, Jiang Fei did not fly the Aurora ship anymore. After all, this kind of main ship was too ostentatious. It would be very easy for the other party to think that he was up to no good. Three days later, Jiang Fei left the fleet alone in a shuttle and flew toward the territory of the Vasari army. After nearly two weeks of sailing, Jiang Fei finally arrived at the territory of the Vasari army. Shuttle ahead. You have entered the territory of the Vasari army. Please turn off the engine immediately and wait for inspection. As soon as he entered the territory of the Vasari army, Jiang Fei was intercepted by a few patrol boats. I am an emissary from the Merchant Alliance. Jiang Fei revealed his identity. Emissary? We do not have any relationship with the Merchant Alliance. The small leader, who was in charge of patrolling, said disdainfully. Ever since they obtained that powerful fleet, the entire Vasari army had been hanging on by a thread. Even a small soldier was so disrespectful to a foreign emissary. In the eyes of these Vasari people, the unification of the universe was just a matter of time. Humph! Who do you think you are? Do you believe that I will crush your spaceship in no time? Jiang Fei could not be bothered to reason with these small soldiers. He immediately teleported out of the shuttle. A terrifying force instantly swept across the entire patrol boat formation. When the projection of the 10th dimension was released, these patrol boats were immediately frozen on the spot. Chapter 1819 Chapter 1819 Aino's Sinister Plot After he had taken control of the patrol boats, Jiang Fei did not do anything to them. After all, his purpose in coming to the Bazari army was to make contact with the Holy Messenger, not to fight. Swish! Jiang Fei waved his hand and put away the projection of the 10th dimension. After releasing the patrol boats, Jiang Fei returned to his shuttle. My name is Jiang Fei. You'd better report this to the higher-ups. Jiang Fei said with a smile. However, his smile was like the smile of a demon to these small soldiers. In the past two days, due to the great victory in the Battle of the Little Pyrenees, the Vizari army had become a little complacent. Even these small soldiers felt that they were invincible. Therefore, when Jiang Fei displayed his powerful strength, these small soldiers only remembered that even if the Vizari army was powerful enough to conquer the entire universe, they were still just small soldiers, even if the gods could not defeat the entire Vizari army. However, it was still effortless to crush them. Yes! Yes! My lord! I will report it to the higher-ups immediately! The patrol leader replied timidly. Soon, the news of the Merchant Alliance's messenger's visit was spread. At the same time, Jiang Fei's name appeared in the ears of the Vizari army's higher-ups. Speaking of which, Jiang Fei's name had disappeared from the vision of the Vasari army for a long time. Ever since Jiang Fei had betrayed the Vasari army and entered the embrace of the Merchant Alliance, the Vasari army did not pursue the matter too much because of Tyrion's reputation. Therefore, they did not pursue the matter too much. They only removed all traces of Jiang Fei in the Vasari army to cover up their shame. Therefore, the name Jiang Fei was very unfamiliar to the soldiers and low-ranking officers. However, in the ears of the Bizarre higher-ups, the name Jiang Fei was very familiar. This was especially so for Aino. He hated Jiang Fei so much that he gritted his teeth. However, because of Tyrion's relationship with Jiang Fei, he did not dare to attack Jiang Fei openly. This time, Jiang Fei's visit had caused Aino to have a sinister plan in mind. Although he did not dare to attack Jiang Fei openly, he had decided to use Jiang Fei as an excuse to kill Jiang Fei. He wanted to get rid of Jiang Fei through the hands of the Holy Messenger. At this moment, Jiang Fei, who was still at the border of Vizari's army, had no idea that he was going to enter the wolf's den. However, even if he knew about Jiang Fei, he was not afraid. At this moment, he had the strength of a true hermit. It was not an easy task to kill him. With the protection of the tenth dimension, Jiang Fei was confident that he would be able to escape and scathe even if he was in danger. While Aino secretly wanted to kill Jiang Fei, the other higher-ups of Vizari took Jiang Fei's arrival very seriously. Whether it was Tyrion, who was behind Jiang Fei, or his identity as the messenger of the Merchant Alliance, all of them were worthy of the Vizari army's grand reception. Very soon, the order to allow Jiang Fei to enter the territory was sent to the border. Not only that, when Jiang Fei's shuttle entered Vizari territory, a Vizari fleet immediately came to escort him. Although this fleet did not have a battleship of the main force level, it was equipped with four heavy cruisers of the Galas and Forcer level. In addition to the other types of spaceships, there were more than 30 of them. It could be seen from this that 
the Vasily Legion placed great importance on Jiang Fei's arrival. This time, the Vasily Legion placed great importance on Jiang Fei, other than the fact that they knew the identity of Tyrion the Hermit. There was another reason. The Vasily Legion wanted to appease the Merchant Alliance. After receiving the assistance of the Holy Spirit's messenger, the Vasily Legion's ambition grew, especially after they heavily injured the intruder fleet. The Vasily Legion's higher-ups thought that it was only a matter of time before they annihilated all the invaders. After the problem of the invaders was solved, the Vasily Legion's pace of unifying the universe would also begin. Then, the Merchant Alliance, which was ranked second in the universe, would become the Vasily Legion's biggest stumbling block. Therefore, the Vasily Legion's higher-ups planned to appease the Merchant Alliance first, telling them not to cause trouble now, after they dealt with the invaders, and then after they wiped out the small and medium-sized forces. The Vizari's army would deal with the Merchant Alliance in the end. However, the Vizari's army clearly had the wrong person in mind. Although Jiang Fei did not do well in his studies back then, he had also studied history. He knew that when the first emperor of Qin destroyed the six kingdoms, the state of Qi had committed such a mistake. In the beginning, they had dreamed of splitting the world with the state of Qin. In the end, they were killed by the other party. Moreover, even if Jiang Fei pretended that he did not see through Vizari's army's scheme and agreed to live in peace with them, the Vizari army would not be able to become the state of Qin. Was it that easy to kill, players? Although the holy messenger had provided assistance to the Vizari army, the development team was not to be trifled with. How could they allow NPCs to casually torture, players? If the players could not continue playing, then who would the development team earn money from? Two days later, Jiang Fei finally arrived at the capital star of the Vizari army Minsk. He was warmly received by the Vizari higher-ups. However, among the Vizari higher-ups who welcomed Jiang Fei, Aino was not included. At this time, Aino was in the embassy of the Holy Messenger. Master Aino, are you saying that the Merchant Alliance has come here? Asked a member of the Holy Messenger named Sardilla. Yes, Master Sardilla. These profiteers definitely do not have good intentions. Aino did his best to slander Jiang Fei. His goal was to incite the Holy Messenger to kill Jiang Fei. This way, he did not have to bear the wrath of Tyrion. Nor did he have to worry about being accused of breaking the army's resolution. I don't like these guys either. Sardira seemed to have a prejudice against the Merchant Alliance. Aino himself did not expect this. But when he realized this, Aino immediately became ecstatic. Sir Sardira, as far as I know, our legion seems to want to establish a formal alliance with the Merchant Alliance. Aino took the initiative to reveal the secrets of the legion to Sardira. No, this is absolutely not possible. If you intend to do this, we will withdraw the battleships that were given to you. Once he heard that the Vizari Corps was going to ally with the Merchant Alliance, the leader of the Holy Sea Emissary actually turned hostile on the spot. UH! This result made Aino very surprised. He did not know why Sardira hated those profiteers so much. But this was exactly what he wanted to see. You absolutely cannot form an alliance! Sardilla reiterated. But the Legion has already made a decision. Although I also have the right to vote. I can't change the situation, Aino said, pretending to be troubled. Then do you have any ideas? Sardilla asked. Yes, of course, Aino immediately said. What ideas? Sardilla asked. As long as you kill the envoy of the Merchant Alliance, the Merchant Alliance will definitely not let the matter rest. If our army has to choose between the Merchant Alliance and your side, I believe that the others will also choose your side. Aino finally revealed the purpose of his trip. Chapter 1820 Chapter 1820 Giving Up on Assassinations Your suggestion is very interesting. I will consider it. Sardira nodded. Sir Sardira, if you want to make a move, I can arrange a suitable time for you. Once he saw that the plan of using someone else to kill others was feasible, Aino immediately took the initiative to make the arrangements. Tell me about it, Sardira said noncommittally. Today, the envoy of the Merchant Alliance has just arrived. There will definitely be a welcoming dinner tonight. At that time, I can arrange for the envoy's convoy to pass through Area X-32. That is an excellent ambush location. Aino had already planned everything before he came. He had already planned everything. Yes, Sardilla nodded. But he did not say whether he would assassinate the envoy of the Merchant Alliance. Sir Sardira, when the convoy leaves, I will send someone to inform you. Aino could see from Sardira's eyes that the leader of the Holy Messenger was moved by his suggestion. After coming out of the Holy Messenger's embassy, Aino was in a good mood. It was indeed a very happy thing to be able to get rid of Jiang Fei without having to share the responsibility. 
Aino was busy arranging the assassination plan against Jiang Fei. However, Jiang Fei was unaware of it. He was enjoying the welcome ceremony arranged by Vizari's army because he wanted to appease the merchant alliance that Jiang Fei represented. Therefore, this welcome ceremony could be said to be grand and grand. It could almost be compared to the welcoming of the prime minister of a big country. Jiang Fei was just an ordinary messenger because the merchant alliance did not grant him any authority. The reason he came here was to get in touch with the holy messenger. As for the specific negotiations, he would have to wait for the higher-ups of the merchant alliance to make a decision. After the welcoming ceremony ended, Jiang Fei was arranged to stay in the largest and most luxurious hotel on planet Minsk. Moreover, Bazari's reception staff had also informed Jiang Fei that there would be a grand welcoming dinner in the evening. Jiang Fei was not interested in these official receptions. However, as the envoy of the Merchant Alliance, he could not refuse. Otherwise, he would offend the Vizari army even if he did not say anything. When he was expelled from the country, how would he be able to contact the holy envoys? After resting for a few hours, the convoy that was responsible for picking Jiang Fei up arrived at the hotel. As Jiang Fei came alone, there was nothing much to pack up. He got into the car and prepared to attend the banquet. The convoy that came this time had already been controlled by Aino. They did not follow the scheduled route to the banquet venue. Instead, they took a detour to Area X-32. In a quiet corner, Sardilla stood quietly. He held a tube-shaped item in his hand and aimed at the convoy. As the convoy got closer, Sardilla could even see the driver's face clearly. Moreover, he could vaguely see the passengers in the back seat. This time, Aino wanted to make it easier for Sardilla. He even changed the glass of the car to completely transparent. He did this so that Sardilla could clearly see which car Jiang Fei was in. Huh? Why is it this kid? Very soon, Sardilla saw Jiang Fei through the scope. He frowned slightly, but he put down the weapon in his hand. This is really troublesome. Sardilla sighed and turned around to leave Area X-32. After returning to the embassy of the Holy Messenger, Sardilla put away her weapons and began to write an official document. The content of the document was basically to inform the Vizari army that they were not allowed to form an alliance with the Merchant Alliance. Otherwise, the Holy Messenger would break off relations with the Vizari army and withdraw the military aid that had already been given out. Sigh! It could have been settled with just one shot. Now! It has become so troublesome. Fortunately, as long as the people of the Vizari army have brains, they will know how to choose. Sardilla said to herself, the convoy that picked Jiang Fei up wandered around Area X-32 for a while. However, it was impossible for them to stay for long. Soon, the convoy left the area and went to the area where the banquet was supposed to be. At that moment, Jiang Fei was sitting in the car and did not notice that he had just walked through the gates of hell. As it was his first time in Mengsk, he did not even know that the driver that came to pick him up had taken a detour. However, when Sardilla took aim at the car, Jiang Fei felt a tingling sensation on his back. He vaguely felt a sense of danger. However, because of his skills and courage, Jiang Fei, who had the strength of a hermit, did not think too much about it. Soon, the motorcade arrived at the venue of the banquet. Jiang Fei entered the venue surrounded by a group of Vizari's high-ranking officials. Hmm? Why isn't he dead? Did Sardilla change her mind? When Aino saw that Jiang Fei was still alive, he felt as if he had eaten a dead fly. What did you do? Didn't you go to Area X-32? Very soon, Aino found the driver who picked Jiang Fei up. Lord Aino, we wandered around Area X-32 for more than 10 minutes. We only returned to the normal route when we saw that the guests were about to suspect us. The driver was also very wronged. Forget it. There's nothing for you guys here. Aino waved his hand. Then we'll take our leave first. The few drivers bowed to Aino, then turned around and prepared to leave. Swish. At this moment, Aino suddenly attacked. With a wave of his large hand, an energy chain instantly wrapped around the necks of these drivers. Lord you! Those drivers wanted to turn around and ask Aino why he wanted to kill them. But unfortunately, they were only ordinary people. Facing an expert like Aino, they didn't even have the slightest ability to resist. Bang! Aino clenched his fist and the energy chain suddenly tightened. The drivers were instantly turned into dust. Not a single trace was left behind. Clap, clap, clap. Aino clapped his hands. This kind of killing was nothing to him. When Aino returned to the banquet hall, Jiang Fei was still chatting with the higher-ups of Vizari. Everyone was talking nonsense. Anyway, none of it was useful. The other higher-ups were not surprised that Aino did not come over to greet Jiang Fei. After all, 
Everyone knew that Aino and Jiang Fei were not on good terms. They had even tried to frame him. Now that they were here, it would be awkward. Therefore, it was better that he did not come. At this time, Jiang Fei naturally saw Aino. However, things had changed. At this time, he no longer hated Aino. After all, he was already an expert at the hermit level. If he wanted to kill Aino, he would just have to wave his hand. In his eyes, Ai Nua was like an ant. An ant was not worthy of being hated. The boring party finally ended after two hours. Jiang Fei was sent back to the hotel where he stayed. However, just as Jiang Fei was about to open the door to his room, his intuition told him that there was someone in the room. However, with Jiang Fei's powerful spiritual power, he did not detect the presence of the other party at all. Chapter 1821 Chapter 1821 Mystery Solved With a soft sound, Jiang Fei opened the door. However, his men did not enter immediately. Who are you? Jiang Fei asked with a frown. The people in the room did not seem to want to ambush him. Instead, they were sitting on the sofa and waiting for him openly. He he. Ah Fei. Long time no see. The person on the sofa laughed. You're Vinalin? Jiang Fei was stunned. Although the person in front of him was completely different from the previous Vinalin in both appearance and aura. From the tone of his voice, he was still the same guy because Vinalin always appeared by descending. His identity and aura were always different. Even an expert like Jiang Fei would not be able to use his aura to determine his identity. Hmm. After we parted in a hurry the last time, I have been looking for an opportunity to meet you. Unfortunately, I was delayed by some matters, said Vinalin as he nodded. Wait! Jiang Fei, who was listening to Vinalin's words, suddenly interrupted him and asked, Every time you descend, you look for an ordinary person. However, this time, your carrier is not ordinary. As he said that, Jiang Fei stared at Vinalin up and down. At that moment, Vinalin looked like an ordinary person on the surface. However, Jiang Fei could vaguely feel the threat from Vinalin. After all, Jiang Fei was a top-tier hidden expert. How could someone who could threaten him be an ordinary person? He he. That's true. This time, I did not descend randomly. Instead, I have a special quest. Vinalin said with a smile. Special quest? Jiang Fei was stunned. That's right. My name here is Sardira, said Vinlon with a smile. As he was the manager of this game, he had different identities in front of different people. In front of Jiang Fei, he was Vinlon. In front of the players, he was Nehru, who issued the quest. In the Vizari army, his name was Sardira. Sardira? This name was still unfamiliar to Jiang Fei. Oh! You haven't heard of this name, have you? Then, let me rephrase it. I am the ambassador of the Holy Messenger, said Varen with a smile. You? The Holy Messenger? What the H hell is going on? Jiang Fei felt even more confused when he heard this. If the Holy Messenger was created by Varen, then why did he not come to help him? Why did he go to the Vizari army? This is what happened. Varian began to answer the questions in Jiang Fei's mind. It turned out that after Virion met Jiang Fei the last time, he had been given a new mission by the development team. He wanted to help the NPCs build a force that was strong enough to fight against players. If that was the case, Virion could openly support Jiang Fei. But the problem was that this was only the first step of his mission. When this power was enough to contend with players, the second step of the quest began. A new batch of players would enter the game and join the battle in the name of the Holy Messenger's advance army. Vinalon's mission was to open up the faction system and let the two groups of players fight each other. Anyone who had played games before knew that PvP games were not as profitable as PvP games. After all, there were only a few players who spent money to torture monsters. On the other hand, there were many nouveau riches who spent money to torture other players. In the eyes of the development team, everything was for the sake of making money. In the beginning, because the game had just started running, they had been more restrained. However, such a realistic game quickly attracted a large number of players to start moving in. Now that the players were almost done with their population quests, the development team had obtained a large number of carriers. Naturally, they would be able to attract more players to participate in the game. In the development team settings, the Vizari army and the Holy Messenger were allies. They represented a force called the Resistance. In the development team settings, the Merchant Alliance formed an imperial army with the existing players to fight against the resistance. F asterisk CK. 
They are playing the game with our lives, Jiang Fei said angrily. Previously, although the players had carried out massacres, they were intruders. The intelligent creatures in this universe were rebels. It was reasonable for both sides to fight to the death. However, now, in the design of the development team, two ways of players led the two strongest forces in the universe to fight each other. They experienced the joy of the game, and the intelligent life forms in this universe paid the price of their lives. And what was even more tragic was that these people didn't know why they died when they died. If it was before, those soldiers who died in battle could be called martyrs, who stopped the invasion of foreign enemies. But now, they were only the victims of the war between the two universe forces. I know you're angry, but there's nothing we can do about it. Vinalin shrugged. He was only an executor. There was no way he could go against the wishes of the development team. Damn it! You damn fellows. Keep your fingers crossed. Do not let me enter your world. Otherwise, I will definitely let you have a taste of this. Jiang Fei said through gritted teeth. Don't be too angry. Although the settings of the development team have made you angry, there is at least one thing that is beneficial to all of you, said Vinalin. What is beneficial? Jiang Fei asked. At least you do not have to worry about those players destroying your universe in a short period of time, said Vinalin with a smile. Hmm, that's true. Jiang Fei nodded. Although the purpose of the development team was to prolong the life of the game as much as possible and make as much money as possible, at least objectively, they had indeed bought Jiang Fei more time. So, you have to work hard for the rest of the time, said Vinalin with a smile. I know. I will find an opportunity as soon as possible. Jiang Fei nodded and took the initiative to ask. Then, is there anything that you need me to do? Not at the moment. However, I will soon use another identity to contact the Merchant Alliance. When the time comes, we will naturally have time to communicate, said Vinalin. Hmm. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. At this point, there was nothing he could do to change the situation. He could only continue to follow the script set by the development team. At this time, what Jiang Fei could do was to actively increase his strength and find a loophole in the safe zone. Then, he would find a chance to enter the Gamma space. Only by going there would he be able to truly solve these problems. After giving everything away, Vitalin waved his hand. His entire body quickly faded away, and he disappeared. Sigh! Looks like this trip to Bazari is equivalent to a public expense trip. Jiang Fei sighed. His mission was to get in touch with the Holy Emissary. However, according to Vitalin, the Holy Emissary was allied with the Vizari army. It was impossible for him to get in touch with the Merchant Alliance. Therefore, he did not have much work to do this time. Chapter 1822 Chapter 1822 The Independent Plan Five days later, Jiang Fei ended his visit to Vizari. The Vizari army had received an ultimatum from Viranin, who had transformed into Sedila. If they were to establish an alliance with the Merchant Alliance, then the Holy Messenger would no longer provide military assistance to the Vizari army. Naturally, the Vizari army had no other choice. They had formed an alliance with the Merchant Alliance only to appease the Merchant Alliance. However, forming an alliance with the Holy Messenger was related to their own actual interests. Therefore, there was no need to hesitate, since they did not have to form an alliance with the Merchant Alliance. Jiang Fei, the special envoy of the Merchant Alliance, would become insignificant, according to Aino's plan. He could even kill Jiang Fei. However, the name of Tyrion was still very useful. Due to the reputation of the hermit-level god, the higher-ups of Azari's army would naturally not kill Jiang Fei. Of course, if these guys knew that Jiang Fei was also a hermit-level master, they would not even dare to treat him like this. When Jiang Fei left the Minx planet, he did not enjoy the grand treatment that he had received previously. The only people who came to send him off were a few small deacons of the Vizari army's foreign ministry. There was not even a single official. However, Jiang Fei did not care about that. Although he did not achieve the purpose of his visit this time, Jiang Fei was able to get to the bottom of the matter because he had met with Vinalin. Although the entire universe would become the playground of the players, and the universe war would become their plaything, there was at least one good thing. It was just like what Vinalin had said. The existence of this game had been greatly extended. If the players were to unify the universe, then this game would be more like a single-player game with many people, because the players would grow extremely fast. They would be able to get through the game very quickly. But after it became a battle game, if the development team operated properly, then this game could be played forever. After all, both sides were players. As long as the development team balanced well, 
Both sides would occasionally gain the upper hand. But neither side would win completely. After the game was extended, Jiang Fei would naturally have more time to prepare for his own matters. This was indeed very beneficial to him. Driving the shuttle, Jiang Fei finally met up with his fleet after a few days of sailing. Hobby, what's the result of this trip? Bella asked. Sai, let's go back and talk. After Jiang Fei parked the shuttle, he brought the group of girls back to the bridge. Then, he told the girls about what had happened. Ah, oh, Fei, what do you plan to do next? Nina asked. I haven't decided yet. Jiang Fei waved his hand. I think we might as well be independent. Aurelia suddenly said. Independent? Everyone, including Jiang Fei, looked at Aurelia in confusion. Yes. Aurelia nodded. Then, he said to everyone. According to what Ah Fei said just now, those players behind the light membrane are about to contact the Merchant Alliance. According to the character of the Merchant, this alliance is almost certain to succeed. Aurelia's analysis was indeed very reasonable. The reason why the development team divided the Merchant Alliance and the players who had entered this universe in the beginning into one force was because these profiteers only cared about profits. They did not care about hatred or anything else. If it was the Vizari Legion, they had lost so many battleships and soldiers at the hands of the players. This hatred would be difficult to appease. Even if the players took the initiative to express their goodwill, the Vasily Legion would fight to the end. Although the Vasily Legion was a bandit-like organization, one had to admit that these guys were very courageous and loyal. However, the Merchant Alliance was different. The profiteers valued benefits. As long as the benefits were big enough, the hatred and blood debt were not important. It seems like it. The others agreed with Aurelia's analysis. That's it. However, the merchants can ally with the players who kill without batting an eyelid. However, Ah Fei will definitely not tolerate it. Right, said Aurelia as he looked at Jiang Fei. Yes, I will not ally with them. Jiang Fei nodded. It was impossible for him to ally with the players, even if the players provided him with more advanced battleships. So, we are not on the same side as the Merchant Alliance after all, said Aurelia. But after we become independent, how will we survive in the crevice when we face the two major forces? The Resistance and the Imperial Army? asked Bella. Yes. Moreover, more than half of the captains in our fleet are the children of those profiteers. If we become independent, they will not agree. Right. Si Tang also felt that independence was not a simple matter. It is precisely because we are in the middle of a crevice. Moreover, these two forces will be evenly matched under the balance of the development group. That is why our existence is more valuable, said Aurelia. Very soon, the entire universe would become a three-sided situation. Although Jiang Fei's group was very weak, they would become the last straw that would affect the balance. That was why they were particularly important. However, Aurelia had clearly noticed the problem that S.I. Tying had raised. Therefore, she frowned and said, The problem of the captains has to be solved. Therefore, I hope that Ah Fei can get the technology of a player battleship. It is the technology of a person piloting a large battleship. I can try that. Jiang Fei nodded. According to Vitalin, the game mode of the player was about to change to faction battle mode. Therefore, their battleship would soon be popularized. When that time came, the technology would be popularized accordingly. Jiang Fei could ask Vinalin for a copy. As long as other people were using this type of battleship, Jiang Fei would not attract the attention of the development team if he used it as well. If you can get your hands on this kind of technology, then the captain's problem will be solved, said Aurelia. How? Ariel asked. Although most of those captains are from rich families, and they want follow us to be independent, some of them are from humble families. In order to get ahead, of course, they have to find a new force. You have to know that the Merchant Alliance's promotion path has been controlled by those rich families. The humble family's promotion power is higher than the sky. So the probability of them choosing us is very high. Aurelia analyzed. Although the number of captains who came from humble backgrounds was not many. Accounting for only about one-tenth of the number of captains. These people often had real talents. With them as the commander of the small fleet. Then even if the captains of other ships did not know much about command. They could not make a big mistake. Chapter 1823 Chapter 1823 Villain's Call According to Aurelia's plan, most of the captains in Jiang Fei's fleet would oppose their independence. When that time came, these captains would naturally be eliminated. Only those who were willing to work with them would be left. The remaining captains were almost all from humble backgrounds. They were also true talents. They could totally take charge of a small fleet. This way, 
Aurelia would personally take charge of the battle. With these captains from humble families taking charge of the small battles, it was more than enough to deal with the players. As for the Vasily Legion and Merchant Alliance's fleet, Aurelia and Jiang Fei did not intend to make enemies with them. After all, in the eyes of Jiang Fei and Aurelia, it did not matter if it was the Merchant Alliance or the Vasily Legion. After all, they were all people in this universe. Killing each other would be tantamount to cannibalism. Moreover, after independence, Jiang Fei's strength was mainly to deal with the two major forces. What they needed was not to participate in the war, but to avoid the war as much as possible. Anyway, Jiang Fei needed time to plan his own things. The fleet war. The less they participated, the better. Hmm. If that's the case, then independence is indeed feasible. Nina was the first to speak. Actually, independence is also good. It saves us from being cannon fodder for that asterisk shoal. Bella also nodded. Ever since Jiang Fei joined the Merchant Alliance, although Lust had placed great importance on Jiang Fei, he also had the intention of using Jiang Fei to charge into the battle. Ever since Jiang Fei joined the Merchant Alliance, Lust had handed over almost all the matters regarding external battles to him. Hmm. If you think that it's possible, Aurelia, you can start implementing it. In the end, Jiang Fei decided. Actually, in Jiang Fei's heart, he did not really care whether he was independent or not. After all, Jiang Fei did not have any ambition. It could even be said that he did not have any ideals. He felt a little comfortable with a little wealth. However, ever since he obtained the ring, Jiang Fei's fate seemed to have changed. One thing after another pushed him forward. It was as if if he did not work hard to fight, he and his family would be in danger. Therefore, Jiang Fei was always on the run. Therefore, Jiang Fei did not have many thoughts about Aurelia's suggestion. However, one of the things that attracted him was that after he became independent, he could avoid getting involved in the war between the Imperial Army and the Resistance Army. After all, if Jiang Fei was still in the Merchant Alliance, once the Imperial Army and the Resistance Army started a war, he would definitely be sent to the front line of the war by lust. As of now, Jiang Fei was the most capable general in the Merchant Alliance. What Jiang Fei needed the most right now was time. If he was delayed by the war, how would he be able to increase his strength? How would he be able to find the flaw in the light membrane? How would he be able to find the opportunity to enter the world of the players? It was also because of this reason that Jiang Fei agreed to Aurelia's plan for independence. Although the plan was approved, it was not carried out in a hurry, because the Merchant Alliance and the players had not formed an alliance yet. Jiang Fei's independence was not justified. When the Merchant Alliance and the players formed an alliance and officially established the Imperial Army, Jiang Fei could use the excuse that hatred could not be wiped out with benefits. The debt of blood had to be paid in blood as an excuse to officially become independent from the Merchant Alliance. Just as Jiang Fei was plotting his independence, Vinalin was not idle either. He had just negotiated with the Vizari Legion about the military aid agreement. He immediately transformed into a Loza and came to the Merchant Alliance. This time, Vinalon's identity was Sarnaga's special envoy. Although the players could be said to be evil in this universe, they had done more than one thing to destroy the planet. However, after Vinalin promised sufficient benefits, the merchants immediately suffered from selective amnesia. They completely forgot about the viciousness of the players. They only remembered that Sarnaga would provide them with the best battleships and troops. Moreover, Sarnaga also promised that they would not occupy a planet. Every inch of land they conquered would be owned by the Merchant Alliance. In the face of benefits, the merchants surrendered. They had basically finalized the plan to form an alliance with Sarnaga and establish a universe empire. At the end of the negotiation, the leader of Sarnaga, Virion, who had transformed into Alesha, made a request. He wanted to meet the most outstanding leader of the Merchant Alliance because only then she could rest assured and hand over the troops and battleships to the Merchant Alliance. For this, Lust immediately sent Jiang Fei back to the capital star of the Merchant Alliance Pizerns. Looks like Vitalin has arrived at the Merchant Alliance. Jiang Fei sighed after receiving the message. He had clearly guessed Lust's reason for sending him back in such a hurry. Go! I have already started making preparations. When you return, it will be time for us to declare our independence. Aurelia said. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded. If he did not know that Vitalin was summoning him, Jiang Fei would not even want to go back. After all, this was a celebration of the alliance between a merchant and a ruthless player. Jiang Fei felt ashamed of himself. Unlike the Vasari army, although they had received the help of players, the Vasari army was deceived. 
they did not know that the so-called Holy Messenger was also a player. Otherwise, they would not have formed an alliance with him. However, the Merchant Alliance was different. They knew that these players had committed the evil act of destroying the planet. However, they still formed an alliance with them for the sake of benefits. This was something that Jiang Fei looked down on from the bottom of his heart. Regardless, the Merchant Alliance had not publicly formed an alliance with the players, yet. Therefore, Jiang Fei did not have an excuse to become independent now. Moreover, he still had to meet up with Vinalin. Therefore, he still had to go on this trip to Bethanus. As usual, Jiang Fei did not bring anyone along. It was still the same shuttle. Jiang Fei set off on his journey again. A few days later, he arrived at the gravity well in Bethanus. After he sent out the order to dock, Jiang Fei quietly waited for the response from the airport. Hello, Lieutenant General Jiang Fei. Your landing pad has been prepared. Please land at Pier 44 Z3 landing pad. Very soon, the airport responded. As Jiang Fei was a lieutenant general of the alliance, he could be considered a high-ranking official. Therefore, his access code was very useful. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded and landed at the Z3 landing pad according to the instructions. As soon as he stepped out of the shuttle, Jiang Fei saw the person who had come to welcome him. This young man was also dressed in military uniform. Judging from his military rank, he should be a major. General, I am General Luster's administrative secretary. The general has already arranged a place for you to stay. Please follow me. The young officer said to Jiang Fei. Chapter 1824 Chapter 1824 Opportunity to Sneak into the Safe Zone Following the Major Jiang Fei arrived at his temporary residence in Pizerns. This time, he was summoned by his superior and not sent to a foreign country as an envoy. Naturally, he would not receive such a grand welcome. Similarly, he would not be able to stay in a luxurious hotel that received foreign guests. Fortunately, the military's guest house was not too bad. Jiang Fei did not have many requests for such things. So he settled down peacefully. Early the next morning, Lu Sight called Jiang Fei to his office. Ah, Fei! Lu Sight smiled at Jiang Fei before he said, I called you back this time because I have something to discuss with you. My lord, please go ahead. Although Jiang Fei knew why Lu Sight was looking for him, he still pretended to be confused. Hmm. You also know that we, the Merchant Alliance, believe in peace. We do not want to be involved in endless wars. Lu Sight did not directly say what happened. Instead, he spoke in an official manner with Jiang Fei. Yes! Jiang Fei did not expose Lu Sight's insinuations. He just listened quietly. Recently, the invaders have sent envoys. They have expressed their desire for peace. Although we have experienced some wars. Fortunately, the casualties are not very high. Therefore, we also intend to end this meaningless war. What do you think? Lu Sight smiled as he asked Jiang Fei. Sir, I am only an executor. I will be responsible for implementing the Alliance's decision once it is made, Jiang Fei said expressionlessly. However, in his heart, he despised the shamelessness of these profiteers even more. Indeed, in the eyes of these profiteers, the war against the invaders was meaningless. There was no profit at all. If they won this war, there would be no reward. If they lost, they would have to go bankrupt. It was only a choice that they would make when they were forced into a corner. But what if they formed an alliance with the invaders? In that case, they would join forces to fight the Vasily Legion. And the invaders promised not to occupy an inch of land. Then, for the Merchant Alliance, this war would be over. After all, once they won, they would get the Vasily Legion to size up the planet. Those resource planets could provide the Merchant Alliance with raw materials to size up. And those administrative planets had countless people. And a large number of people was a vast market in the eyes of the merchants. Not only could they obtain the raw materials needed for production, but they could also obtain a vast market. In the eyes of the merchants, what could be better than that? Therefore, Alusha, who was the avatar of Vinalin, easily gained the trust of the Merchant Alliance. Both parties signed a contract. Yes! After hearing Jiang Fei's words, Lu Sight nodded in satisfaction. Then, he continued, However, Sarnaga does not seem to be at ease with our strength. They are worried about handing the fleet to an idiot. So they want to meet our fleet commander. That's why I thought of you. Sir, you want me to meet the leader of Sarnaga? Jiang Fei asked. In fact, he knew very well that Aloza was Varen. Yes, that's true. Although there are many generals in the Merchant Alliance who are good at fighting. 
I still trust you the most, Lucite said, since you think so highly of me. Master, I am willing to accept this quest. Jiang Fei nodded. Okay. Lu Sai clapped his hands happily and took out a small box from the drawer. The box opened and Lu Sai took out a small epaulet. Now, on behalf of the Merchant Alliance's Supreme Council and the Universe Empire's Supreme Military Council, I hereby bestow the title of General Jiang Fei. Lu Sai held the epaulet with both hands and walked in front of Jiang Fei. Thank you for your nurturing. Sir, of course, Jiang Fei would not refuse. This promotion was a matter of course. After all, the Merchant Alliance had pointed him to the leader of Sarnaga. However, if a lieutenant general of the Alliance was the strongest commander, it would be a little hard to believe. That was why Lu Sight and the Merchant Alliance had temporarily promoted him to the rank of general before Jiang Fei left. However, the title of general was no longer important to Jiang Fei. After all, Jiang Fei had already been fighting for his independence. Therefore, the title given to him by the Merchant Alliance was meaningless to him. However, this promotion was not a small blow to the Merchant Alliance. After all, if Jiang Fei was only a lieutenant general, he would only be a mid to high level general when he decided to become an independent general. However, now that Jiang Fei had been promoted to the rank of general and had become the nominal commander in chief of the Merchant Alliance's fleet, if he decided to become an independent general now, it would be equivalent to a rebellion by the Alliance's Grand Marshal. The influence of the two was completely different. At that moment, Lu Sai did not realize this at all. Moreover, he had never thought that Jiang Fei would become independent. After all, if Jiang Fei had the intention to defect with a master like Tyrion, there was no need for him to come to the Merchant Alliance. Therefore, Lu Sai, who was full of joy, completed the promotion ceremony for Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei had become one of the highest ranking generals in the Merchant Alliance. Jiang Fei left Lu Sai's office with the rank of general. The colonel from before drove him to the Sarnaga embassy. Jiang Fei did not feel anything when he saw Vinalin, who had transformed into a beautiful woman. After all, this guy had appeared in all kinds of appearances, whether it was the skinny waiter or the wild pig-headed girl. All of these forms were much more exciting than the elegant and elegant beauty in front of him. After he had left the room, Jiang Fei asked directly, Virion, why did you specifically ask me to come here this time? I noticed that you seem to be planning to become independent. Virion did not immediately answer Jiang Fei's question. Instead, he asked a question back. Hmm, that's true. Jiang Fei did not hide anything from Virion. After all, this guy was the game's inspector. He could be said to be everywhere. Therefore, it would not be easy to hide anything from him unless Jiang Fei hid all his secrets in the 10th dimension. I advise you not to do that, said Vinalin. Why? I do not want to get involved in this meaningless war. Jiang Fei's words were very similar to what Luster had said previously. However, his starting point was completely different. The reason is very simple. The Merchant Alliance has formed an alliance with the players. When the time comes, the players will naturally appear in the Merchant Alliance. The people from the Merchant Alliance will also appear in the territory of the players. Vitalon's meaning was very clear. Since the Merchant Alliance had formed an alliance with the players, it would not matter if some of the NPCs from the Allied forces entered the safe zone. This was clearly something that the development team had not thought of. It could be considered a loophole in that game. Or perhaps, Vinalin had used his identity to hide the development team and use a reasonable method to get the NPCs into the safe zone of the players. However, if Jiang Fei became independent, he would no longer belong to the Merchant Alliance. In that case, he would naturally not have the chance to sneak into the safe zone of the players as a friendly NPC. Chapter 1825 Chapter 1825 Authority What? There's such a thing? Jiang Fei was stunned when he heard that. He never thought that happiness would come so suddenly. Jiang Fei had been trying his best to enter the safe zone of the players. However, the golden light membrane was too strong. That was why he had never been able to achieve his goal. He did not expect that Vinalin would actually obtain such an opportunity for him. However, don't get excited too early. Even if you enter the safe zone, it will not be easy to enter the Gamma Dimension through the teleportation portal. Vinalin poured cold water on Jiang Fei. That's right. Jiang Fei sighed. He also knew that entering the safe zone did not mean that he could enter the Gamma Dimension. Otherwise, why would Vinalin not go through it himself? If that was the case, wouldn't he be free? However, no matter what, he was at least one step closer to his goal. Although entering the safe zone did not mean that he could enter the Gamma Dimension. 
It would at least allow Jiang Fei to see what the teleportation portal looked like. Moreover, it would allow him to understand the teleportation portal better. Although he might not be able to figure out the conditions required to pass through the teleportation portal in a short period of time, it would at least give him a chance to get close to the teleportation portal. Oh right! There's one more thing! Vitalin seemed to have suddenly thought of something. There's another thing? Jiang Fei asked curiously. Yes! And it's a good thing! Not only did Vitalin not tell Jiang Fei immediately, but he also kept Jiang Fei in suspense. What good thing? Jiang Fei asked. You've played the game before. You should know that the high-level NPCs on your side can give quests to players. Right. Vitalin said as he raised his eyebrows. Hmm? Jiang Fei's eyes widened. He had not thought of this. Although Jiang Fei had pretended to be an NPC and gave quests to the player Sun Planet L, he had been lying back then. He did not think that he could actually play the game for real this time. Jiang Fei was now the nominal commander-in-chief of the Alliance's fleet. He was practically the Grand Marshal of the Merchant Alliance. To the players, he was definitely a super high-level NPC. Therefore, it was no problem for him to give the players a quest. However, you have to pay attention when you give them a quest. That is, if they complete the quest, the reward must be redeemed, said Vinalin with a very serious tone. I know. Jiang Fei did not want to attract the attention of the development team. Therefore, he would not go back on his word. However, if the players did not have the life to complete the quest, he could not be blamed. At that moment, Jiang Fei had already thought of a vicious plan. Since he was the one who issued the quest, if he colluded with the Vizari army, ambushing the player fleet would be a piece of cake. When that time came, he could let the two waves of players fight each other. This would also reduce the casualties of the real soldiers. As for the specifics, you can think about it yourself. However, you must remember what I'm going to say next. Vinalin said with a serious expression. What is it? Jiang Fei asked. Don't let Natasha lose interest in this game. Don't let her lose interest in you either. Vinalin said. Natasha? Why? Jiang Fei was very confused about this. In his eyes, Natasha was just a spoiled little girl. Moreover, she was a little fangirl. He could not tell what she was capable of. You don't have to ask too much about the specifics. I will tell you when the time comes. However, you must remember what I said just now. This time, Vitalin still did not tell Jiang Fei why he valued Natasha so much. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. Because Vitalin's interests were on the same side as his. He believed that Vitalin would not cheat him at this time. After that, Jiang Fei and Vitalin chatted for a while more. The meeting between the two officially ended. After returning to Luster's office, Luster asked anxiously, Ah, Fei, how is it? What's that guy's impression of you? The matter of the alliance between the two sides is basically settled. As for how to form the universe empire, you guys can discuss it yourselves. I'm only responsible for military matters. Politics has nothing to do with me. Jiang Fei said calmly. Good. I knew you would not disappoint me. Lu Sai laughed. Jiang Fei's answer made him very satisfied. Indeed, they did not need a politician because the profiteers had already divided the scope of interests. There was no room for Jiang Fei to take another share. Now that Jiang Fei had announced that he was only responsible for military matters and that politics had nothing to do with him, it meant that Jiang Fei was only playing the role of the universe empire's thug. As for how the empire was built and how the interests were divided, he would not be involved. However, I hope that you will not interfere too much with the specific fleet deployment. Jiang Fei's meaning was very clear. Profiteers were in charge of politics. They would decide whether to fight or not. As for how to fight, how the fleet was deployed, it was up to Jiang Fei to decide. In fact, in the beginning, Jiang Fei had never thought of taking all the Merchant Alliance's military affairs into his own hands. After he had made the decision to become independent, Jiang Fei did not care anymore. Moreover, the Merchant Alliance only wanted him to be the Grand Marshal in name. The real fleet control would still be controlled by the profiteers. However, after listening to Varen's description, Jiang Fei knew that he had to stay in the Merchant Alliance. Only then could he sneak into the player, safe zone. That way, Jiang Fei was no longer willing to be just a puppet Grand Marshal. This, Lu Sai was a little dumbfounded. He did not expect Jiang Fei to take the opportunity to demand real power. Moreover, it was the full command of the army. Sir, you do not have to answer me immediately. You can go back for a meeting and ask Sarnaga about their intentions. Jiang Fei said very calmly. That was because until Aloza was Varen, 
Therefore, Jiang Fei was certain that Varen would cooperate with him. When that time came, as long as Varen insisted that the fleet had to be handed over to Jiang Fei to command, the profiteers would compromise no matter what. After all, they wanted to expand their power and build their own empire. They definitely could not do so without the support of Sarnaga. Ah, Fei! It seems like I have underestimated you! Lu Sight sighed. From Jiang Fei's tone, he understood that Jiang Fei was determined to win this time. Master, I don't mean anything by it. I'm just afraid of an amateur commanding an expert. Jiang Fei shrugged. All right, let's have a meeting. It'll give you an answer later, said Lu Sight. He could not make the decision on his own. He needed to discuss it with the other higher ups of the Merchant Alliance. No problem. Master Lu Sight, I will stay on planet Pizerns for three days. After that, I will return to the fleet, Jiang Fei said. Then, he turned around and left Lu Sight's office. Sai, I really don't know if it's right or wrong to call this kid here. Luster sighed. Chapter 1826. Chapter 1826. Chapter 1826. Jiang Fei had been staying on planet Pizerns for two days. During these two days, no one paid any attention to him. Jiang Fei did not care about this at all. He just stayed in the hotel and practiced his martial arts whenever he had nothing to do. When he was bored, he would talk to 0541. Because of Vinalin, Jiang Fei could be said to be very confident about this matter. He was not worried that the Merchant Alliance would abandon him. In the past two days, the Merchant Alliance was helpless. After Jiang Fei left, Lust immediately went to meet with the other big merchants. Moreover, they did ask for Sarnaga's opinion. At this time, Vinlon naturally had to speak to Jiang Fei. Therefore, as the leader of Sarnaga, he insisted that Sarnaga would only hand over the fleet to Jiang Fei. As for the other leaders of the Merchant Alliance, they were not at ease at all. In this way, the Merchant Alliance had no choice. Unless they gave up on cooperating with Sarnaga, they had to hand over military power to Jiang Fei. However, the problem was that the Vizari army was now unprecedentedly powerful. Even the strength of the Vizari army, which had just suffered a defeat, was far stronger than the Merchant Alliance. In this way, if the Merchant Alliance did not cooperate with the Vizari army, the Merchant Alliance would be in a passive position against the other two forces. As the intruder, the Vizari army wanted to expand their territory. They would have to fight against the local forces. The Vasily Legion could not defeat them. So the Merchant Alliance would naturally become the best target. Although the Vasily Legion was a local force. The problem was that the Merchant Alliance knew what kind of nature these bandits were. If they defeated Sarnaga, then the first thing they would have to deal with would probably be the Merchant Alliance. Therefore, the Merchant Alliance was in a relatively awkward position. They had to cooperate with Sarnaga. Only then would they be able to fight against the Vizari army with the support of the Holy Messenger. As for the Sarnagas, they did not know what kind of spell Jiang Fei had cast on them. They only trusted Jiang Fei now. Therefore, the Merchant Alliance had no choice. They had to use Jiang Fei and give him sufficient authority. Although the profiteers realized that they had no choice. In order to prevent Jiang Fei from becoming too arrogant, they decided to leave Jiang Fei alone for three days. When he was about to leave, they would give him authority. On the third day, Jiang Fei also knew that these profiteers were deliberately hanging him up. Their purpose was to make him take the initiative to look for them. However, the profiteers were not in a hurry. Jiang Fei was even more in no hurry. He did not go to Lu Sight's office at all. Instead, he took a car and went straight to the airport. What? That kid went to the airport? Lus was anxious when he heard the news. If Jiang Fei quit, how would they explain it to Sarnaga? Therefore, Lust hurriedly contacted Jiang Fei while he took a car and chased after him. Actually, it was not only Lust. The other leaders of the Merchant Alliance could not sit still anymore. When they heard that Jiang Fei was really going to leave, they all chased after him. Therefore, when Jiang Fei arrived at the airport, other than Lu Sight, there were three other big shots of the Merchant Alliance waiting for him. Kid, you're really something. You don't even pick up my calls. Lu Sight said to Jiang Fei with a bitter smile. Oh, my lord, I'm sorry. My phone is out of battery, Jiang Fei said casually. Bullsh asterisk T. Lu Sight cursed in his heart. With their current technological level, the energy supply was using the Global Integrated Wireless Energy Transmission System. As long as one did not leave this planet, then there would definitely not be any power failures. However, although they knew that Jiang Fei was bullsh asterisk Ting, the big shots were cursing in their hearts. Each and every one of them made it clear. 
After all, they had a favor to ask of Jiang Fei. Naturally, they could not let him get away with it. Ah, oh, Fei, where are you going? A fat guy stood up and said to Jiang Fei, There's still something going on at the fleet. I can't be away for too long. So I have to make a trip back. Jiang Fei said casually, What is so important that you can't even attend a press conference for your promotion to the Empire's Grand Marshal? The fat guy asked with a smile. Ah? Oh? Jiang Fei pretended to be surprised. Why? Didn't anyone inform you yesterday? The fatty pretended to be the real deal. The people below are too careless. Why didn't they inform Jiang Fei about such an important matter? Another guy chimed in. Yeah, that shouldn't have happened. I will go back and investigate. I want to see who is the one who is neglecting his duty. Lucite also went down the slope. F asterisk CK. These old guys are getting more and more cunning. Jiang Fei laughed coldly in his heart. Although he knew that these guys were obviously going to ignore him for two days. He did not expose them for the sake of everyone. My lords, what exactly do you mean? Jiang Fei asked, pretending to be stupid. It's like this. After our discussion with Sarnaga, we have decided to appoint you as the Grand Marshal of the Empire after the establishment of the Empire. You will be the commander of the Empire's strongest fleet. Although he had promised Jiang Fei to become the Grand Marshal of the Empire and command the Empire's strongest fleet, he did not say that Jiang Fei would be the commander of all the fleets in the country. Therefore, although the battleships and new fleets provided by Sarnaga were given to Jiang Fei, moreover, he had full authority to command them. However, the private armies of those profiteers were still in his hands. Moreover, these profiteers had already discussed it at a meeting. They planned to disband all the fleets in the country before the empire was established and sell them all. Of course, they were not selling them to outsiders. Instead, they were dealing with it internally. They wanted to turn the fleets into the escort and security fleets of merchant ships. To put it bluntly, they wanted to change the name of the fleets. They wanted to turn the fleets that used to belong to the merchant alliance. They wanted to turn them into the private soldiers of a few big merchants. In this way, in the minds of these people, the fleets of the merchant alliance were still in their hands. Jiang Fei only had the new army provided by Sarnaga. In this way, they would not be at a disadvantage no matter what. However, these guys had a good idea. However, they would soon understand the difference between the player battleship and the trash ship in their hands. What they did not know was the difference between the main battleship and the ordinary battleship. Even the number of battleships could not make up for it. Therefore, when the time came, Jiang Fei, who had absolute power, would definitely be the most powerful official in the merchant alliance. Jiang Fei was actually well aware of the plans of these profiteers. After all, Political power came from the barrel of a gun. These profiteers could not possibly hand over the entire army to him. Therefore, Jiang Fei had already expected this. My lords, isn't it a little too hasty to hand such an important responsibility to me? Jiang Fei deliberately gave way. After all, this was just a routine matter. This would make him appear more noble in character. Basically, this was what powerful officials did when they were in power. Chapter 1827 Chapter 1827 The Empire was established. Since he had decided not to be independent anymore and wanted to play along with the profiteers, Jiang Fei naturally could not continue to clamor to go back. Therefore, after obtaining the full command of the army that he wanted, Jiang Fei took the opportunity to get off the horse. He returned to the parliament with Luster and the others. The Supreme Parliament was the highest authority in the Merchant Alliance. It was formed by 108 great merchants. These 108 great merchants had almost 90% of the merchant alliance's wealth. Each of them could be said to be as rich as a country. However, among these people, five of them were the richest and most powerful. Their wealth accounted for more than 70% of the total assets of the merchant alliance. Therefore, they held absolute power in the council. Lus was the weakest among these five people. Their family's most profitable business was the military factory on Skoda Star. Among the remaining four people, Jiang Fei saw another two in the airport today. The fatty was the second most powerful person among the five. His name was Jupiter. He was a pig-headed person from Planet Peg. Generally speaking, people from Planet Peg were cooks. Other than being good at cooking, they did not seem to be very smart. Although they had some fighting talent, they were relatively average. They were far from being as brave as the Decker Gator. However, this Jupiter was clearly an exception. His family seemed to have taken away the intelligence of the people from Planet Peg. Therefore, not only were they smart, but they had also accumulated an astonishing amount of wealth. The other guy was called Karatsi. 
he was ranked fourth among the five big shots. This guy was just an ordinary human. He looked no different from an earthling. Similarly, he did not have any special abilities. However, his family also possessed an astonishing amount of wealth. In the Supreme Council, Jiang Fei finally met the last two of the five big shots, Xuanka, who was ranked third, and Rivendell, who was the most powerful. Xuanka was an excellent candidate. This kind of person was born from the most ordinary of ordinary people. However, their ancestors had made genetic adjustments and optimizations on the basis of ordinary people. In the end, they formed a new race. They were more calculative than ordinary people. Their bodies were also more agile. Even their lifespans had been greatly extended. They could be said to be super ordinary people. However, when faced with some strange races in the universe, the excellent candidates still did not have any advantage. Rivendell was an extremely special person. He was always wrapped in a black cloak. No one had seen his true face. No one knew his background. However, after Jiang Fei quietly opened the violet eye, he saw Rivendell's true face through the energy string. This guy was actually a cyborg. 80% of his body had been replaced by machinery. His original physical body might have been exhausted due to old age. However, through this mechanical transformation, it gave it a lifespan and strength that far exceeded its own. However, it also lost the fun that a living creature should have. When he first met the five big bosses, Jiang Fei had already made his position clear. He did not participate in political matters, nor did he care about them. He was only responsible for military matters. This was fully acknowledged by the five big bosses. It was also because Jiang Fei was not interested in the interests in their hands that they were so happy to hand over military power to Jiang Fei. After a day of rest, Jiang Fei participated in the final meeting of the Supreme Council as the 109th person. During this meeting, the five big bosses announced that they were going to cooperate with Sarnaga. As they had already agreed to it, the other businessmen had no objections to the establishment of the Universe Empire. Since the Empire was established, naturally, there would be an emperor. However, the throne was not inherited. It was elected. However, this election was only limited to the five big bosses' families. Unless the emperor went against the rules, he would be elected for life. Only when he died would the next emperor be elected. Naturally, the first emperor would be Rivendell, the strongest of the five big bosses. When he saw this decision, Jiang Fei could not help but sneer in his heart. If the other big bosses knew that Rivendell was a cyborg, they would definitely not agree to this. Because as the organs in his body withered, Rivendell would sooner or later become a cyborg in the form of a machine. When that time came, he could be repaired. Unless he was assassinated, he would not die. This meant that the position of the emperor, the other four big bosses families did not need to be concerned. However, although Jiang Fei knew Rivendell's identity, he did not expose it. Just as he said, he was not interested in politics at all. It did not make any difference to him who was the emperor. What he wanted was to be a high-tier NPC. He wanted to be able to sneak into the safe zone of players so that he could take the opportunity to give players a quest and trip them up. Therefore, the power struggle of these profiteers had nothing to do with Jiang Fei, even if they were in an internal conflict. As long as the new army was still in Jiang Fei's hands, these profiteers would be dead. Jiang Fei would not even blink his eyes. That was because the power of speech was in the hands of the five big shots. Although the other hundred or so members of parliament also claimed that they had the right to vote. They were just a bunch of clapping parties. No matter what decision the five big shots made, they could only applaud and welcome them. Therefore, after the meeting ended, the parliament was disbanded. All the members of parliament received different official positions. With a shake of their bodies, they changed from a member of the supreme parliament to a high official of the universe empire. The big businessmen who had received benefits naturally did not say much. After all, they could not participate much in the previous alliance's resolution. Now that they had an emperor, it did not make much of a difference to them. Three days later, the universe empire was established. The news of Rivendell's ascension to the throne was widely publicized by the media controlled by the businessmen. At the same time, the news of Jiang Fei's ascension to the position of the empire's grand marshal was also spread. What's going on? Didn't Ah Fei go to deal with some errands? How did he become the empire's grand marshal? Aurelia was confused. Although they were far away from the capital, Pizerns, the girls were also informed of the news under the overwhelming publicity of the media. Then, are we still independent? Ariel asked. Don't be in a hurry to act. I'm afraid that something has changed. Nina said. That's true. Perhaps Vinlan has told him something. Bella guessed. Anyway, 
He will come back when he's done with his work. Let's ask him when the time comes. Si Tang shrugged. She did not really care about these things. In any case, as Jiang Fei had become the Empire's Grand Marshal and led the Empire's strongest fleet, the independent plans of Aurelia and the others naturally had to be put on hold for now. They had to wait for Jiang Fei to return. Only then could they make further plans. Half a month later, Jiang Fei returned home in glory and returned to his fleet. Ah, Fei! What happened? Bella and the others immediately surrounded him. Chapter 1828, Take a Day Off I got into a fight with my daughter-in-law, and I was so upset that I couldn't write a book. I'm sorry. Chapter 1829, Chapter 1828 This is what happened, said Jiang Fei, when he saw that the girls had gathered around him. He told them everything that had happened. Does that mean that we will have a chance to enter the Gamma space very soon? Asked S.I. Tying. I'm afraid it's not that simple said Nina with a frown. Sister Nina, why do you say that? Ariel asked in confusion. If it was really that easy, Vitalin would have escaped long ago. Why would he go through so much trouble to help Ah Fei? Nina analyzed. That's true. Even if we entered the light membrane, we would not be able to easily pass through the portal. The people in the Gamma Dimension are not fools. They would not be unprepared. Jiang Fei nodded and said. Then why are you all so excited? Ariel said with disappointment. Hee <laughs> hee. You can't think like that. At least now. We have a chance to get close to the portal. When the time comes, we'll have a chance to find a way in. Said Jiang Fei with a smile. Yeah. At least the light membrane that we were unable to break through is no longer a barrier. This is a huge improvement. Said Nina. That's true. Ariel nodded cutely. Although she was still a little disappointed. She smiled when she saw that everyone else was so happy. After a simple exchange with the girls. Jiang Fei began to get busy again. Now! There was no need for him to fight for independence. The strongest fleet of the entire empire would soon be under his command. When that time came, he would have one of the two strongest fleets in the entire universe. Therefore, Jiang Fei's priority now was to expand the port of Skoda Star and expand the arsenal of Skoda Star. When Sarnaga's battleship arrived, the first thing Jiang Fei had to do was to dismantle it. He needed more and better blueprints to modify the Merchant Alliance's existing battleship. After all, although, player, battleships were powerful. The number of them was limited by the development team. Even if Vitalin wanted to help, it would not be able to supply them without restraint. Therefore, Jiang Fei needed to expand the production capacity of Skoda Star in advance. Once he obtained the new blueprints, he would immediately mass-produce the battleships. When that time came, he could destroy the resistance and also design a trap to kill the players. On his side, it was like killing two birds with one stone. After having this initial plan, Jiang Fei was completely busy. It was not until a month later when Lu Sight summoned him again to Planet Pizerns that Jiang Fei was able to get out of his busy schedule. Jiang Fei could roughly guess the purpose of this trip to Pizerns. After all, after the Merchant Alliance and Sarnaga worked together, there would be some contact between the two parties. At that time, it was inevitable that they would meet with the players. As the Grand Marshal, Jiang Fei could not leave him alone when he negotiated with Sarnaga's advance army. What will come will come. Jiang Fei sighed. He had never thought that there would be a day where he would have a face-to-face -face conversation with the players. In such a calm situation, as there was no danger in going to Pizerns, Jiang Fei had specially brought two staff officers with him. Nina and Aurelia would go with Jiang Fei. The three of them took the shuttle and arrived at Bizern Star very quickly. As the Grand Marshal of the Empire, Jiang Fei naturally received priority treatment. Therefore, he quickly landed in the airport's exclusive parking lot. After the reception staff arranged the accommodation, Lu Sight sent someone to pick Jiang Fei up in the afternoon. Ah, Fei, there are two main reasons for you to come over this time. First, the Interstellar Navy of the Universe Empire has been officially established. It is time for you to take up the position of Grand Marshal. Lucite said with a smile. Hee hee. Lord Lucite. Why don't you just say the second thing? Jiang Fei said calmly. Ha ha ha. You are still as direct as ever. Kid. Lucite laughed awkwardly. Then, he continued. Yes, the second thing is indeed only you can accomplish. Sarnaga's vanguard has already arrived at the Cologne Galaxy and has been stationed there. Now, they want to contact you and discuss some things. After Lucite finished speaking, he sighed again. He and the other big shots could not understand why Jiang Fei had met with the Sarnaga leader and that person had trusted him to such an extent. 
There were many things that he was the only person to talk to. If it was someone else, they would not even bother. Okay, I understand. I will head to the Cologne Galaxy as soon as possible. Xiang Fei nodded. Of course. He could not tell others about his relationship with Vinalin. All right. Then, go and inspect your subordinates first, said Lucite. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. After leaving Lu Sight's office, Jiang Fei quickly joined his subordinates in the parliament building. Speaking of which, these profiteers were really ruthless. As the Grand Marshal of the Empire's Navy, Jiang Fei's subordinates did not even have a small, broken ship. The soldiers of the fleet were still waiting at their respective stations. However, a large group of captains had gathered in Pisenes. In the large conference hall that could accommodate tens of thousands of people, Jiang Fei saw the group of captains under his command. They had been assigned to Jiang Fei's subordinates. But the profiteers had not given them a ship. Moreover, the standard of these captains was also mixed. More than half of them were useless snacks. After all, the five bosses had their own selfish motives. They kept all the battleships for their own use. Naturally, they would not be willing to hand over the outstanding captains to Jiang Fei. Therefore, they only sent those who were not very capable over. Jiang Fei was actually aware of this. However, he did not care too much because the following war was meaningless. They had one. In order to balance the players from both sides, the development team would give more resources to the other side so that the two sides could fight each other evenly. Similarly, if they lost, the development team would also take care of them. Therefore, winning or losing any battle would be meaningless to the survival of both sides. The development team's goal was very simple. It was to let the two sides fight each other. That way, the rich players would spend money after being abused and enjoy the pleasure of abusing others. After the rich players on the opposite side were abused, they would also spend their money. This way, the cycle would begin. Naturally, the development team that operated the game would benefit. Very good. Everyone will be my brother Goza from now on. Let's fight bravely for the prosperity of the empire. Jiang Fei held the prepared speech prepared for him and read it aloud on the stage in high spirits. The captains below did not know if it was true or if they were deliberately trying to pander to him. In any case, they all looked excited. Unfortunately, they did not know what kind of meaningless war they would be facing. Chapter 1830, Chapter 1829 The First Direct Contact After meeting with the captains, Jiang Fei left Planet Pizerns and left the captains here. The reason why Jiang Fei did this was very simple. He did not have a battleship. What was the point of bringing a group of captains? Therefore, Jiang Fei needed to go to the Cologne Galaxy to meet with the players. When this matter was over, Vinalin would bring the battleship over. In the shuttle, Nina asked Jiang Fei, Ah, Fei, what do you think the players will think of us? Who knows? Jiang Fei shrugged. Compared to their attitude, I'm more worried that they will recognize Ah, Fei, said Aurelia with a frown. After all, Jiang Fei had previously destroyed the players' quest several times especially the leader of these players, Eamon. He had been defeated by Jiang Fei several times. If this guy recognized Jiang Fei, it would be a big deal. Don't worry. I've thought about this before. I've also asked Vinalin. Jiang Fei said with a smile. What did Vinalin say? Aurelia asked. He he. Those players will not recognize us because every time we sabotage their quests. Although sometimes we did not disguise ourselves. Vitalin had already taken care of it for us. Therefore, every time those players saw us, they would look different, said Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei could not help but admire Vitalon's ability to wipe his ass. That's not right. I remember that female player Natasha had seen you in two different quests. However, she could recognize you at a glance, Nina said. Ah, uh, Natasha. She might be an exception. When he mentioned Natasha, Jiang Fei could not help but feel a little awkward. After all, this little fangirl was a little too much of a fan. Moreover, Vitalin had especially reminded Jiang Fei. She said that Natasha was definitely not ordinary. Therefore, this little girl was clearly a little outstanding. All right. Seeing the slight awkwardness on Jiang Fei's face, Nina tactfully did not ask further. After two days of boring interstellar travel, Jiang Fei and the others finally arrived at the Cologne Galaxy. The Cologne Galaxy was the gateway galaxy of the Merchant Alliance. After passing through it, they directly entered the hinterland of the Merchant Alliance. This time, the player fleet called the Solnaga Advance Army, originally planned to enter the inner part of the Merchant Alliance. However, 
because the profiteers were still wary of these brutal players. They did not allow the players to enter the inner part of the merchant alliance. Therefore, they only allowed the players to temporarily stay in the Cologne galaxy and did not allow them to get close to planet Peens. To the players, the orders of the universe empire were like a fart and did not have any binding force. However, the problem was that the orders of the universe empire were also equivalent to a mission to them. Now, the quest was to gather in the Cologne galaxy and wait for orders. Therefore, although they could break into the hinterland of the merchant alliance, they had to stay there obediently in order to complete the quest and get the rewards. When Jiang Fei's shuttle arrived at the Cologne galaxy, a large green skull mark immediately appeared on the small map of the players. This mark represented the appearance of a friendly boss. Although such a big boss could not be defeated to farm equipment, it would usually issue high-level quests. The rewards were even more generous. Captain, there is a clear code communication connection. As 0541 was not on the ship, he once again took on the role of Jiang Fei's adjutant. Connected, Jiang Fei nodded and said, Respected Grand Marshal, I am the commander of Sarnanda's advance army. Amen. welcome to inspect our fleet. Amen was still very polite at this time. Although the players looked down on the NPCs from the bottom of their hearts. If you offended an NPC, he would not give you a quest or reduce your quest reward. For the players dot. However, it was not worth it. Therefore, they generally respected the NPCs who could give out quests. At least on the surface, they respected them very much. Nice to meet you. Amen! Jiang Fei nodded. Although Amen's image had changed again this time, Jiang Fei was still certain that the guy in front of him was the rich player. Following that, Jiang Fei entered Amen's ship under the guidance of a landing ship. F asterisk CK! If only I could have this glorious main battleship! Jiang Fei muttered in his heart as he entered the spaceship. This was not the first time Jiang Fei had entered the glorious main battleship. After all, they had discovered this type of main battleship even earlier than the players. If it was not for the development team, who was getting impatient. This type of main battleship had nothing to do with the players. It had already entered Jiang Fei's pocket. It's an honor to meet you, Grand Marshal. In the bridge, Jiang Fei met Eamon. Of course, there were also a few of his stupid military advisors. Hello, Eamon. I am the Grand Marshal of the Empire. Jiang Fei, welcome to the Imperial Army with your fleet. Jiang Fei said with a smile. Ding! Quest completed. Faction change. You are now a member of the Imperial Army. Ding! Your reputation in the Imperial Army is friendly. The Grand Marshal of the Imperial Army, Jiang Fei, treats you coldly. As waves of green light flashed, all the players, including Eamon, received such a system notification. Of course, to Jiang Fei, he could not see any green light or notification. The asterisk am in. Cold. This BOS reputation is too difficult to farm. It actually started from cold? Eamon felt bitter in his heart. However, he would never have thought that no matter how hard he tried, he would not be able to farm Jiang Fei's reputation. After all, Jiang Fei hated these players to the bone. If it were not for the fact that they had already joined the alliance twice, Jiang Fei would have already made his move. His reputation would not be cold, but hostile. My lord, is there anything I can do for you? Eamon asked. He was trying to trigger the NPC quest. Not yet. I am still waiting for the Emperor's order, Jiang Fei said. Oh, if that's the case, that's great. I will personally show you around our fleet in the next two days. Eamon heard that Jiang Fei did not give him a quest. Subconsciously, he thought that his reputation with Jiang Fei was too low, which was why he could not accept the quest. In fact, he did not know that Jiang Fei was waiting for news from Vinalin. After all, he could not afford to not have his own fleet. It's all about players. Although the player's fleet could be commanded by quests, it was impossible to stop them. Therefore, Jiang Fei needed Vinalon's battleship. He could only have a fleet that completely obeyed his command. Would he go and find trouble with the players of the resistance? Therefore, for the next two to three days, Eamon patiently took Jiang Fei to visit his fleet. He did not expect that his reputation would not increase. Instead, Jiang Fei remembered the serial numbers of some battleships. These battleships were actually nothing new. The main ones were the few battleships that Jiang Fei had planted the bombs on. Chapter 1831 Chapter 1830 The Proclamation of War In the next few days, Eamon really lowered himself and focused on accompanying Jiang Fei to visit his fleet. For a rich second generation like him, 
It was always others who surrounded him, and everyone had to support him. This was the first time he lowered himself to cater to others. However, to Jiang Fei, he did not care about the so-called sincerity of these players. In the past few days, other than recording the number of the spaceship that had planted the bomb, Jiang Fei also discovered an interesting phenomenon. The original spaceship found in the ruins was much more powerful than the spaceship sold by the system. The original spaceship was not as simple as unlocking the technology tree. It seemed to be an enhanced version of a battleship. Moreover, it could not be duplicated. Once it was destroyed, then the players could only buy the normal version of the battleship from the system. This was just like Eamon's battleship, although it was also a glory main battleship. It was much stronger than the glory main battleship that Eamon had bought from the ruins. Whether it was the strength of the shield, the firepower, or the strength of the skills, it was almost 30% stronger than the normal glory main battleship. Not only that, when Jiang Fei boarded the ship for a tour, he also noticed something different. Other than Eamon's ship, he did not find a super intelligent support system like Rakes on any other ship. This meant that an existence like Rakes would only be equipped on the original main battleship. As the original ship was used to unlock the technology tree, there was only one of them. Therefore, it was extremely precious. As for the hyperbole class battlecruiser, since it was in Jiang Fei's hands, this completely cut off the opportunity for players to obtain this type of spaceship because they would never be able to unlock the technology tree of this type of spaceship again. I see. It seems that there is such a benefit to discovering the ruins. Jiang Fei nodded in his heart. Fortunately, the original versions of the battleships in Eamon's hands were all equipped with bombs. As long as Jiang Fei needed them. Then, he could detonate the original versions of the battleships at any time. After understanding this, Jiang Fei had another idea. He had to fight for the ruins with the players from both camps. This way, he could reduce the number of main ship models that the players could unlock. At the same time, it could greatly increase his own strength. As for how to obtain the location of the ruins, that would depend on Vinylin. After all, the main quests of the players were all obtained from him. It should not be too difficult for Jiang Fei to learn about it. Although it was impossible to always succeed in fighting for the ruins, he would not lose anything even if he failed. Therefore, why would Jiang Fei not be happy with such a deal? After Jiang Fei stayed in Eamon's fleet for five days, there was finally news from Lust. Salnaga's first batch of supplies had arrived on planet Pizerns. These supplies included a total of 150 battleships of various types. Most of them were frigates of various types. There were only about 30 heavy cruisers. There was not even a single main ship. Why is the development team so stingy? Jiang Fei frowned. The number of battleships was far from what he had imagined. In Jiang Fei's imagination, the NPC fleet should be the main force. The player fleet would only be supporting the fleet from the side. Only then would the player fleet show its mobility. Only then would they be able to perform miracles on the battlefield. This was what Jiang Fei thought of as a player. After all, it was the same when he was playing the game. During the war between the two armies, the NPCs were evenly matched and fought each other. Generally, players would carry out missions to assassinate enemy generals. They would not participate in the battle as soldiers. Although Jiang Fei's idea was correct, he had overlooked one thing. The development team had just opened up the faction system. This had resulted in an imbalance in the number of players on both sides. Therefore, they had to make use of the power of the NPCs to balance the strength of both sides. On the side of the resistance army, although the number of players was still small, the overall strength of the Vasari fleet was still acceptable because of the large increase in the strength of the Vasari fleet. However, the situation on the Imperial army's side was reversed. After Aaron lost the previous battle, he decisively spent money. This allowed his fleet to be replenished overnight. Last time, Aaron's fleet had suffered a terrible loss. However, that was mainly due to underestimating the enemy and poor command skills. In fact, there was not much difference between the two sides in terms of fleet strength. Now that Aaron's fleet had been replenished, his fleet alone was almost the same as the resistance army. In order to maintain the balance of the game, the development team naturally could not provide Jiang Fei with more resources. Therefore, the Imperial Army and the resistance were the exact opposite. The Imperial Army had the strong player fleet, the weak NPC fleet, and the resistance army had the strong NPC fleet and the weak player fleet. Coupled with the fact that the players were not good at commanding. The overall situation was that the imperial army was slightly weaker while the resistance army was slightly stronger. 
This was exactly what the development team hoped to see. This was because the players of the resistance army were all newbies. You had to let them have fun before they would continue playing. If they were beaten up right after they entered the pit, who would continue playing? For an old player like Eamon who was addicted to artistic conception. This was also the time for the development team to kill off the fat sheep. If he was beaten up by other players, would he not spend money to get back at them? When Eamon got back at them, the new players who had just become addicted to abusing others would experience being raped instead of being raped. Naturally, there would also be rich players who would make money to get back at them. This way, the cycle would begin. The rich players on both sides would take turns to repeat the cycle of being abused and abusing others. Naturally, the development team would also earn a lot of money. Although Jiang Fei was not very satisfied with the number of free battleships provided by the development team, the Emperor of the Universe Empire, Rivendell, who had just ascended the throne, seemed to be a little overconfident. On the day that the new battleship arrived, he had declared war on the Vizari army through an imperial edict. What a bunch of greedy devils! After Jiang Fei received the imperial edict, he could not help but curse in his heart. However, just as he had said before, he did not participate in political matters, whether the Universe Empire wanted to fight or not. As for who to fight in a war, it was up to the politicians to decide. He was only responsible for how to fight and how to win. Now that the Emperor's edict had arrived, war was inevitable. Therefore, Jiang Fei needed to return to the Pizern Star area to build his fleet. After all, the spaceship and the captains were still separated. He needed to go back and pick the first batch of cannon fodder. Therefore, after Jiang Fei left the order to reorganize the fleet and prepare for the expedition, he left the Cologne Star system. Naturally, Eamon and the other players were overjoyed. After all, this was the beginning of the mission. Chapter 1832 Chapter 1831 Reward List After returning to the Pizern's galaxy, Jiang Fei did not bother to choose the captains. He only asked 0541 to roughly screen the resumes of those people and select those capable captains. He let Aurelia take them away. The rest were all mixed together. Aurelia and Nina brought those capable captains back to Skoda Star. The fleet there was Jiang Fei's direct line of descent. As for the remaining captains, Jiang Fei did not even choose them personally. 054 only randomly selected more than 150 people. These people would become the first batch of cannon fodder. Faced with Rivendell's edict, Jiang Fei had no intention of bringing his own direct line of command. He did not even intend to bring his flagship into the battlefield. In this battle, Jiang Fei only brought a small amount of cannon fodder from the Merchant Alliance. The rest were all player fleets. Three days later, more than 100 battleships set sail from Planet Pizerns and headed to the Cologne Galaxy to meet up with the player fleets. At this moment, Jiang Fei was sitting in a destroyer spaceship. This heavy patrol class battleship was indeed more powerful than the Merchant Alliance's Grizzly Bear. Even if Jiang Fei had added the destroyer's advanced engine on Grizzly Bear. However, if the two heavy patrol class captains were of the same standard, it was almost impossible for Grizzly Bear to defeat such a high-tech spaceship. It's such a waste to give such a good ship to a player! Jiang Fei sighed. Actually, it was not that Jiang Fei had never thought of producing a player battleship. He had almost all the blueprints of these regular spaceships. However, the technology in this universe was simply not capable of producing a player battleship. It was especially so for a pure energy weapon system. It was not that the Merchant Alliance did not want to build it, but it was simply impossible to achieve. Although Jiang Fei had already built the Aiken class battlecruiser, the ship's power system still relied on energy crystals. On the other hand, the dark matter compressor used by the player's warship. Dot. They simply could not build it. If all the energy weapons were used, the Merchant Alliance's warship would not have enough energy supply. When the cannons were fired, the shields and engines would be weakened or even shut down. In that case, the ship would be completely stagnant. Furthermore, the battleships with weak shields would become the most eye-catching targets in space. Due to the mismatch of the energy system, in order to maintain mobility and the strength of the shields, the Merchant Alliance had no choice but to use primitive automatic cannons. Although these weapons needed to be stored for ammunition, and their range was not as long as energy weapons. However, they were energy efficient. When firing, they did not need a large amount of energy as support. So they were the most suitable weapons for the Merchant Alliance. Although the automatic cannons could gain some advantages in close combat. No matter what. Who would not want to use an even more awesome warship? However, the problem was that the blueprints were not enough. 
All kinds of basic technology could not keep up. This was like bringing the blueprint of the atomic bomb back to ancient times. Without other technological foundations, one could not build an atomic bomb from a primitive blacksmith shop. Therefore, when Jiang Fei looked at the destroyer spaceship in front of him, he was filled with envy and jealousy. Actually, it was not that Jiang Fei had not thought of prioritizing these player battleships to his own direct line of troops. However, he thought about it later and decided not to. After all, he could not control the maintenance and replenishment of the spaceship. Moreover, there were many incompatibilities between the two completely different styles of battleships. Therefore, Jiang Fei chose to keep his own style and continued to use the Merchant Alliance battleship that had joined the player technology. A few days later, the small fleet led by Jiang Fei met up with the players. The asterisk am in. Is this all the strength of these NPCs? I thought that in the next war, we would just follow behind the NPCs and pick up the loot. In the end, we have to be cannon fodder. What are you talking about? This is a PDP battle. How much do you think the NPCs can help us? Yeah. Don't forget. NPCs don't lose equipment and experience points when they kill monsters. What's the point of following behind them? Sightseeing? That's right. It's better to kill the monsters personally. At the same time, we can also teach those idiots from the resistance a lesson. Hee <laughs> hee. A bunch of newbies dared to make a ruckus on the forum when they just started playing. We really have to teach them a lesson. Let them know that seniors should be respected. As they looked at Jiang Fei's fleet, the players were discussing among themselves. Some of them looked down on Jiang Fei's fleet. But most of them were filled with anticipation for the upcoming battle. Compared to PD battles, the players really love PDP battles. After all, what was the point of beating up NPCs? It was more pleasurable and fulfilling to beat up opponents who were also players. Just as Jiang Fei's fleet gathered together with the player fleet, Vitalin suddenly appeared before Jiang Fei before he could summon Aemon. Vitalin, why are you here? Jiang Fei asked curiously. This time, Vitalin did not appear by descending. Instead, he appeared as Salnada's leader. Alusha, of course, I'm here for a mission. Vilan said with a smile. For me? Jiang Fei asked. Yes and no. Vilan said as he handed over a small disc. What is this? Jiang Fei asked curiously. You'll know when you see it. Vilan said with a smile. Whoosh. As Jiang Fei touched the disc, a list suddenly appeared on the disc. There was one main ship. One main ship. 100 heavy patrol ship. 100 light patrol ship. 50 light patrol ship. 50 ruling judgment ship and two frigate ship. There were 150 enlightenment ship. What is this? For me? Jiang Fei was stunned. Previously, the development team was not so generous. They only gave him 150 small broken ships. Of course not. The development team would not be so generous to you. This is for you. Jiang Fei interrupted Vinalin. Ha! Huh. I knew you would help me. Jiang Fei said excitedly. I have not finished speaking. This is for you to issue quests. Vitalin continued to say. It turned out that Jiang Fei could not touch these ships at all. All he could see was this list. After that, the quest that he gave to the player would be deducted from this list by the system. Of course, if Jiang Fei gave more than the list of quest rewards, once the player completed the quest, Jiang Fei would have to redeem it at his own expense. If he could not redeem it, the system would automatically kill him. F asterisk CK? Are you kidding me? Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. You can't say that. As the big boss of an ally, it's impossible for you to not complete all the quests that the players have given out. If that's the case, the development team will have to interview you, said Vinalin as he winked at Jiang Fei. Uh, Jiang Fei was speechless. He did not want to be targeted by the development team. Of course, he did not want to provide the players with quest rewards at his own expense. Therefore, the list said by Varen was timely. Chapter 1833 Chapter 1832 Conquering Salhu Take this too. After Varen handed the list to Jiang Fei, he passed him a badge. This is? Jiang Fei activated the badge as well. The prototype of the Sky Drone Mothership, unlocking the Sky Class Drone Mothership. This is the unlocking card for the new battleship. It also appears as a quest reward. It'll give it to you. You can decide when to give it to the players, said Varen. Then he'll never give it to them. Jiang Fei laughed coldly. That's up to you. However, after the players unlock the drone mothership, this type of ship will appear in the military aid you receive. If you don't unlock it, 
You won't be able to get it, said Vinalin. If you don't have it, then so be it. Jiang Fei shrugged. Even if he could not get it himself, he did not want to increase the strength of the players anymore. I advise you not to do that. After all, there are more than one wave of players. If you do not unlock the lock on your side, the resistance on the other side will unlock it. When the other side has an aircraft carrier and you do not have one, you will be at a disadvantage, said Vinalin. F asterisk CK, are you kidding me? Jiang Fei took a deep breath. He tried his best to calm his mind. Right now, what he wanted to do was similar to the development team. It was to balance the players on both sides so that they would always maintain balance. Only then, would he be able to let the two sides fight each other and not have the time to destroy the universe. After accepting the two quest rewards, Jiang Fei asked Vinlon about some other things. After that, Vinlon left. After Vinlon left, Jiang Fei summoned Aemon to his battleship. Although Aemon was not very willing to leave his main ship and go to Jiang Fei's small, broken ship, Aemon did not dare to offend Jiang Fei when he was facing the friendly big boss that had issued the quest. Therefore, he could only pinch his nose and obediently went to the destroyer that Jiang Fei was on. Greetings, Grand Marshal. Aemon was still very obedient after seeing Jiang Fei. Yes. Hello, Aemon. Jiang Fei nodded at Aemon and then said, Now that the Empire has declared war on the Vizari army, what do you think? What do I think? Aemon had originally come to accept the quest. He had never thought that Jiang Fei would ask such a question. Yes. Tell me about it. Jiang Fei said calmly. Why don't we just send the fleet over and fight with them? Aemon had never considered such a question before. He felt that it was enough to just play the game according to the quest steps. Therefore, when Jiang Fei asked him about it, he did not know what to say. Humph! A brainless idiot! Jiang Fei mocked himself in his heart. However, the more players were like this, the more advantageous it was for him. If these guys were all as smart as monkeys and their understanding of tactics were all military experts, he really would not be able to play. I admire your courage. If that's the case, let's attack Sarla Cloister directly. Jiang Fei decided on a vicious plan in his heart. Sarla Cloister was the junction between the four galaxies and Persis, as it did not belong to any galaxy. It was also affected by the gravity of the four galaxies at the same time. Therefore, this place was almost empty. All the celestial bodies were captured by the four galaxies around them, leaving behind a blank cloister. Moreover, the gravitational field here was too complicated. It was impossible to open the wormhole and the stargate, and the phase transition could not be carried out. If a space war were to take place here, it would be impossible to launch sneak attacks and ambushes due to the lack of concealment from the celestial bodies. Moreover, the wormhole could not be opened due to the lack of the planet's gravity well. That resulted in the battleships being able to rely on their own conventional engines to move. They would not be able to warp at all. In that case, it would be impossible to outflank and outflank them. It could be said that if a war were to take place there, it would be a battle without any skills. It would be a direct confrontation between two armies. The battleships would clash against each other. It was a competition of the ship's strength and cannon's strength. It was a competition of who was not afraid of death. In any case, it was players fighting players. It would be a good thing for Jiang Fei if they fought like dogs. As for the people from Azari's army, Jiang Fei could not care less. At this point in time, Jiang Fei had finally gotten over it. In order to save the big goal of the universe, it was not a big deal to have a few people die. Moreover, the ones who died were the galactic pirates. Yes, my lord. Please give the order. Aemon did not even know where Salhu Cloister was. Moreover, even if he knew, as a player, he did not understand what the terrain there meant. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded. Then, he said with a serious face, Now, I hereby appoint Aemon, a member of the Sonaga Advance Army, as a colonel of the Imperial Army. Ding! As Jiang Fei spoke, Aemon immediately received a system notification. His position in the Imperial Army had increased. Colonel Aemon, for this attack on Salhu Cloister, your troops will be the vanguard. I hope you can win. Jiang Fei said, as he keyed in the quest reward. Ding! The Grand Marshal of the Empire has issued an S-rank quest for you capture Saru. Do you accept? Aemon immediately received a system notification. I accept. Aemon did not think much of it. He only thought that S-rank quests were very rare. After completing it, there would be an amazing reward. However, he did not expect Jiang Fei to send him to his death. In fact, Jiang Fei's quest was quite vicious. 
Amon had accepted the quest. So he had to go to Sara to his death. If he refused, Jiang Fei could kill him in the name of disobeying military orders. Although killing Amon would allow him to be reborn, it would at least cripple him. A carrier that was close to the hermit level. After all, this thing was not cheap. Even Amon could not change it every day. After receiving the quest, Amon immediately began to look at the quest description. The reward inside was indeed tempting. A main ship and a medium-sized fleet. As expected of an S-class quest. This reward, TSK TSK. Amon was very satisfied with the reward of this quest. Moreover, the quest description did not mention the dangers of Sarla Cloister. Therefore, he thought that he was lucky. The first quest was an S-class lucrative job. Oomph. Looking at Amon's happy expression, Jiang Fei could not help but sneer in his heart. The reward of the quest is not bad. There will be better ones in the future. However, whether you are alive to take it or not, that is up to you. After bidding farewell to Jiang Fei, Amon immediately returned to his ship. With his command, the player fleet immediately entered warp mode. Meanwhile, Jiang Fei led his own fleet to follow behind the players and advance towards Salhu. After two weeks of interstellar travel, the Imperial Army's fleet arrived at the end of Salhu Cloister's Merchant Alliance. After passing through this narrow cloister that only had 300,000 light seconds, they could enter the Vasari Army's territory. 300,000 light seconds might sound like a long time. But in the middle of a galaxy-level celestial body, this was a small gap that was countless times thinner than a hair. Moreover, if no one was blocking them, the fleet would only need about 10 days to cross this distance with a conventional engine. Chapter 1834 Chapter 1833 Encounter Captain, we have arrived at Salhu Cloister. After a few days of boring interstellar travel, 0541's voice finally rang in Jiang Fei's ears. Connect me to Amen, Jiang Fei said. Yes, Captain. 0541 immediately connected to Amen after receiving the order. Grand Marshal, is there anything I can help you with? Asked Amen. Yes, we have arrived at Sara Cloister. On the other side of the cloister are those hateful interstellar pirates of the Zari army, said Jiang Fei. Sir, do you have any instructions? Amon was delighted. Since they had arrived at Saru, it meant that the battle was about to begin. Now, I will grant you full command of the vanguard. I will bring the rest of the troops here to wait for your good news. Jiang Fei would not follow Amon to his death. He was waiting at the side of Saru Cloister. He would definitely not risk his life. Yes, my lord. Amon did not think that Jiang Fei's order was inappropriate. After all, it was normal for NPCs to order players to do this. Otherwise, why would they give you a quest reward? However, there is an additional quest for you. If you think that you can complete it, you can complete it at the same time. If you feel that you cannot complete it, you can also give up. Jiang Fei said. Please speak. My lord. Amon was even happier when he heard that. This was the rhythm of a side quest. If you can destroy the enemy's 50 battleships, that is undoubtedly good news for the Empire. Jiang Fei said with a smile. At the same time, he entered the 20 battleships as the reward into the system. 50 ships. Amon pursed his lips. After all, this quest was very difficult. However, only 20 frigates were given. That was not good enough. Fortunately, this quest did not need to be completed alone. Anyway, Amon and the other's main quest was to capture Salhu Cloister. Therefore, destroying the enemy battleships was definitely a side job. Therefore, this quest was a waste of effort. Even if the reward was small, it was still a waste in his eyes. All right, when you are ready, you can set off, Jiang Fei said, and then cut off the communication. Order the entire army to attack. After Amon cut off the communication with Jiang Fei, he immediately gave the order to attack. Go, go, hurry up and die. Jiang Fei looked at the player fleet that had left and could not help but laugh coldly in his heart. Due to the fact that it was impossible to warp through the wormhole and phase jump through the wormhole, the conventional engine had become the main method of marching here. At that moment, the player fleet was moving forward in a loose formation. The players did not seem to be too nervous. Although they had suffered a defeat previously, it was all because they had been ambushed. If it was a head-on confrontation, then these players would not be afraid of the Vizari Legion squadron. Very quickly, the player squadron encountered the first batch of enemies. It was a Vizari patrol team that was patrolling the Salhu Cloister. This patrol team was made up of two scout ship-level Kika navigators and two frigate-level Lavasa fighters. Although the Lavasa fighters were known as the strongest frigates, 
The problem was that these few small ships, if they encountered an entire player fleet, their ending was obvious. After a random round of volley, this patrol team was destroyed by Eamon's fleet. However, because they were all small ships, and there were only a few of them, no one received much EXP. Although this patrol team was killed, the news of the invasion of the Imperial Army was sent back by this small team. At this time, the Vasily Legion had already received news of the invasion of the Imperial Army. Actually, when the Universe Empire was established, another group of players had come to the Vasily Legion's territory under the name of the Holy Emissary's Vanguard Army. Although these players were temporarily not as many as Aemon and the others, they were still warmly welcomed by the Vasily Legion. The Vasily Legion was fond of fighting. They had always welcomed all kinds of cannon fodder to join them. Now, this group of holy emissaries not only provided weapons, but even cannon fodder. The Vasily Legion could not be happier. Speaking of which, the players, who called themselves the holy envoys were not only lacking in numbers, but their quality was also not good, because they had just entered the game. Their skill points were very low, and they could not sail any large ships. They were basically frigates. Occasionally, there would be a few that could sail light patrols. Only a rich man could sail heavy patrols. But there was not a single one that could sail main ships. However, the Vizari Legion did not care about this. They already had four main ships under their command. And the other supporting fleets were also relatively complete. Now that they had a group of fearless cannon fodder, they were naturally extremely happy. Hence, even if the Imperial Army did not invade, the Vizari higher-ups were prepared to take the initiative to attack. They did not expect to receive news of the Imperial Army invading from Salhu Cloister at this time. Ha ha! It seems that we have tricked these trash! A Vizari general laughed. That's right. The last time in the asteroid belt. Those guys were like idiots! They did not even fight back before they were beaten up by us. That battle was simply too enjoyable. Then what should we do this time? Sargo Cloister is basically the graveyard of a master tactician. All tactics and strategies are useless. Only the fleet battle is the best solution. Wait for the order. I don't think the higher-ups will let those guys in. How good would it be to close the door and beat the dogs? You don't understand the mentality of politicians. Defending the enemy outside the country's gates is an honor for them. Although we will have less loss if we let the enemy in and beat the dogs, they will lose face. When they are in power, the history books will write that we were breached by the enemy. This is something that they absolutely cannot tolerate. F asterisk CK. These bunch of political be asterisk starts. For the sake of their face, they have to make me work for them. Forget it. Let's not talk about these useless things. The Order of the Legion will probably arrive soon. As expected, just as these Vizari generals were discussing, the Order of the Higher-Ups of the Legion was given defend against the enemy outside the country's gate. Damn it. I knew it. One of the generals said unhappily, Forget it. Let's not talk about it. Get ready to send out the troops. A bunch of idiots who don't understand tactics only know how to command blindly. Looks like this Tsar who will become a meat grinder again. A day later, the Vizari fleet arrived at the other side of the Tsar, who cloistered through the Stargate and started to advance into the cloister. Their goal was very clear, and it was the invading Imperial fleet. As Sargo Cloister had no cover, and it was very narrow, as long as the radar was turned on, they did not have to worry about passing by the enemy. Hence, the two fleets were basically pushed to the side. Then, they were waiting for a fair fight. Chapter 1835, Chapter 1834 arrived again. A battle was inevitable. However, Jiang Fei did not even have the mood to watch the battle. After Aemon left with his fleet, he left his own small fleet and flew away alone. Jiang Fei only left an order for this fleet of idiotic captains to wait for orders. He did not care about anything else. After all, Salhu Veranda was destined to be a doggy dog battle. As for the final outcome, Jiang Fei did not care. Regardless of which side the player won, it would not benefit him at all. Now, Jiang Fei needed to hurry up and do what he needed to do. For Jiang Fei, the most important thing was naturally to increase his own strength. The best place to increase his own strength was the five directions heaven and earth. In this pure land, there was no interference from technology. Therefore, there was abundant spiritual energy and there were many strong people. They could communicate with each other so that they could increase their strength faster. At this time, although Jiang Fei had already advanced to the hermit level, he still had many things that he could improve on. The first was to fuse with the higher level of the will core. However, this will core was something that could only be encountered by chance and not sought after. 
in an instant, he could not gather enough of it. The second was to perfect his own martial arts techniques. Now, Jiang Fei already had three types of martial arts techniques. Fire, wood, and earth. He was still short of two types of attributes. Water, and metal. The five directions heaven and earth could just make up for this deficiency of Jiang Fei's. In the previous mission, Jiang Fei had obtained the nine rotating astrolabe from Vinalin. Through this thing, he could connect the outer universe and the five directions heaven and earth together. This way, he did not have to take the risk to pass through the powerful barrier. After leaving the fleet, Jiang Fei did not go too far. After a few space jumps, Jiang Fei landed on an uninhabited planet in the outer region of the Mira Galaxy. Although the environment here was extremely harsh, there were no rare minerals at all. It was also because of this that it became a pure land and was not touched by any civilization. This place is really barren. After putting away the shuttle, Jiang Fei looked at the scorched earth beside him and sighed. The location of this nameless planet from the star was very awkward. Moreover, it did not have an atmosphere to protect it. When the light of the star shone directly on its surface, the surface temperature of the planet could be raised to more than 500 degrees Celsius. It was like a real flaming mountain. However, when the sun set, due to the loss of the source of the heat and the lack of an atmosphere to protect the planet, the temperature would quickly drop to more than 100 degrees Celsius. Such extreme natural conditions caused the planet to have no signs of life. Although Jiang Fei already had the power of a hermit, normal cold, and he could not harm his body. However, the extreme weather would still make him extremely uncomfortable. Therefore, he landed just after the sun set. The temperature had already cooled down, but it was not too cold yet. I can't stay in this place for long, Jiang Fei thought to himself. Then, a cold light flashed between his brows. The Chengying sword flew out. Slash! As Jiang Fei shouted, the Chengying sword that was infused with metal type spiritual power suddenly hacked down. Instantly, a huge cave was opened up on a huge mountain. Following that, Jiang Fei formed a sword seal with his hands and used the sword energy of the Chengying sword to slash left and right. He dug another hundred meters down into the depths of the cave. After that, he dug a huge space inside the mountain. All right, this is more or less it. Jiang Fei nodded in satisfaction. This place was more than a hundred meters away from the ground. Moreover, there was a huge mountain on top of it whether it was cold or hot on the surface. At this moment, it had nothing to do with him. After creating a relatively comfortable environment, Jiang Fei directly took out the nine rotating astrolabe. Swoosh! When the astrolabe was activated, a golden teleportation portal appeared in front of Jiang Fei. Hee hee! Tong Tong! Master is here to see you! Jiang Fei smiled slightly and walked into the teleportation portal. When Jiang Fei's figure disappeared into the teleportation portal, the nine revolving astrolabe flashed with a golden light. Then, it turned into a stream of light and disappeared into the teleportation portal. After that, the teleportation portal disappeared as well. Swoosh! In a corner of the five directions of heaven and earth, an exquisite hexagonal copper plate landed in Jiang Fei's hand as the golden light flashed. I'm finally back! Jiang Fei smiled. Although his strength could allow him to survive in a place that ordinary people could not survive in. Such a place with abundant spiritual energy was the most suitable place for him to live. After I settle the trouble with the Gamma Space, it would be a good choice to retire here, Jiang Fei said to himself. Whoosh! At that moment, a stream of light flashed above Jiang Fei's head. Judging from his aura, this guy should be an expert around the Mahayana stage. You left in such a hurry. You're rushing to die. Jiang Fei cursed angrily. Because the opponent's flying sword was very low. The violent airflow made Jiang Fei very unhappy. It was like those unscrupulous drivers on earth. On a rainy day, they passed by pedestrians at high speed and splashed water all over them. Whoosh! 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 Three more streams of light rushed over. It seemed that the guy from before was really being chased by someone. Swish! The first flying sword came from above Jiang Fei's head and brought up another wave of turbulent airflow. F asterisk CK! Are you guys done playing? If you do it again, It'll cripple you. Jiang Fei was also angry. After all, this kind of thing could be tolerated once or twice. He could not tolerate it forever. Whoosh! Whoosh! The two sword lights that followed closely behind were also very low. It seemed that these people did not take Jiang Fei seriously at all. Therefore, they did not think that it was rude of them to attack Jiang Fei with the surging sword aura. At that moment, Jiang Fei's aura was restrained. 
unless he was a true immortal level expert. Ordinary people would not be able to tell his level. These people were chasing after an important person. Therefore, they did not have the time to think too much while they were speeding. Therefore, they treated Jiang Fei as an ordinary person. Just as the two guys were about to fly over Jiang Fei's head, Jiang Fei waved his sleeve and swept up a gust of astral energy. In an instant, the two guys, together with their swords, were thrown to the ground. Ah! Ah! Two screams followed. The two of them had been thrown quite heavily. Although their companions at the front had turned around to take a look, they did not stop after thinking about the importance of the quest. Instead, they continued to chase after the people in front of them. Who are you? How dare you block the way of the Wong family? One of the boys was also used to being arrogant outside. As soon as he regained his composure, he shouted at Jiang Fei angrily. Shut up! However, his companion was obviously smart. To be able to throw the two of them here so easily, it was obvious that the person in front of him was not someone the two of them could provoke. Therefore, he quickly stopped his companion. Then, he bowed deeply to Jiang Fei and said, We are the external deacons of the Wang family. Because we have important matters to attend to. We accidentally offended Senior. Please forgive us. Senior! Chapter 1836 Chapter 1835 Hee hee! The Wang family! Jiang Fei laughed coldly. Although the guy in front of him seemed to be apologizing to him. His words and actions revealed that he was from a prestigious family. Yes! Please forgive us if we have offended you in any way. We are on an urgent mission this time. If you do not have any other orders, we still have to hunt down fugitives, said the outer deacon of the Wang family. Go! Jiang Fei waved his hand. He had vented his anger by throwing the two men down. Although the two men were rude, they did not deserve to die. Jiang Fei was not a domineering person. There was no need to kill them for such a small matter. Thank you, senior. After the two men bowed to Jiang Fei again, they rode their flying swords and left. Where am I? It looks like it's very far from the martial meritocracy palace. Jiang Fei muttered to himself as he watched the two sword lights disappear into the distance. Back then, the four great families had almost always had their tails between their legs within the martial meritocracy palace's territory. Now, the Wang family was brazenly chasing after others. It was obvious that this was the territory of the four great families. Forget about them. I should go and see Tong Tong first. Jiang Fei shook his head. He did not care much about the affairs of the four great families. The fight between the various factions in the five directions had almost nothing to do with him. If it was not for the fact that he had to gather the remaining two attribute cultivation techniques and come back to visit Tong Tong, Jiang Fei would not have had the time to come back with so many things to do outside. With that thought in mind, Jiang Fei pointed his finger and the Chunging sword flew out from his glabella. Then, Jiang Fei stepped on the sword and flew toward the South Pole. However, Jiang Fei had just flown more than a hundred miles when he was attracted by a fight from the vibration caused by the collision of energy. Jiang Fei could tell that this was a fight between a group of masters above the Mahayana stage. Interesting. This town star is not peaceful either. Jiang Fei smiled and rode his flying sword over. Ding ding ding. As soon as he got closer, Jiang Fei heard the sound of weapons colliding in the battle. Ho ho! It's quite lively! Jiang Fei looked down and saw two groups of people fighting on the battlefield. One group was the three Wang family deacons. And the other group? Besides the guy who had escaped, there were three other people. The strength of these people was basically about the same. They were all in the middle stage of the Mahayana realm. Therefore, the number of people was the key to victory. Two times, it was three against one. Therefore, the Wang family was chasing after that guy. Now, they had helpers. Three against one became three against four. Therefore, the Wang family was at a disadvantage. Jiang Fei's arrival immediately attracted the attention of everyone on the battlefield. After all, Jiang Fei was riding his sword. Everyone knew that he was not an ordinary person. Moreover, the people below could not see Jiang Fei's strength clearly. Then, his identity as a super expert was exposed. Moreover, among the three deacons of the Wang family, two of them had personally experienced Jiang Fei's strength. Therefore, they naturally knew how powerful Jiang Fei was. After hesitating about Jiang Fei's arrival, the two groups of people subconsciously stopped. This was because no one knew why Jiang Fei had come. This was especially true for the group of people who were fighting with the Wang family's deacons. They all thought that Jiang Fei was an expert that the Wang family had rushed over to provide reinforcements. May I ask who you are? 
The guy who had been chased by Jiang Fei earlier finally could not hold himself back anymore. He took the lead to ask Jiang Fei. I'm just passing by to watch the show. Jiang Fei smiled. He was telling the truth. But none of the people below believed him. Senior, if you can help us, the Wang family will never forget the kindness we owe you today. We will definitely visit you in the future to thank you. The Wang family's deacon who had previously apologized to Jiang Fei suddenly asked for Jiang Fei's help. They were in a crisis now. Even if Jiang Fei did not help them, they were not the enemy's match. Now, only if Jiang Fei helped them would they be able to turn the tide of the battle. Hmm? When he heard the Wang family's deacon's words, the guy who was running away rolled his eyes. From the other party's words, he knew that Jiang Fei was not an expert of the Wang family. Therefore, he was half relieved. Senior, we are members of the Xiao family. If you can help us, the Xiao family will definitely repay you generously. The guy who was running away also followed suit and made a promise to Jiang Fei. Interesting. Is the Wang family and the Xiao family on bad terms? Jiang Fei was slightly surprised. Although the four big families were not on good terms with each other, it was still acceptable on the surface. After all, they were also facing the threat of the Valiant Martial Hall and the Moon Goddess sect. Only by joining forces would they have a bargaining chip to be on equal terms with the two major forces. Humph! The Xiao family actually dared to join the Moon Goddess sect. As a righteous family, the Wang family naturally has to protect the dignity of the righteous path. The Wang family's deacon said righteously, Senior, don't listen to their nonsense. It was clearly my undercover Wang family who found evidence of their collusion with the Moon Goddess sect. That's why they wanted to kill me. The Xiao family was not willing to be outdone. Similarly, they began to frame the Wang family members. Tisk! Jiang Fei pursed his lips when he heard this. He had been in the Valiant Martial Hall for a period of time. How could he not know that the four great families had an ambiguous relationship with the Moon Goddess sect? Therefore, he did not believe the words of the two families. Speaking of which, Jiang Fei did not have any animosity toward the Xiao and Wang families. Although he had fought with the Xiao family a few times before, that was because of the players. The members of the Xiao family who participated in the war were also sent by the players. Speaking of which, it had nothing to do with the Xiao family. Therefore, Jiang Fei did not have any animosity towards the Xiao family. As for the Wang family, they did not have any interaction with each other at all. It was not a good thing. All right, don't talk to me about these useless things. You guys fight yours. I'm just here to watch the show. Jiang Fei said with a cold laugh. He had never intended to get involved in this mess. As for why the Xiao and Wang families were fighting each other, he was not interested to know. He came over to watch the battle. He just wanted to use the violet eyes to observe the moves of the two families. He wanted to understand the energy circulation roots of the two families and secretly learn a few moves. This. The two groups of people looked at each other. However, no one made a move. Although Jiang Fei said that the two sides would not help each other. With such a god watching from above, none of them dared to make a move. For a moment, the situation was so awkward that it came to a standstill. Neither side dared to make a move. However, at that moment, a bell-like laughter rang in the air. If I say that your two families are fighting, then so be it. Why do you always use our moon goddess sect as an excuse? As the clear voice rang out, a seductive figure appeared in front of Jiang Fei. Moon spirit princess? Jiang Fei was stunned. Hee hee. It's hard for you to still remember me. Moon spirit princess smiled. She had a deep impression of Jiang Fei. The last time Jiang Fei had destroyed her servant ghost, it had dealt quite a blow to her. Chapter 1837. Chapter 1836 was tired of living. With your looks, it would be very difficult for me to forget you. Without Bella and the rest by his side, Jiang Fei naturally dared to say anything, although he was not interested in this Yuling at all. However, men generally liked to talk about things that were a little cheap. Hee <laughs> hee. You must be joking. I can't be compared to the beauties around you. Why? Did you not bring any beauties along today? Yuling smiled faintly. Obviously, she had seen such provocative words many times. Therefore, she had long been immune to it. Now, she had even turned the tables on Jiang Fei. This girl's mouth is so powerful. Jiang Fei thought to himself as he looked at Yuling Ji. This girl was obviously not willing to take any losses. Even when she was facing someone stronger than her, she would not take any losses. When Jiang Fei looked at her, he realized that the girl's makeup was completely different from the last time. The flirtatious smoky makeup from the last time really made Jiang Fei unable to accept it. However, this time, 
The natural light makeup that Moon Spirit Ji applied with a light makeup made Jiang Fei's eyes light up. I haven't seen you for a few days. Your Moon Goddess sect actually dares to appear in broad daylight. It seems that the world has changed really quickly. Jiang Fei changed the topic. He did not want to continue to be entangled with Moon Spirit Ji on matters between a man and a woman. Jiang Fei knew very well how much he was worth. Once he was entangled in it, he would be in trouble. Hee hee. Look at what you are saying. Sir, our Moon Goddess sect has always gone wherever we want to go. Moon Goddess smiled and said, All right. Stop talking nonsense. What business do you have here? If you have nothing to do, hurry up and leave. Don't delay me from watching the show. Jian Fei said coldly. He he. Moon Spirit Maiden first let out a string of lovely laughter like a silver bell. Then, she said to Jiang Fei, Sir, I'm afraid you won't be able to watch the show. As Moon Spirit Maiden spoke, Jiang Fei felt dozens of powerful auras coming from the horizon. Soon after, the sound of sharp blades piercing through the air entered his ears. Fifteen. All of them are masters above the Mahayana stage. There are even three who are in the tribulation stage. In an instant, Jiang Fei could sense the strength of these people. No wonder this girl has nothing to fear. So, she came with helpers. Jiang Fei laughed coldly in his heart. Although there were many people from the moon goddess sect this time, those below the true immortal stage were all ants. With Jiang Fei's strength, even if there were more than ten of them together, they would not be enough to defeat him. Speaking of which, this time, moon spirit princess was really holding back her revenge. Although Jiang Fei had spared her life last time, this which was not grateful at all. Instead, she resented Jiang Fei for destroying her servant ghost. Therefore, this time, Moon Spirit Princess had brought a large group of her senior and junior brothers out to do some work. Coincidentally, they met Jiang Fei. She wanted to find trouble with Jiang Fei and bring back the situation that she had lost in the past. Unfortunately, the Jiang Fei of today was no longer the same as before. Back then, Jiang Fei had taught Moon Spirit Princess a lesson with his strength that was only around the Mahayana stage. Now that he had become a true immortal, even if Moon Spirit Princess brought a group of senior and junior brothers with her, it would be useless. A moment later, a wave of sword light descended and a group of Moon Goddess sect's disciples arrived. Little junior sister, who bullied you? Is it this kid? Humph. My blood soul banner is missing a host soul. Kid, why don't you come and make up the numbers? A group of Moon Goddess sect's disciples arrived and shouted at Jiang Fei. As the final disciple of the Moon Goddess sect sect master, Yulingji had a high status. In addition, beautiful women were popular everywhere. Therefore, these disciples of the Moon Goddess sect, even if they were her senior brothers, they would obey her orders. Therefore, when they saw Jiang Fei, they began to shout. On one hand, they wanted to show their loyalty in front of Yulingji. On the other hand, they wanted to be in the limelight and win the attention of the beauty. Sir, are you still interested in watching the show now? Yulingji asked Jiang Fei with a smile. Brat, you dare to provoke our moon goddess sect? You must be tired of living. Junior sister, please wait a moment. I will take this brat's dog life right now. Senior brother, there's no need to kill a chicken with a butcher's knife. Leave such a small matter to me. After Yulingji finished speaking, before Jiang Fei could say anything, the group of Moon Goddess Sect's disciples had already become eager to give it a try. It was as if once they made a move, Jiang Fei would die on the spot. Shut up! Jiang Fei was annoyed by these guys who were obsessed with him. These guys were talking back and forth like a toad. Therefore, Jiang Fei waved his sleeve in annoyance. A terrifying Earth attribute energy wave crashed toward the disciples of the Moon Goddess Sect. Boom! Ah! Oh my god! So powerful! As they cried out in pain, the disciples of the moon goddess sect were hit by Jiang Fei's energy wave. Their bones and tendons were broken, and they were sent flying. Oh my god! Gulp! The Wang family's executors were so scared that they swallowed their saliva. If not for the fact that Jiang Fei was in a good mood just now, they would not have ended up so well. That's a master in the crossing calamity stage. He's clearly a true immortal. One of the Wang family's deacons muttered to himself. Although they had already sensed Jiang Fei's strength, None of them had thought of him as a true immortal. Although there were many powerful people on the planet, true immortals were not easy to come by. Even among the four great families, outer deacons like them could hardly see true immortals. They could only occasionally observe from afar during important ceremonies. Now that they had seen the power of true immortals with their own eyes, it was unknown whether it was because they were lucky in their three lifetimes 
or because they did not look at the almanac when they went out. It was a great misfortune. Hmm? Jiang Fei was slightly surprised because the disciples of the moon goddess Sek were knocked down by his attack just now. Only Yulingji was still standing there unscathed. She did not even have a messy hairstyle. This girl is really something. Jiang Fei secretly activated his violet eyes. Under the power of the energy cord, Yulingji's strength was completely exposed to Jiang Fei. What is this thing? Jiang Fei looked curiously at the jade pendant hanging on Yulingji's waist. The energy circuit inside this thing was very strange. It was the one that had helped Yulingji block Jiang Fei's attack just now. Junior sister, we can't afford to offend this guy. Hurry up and call master to help. Senior brother, even if we call master now, I'm afraid it's too late. Right. This. Calling master can at least help you collect your corpses. Yulingji looked impatiently at the useless senior and junior brothers around her. Although these guys were injured because of her. However, their current behavior was too embarrassing for the moon goddess sect. UH. The disciples of the moon goddess sect were rendered speechless by Yulingji. Moreover, many of them had also been scared to death by Jiang Fei. Although they usually acted arrogantly and even massacred commoners to refine magical artifacts. However, they never thought that they would take the initiative to provoke a true immortal. This was simply like the birthday boy hanging himself. They were tired of living. Chapter 1838, Chapter 1837 had come to its senses. All right, all right. If there's nothing else, scram. Jiang Fei waved his hand. He was not a bloodthirsty person. Killing these people just because they talked back to him was not something that Jiang Fei could do. Thank you, my lord. Thank you, my lord. When the disciples of the moon goddess Sek saw that Jiang Fei was willing to let them off, they immediately cowed out in gratitude. In the end, they almost angered Moon Spirit Ji to death. In her opinion, her senior brothers were too spineless. However, at that moment, Jiang Fei's nose twitched slightly because he smelled a strong smell of blood. Following the direction of the smell of blood, Jiang Fei turned his head around. It was this one glance that made him change his mind. That was because under the loose black robe of a disciple of the moon goddess sect, there were nine bloody heads hanging. Moreover, they were all the heads of babies. There was a bulge around the kid's waist. Needless to say, all of them were the heads of babies. Moreover, these babies did not seem to have fully developed. It was obvious that they had been removed by cutting open the pregnant woman's stomach. This is intolerable! Jiang Fei was suddenly filled with anger. Although he would not kill people just because these moon goddess sect disciples talked back to him. These guys were actually so heartless. After doing such a thing, Jiang Fei had no reason to leave them in the world anymore. You all deserve to die! Jiang Fei was so angry that he did not even have time to say anything. He suddenly raised his right hand and turned his palm into a claw. With his palm facing up, a ball of flame suddenly burned in his palm. Oh no! Seeing that Jiang Fei was suddenly angry, Moon Soul Princess was stunned. Then, she followed Jiang Fei's gaze and immediately understood why Jiang Fei was angry. Although she was a member of an evil sect and practiced evil techniques that harmed others for her own benefit. She still had her own bottom line. She killed people to refine their souls. But she never touched ordinary people. Firstly, she disliked the fact that ordinary people's souls were too weak. Secondly, she also felt that it was too shameful to bully the weak like this. Therefore, when it came to the matter of people from the same sect refining a child, mother, and blood baby, although Yulingji could not control it, she still could not stand it. Therefore, she now understood very well that as a righteous person, Jiang Fei was furious when he saw such a thing. Bang! Without any hesitation, Yulingji immediately crushed one of the talismans on her body. Following that, a white light flashed and her figure disappeared. Yulingji knew that she could not fight against a true immortal powerhouse, who was enraged. Although she had never killed an innocent person to create such a thing, she did not believe that Jiang Fei would let her off as a member of the Moon Goddess sect. Therefore, the only way to escape from this dangerous situation was to destroy this precious talisman. Yulingji's prompt decision had indeed given her a chance to live. That was because in an instant, the flames in Jiang Fei's hand were thrown at the people of the Moon Goddess sect. Senior! You? The people of the Moon Goddess sect did not even know why Jiang Fei suddenly became so angry. They also did not know why he would go back on his words. In their eyes, killing an ordinary person was not a big deal at all. If it was because he had offended a true immortal level master, then he deserved to die. However, he had met with such bad luck because he had killed a few ordinary people. These people might even feel wronged. Ah! It hurts so much! Help! 
in the endless flames. The disciples of the moon goddess Sek kept wailing in pain. Jiang Fei deliberately suppressed the power of the flames so that he could trap the disciples of the moon goddess Sek so that they would not be able to escape. Some of them would not be burned to death very quickly. He wanted to let these people experience the pain as well as avenge the innocent people who had died. The flames burned for more than an hour before it slowly extinguished. By then, the disciples of the moon goddess Sek had already turned into ashes. More than ten Mahayana stage and above experts had been turned into ashes. Although it was a pity. However, compared to what they had done, it was not worth it at all. All of you can scram as well. Jiang Fei waved his hand. After seeing the heads of the babies, he was not in the mood to secretly learn any martial arts. Therefore, he simply said to the people of the Xiao and Wang families, Thank you, sir. The people of the Wang family were weak. Therefore, when they heard this, they quickly thanked him and left on their swords. Sigh, sir. Goodbye. Although the members of the Xiao family were a little disappointed. What could they say in the face of such a god of death? After everyone left, Jiang Fei sighed. He could not help but think of a movie he had watched when he was young. In the movie, the uncle of the main character said to the main character before his death, the greater the power, the greater the responsibility. It was precisely because of this sentence that the main character, who had obtained superpowers, became a superhero. Otherwise, if an ordinary youth suddenly obtained power, the probability of him becoming a supervillain would be much higher than becoming a hero. Power was indeed something that everyone yearned for. However, after truly obtaining power, if one were to control it, that would be the time to truly interrogate the heart of a person, regardless of whether it was strength or power. It would often cause one to lose oneself. If one could not abide by one's heart and limit one's strength to one's desires, then one would become the slave of strength and one would become the slave of desire. As he thought about it, Jiang Fei could not help but fall into deep thought. There was a saying that there was no time in the mountains. It referred to the fact that many years might pass as soon as one opened and closed one's eyes. Jiang Fei did not know how much time had passed as he fell into deep thought. However, when he woke up from his meditation, it was already night. 0541. Have I meditated for a day? Jiang Fei asked. He he. Captain, you have meditated for more than a day. It has already been seven days. 0541 said with a smile. Yes. Jiang Fei nodded. Although he had meditated for a long time this time, he had thought through many things. After thinking through these things, although his strength did not increase statistically, his state of mind was very different from before. If Jiang Fei was pushed forward by the outside world in the past, after this meditation, Jiang Fei had completely understood what he should do. From now on, he would not wait for Vitalin to complete one quest after another to push him forward. He had to take the initiative to move forward. Then, he'll go and see my little disciple first. Then, he'll make a trip to the Wang family. Jiang Fei stood up. At this moment, his temperament was completely different from before. It was as if there was a sense of confidence in his bones. Jiang Fei summoned his Chungying sword and rode on the sword. He rushed all the way to the Valiant Marshal Hall in the South Pole. Along the way, Jiang Fei could often see cultivators fighting. Occasionally, he would also see believers of the Moon Goddess sect. Jiang Fei did not pay attention to those cultivators fighting. However, if those believers of the Moon Goddess sect were doing evil, Jiang Fei would kill them. After a day and a half, Jiang Fei finally arrived outside the entrance of the Valiant Marshal Hall. Chapter 1839, Chapter 1838 was no longer a secret. After taking out his waist tag, Jiang Fei quickly contacted the disciples at the entrance. After all, he had a proper identity in the Valiant Marshal Hall. Therefore, there was no need to sneak in this time. Swoosh. A white light flashed and two disciples were teleported out of the Valiant Marshal Hall. H. Master. Why are you back? The two people were stunned. Although Jiang Fei had left the five directions for a few months, the time flow between the five directions and the outer universe was twelve times worse. Therefore, in the eyes of these disciples, Jiang Fei had already left for almost ten years. What? I can't come back? Jiang Fei smiled faintly. Uh, Master, I didn't mean that. I wanted to say. I want to. The disciple was so frightened by Jiang Fei that he did not know what to say. After all, the difference in status and strength between the two was too big. The disciple had not even spoken to a true immortal level powerhouse. Therefore, he was very nervous at the moment. Moreover, there was another reason why the valiant Marshal Hall disciple was nervous. 
Previously, after Jiang Fei left with Tong Tong, the entire Valiant Marshal Hall spread the news that Jiang Fei had betrayed the Valiant Marshal Hall and even killed Wu Tianlong. Although the matter was not settled, the disciples spread the news by word of mouth. Therefore, the disciple in front of Jiang Fei clearly regarded him as a traitor of the Valiant Marshal Hall. However, this traitor was a true immortal. Therefore, when he faced Jiang Fei, he was so scared that he did not know what to do. What? I can't go in. Jiang Fei asked with a smile. He really did not intend to make things difficult for the two disciples. The main reason was that he had been away from the five directions for some time. He did not know how the Valiant Marshal Hall would deal with him in the end. What if they kicked him out of the sect? This. That. The two disciples looked at each other. They had not received the order to kick Jiang Fei out of the Valiant Marshal Hall. In other words, Jiang Fei was still a true immortal in the Valiant Marshal Hall. However, the rumors of him betraying the Valiant Marshal Hall were too real. Therefore, the two disciples did not know what to do. All right. You two don't have to make things difficult for me. Go and find my master. Jiang Fei smiled. As someone with his status, he would naturally not make things difficult for the two disciples. Thank you for your kindness. Master! The two disciples seemed to have been granted amnesty. They quickly hid back into the Marshal Valiant Hall. Not much time passed. The teleportation door flashed and Ji Chun Hong came out from the Marshal Valiant Hall. Where is my disciple? Ji Chun Hong shouted as soon as he came out. Although Jiang Fei had not been his master for long, he really treated Jiang Fei as his successor. Therefore, Ji Chun Hong missed Jiang Fei very much. Senior brother, why are you running so fast? Where is Shower? Su Tianhua also rushed out from the Martial Meritocracy Palace. He he, my two masters, I am here. Jiang Fei laughed. Ah, where have you been all these years, kid? Although Ji Chun Hong was blaming Jiang Fei, his eyes were filled with joy. That's right, kid. You actually dared to leave without saying goodbye. Do you still have our two masters in your eyes? Su Tianhua also reprimanded him. I'm sorry. Jiang Fei bowed to the two masters. All right, all right. Let's talk inside. Gu Chun Hong pulled Jiang Fei's wrist. The three of them then returned to the Valiant Marshal Hall. This time, with Ji Chun Hong and Su Tianhua in charge, the two disciples guarding the door naturally had nothing to say. Moreover, the hall master did not give any orders to do anything to Jiang Fei. Therefore, the two of them did not meddle in the matter. After returning to Ji Chun Hong's place, Jiang Fei fell to his knees with a thud and gave a big bow to the two of them. Then, he said to Gu Chun Hong and Su Tianhua, My two masters, I have deceived you. Please punish me. Age? What are you doing? Ji Chun Hong was stunned. Shower. Get up quickly. Get up quickly. We can talk about it slowly. Su Tianhua doted on Jiang Fei more than Ji Chun Hong did. Therefore, he did not ask about the truth and pulled Jiang Fei up first. Master, my name is not Yuan Shao. When Jiang Fei said this, Su Tianhua and Ji Chun Hong were both stunned. After this meditation, Jiang Fei had figured out a lot of things. He decided not to hide anything from his two masters, or even the entire world of five directions. He wanted to reveal his identity as an outsider. If possible, he wanted to bring more people out of the five directions. With the nine rotating astrolabe, Jiang Fei had mastered the passage between the five directions and the outer universe. If possible, he could form a true army of powerhouses. After all, this place had the resources of powerhouses that far exceeded the number and quality of the outer universe. What exactly is going on? Ji Chun Hong asked with a serious face. It's like this. Jiang Fei told him why he came to the Five Directions world and why he was hiding his name. Are you saying that you came from outside the Five Directions world and knew that someone would assassinate the Saintess? That's why you came to the Five Directions world and came to the Valiant Marshal Hall. Ji Chun Hong felt that his brain was not enough. After all, everything that Jiang Fei said was simply too unbelievable. Yes, great master. Previously, when I sent Tong Tong back, I had already taken care of those people. Now, I'm back to visit you, Jiang Fei said. It's really hard to imagine. Su Tianhua was also silent for a long time before he finally accepted this fact. Then, what is the meaning of your return this time? Are you free to visit us? Ji Chun Hong asked. Of course not. If both of you wish to visit the outside world, I am willing to be your tour guide, Jiang Fei said with a smile. We are not the only ones you wish to bring out, are we? Ji Chun Hong glanced at Jiang Fei and asked. 
He he. Master, you have seen through me. Although Jiang Fei said that, there was no hint of embarrassment on his face. Kid, what exactly do you plan to do? Tell me. Su Tianhua laughed. Hmm. I want to open the passage between the two worlds so that the people of the five directions can go out and train. When they miss home, they can come back anytime. Jian Fei said. Then, don't you want to let people from the outside in? Ji Chun Hong asked. Yes, of course. My family and friends can. If I don't know their background, I will not let them disturb this pure land. Jian Fei said with a serious face. Really? Ji Chun Hong asked. I promise. Jian Fei said seriously. Remember what you said? If you bring in some random people, don't blame me for being merciless. Ji Chun Hong said. Don't worry. Master! Jiang Fei smiled. He knew that Ji Chun Hong had passed the test. It's no use just nodding my head. You'd better say H, low to the temple master. Ji Chun Hong said. Yes, I will. Not only the temple master, but also the four great clans and the moon goddess sect, said Jiang Fei. Why did you call them? Ji Chun Hong frowned and asked. Other than getting some benefits for the valiant Marshall Hall's disciples, I also need some cannon fodder. Jiang Fei smiled coldly. Chapter 1840, Chapter 1839, First Visit to the Yuan Family. Humph, I knew you were up to no good. Ji Chun Hong laughed and scolded. Of course, I have to take care of the people from the Marshall Valiant Hall. As for the other guys, it would be a waste if I don't use them. Jiang Fei said with a cheeky smile. All right, follow me to see the Temple Master later. Ji Chun Hong said to Jiang Fei. Thank you, Master. Jiang Fei quickly bowed to Ji Chun Hong. With his presence, the temple master would be much easier to handle. After chatting with the two masters for a while, Jiang Fei and Ji Chun Hong went to the main hall. After the announcement, Jiang Fei met the temple master of martial meritocrats in the main hall. Greetings, temple master. Jiang Fei and Ji Chun Hong cupped their fists and said, Hee hee, so it's Junior Ji and Yuan Shao. Quickly sit down and talk. The Martial Hero Palace Master said with a smile. Palace Master, actually, my name is not Yuan Shao. Jiang Fei then told him his identity and the purpose of his visit. Palace Master, I think it's good to let the disciples go out to train. This will also help them improve their cultivation. Ji Chun Hong said. All right, there's no need to talk about this anymore. Jiang Fei, as an outsider, you are not allowed to join the Martial Meritocracy Hall. However, for Junior Brother G's sake, I will not pursue this matter anymore. However, do not mention the matter of the disciples leaving the Five Directions world again. The Martial Meritocracy Hall Master had actually rejected his request without hesitation. Moreover, he had rejected it so decisively. Lord Valiant Marshal Hall Master. Jiang Fei wanted to say something more, but the Valiant Marshal Hall Master did not give him the chance to do so. All right, if there's nothing else, you may leave first. The valiant Marshal Hall master waved his hand. It was obvious that he was serving tea to send them off. But? Jiang Fei was still a little unwilling. But he was pulled out by Ji Chun Hong. All right. Since the hall master has made a decision, there will be no change even if you continue to pester him. Ji Chun Hong said with a sigh. After Jiang Fei and Gu Chun Hong left, the valiant Marshal Hall master muttered to himself. No one has seen the outside world. With just a few words from this kid. Who knows if it's a blessing or a curse? Moreover, even if the outside world is safe and allowing the disciples to go out for training can increase the overall strength of the Valiant Marshal Hall. The problem is that if they have seen the outside world, when they come back, the Valiant Marshal Hall will be powerful. However, will the Hall Master still be me? As the saying goes, the butt decides the brain. As a high-ranking person, the Valiant Marshal Hall Master first considered the chair under his butt. If he was no longer the Valiant Marshal Hall Master, then would the Valiant Marshal Hall be powerful? What did that matter? The Valiant Marshal Hall Master was worried that the disciples would have wild thoughts when they went out. He was even persuaded by Jiang Fei to come back and rebel against him. Therefore, he was determined not to agree to Jiang Fei's request. On the other hand, after Jiang Fei was rejected, he began to bid farewell to his two masters. Masters, since the Hall Master refuses to agree to my suggestion, I have no choice but to talk to the four great clans and the moon goddess sect first. If any of you can persuade the hall master, I can bring my disciples out to train at any time. Jiang Fei said, Hmm, I could tell that something has happened to you the moment you returned. 
am afraid that the world outside is not peaceful right now. Otherwise, you would not be in such a hurry to recruit people. Ji Chunhong nodded. Yes. The situation outside is very complicated. If the two masters plan to come out for a walk, I will explain it to you in detail. Jiang Fei nodded and said, All right. You can go. Come and visit us often when you have time. Su Tianhua said, I understand. I will come back often. Jiang Fei bowed deeply to the two masters. After bidding farewell to Ji Chunhong and Su Tianhua, Jiang Fei went straight to the Saintly Virgin Palace. Now, everyone in the Saintly Virgin Palace already knew that Jiang Fei was Tong Tong's master. Therefore, they did not stop him. Instead, they let him in. At the same time, they went to inform the Saintly Virgin. Due to the time difference, ten years had passed since Jiang Fei left. Little Tong Tong had already grown into a beautiful young lady. Moreover, her strength had already entered the Mahayana stage. Master, you finally come to see me. Little Tong Tong ran to Jiang Fei. However, as she had grown up, she did not jump straight into Jiang Fei's arms. He <laughs> he, Tong Tong, you've grown up. Jiang Fei suddenly had a very gratifying feeling. Logically speaking, a person of his age should not have such a feeling. However, the time difference between the world of five directions and the outside world. This caused Jiang Fei to actually feel like a daughter who had grown up. MMM. Master, I miss you so much. Tears flashed in Tong Tong's eyes. She had indeed missed Jiang Fei very much over the years. All right. Stop crying. Didn't Master come to see you? Jiang Fei laughed as he felt a little uncomfortable in his heart. Due to the time difference, when he returned again, Tong Tong might have already become old. Although cultivators had a very long lifespan and might not grow old even if they were hundreds of years old. Twelve times the flow of time was still quite terrifying. In the following period of time, Jiang Fei talked a lot with Tong Tong. He also learned about Little Tong's growth process over the years. Although Jiang Fei was not in the martial meritocracy palace during this period of time, Ji Chunhong and Su Tianhua had taken good care of Tong Tong. That was why Tong Tong's strength had improved by leaps and bounds. She had already reached the Mahayana stage before the age of 20. This was not easy for a top sect. Jiang Fei did not leave until the sky gradually darkened. After leaving the Saintus Palace, Jiang Fei left the Valiant Marshal Hall immediately. He was pressed for time. He had to complete his cultivation as soon as possible. At the same time, he had to bring a powerful warrior to the outer universe to act as his henchman. Which house should I go to first? After leaving the Valiant Marshal Hall, Jiang Fei decided to make a trip to the four great families. However, which house to go to first became a problem. I've chosen. I've been pretending to be a member of the Yuan family for so long. I'll go to the Yuan family first. Finally, Jiang Fei made his decision. After making up his mind, Jiang Fei left the territory of the Valiant Marshal Hall. Then, he rode on the Chengying Sword and sped all the way. Soon, he arrived at the borders of the Ba Zhou region, where the Yuan family was located. He found an inn and settled down. After resting for a day, Jiang Fei began to inquire about the location of the Yuan family. This territory was the Yuan family's territory. Therefore, after a little inquiry, Jiang Fei confirmed the location of the Yuan family. Wow! This is a really big family! Looking at the huge courtyard in front of him, Jiang Fei could not help but sigh. The Yuan family's mansion covered hundreds of miles. It was almost equivalent to a big city. That's true. They have not been separated for thousands of years. Their population is indeed huge. Jiang Fei thought about it and realized that it made sense. A big family that had not been separated for thousands of years must have a huge branch. Therefore, it was understandable that they needed so many mansions. Chapter 1841 Take a day off. I'm sorry, but something urgent came up today. If I don't handle it well, I may have thrown all my meager savings into it. So I have to handle it. If I handle it well, It'll give you the good news tomorrow and start updating it the day after tomorrow. Chapter 1842 Chapter 1840 Meeting the Head of the Yuan Family The huge Yuan family took up a few hundred miles of land. Just like a city. Naturally, it was impossible for there to be any gates or anything like that. However, the huge building complex was also divided into high and low ranks. One might not be able to write the words Yuan in one stroke. But the status of the Yuan family and its branches were tens of thousands of miles apart. After thousands of years of development, the disciples of the Yuan family at the outermost periphery, other than the surname Yuan, were probably no different to the Yuan family. They were no different from outsiders and servants. 
however. The Yuan family and the newly separated imperial family enjoyed all kinds of high-quality resources. Jiang Fei walked into the city that was made up entirely of the Yuan family members. He was not stopped at all. This was not only the gathering place of the Yuan family members. There were also shops, hotels, inns, and so on. It was no different from a normal city. However, Jiang Fei, who was strolling leisurely, could not continue walking. When he got closer to the core area, he found that there was an obvious boundary. Halt! Do you have an inner court token? A disciple on duty stopped Jiang Fei. Judging from his strength, this kid was already at the distraction stage. People with such strength could only open doors in the inner court. From this, it could be seen that the Yuan family's original sect was quite powerful. I'm sorry. I'm not a member of the Yuan family. I'm here to discuss something with the Yuan family. Jiang Fei said with a smile. Oh, I see. Once he heard that Jiang Fei was not a member of the Yuan family, the disciple on duty became even angrier. After all, he could bully the people in the outer court of the Yuan family. However, he had to be careful when dealing with the guests of the imperial family. May I ask where you are from? Young master? The disciple on duty asked. Marshal Valiant Hall. My name is Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei replied. He was very good at pulling the tiger's skin and pulling the big banner. Moreover, he was not lying. At this moment, Jiang Fei was the true immortal consecrator of the Marshal Valiant Hall. So, you are a distinguished guest of the Marshal Valiant Hall. Please wait for a moment. I will go and report it. The disciple on duty turned around and said a few words to another disciple before entering the inner court. Young master, please follow me. The disciple who was instructed walked forward. He did not ask Jiang Fei to wait at the door. Instead, he led Jiang Fei to the gatekeeper and served him fragrant tea and snacks. It did not seem like he was being neglected at all. He he. The rules of this big family are indeed different. Jiang Fei thought to himself. As he drank his tea, Jiang Fei did not wait too long. In less than 10 minutes, the disciple who had left earlier returned. Young master, please follow me. The disciple made an inviting gesture. Okay. Jiang Fei stood up and followed the disciple into the Yuan family's inner court. Young master Jiang, is this your first time coming to the Yuan family? The disciple asked. Yes. This is really my first time, Jiang Fei said with a smile. He he. Although our Yuan family cannot compare to the martial meritocrat's palace, which occupies a source of spiritual energy, we can still be considered powerful. This is especially true for the inner court disciples. They are talented, hardworking, and can be said to be no weaker than any sect. The disciple could not help but reveal a trace of deep pride as he spoke. In fact, the disciples of the four great families had always felt a sense of disdain towards the Marshal Meritocrat's palace. The disciples of the four great families had never felt that the Marshal Meritocrat's palace was stronger than them. If it was not for the possession of a source of spiritual energy, the Marshal Meritocrat's palace might not even be as powerful as any other family. Therefore, after seeing Jiang Fei, the disciple could not help but think of comparing himself to Jiang Fei. He he, that's right. From what I've seen on the way here, the Yuan family's strength is indeed amazing. Jiang Fei was not in the mood to argue with this kid. Even though the valiant Marshal Hall's strength was far stronger than any of the four great clans. Not long after, Jiang Fei was led to the front of a large house. This is the residence of the master, said the disciple. Yes. Jiang Fei nodded. Master Jiang, I can only send you here. There will be someone to receive you later. After the disciple said that, he bowed and turned to leave. May I ask if you are Master Jiang? As soon as the disciple left, an old man came forward. That's right. I am Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei replied. Greetings, young Master Jiang. I am the butler of the master. My name is Yuanin, said the old man. Greetings, Uncle Yuan. Jiang Fei was still very respectful toward old people. He he, don't call me that. If a true immortal master calls me uncle, that would really torture me. Yuanan waved his hand repeatedly. Oh! Jiang Fei raised his eyebrows. At first, he really did not pay attention to this old man. However, after opening the violet eye, Jiang Fei realized that this butler was actually an expert in the tribulation stage. No wonder he could sense his own strength. He <laughs> he! It seems that I was right! Yuan An's eyes lit up. He was only in the tribulation stage. It was impossible for him to see through Jiang Fei's strength with one glance. However, because Jiang Fei was stronger than him, 
he could only sense Jiang Fei's strength. However, he could not see through him. Furthermore, Yuanan was an expert in the tribulation stage. Therefore, he decisively guessed that Jiang Fei's strength had reached true immortal level. In the end, he was right. What a young true immortal! After confirming Jiang Fei's strength, Yuanan could not help but suck in a breath of cold air. It was not that he had never seen a true immortal level powerhouse before. After all, the Yuan family had several ancestors. However, he had never heard of Jiang Fei who was so young. Young Master Jiang, please follow me. Although Yuanan was shocked by Jiang Fei's strength, he did not stay in a daze for long. He was also a person who was used to seeing the world. Therefore, he quickly returned to normal. Then, he led Jiang Fei into the private residence of the Yuan family's master. Young Master Jiang, please wait a moment. Our master will be here soon. After Yuan and handed over the fragrant tea and fruits, he left. In fact, the master of the Yuan family was not the one who wanted to meet Jiang Fei in the beginning. After all, the master of the Yuan family was not someone who could be met by just anyone. Even people from the Valiant Marshal Hall would not be able to meet him. Therefore, at the beginning, Yuan and only intended to have the master's younger brother come and meet Jiang Fei to see if he had any business. However, after Yuan and discovered Jiang Fei's strength, he could not afford to be negligent when facing a true immortal level powerhouse. Moreover, it was a true immortal level powerhouse from the Valiant Marshal Hall. Therefore, Yuanan went out and stopped the master's younger brother. Then, he directly reported the matter to the master. Hee hee! It seems like there's something going on! After the master of the Yuan family listened to Yuan A.N.S. report, he nodded. Then, he thought for a moment and said, I'll go over first. You go to the Yangxin Pavilion and ask my great-grandfather to come as well. The four great families were different from the Valiant Marshal Hall. Their masters might not have the strength of a true immortal. Usually, they would have a middle-aged man who was rich and energetic. Their task was to manage the family's affairs. In terms of individual strength, they might not be the best. However, when faced with a true immortal, if they did not have a powerhouse of the same level to accompany them, on the one hand, it would be easy for the other party to feel neglected. On the other hand, the head of the Yuan clan was afraid that Jiang Fei would use his strength to pressure him. So he called his great-grandfather. At the same time, he would have the support of a true immortal behind him. Chapter 1843 Chapter 1841 Showcasing Technology The head of the Yuan family, Yuan Ong, did not let Jiang Fei wait for too long. He soon appeared before Jiang Fei. You only have the strength of an insightful void stage? Jiang Fei was slightly surprised. Although he knew that the Yuan family did not have the strength of a true immortal, he did not expect him to be so weak. He he, young master Jiang, I have heard a lot about you. Yuan An cupped his fists and said to Jiang Fei. Although he was polite, he was very confused in his heart because he had never heard of such a young true immortal appearing in the Valiant Martial Hall. Although the incident with Jiang Fei had caused quite a stir. His name was Yuan Shao at that time. Therefore, the four big families and other factions all knew that a young true immortal from the Valiant Marshal Hall had appeared ten years ago. His name was Yuan Shao. However, no one had heard of Jiang Fei's name. There was a reason why Yuan Ong did not link Jiang Fei and Yuan Shao together. In the five directions of heaven and earth, true immortal powerhouses were undoubtedly at the top of the food chain. They were almost invincible. Therefore, it was naturally not worth hiding the name. To a true powerhouse. It was a shame. It was precisely because of the unique cultural heritage of the five directions that Yuan Ong did not think about it. Therefore, he naturally could not guess Jiang Fei's previous identity. Sorry to bother you. I, Jiang Fei, have come to visit you without my permission. It is really rude of me. Jiang Fei stood up and said politely, Young Master Jiang, do you have something important to discuss with the Yuan family? Yuan Ong asked. He he, I didn't expect Mr. Yuan to be such a straightforward person. Jiang Fei smiled slightly. He did not expect Yuan Ong to be so direct with his questions. However, this way, he would not have to waste any more time on formalities. Mr. Yuan, since you have asked, I will be direct with you. Jiang Fei paused for a moment and continued. As the head of the Yuan family, Mr. Yuan, you know that there is a sky beyond the sky. As Jiang Fei said this, he pointed at the top of his head. Young Master Jiang, what do you mean? Yuan Ong did not react for a moment. Isn't Mr. Yuan curious about the world beyond the boundary? Jiang Fei laughed. Hmm? As expected. 
as soon as Jiang Fei finished speaking. Yuan Ong's interest was completely piqued. The four great families and the valiant Marshall Hall had basically formed their influence in the five directions of the world. If they wanted to expand their influence, they would have to attack other forces. However, their forces were balanced against each other. No one dared to act rashly. However, if a new world suddenly appeared, no matter which force received this benefit, their forces would greatly increase. They might even be able to dominate the entire five directions. Young Master Jiang, are you saying that the Valiant Marshal Hall has mastered the method to break through the barrier? Yuanong asked. The Valiant Marshal Hall does not have the ability to do so. However, I can. Jiang Fei smiled slightly. However, he revealed a proud confidence. Oh! Yuanong raised his eyebrows. He had noticed a hint of something from Jiang Fei's words. Regardless of whether what Jiang Fei said was true or not, he was definitely not on the same page as the Valiant Marshal Hall. He he! I heard that an important guest has come to my Yuan family. I would like to meet him. At this moment, a loud and clear voice sounded from the corridor outside. It was Yuan Ong's great-grandfather, Yuan Tiangang. Great-grandfather is finally here. Hearing this voice, Yuan Ong felt a lot more at ease. Although he had just been chatting and laughing with Jiang Fei, he still felt a chill down his spine when facing a true immortal level powerhouse. Hmm? At the same time, Jiang Fei also felt the aura of that powerhouse. Because the other party had deliberately released his aura, Jiang Fei could easily sense that the other party was also a true immortal level powerhouse. Swish! The door curtain was raised, and a burly figure walked in. This person looked to be in his 30s or 40s. However, the age of a high-level cultivator could not be determined from his appearance. However, in terms of strength, this guy was definitely more than a hundred years old. Great-grandfather! You're here! Yuan An quickly stood up and bowed. Although he was the head of the Yuan family, the head of the Yuan family was more like a professional manager of a large company. They were responsible for the management of the family and held great power in their hands. However, their status was far lower than those true immortal-level elders. That was because those true immortal level elders were the foundation of the Yuan family. Okay. Yuan Gang nodded. His gaze immediately fell on Jiang Fei. Swoosh. Two pairs of eyes met in the air. There was even a faint spark between them. What strong mental strength. Yuan Tian Gang was shocked. He had just wanted to test Jiang Fei. But he was stopped by the other party. Not only did he not gain any advantage. He even suffered a little loss. He he. Jiang Fei only smiled faintly. He had now fused with three pieces of the will core, other than Tyrion who could compete with him. Jiang Fei could not think of any other intelligent life form that could compete with him in spiritual power. Of course, Jiang Fei could not use his spiritual power to crush a cosmic giant beast like the giant steel scorpion, although the other party was not very smart and did not know how to use spiritual power. He could not stop the other party from being stupid and rich. How big was its brain? With a body that was close to a thousand kilometers long even if it only had one millionth of a brain. Its brain was still incredibly big, no matter how low the utilization rate was. The terrifying amount of spiritual power that it had accumulated was enough to protect itself. However, other than these gigantic creatures, if an average intelligent creature wanted to compete with Jiang Fei in terms of spiritual power, it would be like playing with a big knife in front of Master Guan. You guys chat. I'm just listening. Yuan Kang, who had suffered a little, was now obedient. Although Jiang Fei was young, his strength was recognized by Yuan Tian Gang. Master Jiang, is what you said true? Do you really have a way to lead the world of the five directions? Yuan On asked. Hmm? Yuan Tian Gang was stunned when he heard that. However, he kept his promise. He just listened quietly and did not interrupt. Of course. I brought this back from the outside. Jiang Fei said as he waved his hand and threw out a hover car. After all, there were quite a number of such things in his ring space. What is this? Yuanong asked. It's a type of transportation tool. It's similar to a flying sword, but it's not that fast. However, it can allow ordinary people who don't know anything to travel at a very fast speed. Jiang Fei said and added. Do you guys want to try it? This. Yuan On was still a little afraid of the unknown. It'll do it. Yuan Tian Gang volunteered. As a true immortal level powerhouse. He was not afraid that Jiang Fei would use this thing to plot against him. Okay. Jiang Fei moved the hover car outside and brought Yuan Tian Gang inside. Let's go. Jiang Fei said two simple words and the car automatically started. A very strange energy fluctuation. 
Does this thing have an artifact spirit? Yuan Tian Gang asked curiously. Although there was a voice remote control in the five directions of heaven and earth, every place needed an artifact spirit. Magical items that had an artifact spirit were also treasures. It's not an artifact spirit, but it's more or less the same. Or rather, it's an artificial artifact spirit. This is the technology of the outside world. Jiang Fei introduced. Chapter 1844 Chapter 1842 After a round, Jiang Fei drove the hover car back to Yuan Ong's side. Great grandfather, what do you think of this thing? Yuan Ong asked. It's very magical. Indeed, it's not a product of our five directions heaven and earth. Although Yuan Tian Gang did not know what was going on with the hover car, he was certain that this thing was definitely not an item from the five directions heaven and earth. So, he really can freely enter and exit the world of five directions. Yuan Ong's eyes lit up. That should be it. Yuan Gang nodded. How is it? Do you believe me now? Jiang Fei smiled. The reason why he showed the hover car was to prove that he could indeed travel between the world of five directions and the outside world. Let's talk inside. Yuan Ong was extremely excited. He even wanted to pull Jiang Fei's wrist. However, he gave up after considering that Jiang Fei was a true immortal level powerhouse. Back in the living room, everyone took their seats. Then, Yuan Ong immediately asked, Young Master Jiang, may I know what the outside world is like? It's about this. Jiang Fei gave a brief description of the outside world. It included information about technology, as well as information about powerhouses. So, with that so-called technology, doesn't that mean that ordinary people can kill true immortal powerhouses? Yuan Ong frowned when he heard that. If that was really the case, the outside world would be too dangerous. In theory, that is true. However, I have never heard of true immortals being killed by technological weapons. Jiang Fei waved his hand and continued. Although the main cannon of a super battleship has the power to kill true immortals, as long as true immortals are not stupid and do not take that kind of attack head on, it will be fine. Although a true immortal expert might not be able to destroy a main battleship alone, if he is determined to escape, the main battleship will not be able to do anything to him. I see. Yuan Ong nodded. However, he was also very curious about the weapon that could kill a true immortal. To put it bluntly, I'm here to bring the people of the five directions out. To be honest, the experts outside are all noobs. Their martial arts skills are very low. It's almost impossible for them to be our opponents within the same level. If we can work together, we will definitely be able to create a wider blue sky outside. Jiang Fei said, Young Master Jiang, let's not beat around the bush. Even if what you said is true, there's a saying that goes, you can't get up early without benefits. I'm afraid that you have something to ask of us by bringing us out. Right? Yuan Ong saw through Jiang Fei's intentions at a glance. Ha ha. Mr. Yuan is indeed wise. Jiang Fei did not hide his intentions. He said to Yuan Ong, I have enemies outside. I can't deal with them myself. So I can bring you out. However, when my enemies come knocking on my door, you can't just ignore me. Young Master Jiang, you are very open-minded. But as the head of a family, I have to be more cautious. So, may I ask what exactly is the strength of your enemies? Yuan Ong was very satisfied with Jiang Fei's open-minded attitude. It was better to speak openly than to use you behind your back. My enemies have powerful technology. But there are not many experts. As far as I know, there is only one true immortal. There are only a dozen or so experts in the tribulation stage. Jiang Fei said, I see. Yuan Ong was silent. He began to weigh the pros and cons. Little brother, the master of the Yuan family will decide what to do. However, I want to go out with you to take a look. At this time, Yuan Tian Gang suddenly said to Jiang Fei, As long as you promise me that when my enemies come looking for me, you can help me. I can take you out. Jiang Fei smiled. That's settled then. Yuan Tian Gang said with a smile. No problem. Jiang Fei nodded. Young Master Jiang, I would like to ask, if we go to the outside world, do we have to follow your orders? Yuan Ong asked. There's no need. I only want a gentleman's agreement. When I'm in trouble, I will inform you. If you keep your word, you will come to help me. If you don't come, I will only blame myself for not knowing people. Jiang Fei said with a serious face. Oh. Yuan Ong raised his eyebrows. He had initially thought that Jiang Fei was there to be their hired thug. However, he did not expect Jiang Fei to not restrict their freedom at all. It could be said that when they were in the outside world, 
Their development would depend on themselves. Jiang Fei had no means to restrict them at all. How is it? Jiang Fei smiled calmly. His goal was very simple. He only needed to bring these experts out of the five directions heaven and earth. Once they entered the outer universe, then they would interact with the outside world and increase the strength of this universe. If Jiang Fei really wanted to use them as cannon fodder, he only needed to place the teleportation portal on the side of the players. That way, both sides would not need Jiang Fei to provoke them. Let me think about it, Yuan An said slowly. Although he was already very tempted by Jiang Fei's suggestion, how could an old fox like him let his opponent see through his thoughts during negotiations? If you have thought it through, use this to contact me. Jiang Fei directly gave Yuan An a communicator. After teaching him how to use it, Jiang Fei took his leave and prepared to leave. Young Master Jiang, why don't you stay in my Yuan family for a few days? Although our Yuan family is not comparable to the valiant Marshal Hall, we still have beautiful scenery. It's worth a reward. Yuan Ong urged him to stay. Hee <laughs> hee. No thanks. I still have to make a trip to the Wang family. I won't be staying for long. Jiang Fei refused with a smile. He had purposely revealed his itinerary to pressure the Yuan family. He wanted them to know that Jiang Fei was not here to beg them. Now that the opportunity was presented to them, if they did not cherish it, there would be many who would beg for it. All right. Young Master Jiang. Take care. Yuan An did not continue to urge Jiang Fei to stay. At this time, both he and Jiang Fei were competing in patience. Whoever lost their patience first would be at a disadvantage in the subsequent interactions. After Jiang Fei left, Yuan Gang asked, Little An, what do you think of Jiang Fei's proposal? This is an opportunity, Yuan An said. Yes, Yuan Gang nodded. However, there are hidden dangers. After all, there is no free lunch in the world. Since he came to us to contact us, it means that he has a request. However, the indifference that he displayed contradicts each other. Therefore, I plan to let him be for a period of time. After that, I will send a few disciples to the outside world to find out the truth. Yuan On said. Yeah, I think so too. But there's no need to send disciples. I'll go there myself. After all, if the disciples sent are too weak, I'm afraid they won't be able to get any information. Instead, they might be controlled by someone who wants to, Yuan Tiangang said. Then he'll have to trouble great grandfather. Yuan Ong bowed to Yuan Tiangang. Chapter 1845, Chapter 1843 Slaying the Ghost Doctor After leaving the Yuan family, Jiang Fei began to move on to his next target, the Wang family. This was Jiang Fei's second target. Moreover, he had not only come to the Wang family to recruit some cannon fodder, but he also wanted to obtain the Wang family's core martial arts. At this moment, Jiang Fei had the earth-type martial arts that Ji Chun had imparted to him, the wood-type martial arts that he had stolen from the green wood cliff, and the fire-type martial arts that he had accidentally obtained from the Crimson Flame sect. However, when it came to water-type and metal-type martial arts, Jiang Fei was still relying on the most primitive methods to attack. Therefore, the Wang family's metal-type martial arts were still very attractive to Jiang Fei. Although Jiang Fei had never been to the Wang family, the name of the four great families could be said to be extremely well known in the town star. Anyone could find out the approximate location of the four great families. Therefore, Jiang Fei did not have to spend much effort to find this place. Hee <laughs> hee, this Wang family is really different from the Yuan family. Jiang Fei sighed in his heart when he arrived near the Wang family. Since ancient times, the Yuan family had never split up. Therefore, the entire family gathered together like a city. However, the Wang family was different. They did not gather everyone together. Instead, they scattered the entire family in many places. It could be said that the entire town star was filled with the Wang family's businesses and bloodlines. As the family members were scattered, it was naturally impossible for a city to be dominated by the Wang family. Although the Wang family's mansion was not small, it was only a nine-hall courtyard. It was not as exaggerated as the Yuan family's mansion. When he arrived at the entrance of the mansion, Jiang Fei did not have the time to approach before he saw a person being beaten out. Scram! Come to the entrance of the Wang family again, and he'll break your legs! A servant-like person said fiercely. Hee hee! This Wang family is really domineering! Jiang Fei laughed in his heart. Waiter! Please bring me a cup of tea! Because of this small incident, Jiang Fei did not go to the Wang family directly. Instead, he sat down in a nearby tea house. Yes! Sir! The waiter replied, very quickly. 
he served a bowl of fragrant tea and placed the dried and fresh fruits on the table. While Jiang Fei was drinking the tea, he was observing the Wang family from the window. He saw that the Wang family's door was tightly shut. The front door was also deserted. What's going on? Jiang Fei was surprised. Logically speaking, the Wang family was the leader of the four big families. There should be an endless stream of guests in front of the door. Why did it become so deserted? Hey, have you heard? What's the matter? Hee <laughs> hee. Something happened to the Wang family. It said that the third young master encountered an assassin. Assassin? Could it be that the third young master is dead? I don't know. The Wang family is now in a state of panic. They don't allow outsiders to get close to them. Do you know who did it? I don't know. They claim that it was someone from the moon goddess sect. But I heard that it was someone from the Xiao family. The Xiao family? Really? Are the two families about to fall out? Who knows? Just as Jiang Fei was puzzled, he vaguely heard two people talking on the second floor of the tea house. With his powerful senses, Jiang Fei heard every word of their conversation. Something happened to the Wang family. Jiang Fei raised his eyebrows. If that was the case, then the servants of the Wang family would not be so domineering. There were still people waiting at the door when the young master was assassinated. It would not be too much of a stretch to beat this thing half to death before asking questions. Whoosh! At that moment, a sword light landed in the Wang family's mansion. A Mahayana stage expert. Jiang Fei sensed the strength of that person. Buddy! Two cups of tea! At that moment, two big men in black walked in from outside the tea house. Interesting! Jiang Fei was slightly surprised. These two big men were both in the crossing calamity stage. Now that they had appeared near the Wang family, Jiang Fei would not believe that they were fine. Second brother, do you think we can succeed in this mission? A man in black asked in a low voice. Sure. There are ears on the other side of the wall. The other man waved his hand. Then, the two stopped talking and just quietly drank their tea. Waiter, pay the bill. After the two drank some water, they stood up and left the tea house. Waiter, keep the change. Jiang Fei threw a spiritual stone on the table and followed them out. I'm rich. The buddy came to Jiang Fei's table. His eyes were wide open. He had worked in the tea house for so many years, but he had never seen a customer who paid with a spiritual stone. After Jiang Fei came out, he followed behind the two people from afar. After the two people walked out of the city, they rode their flying swords and sped toward the west. Interesting. Jiang Fei laughed to himself. However, he did not meet them. He used his own strength to fly in the air and followed them. After flying for about 100 miles, the two men descended into a mountain hollow. Jiang Fei followed closely behind them and arrived at the mountain hollow. As Jiang Fei's strength was far greater than theirs and he had deliberately hidden his aura, the two men did not notice him at all until he landed in the mountain hollow. Second brother, will our attempt to kill the ghost doctor who San Xiao provoked the heart moon sect? One of the men in black asked worriedly. Humph. As long as we do it cleanly, who would know that it was us? The other guy sneered. That's true. Second brother, you brought the dark for us sting this time. I think that even if the other party has a master at the peak of the tribulation stage, they would definitely die here. The man in black from before laughed. Dark Frost Sting? It seems like this matter really has something to do with the Xiao family. Jiang Fei listened to the conversation between the two and began to make some calculations in his mind. From the conversation between the two, Jiang Fei came to a conclusion. Firstly, the Wang family was indeed in collusion with the Moon Goddess sect. Otherwise, the ghost doctor who San Xiao of the Moon Goddess sect would not have come to heal the third young master of the Wang family. Secondly, the Xiao family was most likely the ones who assassinated the third young master of the Wang family. Otherwise, they would not have the ten-directional clear weapon of the water element Dark Ice Thorn. After analyzing the situation, Jiang Fei did not decide which side he would help. Instead, he chose to wait and see. In Jiang Fei's eyes, although the Moon Goddess sect had many evil people, they could not all be evil people. Moreover, he planned to use these people as cannon fodder. Therefore, there was no need to kill them as soon as he encountered them. After half a day, a few rays of light flew from the sky. It did not take long before four flying swords approached from afar. At the same time, the two members of the Xiao family in the valley were ready for battle. Whoosh! Just as the flying swords approached, a nearly transparent light shot out. Bang! Ah! With a scream, a figure fell from the flying sword. Swoosh! The nearly transparent light flew back into the hands of the Xiao family members. 
it was clearly the mysterious ice spike that they had mentioned earlier. This ten-directional clear weapon is indeed unusual. Jiang Fei was secretly surprised. The Xiao family members were able to kill a tribulation transcendor of the same level as him with one strike. The mysterious ice spike was a great contribution. Chapter 1846 Chapter 1845 Mystic Ice Spike in Hand There's an assassin! Impudent! After being attacked, the members of the Hard Moon sect also reacted. Go to H, L! With a furious shout, a blood-colored skeleton descended from the sky and pounced on the two members of the Xiao family. Oh no! It's the 10,000 Blood Soul Transformation! The two members of the Xiao family turned pale with fright when they saw it. Although they had the mystic ice spike in their hands, it was an offensive hidden weapon and had no defensive ability. Therefore, they were completely unable to defend against the blood-colored skeleton. Open up! The two members of the Xiao family tried their best to reach the skeleton, but their sword chi did not have any effect on the blood-colored skeleton. Instead, the skeleton pounced on one of them. Third brother! Run! One of the members of the Xiao family knew that he would not be able to escape today. So he handed the mystic eye spike to his companion and took the initiative to face the blood-colored skeleton. Second brother! The other guy shouted. But he also knew that his second brother was using his life to delay him. So he immediately rode his sword and wanted to escape. At this moment, the lives of the two of them were no longer important. The important thing was to send the mysterious ice spike back to the Xiao family. However, the Xiao family's second brother was not able to stop the bloody skeleton for long. After two moves, he was pushed to the ground by the bloody skeleton. The bloody skeleton instantly merged into the Xiao family's second brother's body. Ah! Following a scream, the Xiao family's second brother kept rolling on the ground. At the same time, blood gushed out from his eyes, ears, mouth, and nose. After a moment, his entire body turned into a pool of blood. What a vicious martial art! Jiang Fei frowned when he saw this. Master, it's delicious! However, the Chunging sword between Jiang Fei's brows sent him a message. Delicious? Jiang Fei asked as he looked at the blood that had once again condensed into a bloody skeleton. Yes! This is delicious! The sword spirit of the Chunging sword replied. Your taste is really strong! Jiang Fei could not help but curl his lips. However, at this moment, the third brother of the Xiao family could not escape the pursuit of the moon goddess sect. Although one of the four flying swords in the sky had been shot down, there were still three of them. Even if one of them was controlling the bloody skeleton, there were still two others who were eyeing him. Under such circumstances, the third brother of the Xiao family had no way to escape. Bang! The third brother of the Xiao family was hit by a palm and fell to the ground. Although he was barely able to stand up, he had clearly suffered considerable internal injuries while spitting out blood. Let's go! In order to send the mysterious ice spike back to the Xiao family, the third brother was also trying his best to hold on. He gritted his teeth and dived into the depths of the mountain. At that moment, it was clear that he could not walk in the sky. He could only try to survive under the cover of the winding mountain road and the dense forest. Yo! Why is this kid coming for me? Jiang Fei did not expect that third brother of the Xiao family would accidentally run to his side. Plop! Third brother of the Xiao family fell to the ground after running for a short while. From the looks of him, he did not even need to be hunted down. He himself would not be able to live for long. Sigh! It's quite pitiful! Jiang Fei shrugged as he watched the third brother of the Xiao family fall to the ground. Sir, please help me bring this back to the Xiao family. At that moment, the third brother of the Xiao family had no other choice. He knew that he could no longer walk out of this forest. Therefore, no matter who Jiang Fei was, he had to give it his all. He, he. Jiang Fei took the Dark Rose Spike, but did not say anything. Sir, if you can help me bring this back to the Xiao family, everything else on me will be yours. Moreover, the Xiao family will definitely repay you handsomely. Xiao Laosan died after saying that. He he. I'm afraid that this little thing on you is not even worth a fraction of the Ten Directions clear artifact. Jiang Fei laughed coldly. He was not an idiot who did not know what was good for him. How could he give away the Ten Directions clear artifact that he had obtained? Where is that kid? He went that way. F asterisk CK. The ghost doctor is dead. How are we going to report this to the Wang family? That's right. If this implicates the third young master of the Wang family's injuries and causes the Wang family to break away from our Moon Heart sect, then the sect master will blame us. What are we going to do? Jiang Fei almost laughed out loud as he listened to the conversation of the Moon Heart sect's disciples. For people flew past in the sky. 
the two idiots from the Xiao family casually attacked and killed the ghost doctor. Hu San Xiao. This way, the deaths of these two people were not unjustified. After all, their mission had been completed perfectly. There's someone there. Very soon, Jiang Fei's trail was discovered. Let's just kill him. We have to hurry back to the main altar. We have to report this to the sect master. Then, aren't we going to the Wang family? Go to my ass. The ghost doctor is dead. What's the use of us going there? He, he. If you don't want to go to heaven, you'll have to go to H. L. Jiang Fei laughed coldly in his heart as he listened to the conversation between the people. The reason why he deliberately released his aura was so that those people would come down and die themselves. Although Jiang Fei did not have any intention of killing the moon goddess sect, the blood red skeleton contained the smell of blood and resentment. It was obvious that it was made by slaughtering civilians. Moreover, it killed a lot of people. Jiang Fei had always been merciless when it came to such a crazy person. Whoosh! A flying sword rushed toward Jiang Fei. Go to H, L. The person did not wait for Jiang Fei to finish his sentence and directly killed Jiang Fei. Pa! However, before the person could reach Jiang Fei and Jiang Fei did anything, he inexplicably fell down. If one looked closely, the person's eyes were wide open and his mouth and nose were bleeding. He looked like he was about to die. The few of you, come down too. Jiang Fei said to the two men above him after he killed a man with his mind power pierce. Oh no! We have encountered a tough opponent. Let's split up and run. The two men were smart. When they saw their companions die for no reason, they ran away. You want to run away? It's too late. Jiang Fei sneered. If they ran away, Jiang Fei would lose face? Pa pa. Jiang Fei easily killed the remaining two disciples of the moon goddess sect. After one of them died, the bloody skeleton immediately lost control. At that moment, the Chunging sword flew out by itself and swallowed the bloody skeleton. Be a good person in your next life. You will be punished for being so cruel to others. Jiang Fei sighed. Then, he got up and prepared to return to the city where the Wang family was located. Friend, aren't you looking down on me by just leaving after killing the people of the moon goddess sect? At that moment, a long whistle came from afar. Sigh, he's pretty fast. In fact, Jiang Fei had already noticed this guy. However, he thought that he could kill the person and leave before the person arrived. He did not expect that he would still be caught. Since he had already been discovered, Jiang Fei might as well not run anymore. Otherwise, he would be chased all the way. Wouldn't that be very embarrassing? Ever since the last time he meditated, Jiang Fei had started to face his own strength. He was already a top-tier true immortal. It was not like he could not defeat the other party. There was no need for him to hide and dodge. If there was a problem, he would just face it head-on. Chapter 1847 Chapter 1845 Change a Path to the Moon Goddess Sect the person was extremely fast. In a short while, he had already arrived in front of Jiang Fei. My friend, has the moon goddess sect ever offended you? The person looked to be in his forties or fifties. He had a strong body and a big bald head. It's not that I've offended them. They just want to kill me to silence me. Jiang Fei said calmly. A bunch of blind fools. The bald man snorted coldly. Then, he continued. In that case, they asked for it. This friend, I am Lu Ding, the left protector of the Heart Moon sect. May I know you? The big bald man's expression was calm. It was as if he did not want to do anything to those guys. My name is Jiang Fei. I'm from the Valiant Marshal Hall. Jiang Fei did not hide anything. Oh! Lu Ding was stunned. He did not expect the Valiant Marshal Hall to talk to him so calmly. After all, the Valiant Marshal Hall and the Heart Moon sect were enemies. After two rounds, it was almost as if they were going to fight to the death. What? You want to fight first? Jiang Fei asked with a smile. He he, you're an interesting person. Lu Ding laughed loudly. Don't you want to avenge these people? Jiang Fei asked. Those who don't have eyes and seek death by themselves are not worthy of being avenged by others. Lu Ding laughed coldly. Then, he looked at Jiang Fei with a serious face and asked. These people deserve to die. However, did you kill Ghost Doctor Hu San Shao? That's not true. They were ambushed. The ghost doctor was killed as soon as they met. These guys only found me after they killed the assassin. Then, they tried to kill me to silence me. You saw the result. Right. Jiang Fei said with a smile. We don't care about the grudge between the Xiao family and the Wang family. However, killing a member of the moon goddess sect is not that simple. Lu Ding said with a gloomy face. 
He he. Jiang Fei smiled and did not continue the conversation. Brother Jiang, I still have something to do here. I will take my leave first. Lu Ding did not seem to have any intention of seeking revenge on Jiang Fei. He actually turned around and was about to leave. Actually, when Lu Ding came, he really wanted to kill Jiang Fei. Although he had said it so well before. What about the moon goddess sect's disciples not opening their eyes and taking the initiative to provoke a true immortal powerhouse? Those were all just empty words. If he had not found out that Jiang Fei was stronger than him when he came, he would have had to fight. Otherwise, with Jiang Fei's status as the Valiant Marshal Hall. If he did not fight, wouldn't he have lost the face of the Moon Goddess sect? However, now that he was stronger than Jiang Fei, he felt that he was completely no match for Jiang Fei. If he forced himself to fight, he would only be inviting humiliation. If that was the case, Lu Ding would not have to make things difficult for him. Therefore, after saying some empty words, he was about to leave. Brother Lu, wait! Jiang Fei stopped Lu Ding who was about to leave. Brother Jiang, is something the matter? Lu Ding asked. I have a business to discuss with the moon goddess sect. Jiang Fei smiled. He had originally wanted to drag the four big families and the moon goddess sect down with him. Now that the moon goddess sect had come to him, how could Jiang Fei let it go? Ah? Lu Ding was stunned. He had never thought that someone from the Valiant Marshal Hall would say such a thing to him. He he. I wonder what Brother Lu thinks about the world beyond the five directions. Jiang Fei asked with a smile. The world beyond? Lu Ding was even more dumbfounded. He did not know what Jiang Fei meant by that. Yes. Jiang Fei nodded. Although the Book of the Moon Goddess Sect mentioned that someone had successfully passed through the barrier, those people had never returned. Therefore, we do not know whether the outside world is good or bad. Lu Ding said. Then, Brother Lu, do you want to go out and take a look? Jiang Fei asked with a smile. Go out? Lu Ding was stunned. But he immediately reacted. He stared into Jiang Fei's eyes and asked. Could it be that brother Jiang has a way to get out? Not only can I get out, but I can also come back. Jiang Fei laughed. What? Lu Ding widened his eyes, trying to find any flaws in Jiang Fei's eyes. Unfortunately, Jiang Fei said it with a clear conscience. How could Lu Ding find any flaws? Not only can I travel back and forth through the enchantment, I can also bring people with me. Jiang Fei threw out another heavy bomb. This. Brother Jiang. What do you mean by telling me this? Lu Ding was not stupid. As a member of the Valiant Marshal Hall, there must be a reason why Jiang Fei told his sworn enemy that he had such a huge gold mountain. It's very simple. The Valiant Marshal Hall Master was worried that I would threaten his position as the Hall Master when I brought people out. Therefore, he refused to let his disciples follow me out. Moreover, there are many powerful people in the outside world. If I go out by myself, I will be alone. Therefore, I have to get help. Jiang Fei said with a smile. About that, Lu Ding fell silent. Based on their understanding of the Valiant Martial Temple Master, this was really his style. Therefore, there was nothing wrong with what Jiang Fei said. How can you prove that what you said is true? Lu Ding asked as he stared into Jiang Fei's eyes. Because the situation was too shocking. He had to be careful. I don't think you can make the decision on this matter. I can go back to the moon goddess sect with you once. I will show you some of the gadgets I brought back from the outside. You can also pick a few disciples. I will take them out for a walk. When we come back, you will believe me. Jiang Fei said with a smile. You dare to come back to the main altar with us? Lu Ding looked at Jiang Fei as if he was looking at a monster. After all, the moon goddess sect and the valiant martial hall had a huge grudge against each other. After all, the Valiant Martial Hall's cave dwelling now occupied the Moon Goddess Sect's base. How could a Valiant Martial Hall disciple go to the Moon Goddess Sect's headquarters? So what? As long as the benefits are big enough. What does it matter if we are friends or enemies? Jiang Fei laughed. Brother Jiang, you have guts. I'm impressed. Lu Ding pointed at Jiang Fei. How about it? Brother Lu, can you lead the way for me? Jiang Fei asked with a smile. No problem. Please. Lu Ding said with a smile. If everything that Jiang Fei said was true, it would be a great opportunity for the Moon Goddess sect. Moreover, by doing so, Jiang Fei would be betraying the Valiant Martial Hall and joining the Moon Goddess sect. This way, not only would it strengthen himself, but it would also defeat the enemy. When the Moon Goddess sect defeated the Valiant Martial Hall, it would not be impossible for them to reclaim the North Pole's main headquarters. Lu Ding rode his flying sword to lead the way. 
Jiang Fei followed behind on the Chunying sword. Ever since he had devoured the bloody skeleton, the Chunying sword had been extremely excited. It seemed to have become much more powerful than before. After flying for two days, Lu Ding brought Jiang Fei to a small mountain village and landed. Brother Jiang, you should rest here for a while. I have to inform the leader. Lu Ding said to Jiang Fei. After all, he was bringing people from the Valiant Marshal Hall into the headquarters. He did not dare to make such a decision on his own. Chapter 1848 Chapter 1846 Leader of the Moon Goddess Sect After arranging for Jiang Fei to rest in a small inn, Lu Ding left. Yo! This small mountain village is really extraordinary. Jiang Fei had nothing to do. He used his spiritual power to scan the small mountain village. After scanning, he realized that there were less than one-third of the ordinary people here. The remaining villagers were actually all experts. Moreover, their strength was generally above that of the distraction stage. After all, this was not the main headquarters of the Moon Goddess sect. At most, it was just a foothold outside the main headquarters. With so many experts here, it seemed like the Moon Goddess sect was really as weak as a camel. Even after being suppressed for so many years, their strength was not much weaker than the Valiant Marshal Hall. Lu Ding did not make Jiang Fei wait for too long. In less than half a day, he came back from the outside. Brother Jiang Fei, the sect master has agreed to let you enter the main altar. But? Lu Ding said hesitantly. What conditions do you have? Tell me first. Jiang Fei said with a smile. The sect master did not say anything. However, a few elders have requested that your six senses and five senses be sealed. Lu Ding said. Goodbye. Jiang Fei did not wait for Lu Ding to finish speaking. He stood up and prepared to leave. The six senses and five senses were the channels through which a person could sense external things. Once they were sealed, they would not even know that the person wanted to kill them. They would not even know that they were dead even if their heads were cut off. Jiang Fei was not stupid. How could he possibly agree to such a situation where his life was completely in the hands of others? Although Jiang Fei was here to recruit cannon fodder, he was not here to beg the moon goddess set. There were many people who were willing to be cannon fodder for him. The moon goddess sect was not one of them. Therefore, there was no need for him to agree to such an unreasonable request. This, Lu Ding was also very embarrassed. He had also guessed that Jiang Fei would not agree to such a request. In fact, even if it was someone else, they would not agree to it, let alone Jiang Fei. However, the few elders insisted on doing so in the name of not revealing the location of the main altar. Therefore, he had no choice but to tell Jiang Fei about this request. Since the moon goddess sect is so insincere, I shall take my leave. Jiang Fei cupped his fists at Lu Ding. However, he was speaking to another person. Actually, when Lu Ding returned, Jiang Fei had already noticed that there was another person who was passing through. Although that person had used a powerful magical item to hide his aura, Jiang Fei's strong mental strength was not that easy to fool. Hold on, brother Jiang. Please wait. Sure enough, Jiang Fei had only taken a few steps when he was stopped by someone. Let me introduce myself. I am the sect master of the moon goddess sect. My name is Yu Wuhin. The person was completely hidden in his black robe. His voice was also half male and half female. Therefore, even Jiang Fei could not tell what kind of person this person was. So, it is the sect master who has come personally. I am truly fortunate. Jiang Fei's tone was neither yin nor yang. It was obvious that he was teasing the sect master who was eavesdropping. Ha ha! Brother Jiang, don't blame me. Everyone knows the relationship between the Valiant Marshal Hall and the Moon Goddess sect. How can I not test it out? Yu Wuling spoke frankly. Then, what did the leader test out? Jiang Fei asked with a cold smile. Nothing yet. Yu Wuling did not seem to care about Jiang Fei's sarcastic remarks. Then, the leader stopped me because he wants to bring me to the main altar? Jiang Fei asked. Many elders object. Although I am the leader, I cannot go against everyone's wishes. Yu Wuhing said. Then, what does the sect leader mean? Jiang Fei asked. Anyway, I just want to verify whether what Brother Jiang said is true or not. It's the same outside the main altar, said Yu Wuhin. Sure. Jiang Fei did not have to go to the main altar. If the other party asked him to display his technological equipment here, he would not have any objections. Then, Jiang Fei showed the hover car and some other electronic gadgets in front of Yu Wuhin. How was it? Jiang Fei asked with a smile after the demonstration. I've never seen it before. I've never heard of it before. Yu Wuhin sighed. How was it? Are you interested in using the outside world as a training ground? 
Jiang Fei asked with a smile. If it's like you said, the people in the outside world can use technology to master the ability to kill strong people. Wouldn't it be very dangerous outside? Yu Wuhan asked the same question as Yuan Ong. For ordinary powerful people, there is indeed such a danger. However, how can one grow without risk? Don't tell me that in the five directions of heaven and earth, one would not die fighting for natural treasures. Jiang Fei asked back. That's true. Yu Wuhan nodded. The outside world is definitely the best place to train. As long as he goes out for a walk, he will almost certainly become the best among his peers. Jiang Fei laughed. Is that true? Yu Wuhan asked. Of course. Jiang Fei smiled faintly. His words were a little conniving. Going out for a walk would increase the strength of the experiencer. There was no doubt about that. However, there was another reason why he became one of the best. One had to know that there was a 12 times time flow gap between the main world and the five directions. This caused a person to go out for a few decades of training. When he returned, most of his peers would have died. Although cultivators had a long lifespan, the duration of each training session was also very long. A few decades was nothing at all. In the five directions, that was a few hundred years. If one's talent was not good, if one could not advance to a certain level, even a void interpretation stage expert would not be able to live for five to six hundred years. Therefore, although Jiang Fei's words were true, they could be very misleading. When those who went out to train returned to the five directions, those who were not outstanding among their peers had all died. Naturally, they were considered elites if they were still alive. If that's the case, then it's really worth considering, said Yu Wuhin, no matter how shrewd he was. As a person who had never gone out, it was impossible for Yu Wuhin to know about the time flow deficit. Therefore, he would never have thought that Jiang Fei would secretly dig such a big hole for them. Take your time to think about it. Take this. If you think about it, contact me. Jiang Fei also left a communication device for Yu Wuhin and taught him how to use it. What a magical world. Yu Wuhin sighed as he held the communication device. Then, he watched Jiang Fei leave on his sword. Sec Master, do you think we should go out? Although Lu Ding asked. His eyes were filled with eagerness. To be honest, there were many people in the Moon Goddess sect who were tired of the hatred between the righteous. They yearned for a different life. However, due to the relentless pursuit of the righteous, they had no choice but to live in a world of grudges and hatred. If they could go to another world like Jiang Fei said, on one hand, it would be to train themselves. On the other hand, it would be to avoid fighting with the righteous in a place where no one knew who they were. To start a new life. Chapter 1849 Chapter 1847 Miracle Dr. Jiang Fei After leaving the small mountain village, Jiang Fei sprinted all the way back to the city where the Wang family was located. After returning to the city, Jiang Fei was not in a hurry to go to the Wang family. Instead, he found a random restaurant and ate something. However, he did not expect that the Wang family would come to him on their own accord when Jiang Fei was not in a hurry to go to the Wang family. Everyone, pay attention! Pay attention! Following a burst of noise, two servants from the Wang family walked into the restaurant and posted a notice in the hall. What's going on? Let's go and take a look. The people who were eating in the restaurant immediately gathered around. Those who had good news read out the contents of the notice. The Wang family is sincere in hiring a famous doctor to treat the third young master's injuries. Those who can suppress the deterioration of his injuries will be rewarded with 5,000 spirit stones. Those who can make his injuries recover will be rewarded with 10,000 spirit stones. Those who can make the third young master recover will be rewarded with 20,000 spirit stones. Whoa! The Wang family is really generous. That's right. 10,000 spirit stones. What a huge fortune. Such a huge reward immediately attracted the attention of most people. But many people also saw some clues from the notice. It seems that the assassination of the third young master of the Wang family is true. Who on earth has the guts to do that? I'm not sure. I heard that it was someone from the Xiao family. I don't know if it's true or not. Sigh. It seems that the Wang family has been forced into a corner. Jiang Fei sighed to himself. Previously, the Wang family had been able to remain calm because the ghost doctor who San Xiao from the Moon Goddess sect had come to treat the third young master's injuries. However, now that Hu San Xiao had been killed, there was no one else who could treat the third young master's injuries. Therefore, the Wang family was anxious. Due to the desperate situation, they had put up notices throughout the city hoping that a godly doctor would appear under the generous reward. At that moment, the Wang family had put up notices in all the places in the city where there was a large number of people. 
The restaurant where Jiang Fei was it was only one of them. Unfortunately, the notice had been posted for a long time. However, no one volunteered to reveal the results. The reason why these people were able to remain rational despite the heavy rewards was because the Wang family did not lack good doctors. The holy doctor Wang Angxi was a member of the Wang family. Even the holy doctor could not cure the injuries of the Wang family. Could an ordinary person cure it? If they did not have the ability to treat the illness blindly and cause the third young master's injuries to worsen. Not to mention money. They might not even be able to keep their heads. Therefore, for the sake of his head, although these guys were greedy, no one dared to reveal the results. Looks like I still have to do it. Jiang Fei smiled slightly. He was going to meet the head of the Wang family. Therefore, treating the third young master's injuries was a good welcome gift. Speaking of which, Jiang Fei had never learned any medical skills. He knew nothing about healing. However, he was full of confidence. Because of the violet eye, he could easily see the source of the lesion. Because of his control over the energy string, he could directly remove the lesion from the root. Because of the vermilion fruit, Jiang Fei did not have to worry that the removal of the energy string would cause the patient's body to be too weak or even die suddenly. After all, the vermilion fruit was a top-notch healing medicine. As long as the abnormal energy that hindered the efficacy of the medicine was removed, it would not be difficult to heal the patient. In fact, including the holy Dr. Angxi, those doctors were unable to treat the third young master's injuries. It was not because they were not good at medicine. It was because the person who assassinated the third young master was a true immortal powerhouse from the Xiao family. The remnant energy left behind by such a powerhouse was not something that an ordinary person could remove. And if he did not remove this remnant energy, then no matter how he used medicine or how he recuperated, it would only treat the symptoms and not the root cause. Even if it was the holy doctor, Anchi, no matter how pure his medical skills were, with his strength at the tribulation transcending stage, he would not be able to resolve the power left behind by a true immortal. Therefore, Wang Angxi could only continuously recuperate the third young master's body to prevent his injuries from worsening. In fact, the fact that he could drag it out for so long already showed that his medical skills were astonishing. As for the ghost doctor who sans Xiao from the Heart Moon sect, he had a unique skill which was to devour the energy in other people's bodies. In this way, he could devour the remaining energy in the third young master's body. However, in this way, the third young master had recovered. But Hu San Shao, who was not a true immortal, was unlucky. This injury would fall on his body. However, in order to win over the Wang family and for the benefit of the Heart Moon sect, Hu San Shao had already prepared to sacrifice himself. In the end, before he could even reach the Wang family, he was killed by someone. It would be a terrible death. After eating his fill calmly, Jiang Fei slowly paid the bill. Only then did he leisurely walk to the notice. This money sure is easy turn. Jiang Fei reached out and tore down the notice. Sir, are you going to unveil the roll? As soon as Jiang Fei made his move, the servant who was looking at the roll immediately came forward and asked. The servant was very humble. After all, this was the life of the third young master. Although the person who unveils the roll might not be able to obtain the third young master, the master of the family had ordered that everyone who unveils the roll should be treated with respect. If the third young master was not treated properly because of his negligence, he would be sentenced to death. Now, the master of the Wang family was desperate. He would not give up any chance. Therefore, he was willing to give his all for any possibility. Yes, I plan to earn this money. Jiang Fei nodded. Then, please follow me. Although the servant did not see Jiang Fei as a doctor, the master had ordered them to treat him as a godly doctor if he dared to reveal the results. Okay. Lead the way. Jiang Fei nodded. Then, he followed the two servants to the entrance of the Wang family mansion. Please follow me. Sir. The servant did not even go in to report. Instead, he brought Jiang Fei directly into the Wang family mansion. He he. Looks like the Wang family is really anxious. Jiang Fei laughed to himself. The servant led Jiang Fei to the main hall. Then, he said to Jiang Fei, Sir, please wait a moment. I will go and ask the master now. Okay, Jiang Fei said after he sat down. Not long after the servant left, a servant girl brought some fragrant tea and fruits. She treated Jiang Fei as an important guest. Not long after, the master of the Wang family appeared personally. Sir, can you save my life? The master of the Wang family, Wang Chirfang, looked haggard. This third young master was the most dazzling star in the Wang family. He was extremely talented. 
He had already reached the Mahayana stage at a young age. Under the nurturing of the Wang family, he was almost certain to become a true immortal in the future. Therefore, the entire Wang family was extremely concerned about his injuries. As long as I don't die before I meet him. I won't die! Jiang Fei said with a faint smile. Hmm? Wang Shifang frowned. Jiang Fei's words made him a little unhappy. He was too arrogant. He did not even meet a patient. Yet he dared to promise to get rid of the disease. Could this person be a liar? Master, this person's strength is even stronger than mine. At this moment, a person behind Wang Shifang whispered in his ear. Just like Yuan Ong. Wang Shifang was not outstanding in terms of personal martial arts. However, in terms of managing the clan, no one could compare to him. However, the person behind him was not ordinary. This person thought that he was a false immortal. The so-called false immortals were those who failed to transcend the tribulations and were lucky enough to survive. Although they were not as powerful as true immortals, they were still far superior to powerhouses at the tribulation stage. Chapter 1850 Chapter 1848 Strange Injuries What? When Wang Shifang heard the words of his personal guard, he was shocked. He knew the strength of his guard. If he was stronger than him, then he must be a true immortal level powerhouse. Sir, you have graced us with your presence. I apologize for not welcoming you earlier. Please forgive me. When he thought of Jiang Fei's strength, Wang Shifang's attitude suddenly changed. Even if Jiang Fei could not cure the third young master's injuries, with his identity as a true immortal powerhouse, he was worthy of Wang Shifang's solemn reception. All right, take me to see the injured. Jiang Fei waved his hand. Good, good, good. Wang Shifang said three good words in a row because he knew that Jiang Fei was a true immortal powerhouse. He ruled out the possibility that Jiang Fei was here to scam money. A true immortal powerhouse would definitely not come to his house to play with him. Therefore, the possibility that Jiang Fei could heal the third young master was very high. When she thought that the Wang family's future hope was saved, Wang Shifang was overjoyed. At the same time, she became even more respectful towards Jiang Fei. Along the way, under Wang Shifang's lead, Jiang Fei passed through the Wang family's house. No one dared to stop him. Soon, he reached the back of the house. Oh, this scenery is not bad. Jiang Fei realized that the third young master's house was very different from the other houses. The pavilions and waterside pavilions here were exquisite. No matter how one looked at it, it did not look like the residence of a martial artist. Instead, it looked like the courtyard of a scholar or even a girl's house. Hee <laughs> hee. Third brother likes to take a look at the scenery here and calm his mind, said Wang Shifang. Oh, Jiang Fei shrugged indifferently. He had no interest in the third young master's hobbies. After passing through the pavilion and the long corridor, Jiang Fei and the rest finally arrived at the third young master's residence. As expected of the Star of Hope, this treatment is no worse than the master's residence, Jiang Fei thought to himself as he looked at the furnishings in the room. However, he also noticed that the furnishings in the room were slightly feminine. They were all delicate things. Could it be that this third young master is a sissy? Jiang Fei laughed in his heart. Please, Mr. Jiang. Wang Shifang led Jiang Fei to the sickbed. TSK TSK. Looking at the third young master of the Wang family on the sickbed, Jiang Fei could not help but click his lips. He finally understood what it meant to have a pale face. At that moment, the third young master of the Wang family was lying on the bed. His eyes were tightly shut, and there was not a hint of blood on his face. His originally delicate and delicate face was now deathly pale. Even his lips had turned pale pink. If this person was said to be dead, very few people would doubt him. How is it? Can Mr. Jiang treat him? Wang Shifang asked tentatively. He was really afraid that Jiang Fei would give a disappointing answer. After all, it was very rare for a true immortal like Jiang Fei to be able to cure the third young master. If he could not save the third young master, then this child would be dead for sure. Don't be anxious. Let me see. Jiang Fei waved his hand. Wang Shifang was very observant as she retreated to the left and right. She also stood behind Jiang Fei to avoid disturbing Jiang Fei. Swish. After everyone left, Jiang Fei activated the violet eye. With the violet eye, the third young master of the Wang family appeared in front of Jiang Fei in the form of an energy string. Interesting. Jiang Fei muttered to himself. Sigh. Wang Shifang sighed. Some things could be told to outsiders, but they could not be hidden from the doctor. At that moment, in Jiang Fei's vision, the third young master of the Wang family indeed had a ball of strange water-type energy in his body. 
although this ball of energy was not particularly strong. It was exceptionally pure. One look and one could tell that it was left behind by a true immortal. This guy was able to escape from a true immortal. He's pretty capable. Jiang Fei nodded to himself. At the same time, he also found two other interesting things in the third young master's body. The first thing was that the third young master should be called the third young lady. That was because the person lying on the bed was clearly a little girl. The second thing was what was inside the little girl's stomach. Jiang Fei was very curious about it. That was because the little girl's stomach was actually pregnant. However, the fetus was not human-shaped. That meant that the little girl did not have an affair with someone to get pregnant. The child in her stomach was clearly planted by someone. Moreover, it was not a human's child. What exactly is this thing? Jiang Fei was confused. Although he did not know what the fetus was, he was certain that the third lady of the Wang family had already become the vessel for the fetus. Even if she was not assassinated by a true immortal level powerhouse. One day, when the fetus was born, it would be the time for her to die. Mr. Jiang, how is it? Can Sander be saved? Wang Shifang asked. He can be saved, but I want to know how you plan to save him. Jiang Fei frowned. He was not sure who planted the monster in the girl's stomach. If it was the Wang family, it would be awkward for him to say it out loud. However, if it was not planted by the Wang family, Jiang Fei would not mind helping the girl solve this problem. Mr. Jiang, what do you mean by that? Wang Shifang asked. Hmm. Jiang Fei thought for a moment and decided to get straight to the point. The fetus had an evil aura about it. It was obvious that it was not something good. If the Wang family had done it themselves, then Jiang Fei did not plan to cooperate with them anymore. After all, Jiang Fei could not build up his confidence in them when he faced a group of people who were so ruthless to their own people. Moreover, such a group of people, even if they were to be sent to the outer universe, they would still be a group of disasters. Master, do you know that third young lady is pregnant? Jiang Fei asked directly. Age? How is that possible? Third young lady has a gentle personality. It's impossible for her to have an affair with someone. Wang Shifang was dumbfounded. Although he was not surprised that Jiang Fei had seen through third young master's daughter's body, he could not believe that third young lady was pregnant. That child of hers is not human. It's most likely that someone has cast some kind of spell on her. Right now, she is just a vessel. When that child was born, it was also when she died. Jiang Fei explained everything. Who has the guts to cast such a poison on the Wang family? Wang Shifang was so angry that she almost exploded after hearing Jiang Fei's words. It was as if he had killed the most talented child in the Wang family right in front of their eyes. It seems that you really don't know. Then, you should go and ask the elders at home to see if they were the ones who did this. Jiang Fei said. That's impossible. Wang Shifang was very certain of this. Then, this girl must have fallen into someone else's trap. Jiang Fei said. Please save her. Sir. The Wang family is willing to pay any price. We only hope that you can bring her back to life. Wang Shifang bowed deeply to Jiang Fei with a sincere expression. Chapter 1851 Chapter 1849 Blood Demon B All right. Remember what you said? Jiang Fei smiled and waved his hand. Mr. Jiang, I will take my leave first. I will be right outside the door. If you need anything, please feel free to let me know. Wang Shifang saw that Jiang Fei did not want him to see the means to save her. So she immediately left. Little girl, you are not old. But you have suffered a lot. Jiang Fei muttered in a low voice. Then, he opened the eye of violets again. Under the eye of the violet orchid, the origin of all things was exposed. The third lady of the Wang family's delicate but pale face faded away. Only a cluster of energy strings formed the energy structure. This water type energy is quite pure. Now, it belongs to me. Jiang Fei smiled faintly. Then, he used his terrifying spiritual power to guide the remaining water-type energy in the third lattice body. If these water-type energy could still establish a connection with its owner, it would not be easy for Jiang Fei to snatch them away. However, the true immortal of the Xiao family who had assassinated Jiang Fei was nowhere to be found. Although the remaining water-type energy was pure, it had become ownerless. Therefore, under the guidance of Jiang Fei's terrifying spiritual power, they quickly left the third lattice body and were directed into Jiang Fei's palm. Swish! The ball of water type energy was absorbed into Jiang Fei's body. At the same time, the origin energy in Jiang Fei's body rapidly transformed into the water type, under the catalysis of the huge amount of spiritual power. Soon, the pure water type spiritual power was assimilated and absorbed. 
All right. This spiritual power will be the interest to save you. Jiang Fei smiled faintly. This energy was neither too much nor too little. Anyway, it was a waste of money. After dealing with the abnormal energy, Jiang Fei took out a vermilion fruit from the tenth dimension. He pressed it in his palm, and the vermilion fruit immediately turned into a ball of red juice. Then, Jiang Fei reached out his hand and gently lifted the third lattice chin. Then, he used a little force to make the girl's small mouth open slightly. This originally slightly alluring posture. However, the third lattice pale face made Jiang Fei's heart ache. Gulp! The juice of the vermilion fruit entered her stomach. The third lattice face immediately turned red. In fact, without the remnant power core of a true immortal, the third lattice illness could be cured by a good doctor. Jiang Fei's vermilion fruit was only to help her recover as soon as possible. All right, now it's time for the real deal. Jiang Fei took a deep breath. If he had followed the Wang family's previous plan, Jiang Fei would have already completed the mission. However, now, in order to gain the Wang family's trust, moreover, he wanted the Wang family to owe him a favor. Therefore, he decided to save them until the end. He would help the third lady to take out the demon embryo as well. Jiang Fei used his mind to vibrate the energy strings. With one touch, the dormant demon embryo seemed to have woken up. Hmm. The third lady let out a muffled groan. After the demon embryo woke up, it seemed to be frightened. It then began to absorb her power crazily. I can't cure you. Jiang Fei laughed coldly. If it were any other doctor, they would have to perform a cesarean section to remove the embryo. If that happened, the demon embryo would definitely go crazy. When the time came, the demon embryo would be taken out. However, the third lady would definitely not survive. However, Jiang Fei did not need to go through so much trouble. He directly condensed his spiritual power into a sharp spike and stabbed it at the demon embryo. Squeak! A terrifying and sharp spiritual power howled. Almost the entire Wang family felt that something was wrong. What's going on? Sure, Fang. What happened? A few figures quickly appeared outside the room. But they were stopped by Wang Shifang. Ancestors! There's a miracle doctor treating Lan right now! Wang Shifang then told the true immortal elders of the Wang family everything that Jiang Fei had just said. What? Is this true? I think it's true. That godly doctor is also a true immortal. He would not lie to me, said Wang Shifang. It's true. That mental howl just now was definitely not something that a human could produce, said one of the elders. Sigh. Someone actually dared to plot against our Wang family. Don't let me find out who he is. Otherwise, I will make sure that he dies a horrible death, said another elder of the Wang family viciously. Squeak. Just as the few of them were talking, another spiritual howl came from the room. At this time, Jiang Fei had already launched his second attack. Not bad. You're already so fierce even before you were born. What would happen if you were born? Jiang Fei was also secretly shocked. Although he had only used 50% of his strength in his first attack. Even so, an ordinary tribulation transcender would have been heavily injured and lost the ability to fight back. However, the demon embryo had actually absorbed the third lattice strength even more crazily. From this, it could be seen that this thing was indeed powerful. The second time, when Jiang Fei launched his attack, he had already used 80% of his strength. After all, Jiang Fei was a person who had fused with three pieces of the will's core. 80% of his physical attack might not be much, but 80% of his mental attack. Even a true immortal would be severely injured. Squeak! After the demon embryo screamed for the second time, it stopped moving. At this time, it was completely disabled. It no longer absorbed the third lattice strength. But it still did not die. This made Jiang Fei even more surprised. What the hell is this? Jiang Fei muttered to himself curiously. While the demon embryo was no longer resisting, Jiang Fei was also quickly calculating. He could now directly pull the energy string and destroy this thing. However, Jiang Fei thought about it and realized that it would be a pity to kill such a powerful thing. Therefore, he decided to capture it alive. Swish! Jiang Fei waved his hand. A faint metal-type origin energy shot out and cut a hole in the third lattice stomach. Then, Jiang Fei's hand moved like lightning. He instantly took out the Nephilim embryo. Jiang Fei was extremely fast. He was so fast that the hole in the third lattice stomach did not even have time to bleed before it was healed by Zhugu's powerful medicine. What the hell is this? Jiang Fei held the demon embryo in his hand. It looked very strange. It did not even look like a beast, let alone a human. If one had to describe it as similar, it could only be described as an insect felt wasp. 
Master Wang, please come in. Jiang Fei shouted to the outside. When the door opened, not only Wang Shifang, but also a few elders of the Wang family walked in. Is this the demon embryo in Lan Air's stomach? Wang Shifang asked. This, this is impossible. Just as everyone was puzzled, one of the elders of the Wang family suddenly widened his eyes. He stared at the demon embryo in Jiang Fei's hand. His face was filled with disbelief. What's wrong? Eighth brother, do you know this thing? The leader of the elders asked. Second brother, this, this is the blood demon bee. Eighth brother said with a slight tremble. Chapter 1852, Chapter 1850 Ancient Mutant Blood Demon Wasp Jiang Fei raised his eyebrows. Jiang Fei had read a lot of books in the five directions, but he had never heard of the name Blood Demon Wasp. This Blood Demon Wasp is a kind of fierce beast. However, because it is an ancient mutant, its number is extremely rare. It only appears in legends. Old A began to explain. Eighth brother, how did you know that this thing is a Blood Demon Wasp? An old man asked. When I was young, I went to an ancient tomb by accident during an experiential learning. There was a record of this in the brush strokes. The blood demon wasp embryo carved on it was exactly the same as this thing. According to the record, this thing was indeed bred by parasitizing in the body of a young girl with excellent talent. Old Eight replied, Ancient Xenogeneic? Jiang Fei did not speak. He just listened quietly. The appearance of an ancient Xenogeneic is not a good sign. Moreover, they chose our Wang family. It seems that our Wang family will be in trouble this time. The old man in the lead sighed. Great grandfather, what should we do with this thing? Wang Shifang pointed at the blood demon being Jiang Fei's hand and asked. It's hard to say. Old Su frowned and then looked at Old Eight, trying to find some answers from him. After all, among everyone present, he was the only one who had some understanding of this kind of creature. It's not easy for the blood demon bee to reproduce. So it attaches great importance to its offspring. Once its offspring dies, they will immediately sense it. So, Old Eight did not finish his words. But it was clear that he did not approve of killing the blood demon bee. This was because once the young one was killed, the adult blood demon bees would definitely come to seek revenge on the murderer. Then what should we do? Wang Shifang was dumbfounded. Anyway, this blood demon bee has been taken out and Loner has been saved. So, as long as it is not dead, we can get rid of it. As long as it does not die in our Wang family and it is not killed by our Wang family, then it does not matter, said Old Ape. Gentlemen, if you don't want this thing, can you give it to me? When Jiang Fei heard that the Wang family did not dare to touch the blood demon bee in his hand, his thoughts became active. Mr. Jiang, please do as you please. When the Wang family heard that Jiang Fei wanted the blood demon bee, they could not ask for more. Now that their third lattice illness had been cured, the blood demon bee was a hot potato. That's why they can't wait to give it away. In fact, this is not the fault of the Wang family timid. This ancient Xenogeneic is not easy to get along with. Do not look at the Wang family true immortal level there are several old. But in front of the ancient Xenogeneic may not be able to get any advantage. Another point was that the Wang family was a big family. Although the elders were not afraid of the adult blood demon bees. They could not care less if the vicious beast retaliated. If it attacked the entire Wang family then the Wang family might not be able to do anything except for a few elders. The rest of the Wang family would be buried together with them. However, Jiang Fei was different. His old master was alone in the five directions of heaven and earth. He also had powerful spiritual power and the tenth dimension as a guarantee. Therefore, he was not afraid of the blood demon bee's revenge. Moreover, even if the blood demon bees were too powerful, Jiang Fei could just run away and leave the five directions of heaven and earth. Without the nine revolving star plate, would the blood demon bee still be able to pass through the barrier and chase after him? Therefore, Jiang Fei did not care about the revenge of the adult blood demon wasp. The little guy in his hand was a rare treasure. Although the blood demon wasp was still a premature baby. After careful nurturing, as an ancient mutant, it was also a top tier pet. It was even stronger than an ordinary true immortal pet. Swoosh. Jiang Fei let out a silver light between his brows. He immediately kept the little blood demon wasp into the 10th dimension. As the little creature had given birth prematurely and had been attacked twice by Jiang Fei's mental strength. Its body was very weak. Without the conditions to heal it. The 10th dimension, where time stood still, was the best way to preserve it. Squeak. Just as Jiang Fei was storing the little blood demon bee into the 10th dimension. Somewhere thousands of miles away. A woman with blood red eyes let out a shrill scream. 
Who killed my son? The woman roared angrily. Instantly, she turned into a ball of blood-red light and pounced toward the Wong family. As Jiang Fei had kept the blood demon bee into the tenth dimension, he had cut off its aura. This caused the adult blood demon bee to be unable to sense the existence of its child. Naturally, she thought that someone had killed her child. So she rushed over to seek revenge. Mr. Jiang, thank you for saving Lan. The members of the Wong family were the same as Jiang Fei. No one had expected the adult blood demon bee to be on its way to seek revenge. Hee hee, it was nothing, Jiang Fei said humbly. Lan Er is fine. At this time, the elders of the Wong family had already looked at the third lady on the bed. Although the third lady was still unconscious, her pulse was very calm. Moreover, her complexion had also become much ruddier. It seemed that the effects of the vermilion fruit had begun to take effect. Mr. Jiang, I have already prepared a small amount of wine. I hope that you will do me the honor. At this time, Wang Chirfan was overjoyed. Not only had the third young lattice injuries been healed, but it had also resolved the future problems. This way, the genius young lady of the Wang family could be considered to have been saved. That's good too. I have indeed consumed a lot of energy just now. I really should eat something to replenish my energy. Jiang Fei said with a smile. He was not really here to eat. But he had not told the Wang family about the serious matter yet. This time, Jiang Fei did not come to the Wang family specifically for the sake of saving the world. Although he had gotten a baby blood demon bee, this was just an accidental gain. He had helped the Wang family so much. Was it not to pull the Wang family members to the outer universe to work for him? Therefore, he did not say anything about the official business. How could he leave? Not much time passed. The Wang family's living room was filled with cups and plates. A sumptuous banquet was set up. Besides the Wang family's master, Wang Shifang, who accompanied Jiang Fei, there were also a few elders. Mr. Jiang, let me first toast you. Thank you for saving my daughter. Wang Shifang did not toast Jiang Fei as the master of the Wang family. Instead, she toasted him as a simple father. He he, you are too kind. Master, Jiang Fei smiled and shared a toast with Wang Shifang. This second toast is to thank you for your help to the Wang family. Although he was the father of the third lady, Wang Shifang was also the decision maker of the Wang family. Therefore, he had to prioritize the interests of the Wang family most of the time. Although Jiang Fei had helped him this time, it did not stop him from taking the initiative to rope Jiang Fei in. After all, it was very difficult to find a true immortal level godly doctor. In the future, it was inevitable that he would have to beg the other party for help. Now that they were on good terms, in the future, it would be easier for him to ask for help when he needed it again. Chapter 1853 Chapter 1851 Blackmail One side was trying to win him over, while the other side was deliberately using him. Therefore, the Wang family and Jiang Fei could be said to be having a good conversation. The entire banquet seemed to be very harmonious until the remnants of the banquet were removed and the servants served tea. Jiang Fei felt that the time was right, so he was ready to get down to business. However, at that moment, a dangerous aura suddenly rose in Jiang Fei's heart. What's going on? At that moment, a few elders of the Wang family suddenly stood up. Did they feel it too? Jiang Fei was stunned. Swish! At that moment, a terrifying aura swept across the entire Wang family. Those who were not at the Mahayana stage felt their hair stand on end. However, those who were above the Mahayana stage were even more terrified. This was because those below the Mahayana stage only felt a terrifying chill. They did not discover too many abnormalities. However, experts above the Mahayana stage could clearly feel this terrifying killing intent. Oh no! It's coming! Eighth brother was the first to react. We can't let it slaughter the Wong family's descendants. The leader of the elders jumped up and rushed out. He followed closely behind the other elders. Whoosh! 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 A few sword lights rushed out of the Wong family and flew into the distance. Master! You'll go and take a look too! After all, Jiang Fei had taken the baby of the blood demon bee. If he did not do anything at this time, the favor that the Wong family owed him would be rendered useless. Thank you very much, Mr. Jiang. Because Wang Shifang was not very strong, she would definitely stay at home. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded. Then, he summoned the Chungying sword and turned into a ray of light that flew straight towards the terrifying aura. After a few minutes, Jiang Fei arrived at a mountain hundreds of miles away. At that moment, the Wang family members were really confronting a woman who had her hair cut off. This blood demon bee is not that unreasonable. Jiang Fei nodded to himself. 
The ferocious beasts in the five directions were really different from the cosmic beasts in the outside world. If it was a cosmic beast, they would not use their aura to call out the experts of the Wong family to negotiate. Instead, they would directly run over and kill people. Therefore, from this point of view, the ferocious beasts with complete intelligence were just humans of another race in Jiang Fei's eyes. They were just like the Deckard people with crocodile heads or the piggy people, although their appearance was different from humans. They also had complete intelligence and a social and moral system. A human with this bit of intelligence was completely different from a cosmic beast. Before a human did something, he would consider the consequences of what he did. However, a cosmic beast without a complete intelligence and moral system would not be like that. As long as they wanted to, they would go back and do it. As for the consequences, they would not consider it. But you killed my son? Jiang Fei heard the blood demon be asked coldly as soon as he arrived. Humph! You evil creature! You were the one who plotted against the Wang family's disciples first. Now! You dare to come and question me? The old man from the Wang family questioned. You killed beasts to obtain meat. I used humans to breed my children. This was just for survival. However, you killed my son. The blood demon bee's face was dark. There were only women in her family. If they wanted to breed, they could only wait for the jade blood spirit pearl, which only bloomed once every thousand years. To mature, only by consuming the jade blood spirit pearl would they be able to find a human genius girl to parasitize. Therefore, every child was extremely precious. Therefore, the blood demon bee did not care about the fact that she had murdered the children of other people. She just insisted that the Wong family had killed her child. Humph! You evil creature! What nonsense are you talking about? Is your son's life his life? And the Wong family's genius is not his life? The old man of the Wong family was so angry that his face turned red. Everyone! Leave this matter to me! Jiang Fei stepped forward and said, Mr. Jiang, this matter is also caused by the Wong family. Don't worry. The Wong family will be responsible for this matter to the end. The old man from the Wong family was also very loyal. Although the blood demon wasp was taken by Jiang Fei. However, they did not push the blame onto Jiang Fei. Instead, they were willing to bear the responsibility together with him. He he. Don't worry. My brothers. I can handle this matter. You guys can go back. Jiang Fei smiled. But, the elders of the Wong family were still worried. After all, Jiang Fei had just helped them a lot. It would not make sense to let Jiang Fei face a strong enemy alone. Don't worry. I'm fine. I'll go back and continue drinking with you guys tonight. Jiang Fei smiled at the elders of the Wang family. Sigh. Since you're so confident. Little brother Jiang. Let's not talk about it anymore. We'll wait for you to drink tonight. When the elders of the Wang family saw that Jiang Fei was determined, they had no choice but to return on their swords. Do you want your child? Come with me. As Jiang Fei spoke. He took out the baby of the blood demon bee from the 10th dimension. However, he only waved it in front of the blood demon bee for a moment before he put it away again. My child! The blood demon bee's eyes suddenly lit up. Because in that instant, she had sensed the aura of her child. This meant that her child was not dead. Follow me! Jiang Fei rode his sword and flew. When he saw that his child's blood demon bee was following closely behind him, it only gave birth once every thousand years. This made the blood demon be highly value its child. Therefore, when it did not know where Jiang Fei was going to lure her, it followed closely behind Jiang Fei. As he flew along, Jiang Fei finally arrived at a desolate place. Then, he landed and quietly waited for the blood demon wasp to arrive. After more than 10 seconds, the blood demon wasp landed in front of Jiang Fei. Return my son to me, the blood demon wasp said as it looked straight into Jiang Fei's eyes. Although the blood demon wasp's human form was extremely beautiful, its pair of blood-red eyes gave people goosebumps. If I return it to you, she will definitely die, said Jiang Fei with a smile. At this moment, he had the absolute advantage. If the blood demon be was just seeking revenge, Jiang Fei had to be more cautious because this fellow was really too powerful. Judging from her aura, she was one of the strongest powerhouses that Jiang Fei had ever met. She was second only to the giant steel scorpion. Of course, the blood demon B was still a lot weaker than the giant steel scorpion. However, compared to Tyrion and the galactic spirit that he sat on, the blood demon B was still more powerful. What do you mean? When the blood demon wasp heard that its child was going to die, it immediately became anxious. Hee <laughs> hee. Looks like these beasts have the same problem. Children are definitely their biggest weakness. Jiang Fei thought to himself. In fact, 
whether it was the blood demon wasp or the giant steel scorpion. They were both extremely powerful. However, their fertility was extremely low. Therefore, once they had a child, they were absolute treasures. Everything had to be done with the child first. Your child was taken out of the host's body. It could be considered a premature birth. Her body has not fully developed yet. It is impossible for her to survive on her own. If it was not for me, she would have died, Jiang Fei said. But the blood demon be wanted to say something. But Jiang Fei rudely interrupted her. But what? Do you have a way to save her? Jiang Fei asked loudly. I. In an instant, the blood demon be wilted. However, Jiang Fei was secretly happy. He roared so loudly that the blood demon be did not even dare to breathe loudly. In the entire world, perhaps only Jiang Fei could do it. Chapter 1854 Chapter 1852 Bodyguards Can can you really save my child? The blood demon be asked as she stared into Jiang Fei's eyes. She knew that her question would definitely put her in a passive position in the negotiation with Jiang Fei. However, there was no other way. She was too eager to save her child. Therefore, the blood demon be had no other choice. Of course. Jiang Fei smiled faintly, as if this was nothing to him. This way, the blood demon B's attitude towards Jiang Fei became even more respectful. As the saying goes, when one is courteous, one must have a request. Although the blood demon wasp was an ancient mutant beast, she knew that she could not offend Jiang Fei at this time. Otherwise, she would not be able to protect her child. Then what exactly do you need me to do in order for you to save my child? The blood demon wasp was, after all, a ferocious beast. She was not good at negotiating with humans. The twists and turns on the negotiation table were too difficult for her to understand. About that, to be honest, Jiang Fei really had not thought about it. Previously, he had only taken the baby blood demon bee because he thought that this little thing had great growth potential. He wanted to take it a pet. In the end, he did not expect the adult blood demon bee to find him so quickly. Therefore, Jiang Fei really did not know what to ask the blood demon bee to do for him. Captain, aren't you lacking a fighter right now? Moreover, whether it was the members of the four great families or the moon goddess sect, they would not be easy to control when they were outside. If you had such a powerful bodyguard, it would be much more convenient, said Jiang Fei at this time. That's right. Jiang Fei's eyes lit up. Although the baby blood demon bee that he had obtained had great potential, it was still a premature baby. Moreover, it was uncertain how long it would take for this little thing to mature. How could it be as convenient as a ready-made adult blood demon wasp? Moreover, Jiang Fei had always had a problem. Although his ally, the giant steel scorpion, was powerful enough, the cosmic beasts were different from the ferocious beasts of the five directions. They could not transform. Their main body was hundreds of thousands of kilometers in size. Although in a battle between battleships, their huge size brought with it extremely powerful defensive abilities. When moving on a planet, it was impossible for it to appear beside Jiang Fei. The appearance of the blood demon be made up for this. First of all, it was powerful enough to be in its current position among the powerhouses that Jiang Fei had seen. Other than the steel giant scorpion, the blood demon bee could also transform. Although the blood-eyed beauty that she transformed into looked a little scary, it was fine for her to wear a large cloak. With such a super bodyguard by his side, Jiang Fei's safety factor had increased exponentially. What conditions do you have? Just say it. The blood demon bee, who was not good at negotiations, had already revealed her trump card. She would do anything to save her child. He, he the conditions, are very simple. Jiang Fei smiled faintly. Although he wanted to make the blood demon be his pet, Jiang Fei knew in his heart that this was too much. Although the blood demon be was willing to do anything for his child, this was the only exception. Ferocious beasts often viewed freedom as more important than their lives. Even if it was for the child, the blood demon be was unlikely to become Jiang Fei's pet. Therefore, in order to avoid a direct breakdown in the negotiations, Jiang Fei decided to use a different term. Higher to humans, this term was nothing more than you spending money and I helping you do things. However, it was different for a berserk beast. Berserk beasts were not as calculative as humans. As long as they agreed to help you, they would not go back on their word. From a certain perspective, there was not much difference in taking the blood demon be as a pet. The only difference was that there was a time limit for hiring. You can let me save your child, but you have to be my bodyguard for a while to protect me. My family and friends, said Jiang Fei. How long? As expected, 
the blood demon hornet, who valued freedom the most, was most concerned about this issue. I can't tell you the details. Jiang Fei was a little hesitant. He did not have the intention of keeping the blood demon hornet by his side for a lifetime. As long as the matter with the Gamma space was resolved, Jiang Fei would take his family and live in seclusion. At that time, he would not need any bodyguards. 100 years. When the blood demon be opened its mouth. It was a great help to Jiang Fei. Originally, Jiang Fei had planned to say 20 to 30 years. Moreover, he had already said as much as he could. However, he did not expect that. When the blood demon be opened its mouth, it took the initiative to give Jiang Fei a hundred years. Actually, this was also the difference in concept between the two races. As a human, twenty to thirty years was already quite a long time for Jiang Fei. However, the blood demon be was a ferocious beast. In her long life, one hundred years was nothing at all. After all, the blood demon wasp would have to wait a thousand years for it to reproduce once. Therefore, Spending one-tenth of the time to protect this child was very cost-effective for the blood demon wasp. However, if she wanted to become someone else's pet and sacrifice her life's freedom, she would rather wait another thousand years. Then, she would give birth to another child. Sure! Jiang Fei agreed immediately. If he had not gotten rid of the trouble in the gamma space within these one hundred years, the universe would have long ceased to exist. After all, the players who played the game had no interest in wasting a hundred years with him. After reaching an agreement with the blood demon B, Jiang Fei had a super bodyguard by his side. With such a bodyguard, it would be much more convenient for him to travel at home or kill people for goods. Oh right, I haven't asked your name yet. Jiang Fei smiled and asked the blood demon B. Blood lady, the blood demon B replied. Hee hee, that's a good name. Come and put this on. You're scaring me. Jiang Fei took out a large black cloak from the spatial ring and handed it to the blood demon B. I don't want it. The blood lady refused with a cold face. Why? Jiang Fei was stunned. Could it be that the blood demon B, as a super powerhouse, did not like to hide? Ugly. Blood lady spat out a word coldly. However, it made Jiang Fei choke until the corner of his mouth twitched. Forget it then. You can wear this. In the end, Jiang Fei was too lazy to design any clothes for blood lady. He directly handed his original goggles to blood lady. Ever since Jiang Fei obtained the Eye of the Violet, the goggles that could detect the strength of others were no longer of much use to him. After all, the Eye of the Violet could see through the essence of the other party from the energy source. The goggles were, after all, a technological product. When faced with a top-tier expert, they would still be deceived. Okay. This time, Blood Mistress did not refuse. When Blood Mistress put on the goggles, Jiang Fei's eyes suddenly lit up. In fact, Blood Mistress' appearance was quite beautiful. It was not the kind of gentle beauty, but a kind of heroic beauty. It was somewhat similar to Hua Mulan's temperament. However, her pair of blood-red eyes made people feel a little creepy. Now that she put on the goggles, her blood-red eyes were covered. Blood Mistress immediately became a cool and handsome beauty. If I put on a windbreaker and a cool motorcycle, it would be so cool! Jiang Fei sighed in his heart. Chapter 1855 Chapter 1853 Jiang Fei was the type of person who would do anything he thought of. Therefore, he immediately had 0541 create a set of black leather tights and a black windbreaker in the ring space. The style was basically the style of a gangster. Let's try it on! Jiang Fei handed the set of clothes to Blood Mistress. Okay! This time, Blood Mistress did not resist. Instead, she took it and started changing. F asterisk CK! Are you going to change here? Jiang Fei asked with his eyes wide open. Because Blood Mistress did not have any intention of avoiding him, she began to take off her clothes in front of Jiang Fei. What's wrong? Blood Mistress, who was born as a ferocious beast, did not feel that there was anything wrong with meeting him so openly. In other words, ferocious beasts with simple hearts were not as dirty as humans. Forget it. Forget it. Jiang Fei turned around helplessly. However, when he turned around, he could still see Blood Mistress' perfect body. After a moment, Blood Mistress changed her clothes. Her originally loose hair was tied into a high ponytail. At this moment, she really made Jiang Fei's eyes light up. All right, let's go! Jiang Fei nodded in satisfaction. Such a female bodyguard was indeed much more pleasing to the eye than the one with the long hair and blood red eyes. Okay! After changing her appearance, Blood Mistress still did not speak much. 
She nodded and followed behind Jiang Fei. She was no different from an ordinary bodyguard. After half a day, Jiang Fei brought Blood Mistress back to the Wang family. At this time, the Wang family's attitude towards Jiang Fei had become more and more respectful. If the reason why they fawned over Jiang Fei before was to win over this godly doctor, in the future, when the Wang family needed help, they could ask for it. However, their attitude towards Jiang Fei had now become one of respect. The elders of the Wang family were not fools. How could they not recognize the blood mistress, who had changed into a disguise? One had to know that an expert did not look at a person's appearance. Instead, they looked at her aura. Although the blood mistress had changed into a different outfit, her aura had not changed at all. Therefore, the moment she entered the door, the elders of the Wang family recognized this ancient mutant blood demon B. Moreover, this blood demon B was obediently following behind Jiang Fei. It was obvious that it had been subdued by Jiang Fei. This blood demon B was not an ordinary ferocious beast. It was an ancient mutant. It was an existence on the same level as the green-eyed white dragon. One could only imagine the strength of a person who could tame such a ferocious beast. Therefore, the people of the Wang family looked at Jiang Fei in a new light. They had a feeling of awe towards him from the bottom of their hearts. Come! Let's continue with what we did not finish at the dinner table. Jiang Fei said with a smile after he sat down. Mr. Jiang, please speak. Wang Shifan said humbly. Yes. The thing is. Jiang Fei then told her about how he had managed to walk out of the Five Directions world. Mr. Jiang, are you serious? Wang Shifang's eyes lit up. The four big families were very different from places like the Moon Goddess Sect or the Valiant Marshal Hall. They were all family-style management. The head of the family might not be able to convince the masses with his or her strength. The reason why they were able to become the head of the family was mostly because of their own management skills. Of course, it was also necessary for them to have the support of a true immortal. Therefore, the family heads, who had backing would not worry about the chair under their buttocks like the valiant Marshal Hall's head. This way, they would have no reason to reject such a good opportunity to develop the family. Mr. Jiang, have you only told the Wang family about this matter? Wang Shifang asked. Of course not. I have already talked to the Yuan family about this. Jiang Fei did not hide anything. He just wanted to give these families a sense of urgency to compete. What did the Yuan family say? Wang Shifang asked. They said that they were considering it. Anyway, I'm not asking anyone for this matter. If they are willing to cooperate, then cooperate. If they are not willing, I want force them. Jiang Fei deliberately described himself as a saint who had no desires. This way, he could gain the most power during the negotiation process. After all, having no desires was hard. The opponent would not be able to grasp his weakness. Mr. Jiang, may I have a few words with the elders? Wang Shifang asked. Of course. Jiang Fei smiled slightly. He knew that Wang Shifang was tempted. Then, please wait a moment. Mr. Jiang. Wang Shifang apologized to Jiang Fei. Then, she led the group of elders out of the room. After about 10 minutes, Wang Shifang led the elders back to Jiang Fei's room. What do you think? Have you discussed it? Jiang Fei asked with a smile. We agree to your proposal, Wang Shifang said. That's great. Jiang Fei nodded with a smile. But we have a condition, Wang Shifang said. Tell me about it. Jiang Fei nodded and said. We want the Wang family's disciples to train with your faction after they leave the world of five directions. Wang Shifan said. Oh, are you sure? Jiang Fei was stunned. He did not expect Wang Shifan to take the initiative to hand over the Wang family's disciples to him to command. Hmm, I think they will get better training by following you. Mr. Jiang. Wang Shifan smiled and said. He, sure. Jiang Fei nodded. His brain that had been developed quickly understood Wang Shifang's intentions. It was impossible for the people of the five directions not to be curious about the outside world. Now that the opportunity had come, they would definitely go out to take a look no matter what. When that time came, it was almost inevitable that they would cooperate with Jiang Fei. Since it was inevitable that they would work together, it was naturally better to work together sooner rather than later. The sooner they worked together with Jiang Fei, the closer their relationship would be, the better the treatment they would receive. Moreover, taking the initiative to have the members of the Wang family listen to Jiang Fei's commands in the outside world, Wang Shifang had her own considerations. First of all, they knew nothing about the outside world. If they were to rashly barge in, it might be even more dangerous. Although if they were to follow Jiang Fei, they might be used as cannon fodder. However, based on Wang Shifang's experience, Jiang Fei was a very protective person. 
If one took the initiative to join him, they would be treated as one of his own. Those who wanted to retain their authority would instead be treated as outsiders by Jiang Fei. If Jiang Fei needed cannon fodder, would he use his own people as cannon fodder or outsiders? This was obvious without even thinking. Jiang Fei, who was familiar with the outside world and even had his own forces outside, could easily take advantage of a bunch of ignorant fools. Therefore, after some thought, Wang Shifang decided to hand over the Wang family's disciples to Jiang Fei. Whether it was because the Wang family was the first to join them, or because they wanted to recruit more people to join them, the Wang family would receive treatment that was second only to Jiang Fei's direct line of descent. This guy is really scheming! After Jiang Fei thought this through, he could not help but look at Wang Shifang in a new light. This guy had thought so much in such a short period of time. Moreover, he had such great courage. It was no wonder that he could become the leader of the four great families. The Wang family, even though he was only at the insightful void stage. Chapter 1856 Chapter 1854 The Xiao Family's Invitation After reaching an agreement with the Wang family, Jiang Fei and Wang Shifang agreed on a time. During this time, Wang Shifang would select and gather the Wang family's disciples. When that time came, Jiang Fei would open the door to the outside world for them. After everything was settled, Jiang Fei left the Wang family. Captain, where are we going next? 0541 asked. The Xiao family or the Xia family? Jiang Fei had not decided yet. He was only missing the Xiao family and the Xia family. Then you should go to the Xia family. After all, you just came out of the Wang family. It's not good to go to the Xiao family immediately. 0541 suggested. Hee hee. You don't understand. I just came out of the Wang family. That's why I should go to the Xiao family immediately. Jiang Fei laughed. He had not thought about which family to go to. But with 0541's reminder, he had his own goal. Why? Captain? 0541 asked. Hee hee. I have been to the Wang family. I'm afraid that the Xiao family's secret agents have already reported back. Now! The Xiao family must be very curious about what I have said to the Wang family and what agreement I have reached. Jian Fei said. So what? 0541 asked. Puzzled. Then? They are anxious to see me. When the time comes, I will tell them about the matter. As the competitors of the Wang family, the Wang family is going to explore the outside world. Do they dare to let the Wang family take all the benefits? Jiang Fei smiled and said, I see. 0541 nodded. Although he was a high-level artificial intelligence and had a complete sense of self, he still knew very little about human nature. Moreover, I think it won't be long before the Xiao family will come looking for us. Jiang Fei said confidently. Really? 0541 was skeptical. Hee <laughs> hee. Just you wait and see. Jiang Fei laughed. After he left the Wang family, he did not go far. Instead, he found a tavern in the city and sat down casually. In fact, Jiang Fei's guess was not only correct. Moreover, the Xiao family's arrival speed was even faster than he had imagined. Less than five hours after Jiang Fei left the Wang family, two strangers, an old man and a young man, appeared in front of Jiang Fei's table. The old man's strength was around the tribulation stage, while the girl's strength was only at the fusion stage. You are Mr. Jiang Fei. Right. To Jiang Fei's surprise, the person in the lead was not the old man, but the young girl. The old man seemed to be the girl's bodyguard. Yes, I am Jiang Fei. And you are? Jiang Fei asked despite knowing the answer. He he. My surname is Xiao. My name is Yu Han. My father is Xiao Chang'an the master of the Xiao family. The girl introduced herself. So, it's Miss Xiao. Is there anything I can help you with? Jiang Fei continued to act dumb. My father heard that Mr. Jiang had a miraculous hand in bringing back spring. He specially asked my daughter to come and ask for your help. Xiao Yuhan said. Oh. Jiang Fei raised his eyebrows. He did not expect that someone from the Xiao family would also have an accident. Is your father unwell? Jiang Fei asked curiously. My father is fine. It's just that great-grandfather's body has been a little strange recently, Xiao Yuhan said. This time, they were in a hurry to find Jiang Fei. It was not for the reason that Jiang Fei had imagined. Although the Xiao family was curious about what Jiang Fei had discussed with the Wang family, they needed Jiang Fei's magical medical skills even more. According to the reports of the Xiao family's spies in the Wang family, Jiang Fei's miraculous hands had healed the third lattice injuries in an instant. He had even cured the third lady of her hidden illness. This was what the Xiao family was most concerned about. Recently, 
Xiao Changjian's grandfather had been suffering from qi deviation during his cultivation. His health condition was extremely poor, unlike the other big families. The Xiao family's position as the head of the family was not that stable. Xiao Changjian's uncles and brothers were all concerned about the chair under his butt. If it was not for the fact that he had a true immortal level grandfather in charge, the position of the head of the family would not have been his. However, now that Xiao Changjian's backer, the true immortal grandfather, had lost control of his cultivation, the chair under his but was not that stable anymore. If the old man made any mistakes, not only would Xiao Changjian's position as the family head be in jeopardy, even his entire family would be implicated. Because once the position of the family head was lost, the new family head would definitely eliminate the dissidents. When that happened, the fate of Xiao Changjian's family could be imagined. Therefore, when Xiao Chang'an heard the news from the spy, his focus immediately shifted away from the agreement between Jiang Fei and the Wang family. A miracle doctor who could cure his grandfather's injury was what he needed the most at this moment. Your great-grandfather? Jiang Fei looked Xiao Yuan up and down. The exact age of this girl was unknown. She looked like she was only 18 or 19 years old. She was also quite beautiful. The arrogance that she was born with could even stimulate a man's desire to conquer her. Dot! Being looked at like Jiang Fei was looking at a product made Xiao Yuhan extremely uncomfortable. However, she knew her father's difficulties. She also knew what would happen to her father's side once her great-grandfather fell. Therefore, even if Jiang Fei was so rude, even if she had already lost her temper, she still restrained herself and allowed herself to maintain a smile in front of Jiang Fei. To be honest, both Xiao Changyun and Xiao Yiruo had already made some mental preparations for the future of their line, even if they had to sacrifice Xiao Yiruo's happiness. As long as Jiang Fei could cure her great-grandfather, then she would have no regrets. Hee <laughs> hee! Interesting! Let's go! I'll go with you! Jiang Fei laughed. He was not looking at Xiao Yuhan because he was interested in her. He just wanted to see how she would react when she was humiliated. You? Xiao Yuhan, who was initially nervous, felt relieved. However, she also felt a sense of loss. Ever since she was young, as the daughter of the family head, she had always been in the hands of others. When had she ever been bullied like this? It was as if she was looking at a high-quality product. Most importantly, the customer did not seem to have taken a fancy to her. Young lady, let's go! The old man behind Xiao Yuhan reminded her in a low voice. Xiao Yuhan, who was in a daze, regained her senses. Oh! Oh! Xiao Yuhan quickly nodded and led Jiang Fei out of the tavern. Mr. Jiang, please follow me! After leaving the tavern, Xiao Yuhan rode her sword and stood up. The old man followed closely behind. Okay! Jiang Fei nodded and rode his sword as well. Not only were the Xiao family and the Wang family not in the same city, they were not even in the same county. Jiang Fei followed Xiao Yuhan for thousands of miles and finally arrived at the Shuyang County where the Xiao family was located. Xiao Yuhan landed in front of a large house. Jiang Fei followed closely behind and landed in front of the large house. Mr. Jiang, this is our Xiao family. Xiao Yuhan smiled. However, compared to before, her gaze towards Jiang Fei was always a little evasive. Chapter 1857, Chapter 1855 Attitude Change with Xiao Yuhan, the eldest daughter of the Xiao family. Leading the way, Jiang Fei and the others were able to enter the Xiao family without any obstruction. Along the way, they passed through the house and the courtyard. Soon, Jiang Fei and the others arrived at the inner court. In the living room, Jiang Fei sat in the guest seat. Xiao Yuhan did not sit in the main seat. Instead, she stood by the side with her hands clasped. Soon, a servant girl brought some fragrant tea and fruits. Sister, are you not going to sit? Xiao Yuhan looked at Blood Mistress, who was standing behind Jiang Fei, and asked. Dot! Blood Mistress was expressionless. She did not bother with Xiao Yuhan at all. As a ferocious beast, Blood Mistress did not bother with a weakling like Xiao Yuhan. In her eyes, a mere fusion stage guy was not worthy of talking to her. You don't have to bother with her. Jiang Fei shrugged and said to Blood Mistress. Sister, please sit. Dot! Blood Mistress still did not reply. However, she sat next to Jiang Fei. Based on Blood Mistress' personality, she actually did not care about Jiang Fei. However, as Jiang Fei was her employer, moreover, her child was still counting on him to save her. Therefore, Blood Mistress still gave Jiang Fei some face. Uncle Fu, go and tell my father that Mr. Jiang has been invited by me, Xiao Yuan said to the old man behind her. 
breaking the slightly awkward atmosphere. Yes, my lady. Uncle Fu nodded and turned to leave. After all, this was the Xiao residence. No one would dare to harm Xiao Yuhan again. Therefore, it would not be a problem for the bodyguard to leave for a while. Mr. Jiang, is this your first time coming to the Xiao residence? Xiao Yuhan accompanied Jiang Fei in the living room. Yes, this is my first time coming to the Xiao residence. Jiang Fei said with a smile. Then, how do you feel about the Xiao family? Mr. Jiang? Xiao Yuhan asked. He he, it's a big business. Jiang Fei said with a smile. Yes, it's a big business. Xiao Yuhan repeated. However, she added in a very low voice. It's a big business. And it's also a big trouble. Before long, Uncle Fu returned. Moreover, there were three people who came with him this time. One in the Mahayana stage, and two in the Tribulation stage. Interesting. Jiang Fei smiled in his heart. From the way these three people walked, it was clear that they were not on good terms with each other. It was obvious that the two in the Tribulation stage were in cahoots. When they walked, they intentionally or unintentionally repelled the person in the Mahayana stage. Father! You're here! Xiao Yuhan immediately greeted when she saw the person who came. Yes! Yuhan! Where is the godly doctor? The man at the Mahayana stage asked anxiously. Yuhan! Don't bring anyone who doesn't want to come to our Xiao family. Although your father is the head of the family, our Xiao family isn't a wet market. We can bring in all kinds of ghosts and monsters. The other two guys at the tribulation stage said with sarcasm. Fourth uncle, it's okay for you to teach Yuhan a lesson. But Mr. Jiang is the most distinguished guest of our Xiao family. You better not speak rudely. Xiao Yuhan wasn't a kind girl. Because she usually had the support of her great-grandfather, who was at the true immortal level. She wasn't polite to these uncles at all. He, the most distinguished guest. I want to see what kind of person he is. Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle said with disdain. Fourth uncle. I'm warning you for the last time. Please be more polite to our Xiao family's honored guest. Xiao Yuhan said sternly. You little girl. How dare you talk to your elders like that. Today, I want to see what kind of wild man you brought back. Fourth uncle was clearly angered by Xiao Yuhan. What a brainless idiot. Jiang Fei laughed in his heart. Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle had clearly fallen into a trap. These two guys probably did not receive any information from the spies. So they did not know anything about Jiang Fei. At that moment, it was obvious that they had been tricked by Xiao Yuhan. Xiao Yuhan was a ruthless girl. Although she did not know about the blood demon bees, she had learned from the spies that Jiang Fei was a true immortal level expert. That was why she had deliberately lured her fourth uncle to attack Jiang Fei. When Jiang Fei became angry, her fourth uncle would have some fun to watch. However, since Jiang Fei had seen through Xiao Yuhan's tricks, he would not be a free servant for others. Little girl, you want to use me as a servant, but don't give me any benefits. I'm afraid that's not very good. Right. Jiang Fei whispered into Xiao Yuhan's ear and laughed. This. Xiao Yuhan's tricks were exposed on the spot. She was a little caught off guard. However, this little girl had seen the world. Therefore, she immediately calmed down and said, Yuhan knows her mistake. Please don't blame me. Mr. Jiang, if you want any benefits, please feel free to ask. Yuhan will definitely satisfy you. Definitely satisfy me? Jiang Fei raised his eyebrows. Then, he looked Xiao Yuhan up and down with a scrutinizing gaze. Yes! Xiao Yuhan's little face was red from Jiang Fei's gaze. It was as if she was naked in front of this person. Humph! Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle saw her flirting with Jiang Fei. In the end, he was so embarrassed that his face was red. He was even angrier. Just like his third brother. He did not know about Jiang Fei's background. He only heard that Xiao Yuhan had brought a man back. That was why he came over to cause trouble. He wanted to embarrass Xiao Changyun. Although the matter of Xiao Changyun's grandfather, Xiao Tingsu, practicing martial arts had been kept a secret. There was no such thing as a secret. Therefore, the third and fourth uncle had more or less heard about it. Otherwise, they would not have dared to come and cause trouble for Xiao Changfeng so brazenly. Yu Han, is this the man you brought back? Fourth uncle looked at Jiang Fei and laughed coldly. At that moment, Jiang Fei's aura was restrained. To outsiders, he was just an ordinary person. Who would have thought that there would be such a young true immortal? Do you agree to any condition? Jiang Fei asked Xiao Yuhan in her ear again. The hot wind that he blew made half of Xiao Yuhan's body go numb. When had there ever been a man who was so intimate with her? MMM! Xiao Yuhan's voice was so low that it sounded like a mosquito. 
at that moment. Her smile was even redder than blood. What's going on? Could it be that this girl really has a crush on the godly doctor? Xiao Chanfeng was actually quite happy. He had already planned to sacrifice his daughter's happiness. If his daughter took the initiative to fall in love with this godly doctor, it would be a happy ending for everyone. Impudent! Jiang Fei, who had had enough of teasing Xiao Yuhan, suddenly looked down. His aura suddenly burst out. Boom! An overwhelming pressure swept across the entire Xiao family. What's going on? A few elders, who were living in seclusion in the Xiao family, were suddenly startled awake. An unknown true immortal suddenly burst out his aura in the Xiao family mansion. Could it be that he had been killed by his enemies? Therefore, the space in the hall distorted. Four or five elders of the Xiao clan appeared in the hall at the same time. Of course, Xiao Tingsu, who had gone mad, was not among these people. Who is so impudent in our Xiao clan? Who is it? Do the two distinguished guests have some misunderstanding with our Xiao clan? These elders of the Xiao clan had just reprimanded him when they noticed the blood concubine, who was still sitting on the chair by the side. Although the blood concubine's aura was still restrained, who among the true immortals present was an idiot. They had discovered this great god at a glance. So their attitude had undergone a 180 degree change on the spot. Chapter 1858 Chapter 1856 Severe Punishment Hee <laughs> hee! It's a misunderstanding. Jiang Fei laughed coldly. Then, he looked at the elders of the Xiao family with a playful expression. Granduncles, this girl, Yu Han, has gone too far. She actually brought back such a wild man from the outside without making a sound. Moreover, this kid actually dares to be so impudent in our Xiao family. Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle clearly did not see the anxious expressions of the elders. Therefore, he continued to complain loudly. Originally, as the core direct descendant of the Xiao family, Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle had the strength to cross the tribulation stage. Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle had very high hopes of becoming the head of the Xiao family. However, Xiao Chang'an managed to obtain the position of the head of the Xiao family with the full support of his true immortal grandfather. This made Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle very resentful. Therefore, Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle had always been against Xiao Chang'un. Today, he was provoked by Xiao Yuhan's words. Therefore, the anger in his heart was even greater. Just now, he had intended to humiliate Xiao Yuhan and Jiang Fei as his elders. However, he was intimidated by Jiang Fei's powerful aura. This made him afraid and at the same time, he hated Jiang Fei. Although he hated Jiang Fei, as he was only in the crossing calamity stage, he was no match for Jiang Fei. Therefore, Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle could only endure it in his heart. However, when the old man from his family came, he felt that he had someone backing him up. He immediately began to label Jiang Fei. He wanted to teach Jiang Fei a lesson through the hands of the elders. Unfortunately, Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle was blinded by anger. He did not notice the expressions of the elders at all. Therefore, this was also destined to be his tragedy. He! Jiang Fei shrugged and raised his eyebrows at the elders of the Xiao family. This! The elders of the Xiao family looked at each other and cursed Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle in their hearts. One of the elders had a good relationship with his fourth uncle's father. He wanted to help him out at this time. So he took the initiative to scold him. Initially, this elder's intention was to kick his fourth uncle out. This matter would be over and Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle would be spared from punishment. This could be considered as helping him out for his father's sake. However, he did not expect that. Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle did not appreciate his kindness at all. Seventh uncle, why are you scolding me? This time, it's that girl Yuhan who has ruined the Xiao family's reputation. Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle was still blabbering on and on about Jiang Fei and Xiao Yuhan. However, he did not realize that the five old men's faces were already ashen. You? The old man who was ranked seventh was already so angry that he could not speak. Seventh. Stop talking. You can forgive the sins of heaven. But you can't live with your sins. The leader of the elder sighed. Second brother. But? Elder Su wanted to say something else. Forget it. Leaving such a good for nothing behind will only bring disaster to our Xiao family. The leader of the elders took a deep breath and finally made up his mind. Facing such a big killer like the blood demon bees. In order to protect the entire Xiao family. He had no choice but to sacrifice Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle. Sigh. The other elders also sighed. But no one was willing to plead for Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle. Third son. Go back and tell Tianju that their branch will no longer have to hold any positions in the Xiao family. The Xiao family will provide them with food and clothing. Elder Ursu said to Xiao Yuhan's third uncle. 
because it was his fourth uncle who had spoken from the beginning to the end. His third brother had escaped a calamity. Age? Xiao Yuan's third uncle was dumbfounded. He did not understand what had happened at all. But from Erisu's words, he was trying to strip his fourth brother of his power. From now on, although they did not have to worry about food and clothing, they had nothing to do with the core of the Xiao family's power. Fourth son, I'm sorry. Ersu didn't bother with Xiao Yuhan's third uncle, who was dumbfounded. Instead, he said to her fourth uncle, Second uncle, what do you mean? At this moment, Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle also felt that the atmosphere was not quite right. Don't worry, your descendant, the Xiao family, will take good care of him. As Ersu's voice fell, he raised his right hand. Second uncle, please spare my life. When he saw this, Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle knew that something bad was going to happen. However, when he finally realized what was going on, he was already in no hurry. If it was when his seventh uncle was scolding him, he would have been fine if he had confessed and left. However, he had insulted Jiang Fei in front of the elders. As a result, the elders could not help him even if they wanted to. As the two elders raised their palms, Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle was smacked into a million peach blossoms. Even his nascent soul was not spared. His life was over. Ah! Xiao Yuhan cried out in surprise. Although she was the one who had taken the initiative to frame fourth uncle, the girl did not expect this outcome. She had only wanted to teach fourth uncle a lesson. She wanted him to stop going against his father, Xiao Changyun, in everything in the future. In the end, she did not expect that this would directly cause fourth uncle to lose his life. Third son, you can leave now, said Elder Chisu. He knew that Xiao Yuhan's third uncle had a good relationship with her fourth uncle. He was afraid that this kid would also be implicated. So he hurriedly chased him out. This could also be considered as protecting him. Little girl. Good move. Before Xiao Yuhan's third uncle left, he cupped his fists at Xiao Yuhan. Although the few old mansions did not understand the cause of the incident, her third uncle could only watch as Xiao Yuhan provoked her fourth uncle. This. I. Xiao Yuhan was at a loss for words at the moment. Although she wanted to anger her fourth uncle, she did not expect this outcome. Sai! Jiang Fei sighed. Although he did not want to kill Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle, he did not really care that he was dead. Dear guests, this place is a little messy. Please come to the back hall. The second night elder invited them. All right. Jiang Fei nodded. The living room was filled with a stench of blood. It was indeed not suitable for a conversation. Just as Jiang Fei and Blood Mistress followed the few elders to the entrance of the living room, the second elder said to Xiao Chongyun, Yuder, you should come along too. Yes, second grandfather. Xiao Chongyun nodded. Although he was relatively weaker, his roots were still strong. Not only was his biological grandfather the chief elder of the Xiao family, but this second elder was also his grandfather's biological younger brother. After moving to the back hall, Jiang Fei and the others took their seats. Because of the group of elders, Xiao Changyun, the head of the Xiao family, no longer had a seat. Although he was the head of the family, the entire room was filled with true immortals. With his strength at the Mahayana stage, he could only serve tea and water. I'm really sorry. It's my Xiao family's fault for being negligent in disciplining our unfilial son. If I have offended you in any way, please forgive me, said the second elder before he spoke. No worries. No worries. Jiang Fei waved his hand. They had killed Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle. Moreover, they had deprived him of the power of his faction. The punishment was quite severe. Jiang Fei had no reason to continue to hold on to it. Chapter 1859, Chapter 1857 was still about human life. As long as Mr. Jiang is satisfied. Er Su nodded. Then, he asked. Then, may I ask why Mr. Jiang has come to our Xiao residence? Although Xiao Yuhan's fourth uncle kept saying that Jiang Fei was a wild man that Xiao Yuhan had found, these elders did not believe it at all. If it was so easy to seduce a true immortal, the Xiao family had already spread out their good-looking girls. However, how could such a good thing happen in real life? Oh, you can ask him about that. Jiang Fei pointed at Xiao Changyun. Oh, Elder was stunned. Then, he turned his gaze to Xiao Changyun. Second Grandpa, it's like this. Mr. Jiang is a miracle doctor. When I invited him back, I wanted to treat his injuries. Xiao Changyun answered truthfully. Because Elder was his grandfather's biological younger brother. There was no need to hide anything. Oh! Er Su was stunned for a moment. At the same time, he laughed coldly in his heart. 
If that's the case, the death of that blind guy wasn't unjustified at all. If he were to anger this godly doctor away, then his elder brother's life might not even be saved. Sigh. The other elders also sighed. They were all glad that second brother was decisive enough. Otherwise, he would have really delayed the major matters of the Xiao family. Mr. Jiang, are you confident that you can cure my eldest brother? The second elder asked anxiously. Xiao Tingsu was the pillar of the entire Xiao family. Therefore, his safety was very important to the entire Xiao family. I haven't seen the patient yet. It's hard for me to make a judgment. Jiang Fei did not take on all the responsibility this time. After all, this was the first time he had encountered something like qi deviation. Therefore, before he saw the patient's actual condition, Jiang Fei did not dare to make any rash promises. That's right. That's right. I was too rash. Er Su nodded and said, Mr. Jiang, is it convenient for you now? If it's possible, I would like to invite you to visit my grandfather first. Xiao Changden said at this time. Although logically speaking, everyone in this room was a true immortal. He did not have the right to take the initiative to speak. However, because he was concerned about Xiao Ting's safety, he could only speak at this time. Of course. Please lead the way. Master Xiao. Jiang Fei said with a smile. Thank you. Mr. Jiang Fei. Xiao Changden bowed deeply to Jiang Fei and then looked at the elders. After all, these true immortals were present. It would not be appropriate for him to take Jiang Fei away without permission. Okay, let's go and see Big Brother. Of course, the second elder also hoped that Jiang Fei would go and see his big brother as soon as possible. Following that, Jiang Fei followed Xiao Changyun all the way through the Xiao family until they arrived at the back garden. There was a rockery there. When Xiao Changyun activated the mechanism, the rockery cracked open and revealed a secret passage. Mr. Jiang, please follow me. My grandfather's injuries are more serious, so he needs to rest. As the secret passage was very deep, Xiao Changyun was afraid that Jiang Fei would be overthinking things. So he explained. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded. He was brave because he was skilled. In addition, he had blood mistress protecting him. Therefore, he was not afraid that the Xiao family would plot against him. After Jiang Fei and the others entered the secret passage, a few elders of the Xiao family followed them in. The group passed through the long passage and finally came to a secret room. What a heavy cold air! Jiang Fei felt a strong cold air as soon as he entered the secret room. Moreover, this cold air contained a strong spiritual energy. Mysterious ice bed. Interesting. Blood mistress, who had almost never spoken, actually muttered to herself. Huh? Jiang Fei was stunned. If it was anything else, he might not know about it. However, he had heard about this mysterious ice bed because this thing was the Ten Directions Clear Artifact that the Xiao family owned. The Ten Directions Clear Artifact was a legendary magical artifact. Moreover, it was naturally formed. It could be said to be an unparalleled treasure in the five directions of heaven and earth. Moreover, these treasures were not all hidden weapons or defensive equipment. There were also mysterious ice beds that could help people cultivate. It's really a good treasure. Jiang Fei could not help but sigh in his heart, as he felt the pure water type spiritual energy that the dark ice bed emitted. Grandfather has gone mad from practicing martial arts. He can only rely on the dark ice bed to suppress the evil fire in his body. Xiao Changyun explained. Hmm. Jiang Fei nodded. Then, he quietly opened the eye of the violet and looked at Xiao Tingsu. Huh? Jiang Fei snorted. He did not find any abnormal energy on Xiao Tingsu's body. Although the eye of the violet could see through the source of energy, Xiao Ting's spiritual power was all his own. However, there was a problem with the circulation of the spiritual power. Therefore, Jiang Fei could not see anything wrong with it without understanding the Xiao family's cultivation method. He could not see anything wrong with it. Therefore, under the eye of the violet orchid, Xiao Ting's water type spiritual energy was pure and uniform. Moreover, it was circulating according to a certain pattern. There was nothing unusual about it. Mr. Jiang, can you cure it? Elder Su asked. Yes, I can cure it. However, it's more troublesome. Jiang Fei's developed brain quickly figured out the problem. What do you mean? Mr. Jiang? Old Air Su asked. It's easier to save people, but to cure them would require the Xiao family to break the family rules. Jiang Fei was secretly happy when he said this. He was currently lacking water type martial arts. The Xiao family was practically offering themselves to him. Mr. Jiang, please explain. Old Air Su frowned and asked. After all, breaking the family rules was not a small matter. 
It's easy to save him. I just need to dissolve the spiritual energy in his body and make him a cripple. Then, the spiritual energy that was running around in his body will cease to exist and he will be saved. Jiang Fei said. Xiao Chang'un, who was standing at the side, could not accept it. No, Mr. Jiang, please save him until the end. Xiao Chang'un said. That's right. The other elders also nodded. After all, Xiao Tingsu was the pillar of the Xiao family. His strength was one of the best among true immortals. If he was crippled, then the entire Xiao family's strength would be greatly reduced. The second method is more troublesome. I have to rearrange the spiritual energy in his body and guide it into the correct meridians. Jiang Fei said, Thank you, sir. If you can cure my big brother, the Xiao family will definitely repay you generously. The second elder said, We will talk about it in the future. The problem now is that I do not know how this person's martial art works. How can I channel his spiritual power into the right path? Unless you are willing to show me the Xiao family's martial art and let me read it. However, I want outsiders to read the Xiao family's martial art. This must be against the family rules. Right. This. The few elders hesitated when they heard this. It was obviously impossible to show the martial art to outsiders. If it was another doctor who said this, they might have taken out the martial art and let him read it. After that, they would wait for him to cure Xiao Tingsu and then kill him to silence him. However, the problem was that the bodyguard beside Jiang Fei was too ruthless. Therefore, this path was impossible. Elders, I am sure that you are allowed to make this exception. Otherwise, if anything happens to grandfather, the Wang family, Xiao Changyun spoke at this time. He knew that his grandfather could not fall. Therefore, at this time, he had to put pressure on the elders. Chapter 1860 Chapter 1858 Healing This, the elders of the Xiao family hesitated. On one hand, they could not go against the family rules. On the other hand, Xiao Tingsu was indeed a pillar of the Xiao family. Once he was finished, he would face the revenge of the Wang family. The entire Xiao family might not be able to handle it. Logically speaking, I should not have rushed you. However, this person's injuries are already very serious. If this continues, I'm afraid. Therefore, I still hope that everyone can make a decision as soon as possible. Although Jiang Fei said that he would not rush them. However, these words had already caused a great deal of pressure to the elders. Second Grandpa, Xiao Chang'an had no choice but to kneel down and beg Elder Ursu. After all, he was Xiao Tingsu's biological younger brother. Brothers, although my big brother is injured, I may be a little selfish in saying this. However, our Xiao family really cannot leave my big brother. Elder Ursu turned around and said to the others, Sai, Mr. Jiang, can you guarantee that you will be able to save my big brother after you have seen our Xiao family's martial arts techniques? One of the elders asked. I am 90% sure. Jiang Fei smiled and said, Then, Mr. Jiang, can you guarantee that you will not pass on our Xiao family's martial arts techniques to others after you have seen them? Another elder asked. Yes. Jiang Fei nodded and promised. If that's the case, we will be fine. The other old men looked at each other. Although they were not related to Xiao Tingsu by blood, they knew that the Xiao family relied on Xiao Tingsu to support them. If he fell, the Xiao family would be in real danger. Therefore, after Jiang Fei made his promise, they also compromised. Chang'un, please bring the technique over. The second elder saw that the others had nodded and immediately said to Xiao Chang'un. Yes. Xiao Chang'un was overjoyed when he heard that. Then, he immediately took out a jade ring from his body. Mr. Jiang, this is the jade pupil scroll that records the Xiao family's technique. Xiao Changyun said as he handed the jade ring to Jiang Fei. Okay. Jiang Fei smiled and nodded. However, he was very pleased with himself. This was really something that he had not found even after searching for a long time. This water type martial arts technique was actually given to him on his own accord. After receiving the jade eye scroll, Jiang Fei immediately activated it. A stream of spiritual sense entered his mind and left a mark on it. Swoosh! The moment the Xiao family's martial arts technique entered Jiang Fei's mind, his developed brain began to operate at a high speed. This was Jiang Fei. If it were anyone else, they would need several years just to study this kind of high-level technique. After that, they would have to practice and master it on their own. Perhaps, it would take another few decades before they could use it again. Xiao Tingsu's bones were rotten. Jiang Fei sat cross-legged. His mind was working rapidly. At the same time, all the spiritual energy in his body 
had been converted into water. After about two hours, the spiritual energy in Jiang Fei's body began to circulate according to the Xiao family's cultivation method. Although the speed was very slow at the beginning, and he was still stumbling. But even so, everyone present had their eyes wide open. Sigh! This person cannot be left alive! Elder Ursu looked at Jiang Fei and thought to himself. If such a talented person was a member of the Xiao family, the Xiao family would definitely protect him in secret. However, he did not belong to the Xiao family. So he was definitely a hidden threat to the Xiao family. Unfortunately, although the elders of the Xiao family wanted to get rid of Jiang Fei, they could not do so because of the existence of the blood demon bees. This god was so powerful that the people of the Xiao family did not dare to act rashly. In fact, it was not only the people of the Xiao family. Even Blood Mistress was now looking at Jiang Fei in a new light. Although Blood Mistress was Jiang Fei's bodyguard now. And she listened to him. However, this was because of the promise that Jiang Fei could save her child. Speaking of which, Blood Mistress really did not think much of Jiang Fei. Even though Jiang Fei had the power of a true immortal, he had never displayed the power of the tenth dimension in front of Blood Mistress. Therefore, Blood Mistress had never regarded him as an expert of the same level. However, this was the first time Blood Lady had started to look at Jiang Fei seriously. This kind of heaven-defying comprehension ability and amazing talent were too rare. As time passed, he would definitely become a super expert in the future. For hours later, almost all of the ice spiritual power that was released from the dark ice bed was taken away by Jiang Fei. If Jiang Fei did not deliberately leave a trace of ice spiritual power to suppress Xiao Tinks's evil fire, the spiritual energy released from the bed had been completely absorbed by Jiang Fei. After six hours, Jiang Fei let out a long sigh of relief. Then, he opened his eyes. Swoosh! Two flashes of electricity shot out from Jiang Fei's eyes. Feels good! Jiang Fei stood up and felt very refreshed. If he did not have something on his mind and knew that he still had to heal Xiao Tingsu, he might have been able to cultivate here for a few years. After all, the dark ice bed was a rare treasure. The spiritual energy that it released was not only pure, but it was also very easy to convert. If he could train on the mysterious ice bed, it would definitely have a double effect with half the effort. Mr. Jiang, how is it? Xiao Changyun came forward and asked. It's fine. It'll heal the patient now. Jiang Fei nodded. If he received the benefits, he would have to work for the other party. Then, Mr. Jiang, what do you need us to do? Old Air Su asked. Help him sit cross-legged. You don't have to worry about anything else. Jiang Fei said. All right. Xiao Changyun nodded and helped Xiao Ting to sit down. The rest of the people retreated to the side. Don't disturb me. Jiang Fei reminded him and sat cross-legged behind Xiao Tingsu. Pa! Pa! Jiang Fei's palms were imprinted on Xiao Tingsu's back. Sigh! I hate this kind of hard work. Jiang Fei thought to himself. Then, he began to adjust the spiritual energy in Xiao Tingsu's body. As they were of the same origin, the water-type spiritual energy in Jiang Fei's body and the spiritual energy in Xiao Tingsu's body did not reject each other. Therefore, he easily used his own spiritual energy as a catalyst to guide Xiao Tingsu's spiritual energy into his body. The originally chaotic spiritual energy in Xiao Tingsu's body began to converge into the correct meridians under Jiang Fei's guidance. Then, it began to circulate according to the normal meridians. Dot! The entire secret chamber was completely silent. Everyone in the Xiao family was focused on Jiang Fei and Xiao Tingsu. None of them dared to breathe loudly, afraid that they would disturb Jiang Fei. Time passed quickly. In the blink of an eye, 10 to 10 hours had passed. If it was an ordinary person, even if they were not hungry, they would have long passed out from exhaustion. Even an expert like Jiang Fei appeared to be extremely tired at this moment. F asterisk CK, I won't take this kind of work anymore. Not only is it not technical, but it's also tiring. Jiang Fei complained in his heart. At this time, the spiritual energy in Xiao Tingsu's body had basically returned to the correct meridians. Phew! As the last bit of chaotic spiritual energy was successfully channeled, Jiang Fei finally opened his eyes. Mr. Jiang, how is it? Xiao Changyun and the others asked with concern. It's okay. I think you'll wake up in a little while. Jiang Fei appeared to be very tired at this time. Chapter 1861 Chapter 1859 The Highlight of the Show Thank you, Mr. Jiang. Air Su bowed deeply to Jiang Fei. Then, he turned to Xiao Changyun and said, Changyun, quickly arrange a guest room for Mr. Jiang. If there's anything, 
Let Mr. Jiang rest first. Yes. Second grandpa. Xiao Chongyun immediately nodded. Then, he said to Jiang Fei, Mr. Jiang, Xiao Chongyun is unable to repay your kindness today. Please come with me to the guest room to rest. Our Xiao family will definitely not mistreat you. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded and followed Xiao Chongyun out of the secret room. After Jiang Fei went to rest, Xiao Tingsu woke up in less than the time it takes for an incense stick to burn. Huh. Two lifetimes. Xiao Tingsu let out a long sigh. Although his body was unable to move during the period of qi deviation, his mind was clear. He knew that he had been through a near-death experience. He also knew that Jiang Fei had pulled him back from the brink of death. Big brother, are you alright? Old Air Su asked. Hee hee, you might not believe it. Not only am I alright now, but I'm also in my prime, Xiao Tingsu said. He did not know what kind of method this godly doctor had used to not only heal him, but also restore him to his best condition in an instant. And ITLL put him back in top shape in no time. Tut tut. Chong and this kid is really blessed. Unexpectedly can find this kind of miracle doctor. An old man sighed. Yes. This man's medical skills are superb. I thought I couldn't get through this. But I didn't expect that he not only cured my injuries, but also cured some of my hidden diseases. Xiao Tingsu said. All martial artists had some hidden diseases. Moreover, the more skilled one was, the more serious the hidden diseases were. These were all left over from long-term high-intensity battles. Under normal circumstances, it would be difficult to get rid of them. However, this kind of thing was easy for Jiang Fei. He directly touched the energy cord and removed the lesion. Then, he used his spiritual power to catalyze the patient to grow new tissue cells. It was just like a surgical operation. However, unlike a surgical operation, Jiang Fei was able to remove the lesion by changing the frequency of the vibration of the energy string. This level of precision had already reached the level of material origin. It would not cause any accidental injury or spread of the lesion. That's right. Moreover, not only is this person's medical skills amazing, I'm afraid that his background is not simple either, Old Manor Su said. Second brother, what do you mean? Xiao Tingsu asked. After all, he had gone mad previously. Although he could sense things around him, he was unable to use his divine sense to investigate. Age. There is someone with this divine, Dr. Jiang. This person's strength is something I have never seen before in my life. To put it bluntly, the experts of our Xiao family, together with you at your peak, are no match for this person, Elder Su said. Oh, who is this person? Such an expert is definitely not a nobody, Xiao Tingsu asked. This person is not a human cultivator. I'm afraid he has the body of a fierce beast. Air Su had lived for such a long time. This experience was not given to him for free. Although he could not see through the background of blood concubine, he could roughly guess it. Could it be that this divine Dr. Jiang is related to the Myriad Beast Mountain? Xiao Tingsu guessed. Sigh. It's hard to say. He has such medical skills. Big brother, do you think that there are still a few people who are good friends with him? Air Su sighed and said. That's true. Prepare a big gift for me later. We have to make friends with such a person. Xiao Tingsu said. In the world of cultivators, craftsmen were usually the ones who could not be offended, whether it was alchemy masters or artifact masters. These people might be average in their own strength, but because of their own craftsmanship, they were very popular. If you provoked him, he might not do anything. A large group of experts who were trying to curry favor with him would be able to eat you up. Therefore, when faced with a godly doctor like Jiang Fei, the Xiao family also adopted the strategy of roping him in. After all, Regardless of whether or not they wanted Jiang Fei in the future, it was better not to offend him. Jiang Fei rested in the Xiao mansion for a night. The next day, when it was almost noon, Xiao Chongyun came to visit him personally. Mr. Jiang, have you rested well? At this time, Xiao Chongyun was even more respectful to Jiang Fei. Very good! Jiang Fei nodded. After a night of rest, his fatigue had been swept away. I am relieved. Yesterday, Mr. Jiang looked so tired. It really made me feel guilty. Mr. Jiang, you have done so much to treat your grandfather's injury. I am really grateful, Xiao Changyun said. Although Jiang Fei knew that it was just a formality, he felt more comfortable listening to it. Master Xiao, there's no need to be so polite. As the saying goes, the heart of a doctor is the heart of a parent. I, Jiang Fei, will do my best. At this moment, Jiang Fei had to be polite. Otherwise, how could he show his noble character? 
regardless. Thank you, Mr. Jiang, for your help. Xiao Chongyun stood up and bowed to Jiang Fei again. You're welcome, Master Xiao. Jiang Fei quickly stood up and helped him up. Mr. Jiang, it's getting late. I have already prepared some wine. I hope that you will do me the honor. Mr. Jiang, Xiao Chongyun said. All right, let's talk while we eat. Jiang Fei smiled slightly. He knew that the main event was coming. His benefits were most likely going to be settled at the dinner table. Although Jiang Fei had already obtained the Xiao family's martial arts manual, it was the Xiao family's initiative to send it over. Moreover, it was a medicinal primer to heal Xiao Tingxi's injuries. It was not considered Jiang Fei's reward. To be honest, Jiang Fei really did not care about the Xiao family's treasure. The only thing that Jiang Fei liked was the dark frost bed. However, Jiang Fei also knew that the Xiao family would never give the ten directional clear artifact to him. Therefore, Jiang Fei planned to take advantage of the Xiao family's debt to him to drag the Xiao family into the water and use them as cannon fodder in the outside world. Very soon, Jiang Fei followed Xiao Chongyun to the living room. There was already a banquet prepared there. Moreover, there were already many people waiting there. Grandpa! Second Grandpa! Elders! Mr. Jiang is here! Xiao Chongyun bowed to everyone in the living room. Although he was the master of the Xiao family, he was the one with the lowest seniority in the room. Because other than him, all of the elders present were true immortals. No one else had the right to enter. Mr. Jiang, thank you for saving my life. I am honored to be here. Xiao Tingsu walked up to Jiang Fei and bowed to him. You are too kind. Senior. Jiang Fei smiled and helped Xiao Tingsu up. Mr. Jiang, this is. Xiao Tingsu looked at Blood Lady and asked. He was also shocked by Blood Lattice's powerful strength because Xiao Tingsu's strength far surpassed that of Elder Su and the others. Therefore, he had a deep understanding of Blood Girl's terror. Blood Girl. My friend, Jiang Fei said with a smile. Dot! Although Blood Girl did not say anything, there was a slight fluctuation in her eyes. Clearly, the way Jiang Fei addressed her as a friend had touched her a little. In the five directions of the world, humans and ferocious beasts were belittling each other. Very few people could become friends. Chapter 1862 Chapter 1860 The Non-Human Sia Family Come! 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 Sit down and talk! Xiao Tingsu pulled Jiang Fei's wrist and made him sit beside him. The seat beside Jiang Fei was left for Blood Mistress. The rest of the people sat down with their hands hanging down. I still have to thank Mr. Jiang for saving me today. Otherwise, my life would be over. Xiao Tingsu continued to thank Jiang Fei after he sat down. It's nothing. It's just a small matter. Jiang Fei said with a smile. Dot! Blood Mistress was expressionless as she sat quietly beside Jiang Fei. In her opinion, the small talk between Jiang Fei and Xiao Tingsu was nothing more than human hypocrisy. However, be it hypocrisy or etiquette, Jiang Fei and Xiao Tingsu were human beings. Naturally, they could not talk about benefits right away. That would be too much. Therefore, the two chatted for a long time. After three rounds of drinks, Xiao Tingsu finally brought the topic back to the main topic. Mr. Jiang, I heard from Chang Yun that you have been to the Wang family before. Could it be that you have an old relationship with the Wang family? Xiao Tingsu asked. This was also a question that everyone was very concerned about. After all, the Xiao family and the Wang family were not on good terms. If Jiang Fei and the Wang family were old friends, it would not be easy to handle. It's not like we have an old relationship. We just have a cooperation between us. Jiang Fei said with a smile. Working together? Is it convenient for you to tell me about it? Mr. Jiang? Xiao Tingsu asked tentatively. He he. It doesn't matter. Anyway, I'm not only working with the Wang family. It's not a secret. Jiang Fei smiled slightly. Then, he said to Xiao Tingsu and the others. What do you guys think of the five directions? Ah? Uh? Xiao Tingsu and the others were stunned by Jiang Fei's sudden words. I mean, are you interested in the outside world? Jiang Fei added. Hmm? Mr. Jiang, do you have a way to get out of here? Everyone present was smart. They understood what Jiang Fei meant. That's right. I have already mentioned this to the Wang family, the Yuan family, and the moon god is set. Other than the Wang family, who has already agreed, the other two families are also considering it. Jiang Fei was frank and did not hide anything. Moon god is sect? Isn't Mr. Jiang a disciple of the valiant Marshal Hall? Xiao Tingsu said in surprise. Although Jiang Fei had only stayed in the Xiao family for one day, with the Xiao family's huge intelligence network, 
most of the public information about Jiang Fei in the five directions of heaven and earth had already been collected. So what? The hall master is worried about the chair under his butt and won't let the valiant Marshal Hall disciples follow me out. Then, I will have to find another way, Jiang Fei said with a smile. So, Mr. Jiang, you mean that you intend to bring us into the Xiao family? Xiao Tingsu asked. That's what I mean, Jiang Fei said with a smile. Sure, Xiao Tingsu actually agreed without any hesitation. However, after pausing for a moment, he added to Jiang Fei. But, Mr. Jiang, I have a small request. Tell me about it, said Jiang Fei with a smile. We can offer the same conditions as the Wang family, but we also want the same treatment as the Wang family. Xiao Tingsu was not stupid. The reason why he agreed to Jiang Fei's request so easily was that he did not even bargain. Just because the Wang family has taken the lead in joining this plan. If the Xiao family does not want to fall behind, then must follow closely behind. Sure. Of course. Jiang Fei had no problem with that. Although he needed cannon fodder, it would be better if his subordinates could carry out his orders seriously. Then, it's a deal. Xiao Tingsu immediately nodded. He did not doubt Jiang Fei's words at all. After all, a true immortal level powerhouse with such medical skills and a person who could bring along a super bodyguard like Blood Mistress. Would he lie like that? All right. It's a deal. Jiang Fei picked up the wine glass in his hand and clinked it with Xiao Tingsu's. It was considered a deal. After reaching an agreement with the Xiao family, Jiang Fei stayed at the Xiao family for another two days. During these two days, on one hand, Jiang Fei was trying to steal the dark ice bed. On the other hand, he also wanted to get some information from the Xiao family. Captain, how much do you know about the Xie family? 0541 asked Jiang Fei after the banquet ended. Not much, other than knowing that they have a top-tier metal-type martial art. I know almost nothing about their family, Jiang Fei said as he shook his head. In fact, it was not only Jiang Fei. Even the natives of the Five Directions of Heaven and Earth knew very little about the Xie family. In the Five Directions world, almost everyone knew that the Xie family was one of the four big families. They also knew that their metal-type martial art was unprecedentedly powerful. However, as for where this family was, and what kind of power this family had, almost no one could tell. It could be said that the Xie family was the most mysterious of the four big families. Then what should we do? Right now, we don't even know where the Xie family is. 0541 said worriedly. We don't know. However, the Xiao family should have some information. He'll go and ask Xiao Chongyun tomorrow. Jiang Fei said. That's true. Big families will always know something that ordinary people don't know. 0541 nodded and said. Are you going to the Xie family? Blood Lady, who had not taken the initiative to speak up, actually interrupted. Jiang Fei was not surprised that she was able to eavesdrop on the conversation between Jiang Fei and 0541. Yes, Jiang Fei nodded. It'll take you there. However, you're not allowed to kill anyone, Blood Mistress said expressionlessly. Oh, you're taking me there? Jiang Fei suddenly had an idea. He subconsciously asked. Could it be that the Xia family is not human? Yes. Blood Mistress did not have to lie to Jiang Fei. After all, when they reached the Xia family, Jiang Fei would be able to tell with his abilities. No wonder. But they hid it well enough. Jiang Fei muttered to himself. The Xia family had always avoided the world and never participated in disputes. So, it was because they did not belong to the human world. No wonder they never meddled in the affairs of the human world. When you plan to go? Blood Mistress asked. Right now. Jiang Fei said after thinking for a moment. The reason he stayed at the Xiao family was to inquire about the Xia family and steal the dark ice bed. However, if the Xia family was not a human family, then the Xiao family might not know as much about them as Blood Mistress did. On the other hand, Xiao Tingsu would not leave with the dark ice bed unless he robbed it openly. The chances of Jiang Fei stealing it would not be high. Moreover, Jiang Fei was still working with the Xiao family. Obviously, it was impossible to rob them openly. Therefore, there was no point for him to stay in the Xiao family anymore. After making up his mind to leave, Jiang Fei bade farewell to Xiao Changyun. Although the Xiao family had repeatedly urged him to stay, Jiang Fei had already made up his mind to leave. After leaving behind his communication device, Jiang Fei left the Xiao family in the afternoon. Follow me, Blood Girl said expressionlessly. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded and followed behind Blood Girl on his sword. The two of them traveled through the mountains and ridges. The more they walked, 
the less people there were. Finally, they arrived at a huge primeval forest. No wonder everyone could not find the Sia family's location. So, it's here. Jiang Fei nodded. In such a desolate place, it would be a miracle if anyone could find it. Chapter 1863 Chapter 1861 Super Powerhouse In a dense forest, Blood Lady brought Jiang Fei to a towering tree. Swish! Blood Lady waved her hand, and a stream of light appeared between her jade-like palms. The stream of light instantly entered the trunk of the giant tree. Buzz! A wave of energy spread out from the trunk. Following that, the environment around Jiang Fei suddenly changed. What a powerful illusion! Jiang Fei was shocked. He did not even realize that he was in an illusion just now. This is the Maha Tree. It can create an extremely realistic illusion. Blood Mistress explained. I see. Jiang Fei nodded. Through his heart, he could feel the terrifying and suffocating spiritual power from the tree. Even though Jiang Fei had a huge amount of spiritual power after he had fused with the three pieces of the will's core, such power was only relative to intelligent creatures like the Cosmic Behemoth or the Mahakasaiba Tree, which were large in size but not very intelligent. Their bodies usually contained a larger amount of spiritual power. However, their poor intelligence could not use this spiritual power perfectly. They could only use it instinctively. After the illusion dissipated, a hidden teleportation portal appeared not far from the Maha Tree. Come on! Blood Lady said expressionlessly. It's not here yet! Jiang Fei was even more impressed by the Xia family's caution. After entering the teleportation portal, Blood Lady used a very strange method to open the ancient-looking teleportation portal. Buzz! A white light flashed. Jiang Fei felt as if he was thrown into a blender. The violent shaking and rolling made him feel extremely uncomfortable. This damn teleportation portal is a few hundred years old. How could the technology be so ancient? Jiang Fei complained in his heart. However, he did not know that the teleportation portal was not a few hundred years old. It was a product from 10,000 years ago. About five minutes later, when Jiang Fei's stomach was surging up like a tidal wave, his teleportation finally ended. Phew? Oh! Jiang Fei could not hold it in anymore. He poured out all the food he had for lunch in one go. Sigh. These guys are really stingy. They are actually not willing to change to a new teleportation portal. Blood Mistress muttered softly. Although she did not have such a strong reaction as Jiang Fei. It was not easy after the teleportation. Who? Who? Blood Lady. Where should we go next? Jiang Fei asked while panting heavily. They will come and pick us up, Blood Lady said expressionlessly. As expected, in less than half a minute, a few rays of light flew over and two young couples appeared in front of Jiang Fei. Good God! If I had not prepared myself beforehand, who would have been able to tell that they were beast shapeshifters? Jiang Fei thought to himself. He had activated the violet eye in advance. Otherwise, no one would have been able to tell that the four people in front of him were not humans based on their auras. The Xia family has a unique shapeshifter technique. Outsiders would not be able to see through their background. Therefore, when the Beast family deals with humans, they do it through their family, Blood Mistress explained. Since the Beast family knows about the Xia family's identity, how could humans not know about it? Jiang Fei was puzzled. Even if the Beast family was not as cunning as humans, how could there not be a traitor after thousands of years? Who says they don't know? The three major families, Marshall Valiant Hall, and even the moon goddess sect all know about it. It's just that everyone knows about it, said Blood Mistress. That's true. Jiang Fei nodded. Not only did the berserk beasts need a middleman to trade with humans, but humans also needed the special products of the berserk beasts. Therefore, they tacitly allowed the Xia family to exist. Pay respects to the wife great-grandfather aunt. For Xia family disciples see blood concubine. Immediately go up saluting Wei. I go. What great seniority. Jiang Fei's mouth twitched. Did not expect this blood concubine seniority so high. Yes. I brought him here. Blood girl pointed at Jiang Fei. Yes. Although a few Xia family disciples did not know Jiang Fei. But with the appearance of blood concubine. They naturally did not dare to say anything more. Great 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 great
Great, 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 I'm afraid that this teleportation circle is not only in disrepair for a long time. Perhaps this is also a kind of defense method. Jiang Fei looked at the four Xie disciples in front of him and suddenly thought to himself, the teleportation formation might look bumpy and uncomfortable, but it would not hurt you. If it was an ally, it would only hurt for a little while. However, if it was an enemy that had teleported over, when you were feeling extremely uncomfortable, the Xie family would not give you time to rest. They would definitely take advantage of the enemy's illness to kill them. Along the way, Jiang Fei passed through the dense forest and found countless sentries. It seemed that the Xia family had put in a good amount of effort to defend themselves. Even in times of peace, they would still be on high alert. Therefore, it was not unreasonable for a ferocious beast family to be able to survive in the human world for thousands of years. Soon, Jiang Fei and the rest arrived in front of a large house. This house was built in front of a picture and had a backstop. It was situated along the mountains and rivers with excellent feng shui. If no one had told you, you would never have thought that this was a ferocious beast family. Once they entered the house, the servant's yard was orderly. The architectural decorations were also very exquisite. Not to mention the average human family. Even the other three big families were not as luxurious as the Xia family. My senior sister's family has monopolized the trade between humans and ferocious beasts. Moreover, they have monopolized it for thousands of years. The wealth that they have accumulated is simply unimaginable, Blood Mistress explained. Good lord. They are not rich anymore. They are definitely oligarchs, Jiang Fei said with his eyes wide open. Although the valiant Marshall Hall and the Hard Moon sect were so arrogant that they were known as the leaders of both the righteous and evil sects. If they were to really compete in terms of wealth, the Xia family would probably be able to buy all of them together. Soon, Jiang Fei and the others passed through the Xia family's house and finally came to a large hall. Madam, 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 please have some tea first. She will be here soon. The disciples left after offering Jiang Fei and Blood Mistress some fragrant tea and fruits. After about 10 minutes, Jiang Fei was shocked. He felt a big mountain slowly approaching him. So strong, stronger than Blood Mistress. Jiang Fei thought to himself. This person's strength was definitely the strongest person he had ever seen in the five directions. My senior sister is here. She has a bad temper. Be careful later, Blood Mistress reminded him. After all, Jiang Fei's safety was related to her child's life. Therefore, she did not want Jiang Fei to be killed because he had offended her senior sister. Chapter 1864 Chapter 1862 The Ancestor of the Xia Family I understand. Jiang Fei nodded after listening to Blood Mistress' advice. He had been out for so many years. Even if he had not learned anything else, he must have learned how to respect the strong. Otherwise, he would not have survived until now. Not long after, a middle-aged woman in a white robe walked into the hall. Facing this middle-aged woman, Jiang Fei did not dare to open the eye of Violet to spy on her. However, judging from the powerful aura that she emitted, this person must be the senior sister of Blood Mistress, the ancestor of the Xia family. What kind of ferocious beast is the Xia family in the form of? Jiang Fei thought to himself. However, he did not dare to spy on this god easily to avoid angering her. Junior sister, you haven't been here for a long time. The ancestor of the Xia family was not like Blood Mistress, who had a straight face all day long. When she appeared, she was full of smiles. To most people, she was no different from an ordinary lady. MMM, I've been busy recently, Blood Mistress said expressionlessly. Who is this young man? Is he your new spouse? The ancestor of the Xia family asked. No. He's a doctor. He can save my child. Blood Mistress was still expressionless. This made her senior sister, who had spoken out to tease her, feel a little disappointed. You little girl are really boring. The ancestor of the Sia family pursed his lips. It was obvious that he did not see Blood Mistress bashful look. This made her very disappointed. Little human, what is your name? When the ancestor of the Sia family saw that he could not flirt with his junior sister, he turned his gaze to Jiang Fei. My name is Jiang Fei. Senior, what is your name? Jiang Fei smiled and replied. 
My name is Xie Tianqin. However, it has been a long time since anyone has called me by my name. You can just call me Grandma Xie. Xie Tianqin was very polite to Jiang Fei. It was unknown if it was because she was giving face to Blood Mistress. All right. This junior greets Grandma Xie. Jiang Fei bowed to Xie Tianqin again. It could be considered as a new junior greeting. Jiang Fei did not care at all about being considered as a junior. Judging from Blood Mistressage, Xie Tianqin would probably be tens of thousands of years old if she could become her senior sister. It might even be advantageous for Jiang Fei to call her grandma. After all, almost everyone in the Xie family called this god their ancestor. Oh right, junior sister, why are you looking for me? Also, what's wrong with your child? Xie Zin nodded at Jiang Fei before turning around to ask Blood Concubine. It's not that I'm looking for you. It's that he's looking for you. My child was born prematurely. He can save it. Blood Concubine did not speak much. Basically, she would answer whatever Xie Tianxin asked. Premature birth? Xie Zin frowned. She was at her wit's end when it came to such matters. It seemed that her junior sister could only seek help from this human doctor. Yes. Blood Mistress nodded. Sigh. Don't worry too much. As long as it can be saved, there will be no problem, said Xie Tianqin consolingly. Yes. Blood Mistress still nodded. She was still as reserved as ever. Forget it. It's so tiring to talk to you. I can't even make a fart out of three strikes. Xie Tianqin rolled her eyes and then turned to Jiang Fei. After all, talking to Blood Mistress was really too uncomfortable. Little guy, why are you looking for me? Xie Tianqin asked. He, he. Actually, I really did not specifically look for you. Otherwise, I would have gone up to the 10,000 Beasts Mountain. I originally wanted to look for the Xie family. I did not expect that the Xie family is actually not a human family. Jiang Fei said awkwardly. Oh, so what if it's not a human family? Could it be that you're discriminating against us? Xie Tianqin raised his eyebrows. Racial discrimination was never a small matter, especially in the eyes of those who were discriminated against. No, no, no. I have no prejudice against anyone, whether it's humans or ferocious beasts. They are all the same in my eyes. They are all intelligent creatures. Jiang Fei quickly explained. He does not discriminate against us. I can prove that. At this time, Blood Princess took the initiative to speak up for Jiang Fei. Oh! Xie Tianqin was stunned. It was rare for humans to not discriminate against beasts. You can go to Qinxing and ask around. There are many friends of mine in the Greenwood Forest. Moreover, Hu Jinghua from the Myriad Beasts Mountain also knows about it. Jiang Fei quickly found a witness for himself. Otherwise, Xie Tiangxin's anger would not be easy to bear. You know what Jinghua? Xie Tianqin was stunned. Of course. Jiang Fei immediately nodded. I heard that that kid betrothed his daughter to a human. Could it be you? Xie Tiangxin's eyes suddenly lit up. This, this might be a little misunderstanding. Jiang Fei said awkwardly. Hmm? Could it be that you have abandoned that girl? Xie Tiangxin's face fell. No. No. Jiang Fei suddenly felt a pressure that was as strong as a mountain. His forehead broke out in sweat. Let me tell you. If you dare to abandon our beast girl, not only will I not agree to everything that you have brought up today, but you will also not be able to walk out of my Xia family alive, Xia Tianqin said with a cold expression. Sometimes, one would be so unlucky that one would have to swallow a mouthful of cold water. Jiang Fei was like that today. Xia Tianqin had once been abandoned when she was young. Moreover, the person who had abandoned her was a human cultivator. Therefore, she hated humans to the bone. Jiang Fei could be considered to have taken the blame today. However, Looking at Xie Tiangxin's burning anger, Jiang Fei knew that if he continued to explain, he would have to open the tenth dimension to escape. Then, his trip to the Xie family would have been in vain. F asterisk CK, if I had known earlier, I would have brought Hu Qingchen along. Jiang Fei was secretly regretting it. However, there was no such thing as selling regret medicine in this world. Grandma Xie, please calm down first. I did not abandon Qing Chung. She is now in my territory. Jiang Fei could only admit defeat. That's more like it. Oh right. You actually have a territory. Which planet are you on? Xia Tiangxin's expression eased up a little. On Skoda planet. Jiang Fei said honestly. It was impossible to lie to such a super powerhouse. Any slight spiritual fluctuation would be clearly sensed by them. Skoda planet? Where is this? Xia Tianqin was stunned. Although she had lived for thousands of years. She still knew nothing about the things outside the five directions. Outside the five directions, 
Jiang Fei said. Outside the five directions? Are you an outsider? Xiezin frowned. She looked straight into Jiang Fei's eyes and asked. You can say yes, but you can also say no. Jiang Fei replied. What do you mean? Xie Tianxin asked. I am indeed from the outer realm. However, the planet I was born on has the same origin as the five directions. Back then, someone left the five directions and left the seed of civilization on the planet where I live. Jiang Fei replied. Chapter 1865 Chapter 1863 Requirements to Obtain the Martial Arts Technique So, the legend is true. Xiezin nodded thoughtfully. She did not doubt Jiang Fei's words. After all, with her current strength, she could easily tell when someone was lying. Then, why did you come to the five directions of heaven and earth? Xia Tianxin asked. I came to the five directions of heaven and earth for a lot of things. For example, although our martial arts civilization came from the five directions of heaven and earth, it was not completely preserved. By now, more than half of it has been lost. Therefore, one of the reasons why I came to the five directions of heaven and earth was to learn the complete martial arts technique. Jiang Fei said honestly. Martial arts? What kind of constitution do you have? Xia Tianxin asked. All of my constitution, Jiang Fei said. Nonsense! How can there be a person with all of my constitution? Xia Tianxin's face fell. From her point of view, Jiang Fei was definitely making things up. Senior, look, Jiang Fei said. He knew that it was useless to explain. Only facts spoke louder than words. Therefore, he immediately activated his origin power and allowed the spiritual energy of the five attributes to change freely in his body. This is impossible. How can there be such a person with such a physique? Xie Tianxin, who initially did not believe it, stood up from her chair in shock when she saw Jiang Fei's full attributes. Senior, what I said is not false. Right. Jiang Fei said with a slightly smug tone. Good. 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 Such a rare genius. Xie Tianxin had to admit that Jiang Fei's talent was unparalleled. Thank you for your praise. Senior, Jiang Fei smiled. Then, you came to the Xia family for a metal type cultivation technique. Right. Xia Tianxin asked. I had the intention to. However, I will not take the Xia family's cultivation technique for free. If Senior agrees, I am willing to exchange other treasures for it. Jiang Fei said. He! Treasure! What treasure can you have? Xia Tianxin was not bothered by it. The Xia family had monopolized the trade between humans and beasts for thousands of years. The wealth they had accumulated was unimaginable. What kind of treasure did the Xia family not have? How could she be interested in Jiang Fei's junk? Hmm. Jiang Fei thought for a moment. Although he had a lot of treasures in his hands, there were not many that Xie Tianxin was interested in. Moreover, he definitely could not give away the nine revolving astrolabe among them. Then, the only things left were the two decagonal clear weapons. Jiang Fei had obtained the Crimson Flame Sex Vulcan's Tooth and the Green Wycliffe's Blood Brambles from the players. Previously, these two decagonal clear weapons were used to hurt people, although they were very powerful. However, Jiang Fei did not use them very often. If he could use one of them to exchange for a top-tier metal-type cultivation method, it would not be a problem for Jiang Fei to gather a set of cultivation methods. I wonder if Senior is interested in this thing. Jiang Fei took out the Wycliffe's Blood Thorn. Ten Directions Clear Artifact? I did not expect you to be so capable. You actually managed to obtain such a treasure not long after coming to the Five Directions world. Xie Tianxin recognized the treasure at a glance. Then, what do you think? Senior? Jiang Fei looked at Xie Tianxin's expression and immediately felt that there was a way. Hee hee. But this thing is useless to me. Xie Tianxin waved her hand. It was not that she did not like the Ten Directional Clear Artifact. But it was because the Five Elements countered each other. The Bloodthorn was a wood-type treasure, and Xie Tianxin was a metal-type master. Once her spiritual power was injected into the Bloodthorn, the ten-directional clear artifact would definitely be destroyed, although it could deal a terrifying blow at that time. However, a legendary treasure had become a one-time use item. No matter what, it was a little wasteful. This, Jiang Fei was a little troubled. He did not want people to know that he had two ten-sided clear artifacts. Moreover, it would be the same even if it was the tooth of the fire god, because fire was the enemy of metal. This treasure was not suitable for the Xia family to use. All right, kid, it's not impossible for me to give you the Xia family's cultivation technique. You just have to promise me one thing, said Xia Tianxin. What is it? Jiang Fei asked. This is very simple for you. 
You just have to marry the lady of our ferocious beast clan openly. Xiezin laughed. Age? Jiang Fei was stunned. He had never thought that Xie Tianxin would make such a request. This request was not beneficial to the Xie family at all. Actually, Jiang Fei did not know that Xie Tianxin had made such a request because Jiang Fei had shown his talent in all attributes. People with such a physique were like what Xie Tianxin had said. It was a rare occurrence. If the human race had such a talent, it would be a potential threat to the entire ferocious beast race. Although Jiang Fei had already told Xie Tianxin about the world outside the five directions, Xie Tianxin had lived in this closed environment for thousands of years. Therefore, her thoughts were still limited here. Therefore, she felt that a genius like Jiang Fei could not be monopolized by the humans. However, Jiang Fei's background had already determined his identity as a human. What could he do if he did not want the humans to monopolize him? That was to find him a fierce beast wife. Moreover, Jiang Fei happened to have Hui Qin Cheng by his side. Therefore, Xie Tianxin had this idea. What? Do you think that the girls from our fierce beast race are not good enough for you? Xie Tianxin saw that Jiang Fei was hesitating and her face fell immediately. Moreover, that overwhelming pressure had also appeared. F asterisk CK! Why is there always someone forcing me to get married? Jiang Fei felt a headache coming on. There were so many girls in his family, but none of them had any status. If Wei Chun caught up with them, Bella and the others would explode? It's not. It's not. About this matter. The main thing is to let my parents make the decision. Jiang Fei originally intended to use his parents' name to shirk the responsibility. However, as soon as he said it, he regretted it. His parents were both ordinary people. Why would they drag them into this mess? This is easy. Go back and fetch your parents. We can just sit down and talk about it. As expected, Xie Tian said matter-of-factly. Senior, to tell you the truth, Qin Chung is not the only girl beside me. On their side, Jiang Fei could only tell the truth helplessly. What's the big deal? Isn't it normal for a man to have three wives and four concubines? Why don't we call all of them here and do it together? Although Xie Tianxin had been abandoned before, she hated people who were ungrateful. However, living in the five directions of the world, and the ferocious beasts were strong enough to dominate many of their spouses. In her opinion, it was not a big deal for a man to have three wives and four concubines. As long as Jiang Fei did not disappoint these girls, everything would be fine. Ah? Jiang Fei really had not thought about a group wedding. Moreover, he was the only groom. Captain, I think this is really an opportunity. With this god making the decision, it will be easier for the girls to accept it. Moreover, they have been with you for so long. They have been birthdays and deaths all day long. It's time for you to give them a status. 0541 interrupted. This artifact spirit is right. 0541's words naturally could not hide from the stronger Siezin. Chapter 1866, Chapter 1864, Abnormal 0541. This. All right. Jiang Fei hesitated for a moment before making up his mind. It was indeed time for him to give these girls an explanation. After making up his mind, Jiang Fei did not reject Xie Tiangxin's request so much. Therefore, he said to Xie Zen, Senior, I agree to your request. All right. Then, you can find a time to bring the girls over. When the wedding day comes, I will hand over the cultivation technique to you. Xie Tianxin was also a person who would not give up until he saw the rabbit. If Jiang Fei wanted to get the cultivation technique now, there was no way he could do it. Uh, I see. Although Jiang Fei was slightly disappointed. Since he had made a decision, he would not go back on his word. Therefore, it did not matter if he took the Xia family's cultivation technique earlier or later. After this topic was over, Jiang Fei remembered the matter of recruiting strong men for him. Therefore, he asked Xia as tentatively, Senior, what do you think about the outside world? Nothing much, Xia Tianxin said calmly. Ferocious beasts were different from humans. They did not have such strong desires. As long as their territory was sufficient to survive, they did not like to expand their forces. Age? Jiang Fei did not expect such a situation. When he told the human forces about the world outside the five directions, these people were filled with curiosity and yearning. The world outside was broader and had more opportunities. However, the ferocious beasts clearly did not think that way. The instincts of the beasts told them that the unknown meant that the world was full of danger. Moreover, their territory was enough for the survival and continuation of the race. Therefore, they naturally did not want to go out and take risks. TSK Tisk. Jiang Fei was a little embarrassed. Originally, 
He had expected the Ferocious Beasts to be a new force. After all, the Ferocious Beasts were actually slightly stronger than humans. Moreover, they had a strict hierarchy system. They were very obedient. With a little training, they would definitely be the best army. However, now, it seemed that Jiang Fei did not need to go to the Mountain of Beasts at all. The Ferocious Beasts had almost the same thoughts. They were not interested in the outside world. Moreover, that place was filled with unknown dangers. Therefore, these guys would definitely not leave the Myriad Beasts Mountain. Unless they could not stay here anymore. Hmm? Jiang Fei's heart skipped a beat. If the Five Directions world could not stay here anymore, would the Ferocious Beasts follow him and leave? Moreover, he could still become the leader of the Ferocious Beasts as the savior. Jiang Fei had many ways to make the Ferocious Beasts unable to stay in the Five Directions world. For example, he could destroy this place. With the Nine Rotating Astrolabe, Jiang Fei could easily travel between the Five Directions and the outside world. Therefore, it was not difficult for him to get a bunch of nuclear bombs or start destroying bombs. When the time came, he would only need to detonate a planet. Then, everyone in the five directions would be in danger. However, although this method was feasible, it would not be able to pass the test that Jiang Fei had in mind. Although the population density of the five directions was far less than that of the outside world, there were still tens of millions of people on a single planet. With the addition of other living things, Hundreds of millions of living things would be reduced to ashes with a single thought from Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei was not one of those players who were inhumane. Therefore, he could not commit such a massacre. Therefore, he could only think of other ways to make the ferocious beasts give up this idea of living in a corner. Let him explore the outer universe. For a moment, Jiang Fei could not think of any other way. Therefore, after chatting with Xie Tianqin for a while, he could only stay at the Xie family for a while. Although Xie Tianqin had the intention of forcing Jiang Fei to marry her, she did not force Jiang Fei too much. Usually, when Jiang Fei was willing to look for her, she would chat with Jiang Fei for a while. If Jiang Fei did not come, she would be happy to chat with her junior sister, Blood Princess. Two days passed in the blink of an eye. However, Jiang Fei was still at his wit's end. Captain, if you really can't think of a way, we might as well go back first. 0541 advised Jiang Fei. Go back? Jiang Fei was stunned. Yes. When we go back, we can ask for everyone's opinion. After all, there's strength in numbers. We might be able to get along well with each other. 0541 said with a smile. Although that's true, I still feel that you have a conspiracy. Jiang Fei said as he pursed his lips. What conspiracy could I possibly have? I'm doing this for the sake of Captain. I don't want you to waste your time here every day. 0541 said. TSK, the five directions of heaven and earth have a 12 times time flow deficit compared to the outside world. So what if I stay here for a few days? It's only a few hours outside. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes at 0541 and said, Hee hee, a few hours is still time. 0541 said with a cheeky smile, I think you want me to bring the girls in to get married as soon as possible. Jiang Fei said unhappily, Hee hee, 0541 laughed dryly. It was a tacit agreement. I say, why do you always care about my personal matters? Jiang Fei frowned and said, Hee hee, as your support system, I have to worry about everything about you. You are not young anymore. Logically speaking, you should have an heir. However, you are still a little virgin. Don't tell me you have a problem with that? 0541 said in a strange tone. Jiang Fei was so angry that smoke was coming out of his nose. F asterisk CKU, you're the one with the problem. Your whole family is the problem. Jiang Fei was furious when he heard that. Any man would not be able to tolerate such a question. Then why do you keep pushing things back? 0541 asked. Well, I'm still young. I'm not even 20 years old yet. Am I? Jiang Fei said guiltily. Hee hee. Captain, don't make excuses. If we were to calculate according to Earth's time, you are indeed not 20 years old. However, the problem is how long you have been practicing in the time room. I'm afraid that you have already experienced more than 40 years. Right. 0541 exposed Jiang Fei's lie with disdain. This. Jiang Fei was rendered speechless by 0541. Captain, I think you're a coward. 0541 said disdainfully. Although Jiang Fei spent all his time with a group of girls. When it came down to it, he did not dare to go any further. 0541. Something is wrong with you. Tell me. What are you planning? Suddenly. 
Jiang Fei came to a realization. Why did 0541 start to rush him for no reason? Logically speaking, his mother should be worried about these things first. This. Um. Am I not thinking for you? 0541 suddenly became hesitant. To be honest, don't force me to use my authority as the captain to ask you. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. He did not believe 0541 at all. Chapter 1867 Chapter 1865 0541's wish finally came true. Well, Captain, you should at least have a best man for your wedding. Well, I... 0541 said a little embarrassedly. It was obvious that he wanted to volunteer himself. You want to be the best man? But you don't even have a body. Oh, I understand. Jiang Fei said halfway before he understood 0541's intention. This kid was tired of staying in the ring space. He wanted to have an independent body to walk freely. Speaking of which, Jiang Fei had long wanted to give 0541 a body. He had even made preparations when he was in Qinxing. At that time, the reason why he had gone through so much trouble to erase the bloodthirsty demonic vines Wan Li's consciousness without harming his physical body was to leave a good carrier for 0541. However, after that, Jiang Fei had been busy with other things. Moreover, 0541 could also help him closely in the spatial ring. Therefore, this matter had been delayed. Now that 0541 had taken the initiative to bring it up, Jiang Fei did not want to disappoint him. He might as well give him a body so that he could become a real person. Speaking of which, 0541's help to Jiang Fei was already very limited. At most, he could only do some menial work. Unlike before, Jiang Fei would not be able to live without him. Therefore, Jiang Fei was very supportive of 0541's request. Jiang Fei was very supportive. Hmm. I will help you descend into Wan Li's body tonight. Jiang Fei said to 0541. Captain, other than that, I have a small request. 0541 was even more embarrassed when he said this. Say it. If you have something to say, just say it together. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes and said. Erm. Captain, could you be merciful and give Lux a body as well? 0541 stammered. His voice was so soft that it was almost as soft as a mosquito. The asterisk a minute. You brat. You keep telling me that I already have a son. I think you're the one who's trying to have a baby. Right. Jiang Fei was annoyed by 0541. Hee hee. I've never experienced it before. I'm curious. Curious. 0541 laughed dryly. Then, he did not forget to stab Jiang Fei. Captain, aren't you curious? I'm not curious, Jiang Fei said angrily. Even if he was curious, he could not lower his status in front of 0541. Oh, Captain, I heard that the feeling of actual combat and practice are completely different. At this moment, 0541 was completely like an instigator. Cut the crap. I will help you solve this problem. However, this problem ends here, Jiang Fei said angrily. After 0541 said that, it would be nonsense for him to say that he did not have any thoughts at all. After all, he was a hot-blooded young man. Although he was quite timid in his heart, he still had some instinctive impulses when it came to these things. Yes, Captain! 0541 was in a great mood after receiving Jiang Fei's promise. That night, Jiang Fei returned to his room. After that, he started to work alone. Because Blood Mistress had been living with Xie Tianxin for the past few days, Jiang Fei lived alone in a small courtyard. No one disturbed him. Boom! A huge cultivation chamber was released from the spatial ring. Open the cultivation chamber. Jiang Fei instructed 0541. Okay! 0541 immediately began to carry out the instructions. After all, 0541 was creating a body for him. So 0541 worked even harder. Swish! After a wave of spatial fluctuations, Jiang Fei released Wan Li's body from the tenth dimension. Bang! After Wan Li's body entered the cultivation cabin, the cabin door closed. Then, 0541 began to inject nutrient solution into the cultivation cabin. Very soon, Wan Li's body was completely immersed in the dark green nutrient solution. All right. The preparatory steps have been completed. 0541. Are you ready? After all, after becoming a human, the risks you will face will greatly increase. This means that you will die because of the death of your body. Jiang Fei said to 0541 before the arrival ceremony began. Captain, I have thought it through. 0541 nodded. He had already made preparations beforehand. He knew that once he had a body, 
he would face the threat of death. Moreover, the process of becoming a human was irreversible. In other words, once 0541 became a human, it would be impossible for him to become a support program again. Then, he'll begin, Jian Fei said. Okay, 0541 nodded. Yo, little guy, what are you doing? At that moment, Xie Tianxin and Blood Mistress suddenly appeared in the small courtyard where Jiang Fei was staying. Seniors, you're here. Jiang Fei nodded to the two of them. Because when he took out Wan Li's body, there would inevitably be spatial fluctuations. So it was within Jiang Fei's expectations that Xie Tianxin would appear. Moreover, Jiang Fei was not only interested in Xie Tianxin and Blood Mistress observing the process of him giving 0541 a new life. On the contrary, it was beneficial to Jiang Fei. He had turned an artifact spirit into a living person out of thin air. This was clearly more proof of Jiang Fei's identity as a godly doctor. It also made Blood Mistress more confident in him. What are you doing? Xie Tianxin asked curiously. Senior, just watch. He'll perform a magic trick for you. Jiang Fei deliberately kept her in suspense. Sure. Xie Tianxin's curiosity was indeed aroused. Then, he'll have to trouble the two of you to protect me. Jiang Fei's ability to climb smoothly was also top-notch. Xie Tianxin and Blood Mistress did not stand aside for nothing. They had to protect Jiang Fei. This way, Jiang Fei was not afraid of being disturbed by others. After everything was ready, 0541's descent ceremony was about to begin. Prepare the consciousness body seal. This time, Jiang Fei had to personally control the instrument. After all, 0541 was the main body of the descent this time. Fortunately, 0541 was only a high-level intelligent program. Therefore, the consciousness body seal was very smooth. Prepare to start infusing. Infusing. Fusing. Warning! There is a slight repelling reaction. When he saw the red light on the cultivation pod begin to flash, Jiang Fei immediately activated his spiritual power. It was still to stabilize 0541's consciousness body. Then, he would help 0541 to fuse. With his strong spiritual power. And for such a long time, Jiang Fei's experience in using spiritual power quickly helped 0541 to stabilize. Fusion progress 75%, 80%, 85%, 90%, 99%, 100%. Fusion complete. Consciousness decompressing. Channeling complete. Initiating activation procedure. 0541's descent ceremony was carried out in an orderly manner, as he had already resurrected Bella and the other girls. Jiang Fei was very familiar with these things. Although 0541 used a higher level carrier, however, the rejection reaction was not too strong. After Jiang Fei's help, 0541 quickly completed the fusion with the new body. Wake up! 0541! When Jiang Fei saw that the activation procedure had been activated, he silently chanted in his heart. Bang! The cultivation cabin opened. Dark green nutrient fluid poured out, and a naked man stood in the cultivation cabin. It was obvious that he had not fully adapted to his new body yet. Chapter 1868 Chapter 1867 Possession Divine Skill Swoosh! The naked man opened his eyes and looked around blankly. It was obvious that he had not adapted to the new way of living. Interesting! Xie Tianxin and Blood Concubine were watching with great interest. Even though 0541 was naked, these two female heroes had lived for thousands of years and had seen many things before. They would definitely not be shy because of the strange thing on 0541's body. This. Cough cough. Ah. Oh. 0541. Who had never really had a body. Could not control his vocal cords. Therefore. When he spoke. He sounded very strange. It's okay. Don't worry. Just take your time. Jiang Fei smiled and said. Okay. 0541 nodded. It was the first time that he had seen the world through his own eyes. It was also the first time that he had heard Jiang Fei's voice from his ears. Everything felt so wonderful. Does this mean that I have a real life and a life? 0541 cried out in his heart. The muscles on his face twitched slightly. On one hand, he was still unable to control his own muscles perfectly. On the other hand, he was also excited. After about an hour, 0541 had finally completely taken control of his new body. Captain, thank you. 0541 slowly walked in front of Jiang Fei and thanked Jiang Fei sincerely. Hee hee. Who are we? Jiang Fei patted 0541's shoulder. Captain, since I have become a real person, 
Calling me 0541 is too ugly. I want a new name. 0541 said. That's true. A living person called 0541 is not very good. What should you call yourself? Jiang Fei smacked his lips. He was having a headache about naming. Captain, I've already thought about it. I want to have the same surname as you. Moreover, in order to show my loyalty, I will be called Jiang Zhong from now on. 0541 said. Jiang Zhong? Why don't you call yourself Jiang the Door God? Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. It was obvious that he had remembered the story from the water margin. Huh? 0541 was stunned. Although he had stored a lot of information, it clearly did not include the story of the water margin. Forget it. If you don't know, forget it. Jiang Fei smiled and waved his hand. He had left Earth for a long time. It was difficult to resonate with the jokes on Earth anymore. Captain, I will be called Jiang Zhong from now on. 0541 said happily. Okay. Jiang Fei nodded. It could be considered that he had approved 0541's new name. Erm. Um, Captain, could you bring me a row? Jiang Zhong was happy to have received the new name. He felt a chill on his body. When he looked down, he felt extremely awkward. Now, he was no longer the support program of 0541. Naturally, he had lost control of the ring space. Therefore, if he wanted to take anything from the ring, he would have to ask Jiang Fei for it. He, I'm so happy that I'm here. I forgot that you're still naked. Jiang Fei smiled and quickly took out a set of clothes and handed it to Jiang Zhong. After Jiang Zhong took the clothes, he quickly put them on. As a program, he did not have the concept of being shy. However, after becoming an independent person, the feeling of being naked really made him feel awkward. Little guy, are we done here? Xie Tianqin and Blood Mistress saw that Jiang Zhong had put on his clothes and walked over. Yes, we're done. Jiang Fei smiled. What kind of trick is this? Xie Tianqin asked curiously. She saw Jiang Fei fiddling around for a long time. Then, an iron cabinet suddenly opened up and a lot of disgusting. Sticky green water leaked out. Then, this guy walked out naked. However, Xie Tianqin was still confused about the trick that Jiang Fei mentioned. Senior, can you sense this guy and see if there is anything special about him? Jiang Fei smiled and said to Xie Tianqin. Oh. After hearing Jiang Fei's words, Xie Tianqin was also interested. She immediately began to look at Jiang Zhong carefully. That gaze that seemed to be able to see through people scared Jiang Zhong so much that his hair stood on end. Bloodthirsty demonic vine? Interesting. This kind of plant-type fierce beast is very rare. With just a glance, Xie Zhen could see the nature of Jiang Zhong's physical body. Hmm? This soul fluctuation is very strange. I seem to have seen it somewhere before. After a moment, Xie Zhen frowned. That's not right. This guy is the artifact spirit that you talked to earlier. Xie Tianqin suddenly said with her eyes wide open. That's right. Senior, you have a good eye. Jiang Fei smiled smugly. That was exactly what he wanted. But, 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 Xie Tianqin said a few butts in a row. However, she could not say anything. At that moment, she was so shocked that she could not speak, turning an item spirit into a living ferocious beast. If such a thing had not appeared in front of Xie Tianqin, she would have thought that the person had gone mad. Although there was a concept of possession in the five directions heaven and earth, the body and primordial spirit after possession were not compatible. Although it could revive the primordial spirit that had lost its body, it was just a temporary vessel. After a long time, the two would reject each other. At that time, the primordial spirit would have to find a new body to possess. Moreover, Xie Tianqin had sensed 0541 before. She knew that 0541 was a tool spirit. After all, there was a fundamental difference between a tool spirit and a primordial spirit. A tool spirit was more similar to a soul and was much weaker than a primordial spirit. Therefore, it was even more impossible for him to possess someone else. However, at this moment, Jiang Zhong's soul had not only completed the possession, but his soul and physical body had also perfectly fused together. It was as if they were one. Such a possession method. Xie Tianqin had never even heard of it. What is going on? Blood Mistress could not hold it in anymore. At this moment, her eyes were filled with confusion and curiosity. This is the technology from the outside world. The soul and the body can be fused at will. It is similar to possession. But it is not, said Jiang Fei. Soul? Are you saying that even if an ordinary person had not practiced cultivation, as long as their soul was preserved when they died, 
They can possess the body of a powerhouse? Xie Tianxin asked. Theoretically, yes. However, the body of a powerhouse is more troublesome. One needs to erase their consciousness in advance. Jiang Fei said. Can you erase the consciousness of a powerhouse? Xie Tianxin asked again. Yes, I can. However, it depends on how powerful the powerhouse is. Jiang Fei shrugged and said. What about a true immortal? Xie Tianxin asked. Theoretically, yes. However, the problem is that I can't beat him. Unless he doesn't resist. I can't do anything. As Jiang Fei said this, his heart suddenly moved. Could it be that? All right. Xiezin nodded and turned to leave. Eh? What's the situation? Jiang Fei was a little dumbfounded. He had thought that Xie Tianxin would have something to ask of him. Seeing your sister has a grandson. Although he is extremely intelligent, his meridians are naturally crippled. Initially, Senior Sister had already given up and wanted him to live a normal life. But now, you have given her new hope. Most importantly, because that kid is unable to cultivate. His lifespan is about to end. The remaining blood mistress explained to Jiang Fei. Chapter 1869 Chapter 1867 Conspiracy I see. Jiang Fei nodded. If Senior Sister asked you to possess her grandson, would you help her? Blood Mistress suddenly asked. About that. Jiang Fei hesitated for a moment and said, It's not difficult to possess him. The key is to have a strong physical body. You don't have to worry about that. Senior sister will take care of it, said Blood Mistress. Oh, right. If your senior sister really wants me to help her grandson to possess someone else, there is one thing that she must remember. The body that she has found must not suffer too much damage, said Jiang Fei. Okay, I will pass the message to her. Blood Mistress nodded. Also, if your senior sister wants her grandson to practice the Xie family's martial arts, then it would be best for her to find a body with the same attributes. Jiang Fei added. I understand. Blood Mistress nodded again. When she saw that Jiang Fei had nothing else to say, she turned around and left. Captain, are you really going to help her? Jiang Zong asked. Yes, that's right. It's just a little energy consumption anyway. If I can make Xie Tianxin owe me a favor, this deal is worth it. Jiang Fei said with a smile. After all, Xie Tianqin was the strongest intelligent life form he had ever seen. There was no harm in befriending such a person. That's true. Jiang Zhong nodded. If you have time, practice the set of martial arts that I passed on to you. Jiang Fei said as he looked at Jiang Zhong. Previously, when he was channeling his consciousness, he had also passed on the wood attribute martial arts from the Greenwood Cliff. As Jiang Zhong's body was derived from the bloodthirsty demonic vine, the would attribute martial arts were most suitable for him. I will. Captain. Rest assured. I will not disappoint you. Jiang Zhong nodded. Although his body had not reached the tribulation stage, he was not far from it. His combat strength was close to 19 million. As long as he practiced well, he would definitely reach the tribulation stage. Hmm. Jiang Fei smiled. If Jiang Zhong really grew up, it would be a great help to him. Although Jiang Fei had recruited a large number of experts from the five directions, especially the Wang and Xiao families, they had already agreed to Jiang Fei. Once they left the five directions, their people would follow Jiang Fei's orders. However, these people were not Jiang Fei's direct descendants after all. Although they were powerful, Jiang Fei would definitely not be completely at ease with them. However, Jiang Zhong was different. When Jiang Fei was still weak, he had followed Jiang Fei as 0541. He could be said to be Jiang Fei's most loyal confidant. If he also had powerful strength, then Jiang Fei could completely leave many things to him to handle. On one side, Jiang Fei was left to practice martial arts with Jiang Zhong. On the other side, Blood Mistress had already come to see a Taiyang's inside. Senior sister, you want Jiang Fei to help your seventh brother extend his life. Right? Blood Mistress asked. Yes, seventh brother is a smart and intelligent child. He is the one who controls many things in the Xie family. Unfortunately, this child is born with crippled meridians. His lifespan is limited because he is unable to train. I had already given up. I did not expect this little guy to give me hope again, Xie Tianqin said with a smile. If you really want old Seven to possess you, Jiang Fei asked me to give you a message, said the blood concubine. What did he say? Xie Tianqin thought that Jiang Fei was asking for a sky-high price. He asked you to look for the metal attribute when you search for a physical body. This way, 
it would be easier for Old Seven to learn the Sia family's martial arts after successfully possessing a physical body. Secondly, after he asks you to find a physical body, you just need to subdue him. Do not destroy the physical body. The blood concubine told Sia Tianxin the truth. That's it? Sia Tianxin asked. That's it. Blood mistress nodded. This kid is different from ordinary humans. He actually did not take the opportunity to threaten me. Sia Tianxin said in surprise. As the Xia family was the hub of the trade between humans and ferocious beasts. She had seen too many human profiteers. Which one of those guys was not mercenary? Which one of them was not greedy? Therefore, when Xia Tianxin heard that Jiang Fei did not mention any conditions, she was very surprised. Actually, Xia Tianxin did not know that Jiang Fei was just playing hard to get. He knew that a big shot like Xia Tianxin would not be swayed by force. If he were to use his help as a condition to blackmail Xia Zin, regardless of whether he succeeded or not. It would leave a bad impression on this god. At most, he would only be able to get some immediate benefits. He might even be able to earn money but not spend it. However, if he gave up on the immediate benefits to gain Xia Tianxin's favor, or even make her owe him a favor, Jiang Fei would be able to ask Xia Tianxin for help in the future. When that time came, it might even be possible for the Xia family to send troops to help him fight in the outside world. Therefore, in the end, Jiang Fei wanted to have a good relationship with the Xia family. Not the slightest bit of immediate benefits. Xia Tianxin was not completely unaware of Jiang Fei's intentions. However, Jiang Fei was playing a dirty trick. He was not afraid of her knowing that if she knew that Jiang Fei wanted to be on good terms with her, would she be able to let go of her grandson and not save him? Since Jiang Fei wanted to save her grandson and did not want any benefits, how could she not owe him a favor? If she owed him a favor, some people could shamelessly not return it. They could even repay kindness with enmity. However, the key was that Xie Tianqin was not that kind of person. However, if Xie Tianqin was really the kind of person who shamelessly took advantage of others, or even repaid a debt of gratitude with enmity, Jiang Fei would not have made any connections with her. He would have already paid her the price and saved her life. Therefore, an open plan was invincible. Even if you knew that, you still had to think about the good of others. Because at this moment, Jiang Fei really did not have any desires. He would help you save her for no reason. Therefore, as long as he did not make any requests. Then, Xie Tianqin had to think about Jiang Fei's good. She had to owe him a favor. Sai! No matter what, Old Seven still has to be saved, Xie Zin sighed and said. Although her seventh grandson was just an ordinary person with almost no strength, he was extremely intelligent. With him in the Xie family, the Xie family rarely suffered losses especially when dealing with human profiteers. Then, Senior Marshal's sister, do you have a suitable candidate? Blood Concubine asked. Yes, but you have to do me a favor, Xie Tianqin said. Senior Marshal's sister, tell me, Blood Concubine said expressionlessly. Help me kidnap someone. That guy isn't weak. Although it's not difficult for me to defeat him. It's not easy to capture him alive without any injuries, Xie Tianqin said. Senior Apprentice sister, you want to kidnap a true immortal? Blood Concubine asked. That's right. Since Seventh Brother wants to possess him, then let's give him a good body. The Xie family has been indebted to him all these years. Giving him a good body can be considered as compensation, Xie Tianqin said. All right. Senior Apprentice Sister, you have the final say. Blood Concubine didn't care. The fierce beasts were like this. They didn't have any concept of good or evil. Nor did they have any morals or etiquette. They were truly helping their relatives but not reasoning with them. As long as they could save their relatives. Killing a few outsiders was nothing? Chapter 1870 Chapter 1868 Star Encounter Jiang Fei did not have to worry about Xie Tianqin and Blood Mistress capturing metal-type powerhouses. For the next few days, he had been helping Jiang Zhong with his adaptation training. Other than that, he had been guiding Jiang Zhong in his wood-type cultivation. In the blink of an eye, about a week had passed. There was still no news from Xie Tianqin. Jiang Fei had also asked the Xie family about it. However, the Xie family only said that their ancestor had gone out to do something. They could not tell where he had gone. Jiang Fei had no choice but to leave Jiang Zhong and the Xie family to cultivate. After all, the density of the spiritual energy in the five directions was much denser than in the outside universe. Jiang Fei had activated the nine rotating astrolabe once again. He returned to the main universe from the five directions. Swoosh! A white light flashed. Jiang Fei appeared again on the empty planet. Interesting. Jiang Fei nodded to himself. 
when he teleported through the nine rotating astrolabe, he appeared at the location of the five directions randomly. However, the location that he appeared in the main universe was where he had left. 0541. Bring out the shuttle. After Jiang Fei left the cave that he had dug, he subconsciously instructed 0541. Unfortunately, 0541 had already become Jiang Zhong. Naturally, he could not be his personal assistant anymore. Sigh. This guy suddenly became independent. It's really inconvenient to hear. Jiang Fei smiled. Then, he took out the shuttle from the spatial ring. When 0541 was still around, Jiang Fei could do these things himself. It was just that it was more convenient for 0541 to do these things. Jiang Fei drove the shuttle to the Merchant Alliance's side of the Salhu Cloister. His fleet was still guarding the place. Although Jiang Fei had wasted a lot of time in the five directions, due to the 12 times time difference, only a few days had passed in the main universe. At this time, Amon's fleet had not encountered the Vizari army's fleet yet. A day later, Jiang Fei returned to his own fleet. At that moment, the bunch of idiot captains were still carrying out Jiang Fei's orders. The small fleet with more than 10 heavy patrol ships, as the Corps was still waiting for orders. Lord Marshal, you're finally back. Jiang Fei's return made the idiot captains feel much more at ease. After all, they did not have much ability. Therefore, when Jiang Fei left, it made them panic. It felt like they had been abandoned in this godforsaken place. Now that Jiang Fei was back, they had a backbone. Yes! Prepare a lone star for me. I still have to leave for a period of time. During this period of time, you guys continue to stay here and wait for orders. You must keep a close watch on the situation at Salhu Cloister. Jiang Fei ordered these idiot captains. Yes, sir. Although the captains did not want Jiang Fei to leave again, they were the Grand Marshal. Therefore, they had no choice but to carry out Jiang Fei's orders. Then, Grand Marshal, when will you be back? One of the captains asked. You don't need to know so much. Carry out the orders. Jiang Fei said with a straight face. He really had nothing to say to these idiotic people. Very soon, a Lone Star class unmanned reconnaissance ship was ready. Although this ship was an unmanned reconnaissance ship, the internal space could still carry people. The main reason why Jiang Fei wanted to get such a ship was because the reconnaissance ship was the fastest. It was far from being comparable to a shuttle. Moreover, the reconnaissance ship had another advantage. It was equipped with the most advanced jump engine. During interstellar travel, most of the interference factors could be ignored. Jiang Fei's purpose for this trip was to return to Skoda Star. On one hand, he wanted to inform Aurelia and the rest about the cultivators coming to the main universe. On the other hand, Jiang Fei also wanted to give the girls an explanation. He was prepared to bring the girls to the five corners of the world and give them a grand wedding. It was for this reason that Jiang Fei needed a fast and stable transportation tool. The Lone Star class unmanned reconnaissance ship was clearly more efficient than the shuttle. Very soon, the reconnaissance ship that Jiang Fei wanted was ready. After all, he was the supreme commander in name of the Universe Empire. Moreover, this small fleet was directly under his command. Therefore, Jiang Fei's orders were very effective. I might be leaving for a little longer this time. You guys continue to monitor the Sara Cloister. Jiang Fei ordered the idiotic captains before he left. Yes, Lord Marshal. The idiotic captains accepted the order. Jiang Fei drove the scout ship to Skoda Star alone. After the galactic coordinates were set, the scout ship entered auto-navigation mode. Jiang Fei directly activated the nine-turn astrolabe in the scout ship. When the nine-turn astrolabe was teleported, it would be teleported randomly in the five-sided universe. However, it would travel in and out of the outer universe. Therefore, Jiang Fei was teleported to the five-sided universe in the scout ship. When he came out, he was naturally in the scout ship. This way, it would not delay his journey at all. After all, the five-sided universe and the outer universe had a 12 times time flow deficit. Therefore, Jiang Fei could not delay too long outside. Previously, he had used more than a day to return to the fleet. If this was converted to the five-sided universe, Jiang Fei had already disappeared for more than 20 days. If he was to travel in the main universe for more than a month, wouldn't the five directions take more than a year? By then, Sia Taixin's grandson might have died. Swoosh! A white light flashed and Jiang Fei returned to the five directions. Following that, the nine rotating astrolabe turned into a stream of light and returned to his hand. This is... Jiang Fei closed his eyes and felt around. The wood attribute spiritual energy here was very dense. It was clearly in stellar star. Hee <laughs> hee. 
It's been a long time since I've come back to take a look. Jiang Fei smiled faintly. However, at this moment, Jiang Fei did not have any intention of staying in Stellar Star. He was prepared to go straight to the teleportation portal and then teleport to the town star. However, just as Jiang Fei was about to set off for the teleportation portal, a few streams of light rushed towards his position. Huh? Jiang Fei frowned. The people who came were very powerful. They were all at the Mahayana stage and above. Although the strength of the Mahayana stage seemed very ordinary in the town star. This was Stellar Star. There were far fewer experts than in the town star. Therefore, it was very rare for such a level of experts to come together. A moment later, seven or eight sword lights appeared in front of Jiang Fei. The person in the lead had also noticed Jiang Fei. Hey, that kid on the ground. Did you see a flying sword pass by just now? The young man shouted at Jiang Fei, looking down on him. He he, didn't your mother teach you? Be polite when you ask for directions. Jiang Fei smiled faintly. Kid, are you tired of living? How dare you speak to our young master like that? Before the young man could say anything, the lackey beside him became anxious. That's right. You know how to be clever and help your master. However, your eyesight is not very good, so you deserve to be unlucky. Jiang Fei still had a smile on his face. Moreover, he did not make any movements. However, the young man who had just berated Jiang Fei suddenly fell from the flying sword. Plop. The young man fell to the ground. His entire body was sunk in half. Fortunately, he was a Mahayana stage expert. Otherwise, if he had fallen from a height of more than 10 floors, he would have already become a pancake. Chapter 1871, Chapter 1869, Taking the Blame. Ouch. As Jiang Fei did not kill him. Although the kid's fall was not light, it was only a superficial injury. Therefore, although it hurt so much that he was screaming like a pig, his internal organs were not hurt. So powerful. He is actually a master who lives in seclusion. The young master was not a fool. After Jiang Fei showed off his skills, he immediately understood that the other party's strength was far greater than his own. I am Chen Luo Chung of the Iron Thread Sect. I have offended you just now. Please forgive me. Senior, after knowing how powerful Jiang Fei was, the young master immediately lowered his body and cupped his fists in front of Jiang Fei. After all, he was a member of a big family. He had received a strict upbringing since he was young. Although he was usually arrogant and domineering, he did not hesitate to show respect to the strong. Yes. Jiang Fei nodded slightly. Senior, it was my fault for not disciplining you properly just now. That's why I allowed my subordinates to be unbridled and rude. If you have any complaints, you can punish me. I hope you can allow me to save my companions. Chen Luo Cheng said. At this time, he did not forget that his little brother was suffering. Yes, he's fine. I only gave him a little punishment. Jiang Fei nodded. He did not want to make things too difficult for these people. They had no grudges with each other. It was just that these people were too arrogant. A little punishment would do. Thank you, senior. Chen Luocheng bowed to Jiang Fei again. Then, he walked to the boy who had fallen earlier. Chen Luocheng took out a pill and fed it into the man's mouth. In a moment, the man woke up. Actually, Jiang Fei did not do anything to this guy. He only used his spiritual power to knock him out temporarily. However, this guy was flying in the air on his sword. When he fainted, he naturally fell down. Therefore, the fall was not light either. Fortunately, the alchemy skills of Chen Xing were popular. Every sect had good alchemists. Therefore, after the elixir entered his stomach, the guy who had only suffered superficial injuries quickly recovered. Thank you for saving me. Young master. The man stood up and quickly bowed to Chen Luo Cheng. Why are you thanking me? Aren't you going to thank Senior for sparing your offense? At that moment, Chen Luo Cheng's back was facing Jiang Fei. Therefore, he quickly took the opportunity to wink at the kid. Oh! Oh! After the kid received Chen Luo Cheng's signal, he immediately turned around and knelt down to Jiang Fei with a plop sound. Please forgive me. Senior! Since the man was good at flattery, he naturally had no shame. Therefore, he knelt down and cried as he pleased. All right, you can get up. Jiang Fei waved his hand. He could not be bothered to argue with Chen Luocheng. Naturally, he would not be angry at such a despicable person. Thank you. Senior. Thank you. Senior. After kowtowing to Jiang Fei a few times, the person scrambled to his feet and stood behind Chen Luocheng. 
You guys are making such a big fuss. Could it be that you are chasing someone? Jiang Fei asked Chen Luocheng curiously. Yes. Senior. We are chasing a thief. Chen Luocheng answered honestly. He had been educated since he was young. He knew that he must not lie in front of a super powerhouse. Otherwise, he would definitely be seen through. Thief? Jiang Fei was stunned. He thought that it was a pursuit between enemies of the sect. Yes. Chen Luocheng replied. Did he steal any important treasures of your Iron Thread sect? Jiang Fei asked curiously. No. Chen Luocheng suddenly revealed an awkward expression as he said this. Since it's not an important treasure, why did you make such a big fuss? Jiang Fei became even more curious. This. It's because that person was a pervert and stole my sister's clothes. Chen Luocheng did not dare to lie. So after a long while, he still answered truthfully. Jiang Fei almost spat out. He had never expected such an answer. Then, do you know what that person looked like? Jiang Fei asked. I didn't see. Chen Luocheng shook his head. What about his aura? Jiang Fei asked again. I don't know either. Chen Luocheng continued to shake his head. If you don't know anything, who are you chasing? Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. We knew that he ran this way. So we chased him all the way here. In the end, we ran into you. Senior. As he said this, Chen Luocheng and the others suddenly looked at Jiang Fei awkwardly. Bullsh asterisk T. Do you think that in that pervert? Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. I don't dare. Although Chen Luocheng said that, his eyes were clearly suspicious of Jiang Fei. That was because they had chased him all the way here. They did not see anyone else at all. Nor did they see the shadow of that pervert. In the end, they ran into Jiang Fei here. After all, this was a poor rural area. There was nothing much here. Yet, such a powerful person appeared out of nowhere. Wasn't this too much of a coincidence? F asterisk CK. I just tore through space and teleported here. Okay. Jiang Fei rolled his eyes. He would not take the blame for this. Of course. I would not dare to doubt you. Chen Lucheng's expression was extremely aggrieved. It was obvious that he had found the pervert. But he could not do anything about it. Use your brain. If I were that pervert, why would I steal clothes? I would just take your sister away. Do you think your steel wire set can stop me? Jiang Fei rolled his eyes and said. This. Chen Luocheng thought about it, and it made sense. The powerhouse in front of him was most likely a legendary true immortal. If he really took a liking to his sister, he would just wave his hand. Not to mention snatching her away. His father would pack up his sisters and send them to the mansion overnight. All right. All right. I don't have time to talk nonsense with you guys. Go ahead and do whatever you want. Jiang Fei waved his hand. He never thought that he would encounter such a bad thing. Moreover, with his character, he would not kill all these people just because of such a small matter. Therefore, he could only wave his hand and tell these people to scram because he found them annoying to look at. Yes. Senior, we will leave now. Chen Luocheng said as if he was about to be pardoned. When he was facing Jiang Fei just now, he was also on pins and needles. After all, he was facing a true immortal level powerhouse. If he were to accidentally offend the other party, the lives of these people would be lost. It might even implicate the entire Iron Lion sect. After watching Chen Luocheng and the others leave, Jiang Fei pursed his lips and said, Damn it! I'm so unlucky! I did not look at the almanac today. How did I encounter such a disgusting thing? However, after Jiang Fei said that, a wave of energy suddenly distorted around him. Buzz! A hidden assembly dissipated and a figure was revealed. This hidden assembly was exceptionally effective. Even Jiang Fei was fooled. This person was right beside him just now. He did not even notice it. Who is it? Jiang Fei shouted loudly. Age? Not all of them have left. Jiang Fei's angry shout clearly shocked the person. However, from the sound of the voice, it was a girl. Moreover, Jiang Fei had a vague sense of DJ Vu. Chapter 1872 Chapter 1870 The Feast of Immortals Who are you? Jiang Fei took a closer look. The person who walked out of the hidden enchantment was a girl. She was about 16 or 17 years old. Although her face was not beautiful, she did not look ugly either. She looked like the girl next door. Her strength was around the tribulation stage. She was definitely a dazzling star in constellation. However, what Jiang Fei paid the most attention to was not the girl's strength and appearance. Instead, it was the dress that she was holding in her hands. Because this dress was almost exactly the same as the dress that Chen Luo Cheng had described about his sister being stolen. Eh? 
handsome brother. Don't you recognize me? Just when Jiang Fei was stunned, the girl suddenly jumped in front of him. Her little face was almost touching the tip of Jiang Fei's nose. Hmm? When he heard the name handsome, a name suddenly appeared in Jiang Fei's mind Natasha. This player fan could be said to have helped him a lot. Of course, her enthusiasm towards Jiang Fei was also very hard for Jiang Fei to bear. Oh, that's right. I look a little different now. Handsome. I'm Natasha. Natasha said to Jiang Fei with a smile. Natasha? What are you doing here? Jiang Fei asked. Hee hee. I saw that this set of clothes was very nice. So I brought it over. In the end, those guys chased me relentlessly. Natasha looked as if she had been wronged. It was as if she had completely forgotten that she was a thief. You? Jiang Fei was speechless. Chen Luocheng and the others were not chasing after a set of clothes. They thought that there was a pervert. That was why they had made such a big fuss. If they knew that the person who stole the clothes was also a woman, they would not be so exaggerated. Oh, right. Natasha, didn't you leave? Why did you come back? Jiang Fei asked curiously. Humph. They did not have any fun at all. This place is more interesting, said Natasha with a pout. After the end of the Five Directions quest, most of the players had switched to Star Wars. They were frantically farming skill points and saving money to buy a battleship. However, for Natasha, flying a spaceship was not interesting at all. Therefore, she returned to the Five Directions. That's not right. After the quest ends, the players are not allowed to enter this place anymore. Right. Jiang Fei thought to himself. However, it was not appropriate for him to ask Natasha about this. Therefore, Natasha's identity became even more mysterious in Jiang Fei's heart. Oh right. Handsome. What are you doing here? Natasha asked. I'm here for some business. I'm going to the town star later. Jiang Fei said. Town star? I want to go too. I want to go too. Natasha had finally found Jiang Fei, who she admired the most. If he was willing to let Jiang Fei go so easily, it was obvious that he wanted to go with Jiang Fei. Hmm. All right. Jiang Fei thought for a moment and nodded in agreement. On one hand, Vitalin had told him before that he must be on good terms with this Natasha. Moreover, after a few incidents, Jiang Fei had also deeply experienced Natasha's mystery. Therefore, he was willing to communicate with Natasha more to find out about this girl's background. Yay! Long live! After receiving Jiang Fei's approval, Natasha was very excited. All right, let's go! Jiang Fei smiled and rode his sword. His target was the teleportation portal to the town star. Handsome, wait for me! Natasha also rode her sword. The flying sword under her feet was like a rainbow. Under the dreamy light, there were countless murderous intentions hidden. Good sword! Jiang Fei, who was proficient in the art of smithing, could not help but suck in a breath of cold air. Although Jiang Fei's shadow-bearing sword had awakened the sword spirit and devoured countless spirits, it was still nothing compared to Natasha's divine weapon. It was still nothing compared to that. This girl's consciousness and ability are very ordinary. But why are all the things in her hands full of treasures? Could she be even more rich than Aemon? Jiang Fei thought to himself. The interference scroll that Natasha used to help him was a treasure that was hard to come by among players. Coupled with the divine sword under Natasha's feet, it was not surprising that Jiang Fei had such a guess. Handsome brother, hurry up! At this time, Natasha had already run in front of Jiang Fei. Although she was only in the crossing calamity stage, her speed was slightly faster than Jiang Fei. From this, it could be seen that the divine sword under her feet was powerful. Coming! Jiang Fei suddenly accelerated and caught up with Natasha. He could only maintain the same speed as Natasha by consuming more spiritual power. After half a day, Jiang Fei and the others arrived at the teleportation portal of stars. Two people, the town star. This time, Jiang Fei was very familiar with it. Okay, two middle grade spiritual stones, said the guard who was in charge of the teleportation portal. H? Why did the price increase? Jiang Fei asked curiously. He he, young master, you may not know this, but recently, we have been caught up in the immortal feast of the town star. Therefore, there are a lot of people going to the town star. This price, although the guard did not say it explicitly, Jiang Fei could understand. After all, back when he was on Earth, the price of the train tickets for the spring festival was still going up. However, Jiang Fei was very curious about this grand banquet. What is this grand banquet? 
before Jiang Fei could speak. Natasha, who was beside him, asked, Ha ha, this must be the first time this young lady has gone on a long journey. Right. This grand banquet is really something. The guard then explained the details of the grand banquet to Jiang Fei and the others. Frankly speaking, the immortal feast was a large-scale exhibition organized by the Xia family. When the time came, they would sell the products of the ferocious beasts and purchase a large number of magical items from the human world. Then, they would sell them to the mountain of beasts. I see. Jiang Fei smiled slightly. With his relationship with the Xia family, he might even be able to find some treasures at the immortal feast. That's great. It's going to be fun. Natasha was also very excited. Although the teleportation fee had increased, Jiang Fei was not short of money. Therefore, after paying the fee, Jiang Fei and Natasha were quickly teleported to the town star. Handsome, let's go to the celestial feast. As soon as they arrived at the town star, Natasha urged, Wait a minute. Jiang Fei waved at Natasha. Then, he waved his hand and set up a barrier to block his figure and voice. Then, he took out his communicator and dialed Jiang Zhong's number. Captain, you're back? Jiang Zong, who was training in the Xia family, was very excited when he received Jiang Fei's call. Yes, I'm back. Jiang Fei nodded, although he did not spend much time in the main universe. He had spent more than 20 days in the five directions. Chapter 1873, Chapter 1871 Sacred Wuji Mountain. How's it going? Any news from the Xia family recently? Jiang Fei asked. Nothing much. The ancestors of the Xia family and blood mistress have not returned yet, Jiang Zhong said. A moment later, he added, Oh, right. The Xia family's immortal feast has begun. They seem to have invited you once, but you were not there. Okay, I got it. Jiang Fei nodded. Then, he asked, Do you know where the immortal feast is held? Oh, I heard about it from them. It's at the foot of Mount Wuji, said Jiang Zhong. Okay. I got it. Jiang Fei then asked Jiang Zhong a few more questions before hanging up. Although Jiang Fei was not a native of the five directions of heaven and earth, he had heard a lot about Mount Wuji. This was the holy mountain of the town star. It was also the place with the densest earth-type spiritual energy in the entire town star. This place was even known as the birthplace of the town star's spiritual energy. It was also because the spiritual energy here was too dense that it attracted even more powerful factions to claim it as their own. However, after thousands of years of war, everyone realized that no one had the strength to occupy this place alone. This was because once you occupied this place, all the cultivators in the entire town star would gang up and attack you. No matter how powerful a person was, he or she would not be able to go against the entire planet. The reason why these cultivators were so united was that once Mount Wuji was controlled, the spiritual energy in the entire planet would become thinner. This way, the forces that occupied Mount Wuji would feel great and their cultivation would advance by leaps and bounds. But what could the other cultivators do? Using their spiritual energy resources was undoubtedly equivalent to poking the lungs of all the cultivators in the world. Could they not fight you to the death? Therefore, after thousands of years of struggle, all the martial artists in the world had formed an unwritten rule, which was that Mount Buji was a sacred mountain. No one in forces could take it for themselves, and the sacred mountain was surrounded by a wizardry barrier set up by several major forces. Even a super force like the Valiant Marshall Hall or the Hard Moon Divine Sect could not break through the wizardry barrier alone and sneak into Mount Wuji. In the end, although the Xia family held the Feast of Immortals here, they could only do so at the foot of the mountain and not near the sacred mountain. It was precisely because Mount Wuji was so famous that Jiang Fei did not even need to ask for directions to find this place. He and Natasha rode their swords and flew straight to Mount Wuji. On their way, Jiang Fei and the others met many people from the same path. These people were clearly also here for the Feast of Immortals. Many of them had even come from the other four planets to come to the town star. Hey! This immortal gathering is held every four years. You guys are really lucky. You know, I had to wait for three years before I had the chance to go. I did not expect that you guys would come to such a gathering as soon as you came out to train. A senior disciple was lecturing a few juniors. Senior brother, do you think this immortal gathering can buy high-tier magical equipment? A junior brother asked. TSK, let alone high-tier magical equipment. Even super-tier magical equipment is nothing new. I remember the year when I first came to the Feast of Immortals. There were even inner cores of true immortal-level ferocious beasts for sale. The senior brother said proudly. Senior brother, did you buy the inner cores? 
one of the junior brothers asked. Bye. Your senior brother is already lucky enough to be able to take a look at it. People like us can actually look for that kind of treasure. I'm afraid that only the four big families can afford that kind of thing. The senior brother said as he pursed his lips. He. Interesting. Jiang Fei did not follow the group of people for too long. After all, there was nothing to hear from the senior. He just smiled slightly and rode his sword to pass them. Along the way, there were many people who brought new people to join in the fun and see the world. After all, there were not many treasures in small and medium-sized sections. It was a good thing for the disciples to come out and see the world, especially the sects on the four outer planets. Every time they came to the Feast of Immortals, it was like a pilgrimage. Only the most outstanding disciples of the sect had the chance to go with their elders. After two days of traveling, Jiang Fei and the others finally arrived at the foot of Mount Wuji. Oh my god! Once they reached the foot of Mount Wuji, Jiang Fei was shocked by the scene. Although the five corners of the world was a place where cultivators were prevalent, it was still mostly ordinary people. After all, cultivators were a minority. However, there were many cultivators here. There were tens of thousands of cultivators who participated in the Feast of Immortals. It's so lively here. Let's go down. Natasha was very excited when she saw how lively the place was. Swoosh. At this moment, two flying swords appeared in front of Jiang Fei. Friends, is this your first time coming to the Feast of Immortals? One of them asked Jiang Fei. Yes. Jiang Fei replied. The area of the Feast of Immortals is a no-fly zone. If you are here to participate in the feast, please land. The person said to Jiang Fei. Oh, I see. We will go down now, said Jiang Fei. Although he was powerful, he had to follow the rules since he was here for fun. If no one followed the rules, the immortal feast would not be able to go on. After the two patrolmen left, Jiang Fei and Natasha landed. Then, Natasha pulled Jiang Fei's arm and asked him to accompany them for a stroll. Come, come, come. Don't miss this opportunity. This is a high-grade immortal wine. Drinking it will not only refresh your mind, but it will also speed up your training. The Crimson Fire Deer Meat is cheap. Friends of Fire Elementalists. Don't miss it. First grade beast inner core. Only mid-grade flying swords. Nothing else. In the outer area of the event, the independent cultivators usually set up their own stalls. It had nothing to do with the exhibition of the Sia family. They were just here to ride on the heat. At this time, the cultivators were gathering. There was no guarantee that they would not have anything useful in their hands. It was a treasure in the eyes of others. Therefore, it was a good choice to exchange it at this time. Handsome brother. I want to eat that. Handsome brother. That looks delicious. Handsome brother. Do you want to have a sip of that? What Jiang Fei did not expect was that Natasha seemed to have activated the gluttonous mode. As long as she passed by the stalls that bought food or drinks, she would almost certainly have a taste. Jiang Fei had also tasted a lot of delicious food. But correspondingly, the prices of these things were also quite expensive. Along the way, Jiang Fei and the others gradually left these unaffiliated cultivator stalls and entered the main venue of the Immortal Feast. This was the Xia family's territory. They had also established a loft shop here. It looked much more formal than those outside. Of course, the prices were also much higher. But there was one thing that could be guaranteed when buying and selling things in the Xia family. And that was that they wouldn't be fooled. It wasn't like when you bought something from an unspecialized cultivator outside. You might turn around and realize that you had been fooled. But looking for someone else was like looking for a needle in a haystack. Chapter 1874 Chapter 1872 If you have the guts. Don't leave after school. Jiang Fei was accompanying Natasha for a stroll. However, not long after they arrived at the Xia family's exhibition, they met an acquaintance. Boss, can you make this inner core cheaper? Cheaper? This is a first class wood type inner core. It's not considered expensive to ask for four middle grade spirit stones. If you feel that it's too expensive, you can go to the stand outside to have a look. Perhaps they have defective goods there. But we really don't have that much money on hand. That can't be helped. Our Sia family has a clear price tag. We don't bargain. But when Jiang Fei arrived at the shop, a group of people was bargaining with the boss. However, after the Sia family's business grew, how could they allow you to bargain? To treat a customer who could not afford to pay? They were all indifferent. There were a total of three men and a woman. Jiang Fei did not know any of the three men. However, the girl had met him once. This girl was none other than Zhang Chen. Zhang Chen had once blocked Jiang Fei's path for a while in Chinxing. 
the last time Zhang Chen was chosen by a sect at the Fish Leaping Festival. He became a disciple of that sect. Moreover, Jiang Fei had made enemies everywhere at that time. Therefore, the girl had parted ways with Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei did not pay too much attention to this little tour guide. He did not expect to meet her again today. However, the relationship between the two of them was only a nodding acquaintance that they had only met once. Sir, what would you like to order? When the waiter saw Jiang Fei enter, he immediately left Zhang Chen and the other guests whom he thought were poor and turned to greet Jiang Fei. Master Yuan? The waiter's greeting made Zhang Chen see Jiang Fei as well. He he. I didn't expect you to still remember me. However, Yuan Xiao is just my alias. My name is actually Jiang Fei. Jiang Fei said with a faint smile. Junior sister, do you know him? A man who was with Zhang Chen asked with a frown. Yes. Before I joined the Fallen Flower Valley, I once served as a guide for this master. It was precisely because of this master's financial support that I was able to participate in the Fish Leaping Feast. Zhang Chen said truthfully. Humph. In the future. Don't interact with such a young master. Zhang Chen Sr. snorted coldly. He himself had a little interest in Zhang Chen. Therefore, he had a certain amount of hostility toward the men that Zhang Chen had known in the past. Moreover, the shop owner had just finished mocking them and was already welcoming Jiang Fei warmly. This made Zhang Chen Sr. even more displeased with Jiang Fei. Yes, Sr. Zhang Chen nodded. Her senior was very strong. He had already reached the early stage of the Mahayana realm. He also had a lot of power in the Fallen Flower Valley. Therefore, Zhang Chen had some respect for him. On top of that, she did not have any feelings for Jiang Fei. After all, Jiang Fei had brought a group of girls with him back then. Today, he brought a new one. In Zhang Chen's eyes, Jiang Fei was a proper playboy. He! Sir! Do you have anything in mind? The staff in the shop was very enthusiastic about Jiang Fei. The reason was very simple. Natasha was holding a bunch of expensive snacks in her small hands. Those who had money to make such things were all rich. I'm just looking around. Jiang Fei smiled. He and Zhang Chen were just acquaintances. Since they were not willing to talk to him, he did not have to take the initiative to talk to these little ants. Handsome. I want this. Jiang Fei did not know if Natasha had done it on purpose or not. But she had actually taken a liking to the wood attribute in her core. Oh. Wrap it up. Jiang Fei had just heard the price. So he casually threw out two middle grade spirit stones and said, Okay. Sir. You're really straightforward. When the shop owner saw that Jiang Fei was spending money so casually, it was obvious that he was a big financier. Therefore, he was so happy that his eyes were squinting together. Hey! Why are you guys like this? We were the ones who took a liking to this inner core first. However, if that was the case, the people who were with Zhang Chen would not accept it. Hey! Are you guys trying to cause trouble? I just told you the price. If you don't buy it, you won't allow us to sell it to others? Although the shop owner was very polite to Jiang Fei, he was not nice to Zhang Chen and the others. Who said we won't buy it? Well, buy it. Zhang Chen Sr. gritted his teeth and took out a middle-grade spirit stone from his storage bag. Then, he gathered another 100 low-grade spirit stones. TSK, TSK, TSK. All right. Brothers, if you don't have the money, don't force yourself. You guys can go to another shop and take a look. When the shop owner saw Zhang Chen Sr. gather a handful of change, he rolled his eyes. Although 100 low-grade spirit stones were equivalent to one medium-grade spirit stone, the problem was that if they sold it to a bunch of poor people at the same price, they would be able to get a business. Moreover, they would have offended the benefactor beside them. They would have to sell it to Jiang Fei. Perhaps there would be more business to do. As for offending a bunch of poor people, who would care? What? You dare to look down on our fallen flower valley? Zhang Chen's senior brother was also used to being arrogant and domineering. After all, in Shenxing, the fallen flower valley was a top sect that was second only to the Greenwood Cliff. Hee hee. Fallen Flower Valley? I've never heard of it. I don't know which pheasant sect it is. The shop owner sneered. In terms of background, their Xia family was one of the four great clans. Moreover, they had the Ferocious Beasts clan of the Myriad Beast Mountain as their backing. Not to mention a sect like the Fallen Flower Valley. Even if someone from the Valiant Marshall Hall came, they might not give them face. You? When had Zhang Chen Sr. ever been so angry? He was about to turn hostile on the spot. However, a few of his junior brothers, who were smart enough to pass through, stopped him in an instant. 
Senior brother. Senior brother. Calm down first. This is the Myriad Immortals Feast. You must not act recklessly. A few of his junior brothers hugged Zhang Chen's senior brother tightly. Afraid that he would bring disaster to the entire sect. He, Jiang Fei watched the show as if he was watching a clown. What are you laughing at? Just you wait. If you have the guts, don't leave after the grand banquet is over. Zhang Chen's senior brother also remembered that the grand banquet of immortals was held by the Xia family. He also knew that the Xia family was many times stronger than the fallen flower valley. Therefore, he did not dare to make a scene here. However, he was not willing to lose face. So he vented his anger on Jiang Fei. Oh, you want me to wait? Sure. Jiang Fei smiled happily. He was really happy this time. Speaking of which, it had been a long time since Jiang Fei had been threatened like this. It felt like someone had suddenly said to him in school, Don't leave after school. However, Senior Zhang Chen's threat was like a kindergarten child suddenly running into a university classroom to threaten an adult. It was simply overestimating his own abilities. Sir! Sir! Don't lower yourself to these people's level. It'll chase them away right now! The shop owner immediately came over to hold Jiang Fei's hand. He did not want Jiang Fei to go out and fight with these people out of anger. If that happened, his business would be ruined. Chapter 1875 Chapter 1873 Dirty old man? Whatever. Jiang Fei shrugged and continued to browse through the items in the shop. Get out! Get out! You are not welcome here! The shop owner chased Zhang Chun and the others out like he was chasing away flies. Just you wait! Until this moment, Zhang Chen Sr. was still unwilling to let Jiang Fei go. Handsome! Why didn't you beat him up? Natasha asked curiously. Isn't it the rule of the Grand Celestial Gathering that private fights are not allowed? Jiang Fei casually found an excuse. In fact, he really did not like Zhang Chen Sr. Beating up that kind of person was simply dirty to his hands. Oh! Natasha did not dig into Jiang Fei's excuse. After all, Natasha also did not care about such a small character. Sir! Your inner core is ready! At this time, the shop assistant took the wood type inner core over. Put this pearl on for me! I want to wear it as a necklace! Natasha said excitedly. As a necklace? The shop owner and the shop assistant were dumbfounded. They never thought that the two people in front of them were so rich to the point of making nonsense. This type of first-class inner core was very precious. Usually, it was used to make first-grade or even top-grade magical equipment. Who would be willing to use it as a decorative item? However, no matter what, Jiang Fei and the others had spent money to buy the inner core. Even if it was broken and used as a cannon, the shop owner and the shop assistant had no objections. Therefore, they quickly took out their tools and wasted everything they had. They drilled a hole in the first grade inner core and wore it with a pearl necklace. This way, although the necklace was beautiful, the inner core had been broken, the aura had leaked out, and the beast's soul had also dissipated. It was as if it was completely useless. Do you see anything else that you like? Jiang Fei said to the excited Natasha. Hmm. I also want this. This. And this. Natasha was not polite at all. She asked for several things in one go. These things were not too expensive. After all, Natasha did not look at the effects of the items. She only chose the good-looking ones. Hmm. Pack them up. Jiang Fei nodded and paid. After leaving the shop, Jiang Fei found that he was being targeted by someone. Needless to say, it must be that annoying senior of Zhang Qin's. He did not know whether it was because he did not look at the almanac when he went out or because he deserved to die soon. Therefore, he was simply courting death today. Now, he was even following Jiang Fei. Handsome brother. I want to eat that. Natasha was really heartless. Although she had the carrier of the crossing calamity stage, she was not guarded at all. Being followed by a Mahayana stage person, she actually did not notice it at all. Along the way, Jiang Fei walked and stopped. He did not have any purpose. He came here with the heart of treasure. Therefore, he was just strolling around with Natasha. It was fate that they could meet treasures. It did not matter if they did not meet. As for the guy who was following him, Jiang Fei had never paid any attention to him. Hey! Little brother, do you have something good to see? At this moment, a wretched old man suddenly appeared and whispered to Jiang Fei. Ah? Jiang Fei looked at the old man. His strength was around the void interpretation stage. His combat strength was around 16 million. He was dressed in rags and his body had a faint stench. Good! Good. What good stuff. Natasha's ears were sharp. Moreover, 
she did not mind the old man being sloppy at all. She just stood beside an old man who had a bad smell. She was actually eating the snacks in her hand with great interest. Follow me. It's not convenient here. Let's come this way. The dirty old man said as he led Jiang Fei and the others to the outer area of the grand gathering. He looked just like the thieves on earth who stole mobile phones and sold them on the spot. Okay. Okay. Natasha immediately followed. Hee hee. Jiang Fei saw Natasha chasing after him and could only laugh bitterly. Moreover, he was also very curious if the old man had stolen some treasures. After all, Jiang Fei came here with the intention of picking up scraps. Although the things in the Xia family shop were authentic, it was impossible for him to pick up scraps. Otherwise, what would the appraisers of the Xia family do? Therefore, if he wanted to pick up the loot, he had to do it in the outer area. Although the chances were not high, there were still some lucky ones. This was especially so for stolen goods. It was the easiest to pick up the loot. After all, the thieves might not know the value of the items they had stolen. They might even sell them at a lower price. After all, this was a no-cost business. No matter how much they sold, they would still make a profit. Jiang Fei and the others followed the dirty old man. Soon, they passed through the Xia family's exhibition area. After they left, the old man still had no intention of stopping. What does this old man mean? Could it be that he wants to take advantage of us? Jiang Fei frowned slightly. Although private fights were prohibited in the Myriad Immortals' Feast, there was a regional area. As long as they were outside this area, they could attack the Xia family however they wanted. Just as Jiang Fei and the other two left the core area and walked out, two people quietly followed behind them. One of them was Zhang Chen Sr., and the other was his junior. Jiang Fei did not pay much attention to the two little guys. After all, these two ants did not even have the right to threaten him. After a moment, the old man brought Jiang Fei and the other two to a remote corner. The location was very clever. It was in the area of the Feast of Immortals, but it was also at the edge. Theoretically speaking, private fights were also prohibited here, so it was easy for people to let their guard down. However, because it was remote enough, the Xia family's patrol officers only appeared once in a long time. If they really wanted to rob them, when the Xia family's patrol officers appeared, they had already snatched the things and ran away. The two of you, come and have a look, the dirty old man said to Jiang Fei and the old man with a smile. At the same time, he took out a small wooden box from his pocket. The small wooden box was made very delicately. There were many gemstones inlaid on it. Although in the world of cultivators, such bright gemstones were worthless. The exquisite workmanship was really eye-catching. What is this? Natasha was really not wary at all. She just foolishly went up to it. However, Jiang Fei was not as stupid as Natasha. When the old man turned around, he had already opened the eye of the violet. At this time, the wooden box had not been opened yet. The things inside had already entered Jiang Fei's eyes. Interesting. Jiang Fei smiled faintly. This old man really did not have any bad intentions. He did not want to plot against Jiang Fei and Natasha. He did have a treasure in his hand. Moreover, he had just stolen it. Swoosh. At this time, Natasha had already opened the small box. A bright seven-colored light shot out. Although the light was bright, it was not dazzling. What is this? Natasha looked at the small bead in the box blankly. It was not round and looked lumpy. Although it was dazzling, it was not beautiful. So Natasha was not interested in it. 